Holy cow. Holy cow. What are we doing? What are we doing? Hey, hey. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Mama Silver, good to see you there. Tanya, Caitlin, Rosie, Fane, Angel, good to see you. Jacqueline, Sam the Ham, Nicole, the Madhouse, Carabites, Morgan Whitehead, Samantha, Akiza, Kristen, Tony Spark in the house here. Allie's Unholy, Justina, Christina, Sue Becca, good to see you there. Not that Ella, Melissa, the Carousel. Oh. The Carousel? Not that Ellen, 800, Christina, Kyle, Ruth, Megan with an H. Sorry about that spelling a minute ago. Aaron, Heidi, good to see you all here. Thank you so much for being here today. Justina, thanks for the love right off the rip here. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Michelle, Heather, good to see you. Seven months with the Thunder Crew. Heck yeah. Darla, Lisa, Amanda, Fane, Laura, not that Ellen. Heck yeah. Oh, Montize, thank you. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Sierra, Mary with us for seven months. Mazi, heck yeah, good to see you. Mazi, uh, Elizabeth with us for four months. Good to see you there. Aaron, Christina, Nikki. I see Nick Bolton because of the Chiefs automatically, of course. Danny, good to see you. Sonja, Riley, Gemma, uh, Martinez, Lauren, Ashley, Coldest. Good to see everybody. Shanna Lee with us for seven months and the, and the uh, gosh, I can thunder crew over there. Jennifer, Vicky, Mercy, Lisa, Sparks, Christina, Kyle, Patty, April with us for seven months as well. Heck yes. Good to see everybody. TikTok side, how are you? How is everybody doing here? We do have a goal of 3K bolts on the TikTok side to get Tony Spark up here to get us started here. He is the mastermind. The mastermind behind this 24 hour stream. That's a blessing and a curse, really. Really. Elise with us for seven months. MJ with us for one month. Heck yes. Members of the Gosh Heck and Thunder crew over on the YouTube side. Candy Thunders in chat, everybody. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Good to see everybody. Uh, Merchant, I have uh, I have a timer in front of me, actually. And it's going to be... Uh, it, it's. I started like two minutes before the stream actually started, but we're at, uh, we're at five minutes right here. What's up, back of it? Good to see you there. We th I thought about doing uh, a timer on ahead of time, but I do have this, so you guys might be able to see if we do this. Check this out. Boop, boop. We've got a BTS cam set up for today, so there's my timer. We're going to bounce to it several times today, and you'll be able to see how long uh, how long we've been live. Plus, as guests comes it, come in and that kind of thing, we'll be able to see them that way as well. Leap Day just got way cooler. Heck yeah, Angel. Heck yeah. Oh. I forgot about the bingo card thing. Mark off Moira already. So we already got Moira knocked off there. Hey, if you're going to be hanging out with us today, we have bingo cards available at dusty thunder.com that you can download. They're also in the stories on TikTok, and uh, you can mark mark off. You go for blackout and you're going to submit them to you, right? You got to punch in. I, I can't close. hear you. You almost gave away a bingo square right there. Uh, yeah, so you can. Well, we also just posted them on the Dusty Dusty Thunder TikTok uh, stories, so you can screenshot them, do the bingo cards digitally, or go to Dusty Dash Thunder. And uh, chat, if you, there's some people I've heard that said they may not know some of the references. So if you hear bingo, call out bingo in the chat and then somebody will know what to look for. There you go. And they submit them to you when we're done, right? When they're done. Yep. At Tony at Dusty-Thunder.com. Tony, T-O-N-Y at Dusty-Thunder.com. Heck yeah. And you can do it on your phone too. And just mark it up with whatever whatever tool you have there. Uh, how you find the time stamps. Like just, just use your local time. Just whatever local time. Not everybody's times are going to be the same, but uh, well, we should be able to tell loosely. Joanna, just subscribed. Heck yeah. Welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Emily B. Natalie Ford. D -d 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 Good to see you there as well. Caroline, thanks for joining us. Chris, Mary, Mama Bear. Uh, Jerry Lee, go forth. Welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Joanna, again, welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Kara Bites, Megan Carroll, Julie, Carol Jaworski. Angela Marie, good to see you there. M uh, MGC Witch, Mama Bear, Carol W. Brooke, Misty Joe, Holly Jill Talk, Carol Def Cannon, Carol W. B. 
Tila, Carol Jaworski, Diana Galvin, Mama T, Holly Jill Talk, Dylan Sprague, Rebecca Misty. Thank you guys so much. I am going to be trying not to read as many names in between. I'm going to be doing it as we as we hit gift goals. So uh, so if you want to be sure that I read your name, try to stick to the goals. That way I don't miss anybody. And we're at 690 to 3K right now on that thunder on the lightning bolt goal to get Tony Spark up here. Vex Eris, welcome to the Thunder Crew. And Mercy with us for six months. Heck yeah. Angel's excited for the Brozo stories. Yo, we got themes. We got themes here. Let's go. Got that Nolans go going on there. Chris, yeah, heck yeah. We're going for 24 hours. This is the very beginning of the 24 hour stream because we've lost our minds. That's why. We've lost our minds. That's it. We've lost our gosh second minds. I have, I'm going to be using a steady supply of Jot Coffee today. I'm already almost all the way through my first, my first here, which by the way, at Jot.co, you can save 20% by using the code Dusty20. This is going to get me through this day, faux show. And it gets me through every live stream, but today I've got two big backup. I've got a, a water and a backup water. I've got this. We've got a fridge full of Monster Tea. We've got a fridge full of Five Hour Energy, but Jot Coffee is going to be my main go-to for today. It's going to happen. Gamer Dad says, hour 23, Dusty is wandering around with a lampshade on his head. Not unreasonable. Yeah, you're, yeah, we're going to entertain you for 24 hours till 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, March 1st, leap day. So every four years, this is going to happen, right? Next time, next time we do, and I'm going to be full white bearded, full white headed. It's going to be amazing. Emily B, get those bingo cards. Heck yeah. We got some new music for today, too. Got to keep us moving. You're at 323 days, Andy, on the on the TikTok side. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Words are hard to wake, Zach. Yeah. Uh, words are going to get increasingly hard today. I do have my Words Are Hard shirts in the back. They may, they may come on hour 12 beyond. We'll see. After, but thank you. I think so too. I can't wait till my hair is all white. I can't wait. Jade, watch them while working. Heck yeah. Missy, yes, we did just start. We're just getting started. Uncle MF Johnny Candy Thunder will be calling me your Silver Fox. I hope so. I hope I hope so. Are you guys ready? Let's get started here. Let's do this. Block one. Block one. Here we go. We are 10 minutes into the 24 hour stream. Let's see. <laughs> Oh boy. What have we done, Tony Spark? What have we done? I'm saying this in the beginning, uh, halfway through and beyond. It's good. This is going to be entertaining. If, if nothing else, this is going to be very, very, very entertaining. Welcome to the 24 hour stream. And that's it. We're done. And we're done. Thank you for being here. We're out. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't set up my QOD, um, but are you ready for the 24 hour stream? That is the question today. Are you ready? Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll, 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 next time we go to a celebration break, I will put the QOD back up because I still have that that thing set up there. Coming up, we have stories about wedding vacation, question mark. Who put a question mark on the teleprompter? Birthday gift drama, unfortunate wedding dates, bad birthdays, roommate disputes, baby name drama, spicy stories, cake stories, and oh yeah, 24 hours worth of stories. We're talking somewhere around a hundred stories, which by the way, our first, our first goal is 3K bulls to get the brains or lack thereof. Behind the 24-hour stream, Tony Spark up here. Huge, huge round of applause for Tony Spark for orchestrating all this and being the maestro of all this. My my hard work begins now. He's been working hard on this for a while leading up to it, mainly like the past three days because he likes to procrastinate. But he's been doing a lot of hard work on this already, and he's planning on uh, on on sticking through the whole stream, the whole 24 hour stream too. So, um, he's put more into this than I will. That's, uh, that's the thing that I want to communicate there. So, holy cow. Uh, 
And Tracy says, are we taking bets on what hour things will take a turn? <laughs> we should. We need to start a poll. We need to start a poll. Hey, we already hit that goal. Let me get through some uh, some opening notes here. And then, uh, and you know what? Screw it. Let's go ahead and get him up here. Let's go ahead and do it. Let me get some celebration stuff going on here real quick. And the number one spot, we've got Caramel Cats. Thank you very much. Uh, developer Girl in the number two spot, TLS Journey, Kez Reigns, Miss Helene, A.K. Mary, Kimberly P., Hostel Cakes, Amanda Mills, Ara K. or Eric, 667, Chef Tila, RJ McHale, Dylan Sprague, Chesh, 1767, Emily B., IVF Mama, heart goes out to you, IVF fam here as well. Mags Mazing, Kev T71, Julie Crable, Messy Lee, Jenny DeBlock, Candy Thunder, Snowman Collector, Trini Marie, Kid Roscoe, Misty Joe, uh, Angel- Angela, Femiani Pats, Pats, it won't show me the full name. Angela, we'll go with that. Ishtara, Variego, Nat Ford, and Crystal Museum Girl. Thank you guys so much for helping us get there. We're going to get the next goal set up. Not gonna lie, I'm digging digging the music vibe here. Sorry, I got I got distracted by the tunes. Okay, the next one is going to unlock a spicy story. Spicy. And before we even get rocking here, let's go ahead and bring him up. The maestro, the conductor of this 24-hour stream. Tony Spark. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Spark. <laughs> Let's bring up the dumbass whose idea this was. How's everybody doing this morning or evening or whatever, whatever time it is, wherever you're at. It's morning here. Just finished my uh, first Starbucks of the day. So things are things are looking up. Things are looking up already. Is everybody excited? I see people got their bingo cards ready. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it was funny. He's talking about the procrastinating. I was literally, as a stream is going, editing and proofing one of the stories that's in this first block still. So, yeah, that's uh, but it's good. Uh, that's finished. We've got uh, out of the 24 hours, I've got 20 hours of content uh, ready to go. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully everybody uh hopefully everybody enjoys it. It's afternoon. Okay, this is a lot. There's two ch- so there's two chats going on here cuz we're on YouTube and TikTok. Yeah. So this is a lot to handle. Hey, I, I just wanted to say I just looked at the bingo cards for the first time and y'all are screwed cuz I don't plan on using the bathroom for 24 hours. You're going to have one blank spot yeah. the whole okay. time. Yeah, right. I'll internalize it. I'll yeah, reabsorb right. it back into my body. Yeah. Uh text uh, hold on. Uh, where was that at? Uh, Tattoo Goddess, you can go to dusty-thunder.com uh, to get your bingo cards. They should be right there on the homepage. So yeah, uh, hopefully everybody's ready for uh, ready for some fun. Um, I just want to, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, you know, everybody's just along for the ride. So um, everybody stay hydrated and, and watch. And if you get tired of listening to us, it's okay to take a break for a little while. We'll be here for 24 hours. I mean, I think... Natalie, this does not count as Tony feedback. Nice try. Nice try. Trying to, <laughs> nice try trying to get those bingo cards. No, this does not count as Tony feedback. <laughs> Amanda, if you want to just screenshot them, they're also posted on Dusty Story, and you can mark on them digitally if you want and submit them that way too. And <laughs> Brett says, is Dusty going with the catheter? No. Yeah, there's just a bucket under there's just a bucket <laughs> under the bucket under the uh desk here and somebody's gonna have to and we're drawing straws in the office and he's gonna have to he's gonna have to empty that. <laughs> so. But yeah. All right guys. Well, let's uh let's have some fun, I guess. And that's what this is. It's fun, right? Let's this is it. fun. So um thanks for hanging out, guys. Um Bree. It's just one entry per person. So you can fill out all three if you want to, but just send in one. So anyway, look at that. see you guys There's later. BTS shot going on here. Yeah, I don't like that one. You don't like the BTS like shot? The bald spot going on. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll move. We'll move camera two here. We'll, we'll move. We'll move camera two. Uh, we did. 
We did talk. I already flipped to the other the other shot. Caden, Caden Thunder was trying to wait. Uh, so uh, we did talk about how yesterday I was joking around about how I was going to get a catheter bag and a bucket. And uh, I was just going to stay right here the whole time. Um, yeah. And we did decide it would be between Caden, you and Miles on who was going to have to empty the chamber pot. So he's like, nah, nah, nah. If you hear a trickle, there you go. If you hear a trickle. Yep, that's right. Uh, okay, so we've got, uh, we're already rocking on the second goal there. We're going to go ahead and get started in our first story. Let me get through some intro notes here first. Welcome. 24-hour stream. Keep in mind that today the live stream is going to be different than anything we have done. We'll be streaming for 24 hours straight. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. We are currently multi-streaming on both TikTok and YouTube, but we will switch over to just YouTube at noon. YouTube is going to be our main port for everything uh, throughout the stream. We're going to be there the whole time. So uh, if you want to keep going with us, make sure you follow us over. If you aren't subscribed on the on the YouTube side already, make sure you do that. It is at Dusty Thunder as my user over there. You can also get there through the uh through link tree the top link in there will take you to the the 24 hour live and it's like a yeah you won't miss it if you go to link tree so uh we hope you hang out with us as much as you can today just know if you don't see us live here we will be live over over on the youtube side uh we're gonna we have a few chunks that we'll be cutting in on the tiktok side so um We are doing 24-hour live stream bingo. We talked about that a little bit, but if you're a VIP member, you can find the bingo cards posted in the VIP group. You can also find them at dusty-thunder.com. And Tony already explained how those are going to work. Please remember to be kind in chat every day, but especially today. Uh, We are going to require, we're going to need a lot of patience from everybody. This is a first for us. A lot of time and effort has gone into it. Uh, We're going to have guest readers. We're going to have fun Q&A chats and who knows what else. We do have extra mods today. Um, we do have extra mods to try to, to keep the peace and keep everything calm and orderly today. So please be kind and let's everybody have fun. And especially when we do have guests up here doing readings, please be kind to them. Um, if you are here just to watch dusty thunder, which I don't know why that would be, but if you are one of the people that doesn't want to see other people read stories or something like that, take a break while they're up here. Uh, don't be mean to them. They're donating their time to come up here and do this. So, so please, please just be kind to everybody. And of course, no spoilers, spoilers, uh, will be muted. So just don't do it. If you heard a story we're talking about, just, just keep it inside. Let everybody be surprised. It's okay. We are not doing any reruns today. All of the hundred ish stories that we're reading today are fresh, brand new stories that we have not covered before. So it's going to be a hell of a good time. Get out your brooms. I'm going to just let chat finish it. I'm going to let chat finish that one. That's, that's my new approach. I'm just going to say, get out your brooms. Uh, Jocelyn says, looking at the bingo cards, what is the Moira voice? You'll know it when you hear it. You'll know it. Wendy, thank you for the love. Greatly appreciate that. Cassie, thanks for the follow. Greatly appreciate that. Caden Thunder, first one in there. There you go. Uh, Subeka, keep checking the bingo card. Nice. I don't have, oh, I have one in front of me here. It's going to get there. And one quick reminder, um, a couple of people have... A couple of people have asked. It is free to subscribe on YouTube. Yep. TikTok and YouTube subscribers, they use different words for it. It's basically just a follow. So yeah. there's no cost to, to watch any of this today. Uh, we personally get very frustrated about how they use conflicting terminology because a subscriber on TikTok is a paid thing. A subscriber on YouTube is just like a follow on TikTok. So get your shit together, social platforms. No, it does not cost anything to subscribe slash follow over on the YouTube side. We do have a membership that lets you get exclusive content. You don't need that today. Today is free for everybody. Everybody. Okay, here we go. Our first story of this 24-hour madness stream is a follower submission. And I just looked at Tony Spark and I'm like, ah, we didn't send our our email out uh, to all of our followers. So we'll we'll try to do that at some point. In pivot, in pivot here, but this is a follower submission. This is titled, am I the astronaut for getting mad at my sister-in-law for being late for my wedding by letting her husband turn my wedding into a makeshift family vacation for his family? That sounds complicated um, and shitty. I got married to my husband back in April 2021. We had a makeshift wedding that we planned ourselves. My husband proposed to me at the foot of a waterfall on vacation after asking my father for my hand in marriage as he is a semi-traditionalist and wanted to ask my dad. 
He didn't get on one knee or anything, just hugged me from behind and presented me the ring. Of course, I said yes. Well, we had a place for the bridal party all set for the wedding, as well as the pastor who was marrying us and one of the two photographers all on site. Well, about a week before the wedding, my brother-in-law's family felt it was unfair for him and my sister-in-law and nephew to be in the city where we planned our wedding without them. I'm going to red flag that. We chose a destination wedding in a popular vacation spot, and they wanted to go too, even though they were not invited to the wedding. We kept the wedding small with just our immediate family and best friends. We each had three in our bridal parties, including the best man and maid of honor. My brother-in-law in question wasn't even at the wedding party, but was invited as he is my sister-in-law's husband. Well, my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law's family rented a place for them to stay and had my sister-in-law stay with them instead of with us. Our wedding was supposed to start at 2 p.m. with a rehearsal at 10 a.m. Again, the wedding was a makeshift thing planned by ourselves to save money. The morning of the wedding comes and my husband calls his sister to no avail. My mother-in-law calls her to no avail. Finally, my mother-in-law got a hold of her at 10.30 a.m., roughly, and she says she just woke up and will be there soon. Mm, 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 mm. Noon comes and my husband calls her to find out where she is. She says she says they will be leaving soon. They Shanna Lee, thank you so much for the uh, for the super over on the YouTube side. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. My husband gets off the phone with her, grabs his hiking pack and walks and walks off down the road to cool off. I'm confused about what is going on besides the fact that she was still not here two hours before the wedding was supposed to start and we still had to rehearse what was going to happen before the wedding. She finally showed up, but my brother-in-law decided to stay in the car and my nephew, who was supposed to be the ring bearer, was asleep in the car because he didn't get sleep the night before and his nap got pushed back because he was so tired, so I had no ring bearer for my wedding. After all the family functions we have had with her for holidays and her getting mad, if we were late and throwing a fit, she was late to my wedding. So am I the asking out for being mad that she let her husband's family turn my wedding into a makeshift family vacation, causing her to be late to my wedding and not having a ring bearer because they didn't have their son get proper sleep the night before? <gasps> Hell no. Hell no. This is garbage. It is a garbage. Was that the sound of a cell door closing? Was that the sound of, of my HP printer printing? There's bingo cards. It's an accent. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Um, no, this is terrible. And and, and especially what you say here at the end uh, about how, how this sister-in-law was always shitty if you were late. To any kind of function that she was throwing a wedding kind of trumps all of those things if one of the things that she had planned was was not a wedding th those are those are not equal things at all and for her to <sighs> there's an entitled family thing going on here right so so his family is entitled it's like well if you guys get to go to a fancy destination we want to go too why 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 that's a new girl uh winston why would they have to come? It's a freaking wedding. It hasn't it has nothing to do with them at all. What's that got to do with the price of tea in China? It doesn't. Nothing. Nothing. They shouldn't have have tried to go. They shouldn't have tried to hijack everything. They should not have stayed up late the night before doing whatever the hell they were doing. She should not have separated herself from the bridal party. It's like, it, it, yeah, it's all garbage. All of it. And in your position, OP, I would be extremely upset and I would be uh, I would be demanding some kind of an apology to maintain this relationship. This is a boundary and you're allowed to be offended here. You're allowed to be upset. Uh, and, and again, we talk about this a lot. You can't be an asshole for being mad about something. You can't be an asshole for feeling something. It's what you do with those feelings that can make you an asshole. In this case, if you took those feelings and you approached your sister-in-law and you said, look, um, I feel like this was extremely disrespectful. And if you want to have a relationship with us moving forward, I think you owe us a big apology. And so does your husband. And really, so does his family. But I wouldn't expect anything from them. What you do with this anger right now will determine you know, where if you landed on the scale. But you would have to be super unreasonable to end up on the scale at all here. What she did and the reciprocation of that gives you a lot of freedom to be a pretty big asshole. Demand an apology. 
Demand. Jacqueline, you think everyone sucks here? I don't. I, OP doesn't suck here, I don't think. Sister-in-law, brother-in-law, his family, they definitely end up on the scale. Let's talk about sister-in-law specifically here because she, she was the one who was supposed to be a part of the bridal party. She's the one who was like, oh, yeah, I guess my son's just not going to be a ring bearer um, and allowed her husband to bring his family and basically hijack the whole, the whole trip. Jelly bean, I, yeah, I got enough. I got enough coffee for the day. Heck yeah, I do. Heck yeah, I do. Oh, you guys are getting ads on the YouTube side. I don't know if I can fix that whenever we end up resetting it. Yeah, if you have YouTube premium, you won't for sure. Um, it happens no matter what. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so Danny, there's, there's like a paid membership, but then YouTube premium is like a, a paid membership through YouTube that has nothing to do with our channel. And that is an ad free thing. Um, okay. Yeah. YouTube premium is the only one that does no ad streaming. Got it. Got it. Hey, Andy. Yeah. Today is definitely a jock coffee thing. Definitely, Jack Coffee is going to keep me alive today. Okay, so looking at the scale here, sister in law specifically, she definitely could have done it differently. She definitely should have done it differently. Um, I, I'm going to say she definitely shouldn't have done that. And maybe it goes beyond that. Maybe it gets into Ask on One territory. This is at least an Ask on Two. She definitely shouldn't have done this. And she probably views herself as between a rock and a hard place because this is her husband and her husband's family. And I'm sure they pressured her into this, but it doesn't matter. Have some respect for the person getting married that you were part of the bridal party for, right? Stand up for them and for yourself here, because when you stand up for a friend and something that someone is trying to get you to do is going to infringe on something there and be disrespectful to them, you are also being disrespectful to the relationship that you have with them. And now sister-in-law has put that relationship in jeopardy. And now she's going to have to work hard to fix it. Had she stood her ground in the beginning and been like, no, this, this is not going to end well. None of this would have happened. None of it would have happened. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, and give some thanks for this fire goal being hit. Here, you guys. You guys are just rocking right through it. Rocking right through it. Mad Drummer, Mama Chick, Madison, uh, Mary, thank you guys for the other gifts there. Janine, Jerry Lee, go forth as well. Miss Fiery Repic, you guys are awesome. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, oh, Angel says, just checked, and there's a seven-day free trial of YouTube Premium, which would be ad-free. Not a bad way to go. Not a bad way to go. In the number one spot here, we have Haunted Gal. Heck yeah. Caramel Cat, Southern Country. This is fine. Uh, Joss VP, Pixie Dust, Mama Joe, TLS Journey, AK Mary, Kimberly Clevenger, Miss Helene, Amber L. Hickey, RJ McHale, G Dragon RVA, Kimberly P. And then we have Mandy Chastine, Wayward, Heart. Kez Reigns, Flower Girl, Desi Bear, Caden Thunder, Effulgent One, Crystal Museum Girl, Jackie Kelly, and Mama Bear NC. Thank you guys so much. We unlocked a spicy story. We done did it. Unlock that spicy story right there. I tell you what. The next one is going to get Caden Thunder up here. By the end of 24 hours, we're going to hate this music. I do have three different tracks on this one scene, so we'll hear some different things, but... And I've got some variables too. We've got some options. We got options. I like it though, I'm not gonna lie. Navy Thunder's on? Is she on the YouTube side or the TikTok side? Michelle Heather, you rock. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Greatly appreciate the love here. We are 31 minutes into the uh, into the 24 hour stream here. Navy, hi kiddo, hi baby. Our little tot, the youngest, the youngest thunder kiddo is watching right now. Navy bear, daddy loves you, honey. I'll see you in just a little bit. You're gonna come up here and see daddy. You're gonna come up here. You're gonna come come up here and say hi to everybody. Mwah. I'll see you soon. Be good for mommy. You listen to mommy, okay? Okay. Amber, heck yeah, sending the paper cranes through. There was also yeah, the two chat thing makes it a little bit difficult. Different porch. Pat's Mary, Amber, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. 
Oh, Candy Thunder said, she, she, Navy Thunder said, you do love me so much. <laughs> that is so Navy. Mad Hatter Gal, thank you for the super over on the YouTube side. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Thank you so much. <laughs> DFHB is a decent effing human being. That's what the acronym means. Jocelyn is kind of our own, our own creation. She is sassy. She is absolutely sassy. Uh, funny story for you real quick. Tony Spark and I get in this morning and both had dogs last night that wouldn't shut the heck up and both slept pretty shitty because of that. So yes, the one night when we need to like stock up sleep, we just didn't. It's crazy. Navy kiddo. Why, why do kids listen so much more to daddy than mama? That's not the case. Uh, it's not the case with us. She she flip flops, but she just wants whoever she's not in trouble with right then. So if she gets in trouble with me. She's like, I want my mama. And she gets in trouble with mommy. She's like, I want my daddy. She's just, you know, typical, typical kid stuff. Lauren with us for four months. Heck yes. Also, Brianna Cook. Welcome to the Thunder Crew. Elise with us for seven months. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Yes, Danny. Yeah, love it when the pet gives you no sleep at night and then sleeps all day. Come on. Luna, our 85-pound golden doodle, her her dog bed is right next to my side of the bed, and she snored all night long and was having dreams at some point, too. And you know how dogs have dreams. They're like, I'm like, dude, dude, not tonight. No dreams tonight. Yoko with us for seven months. Jamie Lee with us for seven months. Peggy Jump, welcome to the Gosh Heck it fam. Heck yes. Heck yes. Okay. How do you see how many months you've been su- subscribed? Coral, uh, that's over on the the um, the YouTube side. On the YouTube side. Don, thanks for the super. Greatly appreciate it. Greatly, greatly, greatly. Uh, I don't know, Just Mags. I don't know how you how to do gifted subs on the YouTube side or if it's even possible. I know you can do it on the TikTok side. All right, let's go ahead and get our second story started here, shall we? It is the Spicy Satori. Time for a Spicy Satori. Funny one thing day. about that Spicy story is I just realized that I I was like, oh, I got to proofread that one, too. Cramming, cramming this is for the, the exam. First, this is the first chunk of I know, but it's because I, it's like I said, it was like I Charlie dated and I was swapping this block with this block and this story from over here and redistributing oh. stories and it was a lot. I may have to turn that BTF camera so people can see you at your desk when you're no, talking to me. He says no. Overstimulating right now. Overstimulating? Sorry. Jenny with us for five months. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Okay, let's dive into the spicy reward story here. This one is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Calling My Sister a Powder Whore? A whore? Whore. The age is silent. Whore. I'm 18 female. I live with my parents and my sister, Joanne, 23 female. Joe Kane. <laughs> Joe Kane. <laughs> but you can't guess what she has a problem with. Joanne has a powder habit, and she claims it's normal in her job, and it's just the lifestyle of chefing, yada, yada. I know we have some chefs, chefs and chat. Is a powder, is powder problem like common? Is it common in your world? My parents seem to be ignoring it since Joanne pays her rent on time and keeps to herself when she's in the house and doesn't cause many problems. I'm a college student on a government grant and I'm in college Monday through Friday up until 5 to 6 p.m. And working isn't really an option for me right now. So I don't go out much and I spend all my money on college supplies. Joanne doesn't seem to understand this and is always asking to borrow money and whatnot. Oof. I always say no because it works out that I only have 40 euros every week to spend on college stuff and to and travel to college. I got a Christmas bonus on my grant and I ended up deciding to book tickets for a smallish local gig that's next week. Elizabeth. Says this Davis family loves the Storm family. Thanks for keeping us entertained at work today. Thank you so much for the super on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate it. I got a Christmas bonus on my grant and I ended up deciding to book tickets for a smallish local gig. That's next week. Already read that reading it again. Sorry. I booked two, one for me and one for my best friend because her birthday is on the same day and she loves the type of music. It was meant to be a surprise for her. I had to I had told Joanne about this on one of her good days because I was genuinely excited to finally do something and live the college student lifestyle for a night. The tickets were digital on an account shared with my parents. Joanne had asked for the login, telling them that she wanted to book tickets to something, but she was lying and used it to sell my tickets for powder money. Are you shitting me? (sighs) 
That ain't cool. That, that ain't cool. I didn't find out until I had gotten the email to confirm that the tickets were sent to someone else, and I was really confused at first. I checked, and they were sent to someone I know, Joanne knows. I went straight to her when she got home and asked what the F she did. She tried lying, but I showed her proof that it went to someone she knows and told her I wanted my money back then and there. She told me it was gone already. Yeah, she snorted it. I lost my mind and started yelling at her because it wasn't fair. My mom was just in from work and I was screaming at my sister who was crying at that point saying she was sorry and she didn't know it would upset me this much. Bullshit. My mom got involved and told me to keep my voice down and we'll talk about it. And I told her to shut up and stay out of it. Ooh. I ended up saying something along the lines of, why is it fair that you get to do this to me when I've never even drank alcohol or smoked? Why does the powder whore get to be the golden child, but not me? <sighs> April, thanks for the super over there. Words are hard is now a household phrase. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. They are. They really are. It's not just a saying. It's the truth. It's the truth. My mom stepped in and put a stop to it then and there. My sister had started screaming back at me for what I called her. My mom said that that was out of line and she made a mistake. I told my mom her mistake cost me the only night out I'll, I'll have been able to have all year. So she should, she should hear about what I have to say. My mom thinks I was in the wrong for what I said. And my sister won't even look at me, even though it's been three days and I've tried apologizing. Am I the astronaut? Roxanne, thanks for the super over on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate that. Yeah, Jamira, why wouldn't it upset her that much? If someone stole your tickets and sold them to fund their addiction, it would probably be pretty freaking upsetting. Mom, she just made a mistake. Does mom not know that, that this is an addiction? Does mom not know that this is a recurring thing? That's my question here. We have a top comment. Um, is it safe to read that now? I saw you were typing something. <laughs> He's typing as I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> Top comment on this is NTA. I think you need to look your mom in the eyes when your sister isn't around and say, mom, your oldest daughter is always broke from buying powder and other things. She stole from her family, her sister to buy illegal things. Saying that she just made a mistake is unfair and disingenuous. The longer you wait to acknowledge her drug pro problem, the worse it will get. She ruined my only night out and a birthday gift to a dear friend. You can try to sweep all of this under the rug, but it won't stay there. For sure it won't stay there. Patty, welcome to the Thunder Crew over there. Heck yes. Uh, for sure it's not going to stay there. It is not going to stay there at all. Before we dive into feedback on this, we hit paper cranes. We got to we gotta do it. We got to do it here. Amber L. Hickey with the number one spot here. Haunted Gala number two, Southern Country, Queen Lucy, Carmel Cat, Jenny the Black, Joss VP, Dylan Sprague, Mama Joe, Miss Pamela L., A.K. Mary, and Mama Silver. Uh, I think it's as far as it goes. I don't think, yeah. Look at, look at you go. Look at you all supporting this 24 hour stream with all the vigor of a wartime radio operator. That was random. It was very random. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love. We're going to get the next one set up. That one did unlock a Caden Thunder appearance. We'll get him up after we give feedback on this story. The next one is going to... Uh, oh, ooh. The next one is going to unlock a Best of Redditor update story. Those are always juicy. Juicy and lengthy. Oh... Uh, I dig it. I just dig the music. Dr. Sweet sending out a bunch of gifted subs here. We've got some new members. Crystal William, Mama T, Rolling With Life, Penny Highs, the Vagina. Welcome to the Gosh and Fam, courtesy of Dr. Sweets. Heck yeah. Amber, it's your first time with your number one gifter? Heck yeah. Nico Rose, welcome to the Thunder Crew over on the YouTube side. Oh, is it supposed to be a possibility? Gifted subs? We'll figure it out. What? My life has been age restricted. Okay. Well, the the TikTok live has just been age restricted for 18 plus. Somehow we've been reported for having themes that aren't suitable for children. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We are 42 minutes in on the 24 hour stream here. Holy cow. Okay. Feedback on this story. If your sister 
stole your tickets and sold them so that she could fund her habit. I don't think it matters what the what the thing is. I don't think it matters what she sold it for. The fact that she has an addiction that is controlling her behaviors is the issue here. Right. And mom is in denial, either knows and just doesn't want to admit it, because that means it's that means it's on her to do some work and figure out how to unravel this mess. It's not her responsibility, but it kind of is. She's living with her. and It's your child. If your child had an addiction problem, you would feel compelled to try to help them overcome that. Right or at least address it to pave a path to a solution. I would think mom is in denial here. I, why is, is a question mark. Why she's in denial is a question mark. It doesn't matter at the end of the day right now, your other child is being harmed for it. And that's when mom becomes an asshole because the denial is allowing one of your children to be harmed and affected negatively while the other one goes unchecked. That's a problem. So you can be in denial, but as soon as it gets to the point where where it's causing direct harm to other family members and you do nothing, then you're enabling. Denial can be enabling behavior, too. This is not okay. Sister knows it's not okay, but as many addictions do, it overrides all logic, right? It overrides all logic. She would steal and do whatever she needed to do to be able to fund this addiction because the addiction has the steering wheel. Mom, in my opinion, (sighs) is one of the major issues here because she's enabling. Um, So the question here, am I the astronaut for calling my sister a powder whore? Maybe that's the word that got us 18 plus. It's possible. Um, No, you are, you are not the astronaut at all for calling her that that's, that's what, that's what, that's what happened. I mean, the second part of that, the part of that, uh, it indicates that she's, you know, trading sexual favors for that. So, so maybe that's not what she's doing. Maybe she is. Who, who knows? But she's an addict that is that is screwing over her entire family to feed her addiction. And that's a problem. So um, you can call her. A, it doesn't matter. It's it, it, you're not the, not the ask not for for saying what you said. Mom, I, I mean, clearly sister is she's uh, the addiction is overriding all logic. It is in control. Obviously, she's an ask on one territory right now. I want to talk about mom, though, because the denial, the the denial that is allowing all this crap to happen is the main thing where where there needs to be a pivot and there can actually be a path to a solution. The quickest path to a solution would come from a behavior change with mom, in my opinion. Krista, welcome to the Thunder Crew. <sighs> Andy says addiction is super hard on parents of addicts. Mom isn't correct to side with the addict, though. I uh, agreed. Agreed. I mean, I'm looking at what are the what are the possible routes out of here? It is unlikely that sister is going to of her own volition be like, you know what? Yes, I'm an addict. Let's let's address this. I want to start a path to healing. It's highly unlikely because the addiction has the steering wheel. It is highly unlikely that sister is going to to have any weight to to create some change here because she just said what she said and mom just let denial kick in and be like, ah, you're out of line. Really? That's the part of all this scenario that's out of line, mom. Um, she's not. I don't think mom is evil for the denial that's happening here, but I think it is a you definitely shouldn't be doing this. You definitely shouldn't have the denial right here because that is not going to fix the issue. It's not. And it's just going to get worse. Mom probably is going to be in in denial until the older sister with the powder problem does something to mom that puts the whole family in danger, like uses the rent money or something, steals the car. It's going to have to be a a huge amount of direct pain for mom. We know that now indirect pain isn't going to work. The indirect pain that happened to her other daughter wasn't enough for her to create change. So it's got to be greater pain than that. It is going to take this thing escalating to the point where it causes her direct pain and then it will change. It is definitely a should not have done it. Definitely shouldn't have done it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yes, definitely. No frigid bitch. Welcome to the thunder crew. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Glad to have everybody here. Thanks for hanging out with us. It is amazing to see everybody here. And we're starting this crazy journey. 46 minutes into a 24 hour stream. We're almost there. (laughs) We are almost there, but she should try to address it before it gets to that point. Jamira agreed. She should. I don't think she's going to because of the, the denial that she has, uh, that she has expressed at this point. I think that that indicates that she's not going to until there's direct pain. All right, let's go ahead and bounce over to the next one here. <clears throat> Here we go. 982 at 35 hundo on the high bears right now. And that is to unlock a what? Best of Redditor update story. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh. Uh, Nico, yeah, I, I plan on it. As we pivot between content chunks, I'm going to be going sitting mode and my desk lowers, so we'll do that kind of thing. All right, our next story here comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askinoff for telling my daughter she has to understand that choosing this wedding date would result in my family not going? Telling my daughter, wowza. Two-ish years ago, my brother, my nephew, and my mother were in a car accident. My mother died instantly, and my brother and nephew passed away the next day. Holy crap, that's a heavy way to start. My family was small. Me, my husband, daughter, parents, brother, wife, and two nephews. Their loss was devastating for my life and everyone, and it was even worse for my father and my sister-in-law. One year ago, my daughter, Betty, 25, was proposed to by her fiancé and preparations began. During this process, they chose the date based on the day they met seven years ago, and that day is exactly two years since the death of my brother and nephew. Stephanie, thanks so much for the super. Greatly appreciate that. Heck yeah. Thank you. I tried to talk to her about moving the date because it's still a very difficult date for our family and even for myself, but she insisted, saying that the venue had that date available and it would be perfect because all the other available dates don't work and they wouldn't be as important. I respected her decision. Recently, she sent the invitations to everyone and, as I predicted, my sister-in-law, my nephew, 24 male, and my father responded that they would not attend. Although they did not tell her, my father and sister-in-law told me that the date choice was taken as an offense to them. I decided to remain neutral, and I confirmed that my husband and I would attend. Today, my daughter called me unhappy that no one but us confirmed my husband doesn't have family on his side, and her family side would be empty, and she expected everyone to go on that date, even more so after she explained the reason to them about the date, but they still refused. I tried to be supportive, but I said, Love, this date is difficult even for me, but I will go to your wedding, but you have to understand that this choice of date had this consequence, and you would have to deal with the consequences of your choices. She exploded at me, saying that everyone was against her. It's not her fault that the dates coincided and everyone could make an effort to go a few hours for her, but they decided to just not go, and I was basically saying, I told you so. She hung up without me answering, and we still haven't spoken. My husband said he understood me, but I should have stayed away from it. Am I the astronaut? How are you going to stay away from it? How, how the hell are you going to avoid this problem? There's no there's no staying away from it, hubby. There is no there's no avoiding this beating around the bush. You are the direct link between the family and the daughter here. And you did warn her. It's another NTA. You warned her what would happen. And she did it anyway. Come what may. If you know what the consequences are going to be, I think she she well obviously expected everybody to just to just change their mind and be like, oh, well, yeah, it's a wedding. I mean, that yeah, that would trump it. But it was disrespectful. It was disrespectful <clears throat> in a perfect world. The anniversaries of tra- tragic events would not. Wouldn't cloud people's minds and, and over or override that day override everything else on that day right um uh, i it was two ish years ago though i mean you've got to you got to be respectful of giving people some time that's it's not okay and and what she basically said by choosing this knowing the consequences because mom warned her ahead of time was my wedding is more important than their deaths eek that's not cool and people took offense to it but she was warned. I think the fact that she still went through with it, and I get it. Like they they had limited choices for dates. I get it, but but that date wasn't a choice, and this is why. Change the date, girly. Change it. That's it. That's the solution here. Find a different date, daughter. It's it. And mom, op, in your position here, I think it would be. It would be in your best interest to to try to present a solution to this problem, to be like, look, if you chose a different date, the whole family would be there. You've got some apologies to make now for trying to choose this date and trying to cram it down everyone's throat and essentially saying that your wedding is more important than the anniversary of their deaths. Not cool. Apologize. Pick a different date and everyone can be happy. That's it, right? That's the only solution here. Thoughts, chat? First, I love you's was still an option. Ella Martinez. It is too soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Kozdravi. 
uh, choose another date or respect that your family doesn't want to come on that date. Yeah, uh, Charlock says there are they are days of mourning and will never be anything but that. Probably for a long, 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 long time. Long time. Kirsty says, why not make it the day they first got together, not the date they met? Yeah, you know, uh, Zaraleria. Uh, yes, and you can go to Linktree, link to my bio to get over to the YouTube site as well, but you can just search at Dusty Thunder and it'll come up. Um, Danny says, I would be upset too if someone chose something like that on the day my mom died. I wouldn't go either. It, uh, I, I, I mean, I understand why she chose what she chose because when you're trying to plan a wedding and you're dealing with venues, there's limited dates available, which is another reason that I think Candy Thunder and I went the right, the right route and, uh, you know, threw it together ourselves and used, used a clear tent on her parents' property and we just did the grassroots approach and freaking loved every second of it. It was amazing. Um, dealing with vendors and that kind of crap, that stuff just gets complicated and dates become complicated. I understand that they saw this date and they were like, oh, we could choose that and it would be an anniversary of when we first met or whatever. But it's another anniversary too. And that while that date might be important to her, there's a more important event for that date that happened to other people. The family that she's expecting to fill in her side. She's being unreasonable. Where would you put daughter on the scale here? I mean, it's at least a two. Did she get into one? Does she get into ask on one evil territory? Is this evil? Is it truly just vile? We got some twos and ones, twos and ones. Uh, Samantha says, ask on one for insisting that she's right. You might be right there. You might be. Jeannie says, uh, put daughter on one simply because of the lack of empathy. Ah, man, it's I, I, I don't know if it's evil. It's selfish. That's for damn sure. And selfish to the detriment of other people and then relying on those other people. There's a, there's definitely a, a huge dose of entitlement here. Um, how old is she? She's 25. And I think we have to do we do have to consider that a little bit here. She's 25. Uh, I think there are some things that you gain with wisdom as you go. And I don't think it was evil. I think it was selfish. Um, it was entitled. Those are a lot of a lot of a lot of bad things. But but I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt that she's going to choose a solution path here and that she that she isn't an evil person. She was just too clouded by by her own wedding. And if anything can can unveil the selfishness of someone, it's a freaking wedding. And having kids. And I mean, there, there are a lot of things that can reveal to yourself how selfish you are. A wedding is the thing that can reveal to everyone else how selfish you are. She should know better. I agree. She may be in between a two and a one here. I'm giving her a two because I don't think she's evil. Uh, and I think there can be some redemption here. I hope it is. I hope it is. You know, well... Keep this in mind, too. I think kids, even 25 year old kids, are going to be the most unfiltered when they're talking to their parents because they feel safest talking to them. Right. So she the way that she talked to her mom about not being understanding of that date, I don't think she would talk that way to anybody else. I hope not. And hopefully she has some time to let this ferment and to be and to and to understand. Hopefully. Yeah, Kelsey, it's like a one point five. We're going to lean to a two here. Weddings and funerals bring out the bring out the worst in people that you didn't see before. You know, um, I could definitely see that happening. You know, fortunately, I haven't seen that happen myself with a funeral, and that would be terrible. Uh, Fane is blackout. We're doing the whole card. Whole card. Yeah, this is one of those areas where 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 we're all going to have some different opinions here. Uh, to me, I'm giving her a two because I'm trying to give her a little bit of redemption, a little bit of window of light to open up and to walk through there and hoping that she chooses correctly. And I think it is much easier to come back from a two than it is a one. Danny, you've seen it with a funeral. It's the absolute worst. Ooh. Ugh. Panic moonwalk. Panic 
moonwalk. 1612, a 3500 on the high bears right now. Christopher, Faye, Andromeda, Amber, Little Red Corvette, Fane, the Kitty Cartel. Grace, welcome to the Gosh I Could Fam. Glad to have you there, Dez, Lisey Lex. You guys are awesome. Amber Hill Hickey, see you there as well. Dez with all stars. Greatly appreciate that, Jocelyn, developer girl. You guys are awesome. Greatly appreciate it. Jennifer, good to see you I there. I got to say, you hit panic moonwalking earlier in the day than I thought you were going to hit. Really? I thought that was going to be a harder uh, square. I, I need to look at these bingo sheets and figure out. I already said I'm not going to use the bathroom for 24 hours, so I'm going to keep that space empty. Um yeah, yeah. There's some there's some things on here I can. I need to not look at it. That's that's the trick. I need to not look at it. Brittany, you just had a leap day, baby. Congratulations. That's awesome. Congrats to Brittany over on the YouTube side. Had a freaking uh, had a freaking. I mean, is that a birth during the live stream? Is that that should have been a bingo I, item? Uh, I mean, I'm just saying the name Dusty is available. It works for a girl or a boy. Candy, candy is available there too. Dusty and candy. Just saying, just saying. Congrats. That's awesome. That's awesome. Also, what are you doing here? Are you, is this one of the times when like, uh, you're, you, you've got some alone time in the room to try to, to try to come back to reality and nurses are caring for her and you, and you get to, to give us an update there. That's awesome. I hope you get some respite time. I hope you do. And, and hopefully, uh, yeah, we've got some time to try to entertain you today, so that'll be awesome. Do we know what the actual number is we're trying to get to, the total number? It's, I believe it's 40? 30. 30, okay. Uh, so so one of the big reasons that we're doing this 24-hour stream is to try to grow, uh, grow the followers slash subscribers on our YouTube side. Uh, we are trying to gain 10K which is a lofty goal, but that's why we're doing this 24 hour stream. So we're the number that we're trying to get to is around 38,000 or around 28 something right now. So we want to get to 38,000. If you are not subbed on the YouTube side, please do that. It costs nothing to subscribe over there. So go subscribe. They call it subscribe. You uh, TikTok calls it follow. If you aren't subbed yet, please go do that. Greatly appreciate it. Faye with a galaxy. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Also Ellen Southern country, Carrie Lee, Jerry Lee go forth, Christopher Moore, uh, Faye with 133 high bears coming through there. We're getting closer. 1681 to 35 hundo, 35 hundo. Heck yeah. Um, Nicole, it's your first live. Just joined the YouTube membership last week. Long time viewer. Happy to be here. Uh, we'll be jumping in and out of this all day long. Thanks for being with us. Greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Does it count if we start making more accounts to sub with? Are maniacal? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TikTok is lagging. That's no bueno. It doesn't show me anything on my end. If you're having trouble, you might... Uh, Pop out and pop back in. Candy Thunder, Tanya K's, Vagina, heck yeah. Uh, we get to see Candy Thunder and Navy Thunder here in just a little bit. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I am excited. Very, 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 very. Sean, hey, welcome, Amber. We are welcome. ranked in our um, whatever the new TikTok league that we're in. We're, we're up to number 17 on TikTok. Heck yeah, let's go. Caden says his says 12. Mine says 17. Let's so. go. But yeah. <laughs> Larissa, welcome to the Goshek and Thunder Crew. Welcome to the fam over on the YouTube side. Melissa, uh, welcome to the Thunder Crew as well to you. We've got Larissa and Melissa. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, yes. Oreo announced dirt cake flavored Oreos coming soon. I saw that. Very pumped. Wish they had come out with them for the 24 hour stream because we would have a stack of them over here. It would be a terrible idea. I mean, we would just we would just crash. But uh, but yeah, I'm down. Uh, no, we're not doing a likes goal for for this because we're jumping in on multiple times. And also the, because this is a 24 hour stream, um, I'm trying to run as few programs as possible. And the likes bar runs off of a different program. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kim just resubscribed on TikTok and subscribed on YouTube. Heck yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're ranked. We're ranked. We're pushing up. We're pushing up. No, Tim, Tam Joko. Uh, yeah, I think we've run out. We've eaten them all. That's the problem. We've eaten all of them. Dr. Sweets, you know you stated that you were going to use the restroom, but if someone who is covering for you while you rest decides to take a bathroom break, we can still count it. Is it my bathroom break or is it any bathroom break? My bathroom break. That's not what it says on the bingo card. It just says bathroom break. Just saying. <laughs> Technicalities. Technicalities. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dive over to our next story. No, we're not. We're going to get Caden Thunder up here. 
That's right, we unlock Cade and Thunder. We're an hour in. One hour of 24. We're an hour in. Sergeant Mack, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Heck yes. Let's go. Yeah, let's go back in time and see what Dusty would have looked like. Younger, cooler, a little bit shorter. And uh, and the frame's going to freeze up there. And thunder! Yeah, awesome. It's me. It's Caden Thunder. Hi. We're uh, 61 minutes in and I am already tired. 61 minutes in, one hour, home stretch. <laughs> home stretch. Uh. For those of you who do not know, if you're new here, I'm Caden Thunder. I'm Dusty Thunder's oldest son. I'm 21 years old. I edit the, uh, I, I work with uh, Miles and I edit the uh, Dusty Thunder videos that all of you guys watch. So, hope you guys have a good time watching those. Too young to be tired. I'm always tired. I have an issue. If I'm tired now, I'm probably going to be really tired later on. So, how are you guys feeling? You guys amped? You guys... Question, because I remember from yesterday. Oh. You said people were going to have to wait till today to get your... Tonight. Oh, is it tonight? You're doing You're doing your feedback on, uh, on The Bachelor tonight? That's you guys are hyping this up too much. So I'm sorry. I'm 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 excited. I don't watch the show, so the only the only way I know what's going on is is by you telling people. Just saying. How's everybody doing? Are y'all doing great? I'm doing great. I'm just reading. There's a lot of words everywhere, so. Well, the two I, chat thing is. I it is. It is a lot of words. Yeah. Hey, uh, question. Yes. How has prepping for this live been for you? Because you've been working a lot with Tony on, on farming stories and getting the, mm -hmm. the document ready. And mm -hmm. uh, how, how has that been for you? Oh, it's been great. I've been reading a lot of stories. I've been reading a lot of words. I could, I could really win a game of Scrabble right now, probably. Uh, or words with friends. Or uh, like the... Uh, Apple, the iPhone word games or uh, another word game that I'm not thinking of. I could win a word game. I'm really stuck on this word game thing. Uh, words. Yeah, I could do words. Maybe I can't do words. Wordle. Wordle. Is that a thing? Yeah, Wordle. Wordle. Is Scrabble something different? I don't know word games. Yeah, Wordle, Wordle is a Scrabble-like game, but it's an app, right? I don't know. You guys, you guys are going to stick with us the whole time. I know it. I can, I can smell it. You guys are going to be here watching 24 smell hours. It? Yep. And you guys are going to rock it, rock it out, rock it out the park. Yep. That's what they say. Rock it out the park. You're going to rock it out the park. Right yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, it's gonna awesome. stick around for more words that don't make sense from Caden Thunder. I'm gonna go drink some Diet Coke now. Hey, uh, I this is me excited. Yep, yeah, I'm I'm thrilled. Very excited. I am excited. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. You guys are gonna have a blast. Um, I'm gonna panic moon walk out. I can't. Look at that. <laughs> you just walk backwards. <laughs> You gotta you gotta do the hand thing and you gotta you gotta slide. He just kinda like stepped backwards. We'll work on it. Hey, we got a special shout out real quick to Elise Newman who just sent uh she just sent me a link on Facebook for a Starbucks gift card for us. So Elise! she's gonna she's gonna keep us You're going. Awesome. So thank you very much, Elise. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Uh Danny says he's your kid. That should count on bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Elise, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Lisa, yes, 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 yes. The, the one weird voice that I do where my face has to contort and it sounds like a, like a hoity toity, uh, older lady with an unidentifiable accent. That's Moira. 
That's Moira. Okay, we're going to dive in on our next story here. I am on four, right? Sure. <laughs> Tony Sparks is going to be very helpful today. Uh, okay, and the next story comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Leaving My Own Birthday Party? Oh, my 23 female boyfriend, Dan, 26 male, invites his friends everywhere. Unless I explicitly tell him what I want to do or that I want to do something with just him, his friends are always invited and it's starting to get to me. Mad Hatter, thank you for the super over there. And you're making some space stickers right now. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for the love. Dan texted me last week saying, I finally have a plan for your birthday. I was thinking we'd go out on a dinner date with some friends. And genuinely, when I got this message, I felt like breaking down in tears. I don't want to make it seem like I don't like his friends. They are lovely, but I'm not dating them and would prefer that they're not at every outing, especially one that's supposed to be about me. Because I was very emotional, it took me a while to communicate. But the next day, I explained that I wasn't interested in going out to dinner with his friends. I told him that it's nice to see them once in a while, but they're his friends, not mine. And when they're always invited, it makes me feel like I'm not good enough and that he's not particularly interested in spending alone time with me. (laughs) Dana, thanks for the super over on the uh, YouTube side. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. He apologized and to his credit did take the evening off from work to spend with just me. But then today the birthday rolled around. We pulled up to the restaurant and I saw his friend's car in the parking lot. Dude. Dude. Immediately I got upset. I told Dan that he completely disrespected me and hurt my feelings by not respecting my wishes for my birthday. He told me that I was being dramatic, that it was just dinner, and that his friends were only there because he felt uncomfortable uninviting them but would make an effort to make more plans with just me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this. We're doing another red flag. We're also going to do this. He gets the Brozo Award right off the rip. He chose who to make uncomfortable, and it was his girlfriend. I was on the verge of tears, so I told Dan to just go inside without me. Then I called an Uber and went home. Good for you. My phone was flooded with messages. Dan's friends were asking if I was okay. He was texting me saying I was immature and the asshole for leaving him there. In his mind, I should have stayed and put on a show for his friends and we could have talked about it later. We haven't spoken since and I really don't know how to proceed from here. Am I the ass cannot? No, you're not. Also, Krista, thanks so much for the love on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate that. You are not the ass cannot here as well. You've got a brozo child for a boyfriend. How old is he? He's 26. He's 26. He needs to be able to function in public without his boys. You know what I mean? I understand he loves his bros and they like to hang out. But dude, if you can't, if you can't tell, explain to your friends that this is your girlfriend's birthday dinner and she wants to do it with just the two of you and do that and them not be understanding. You got some growing up to do. You got a lot of growing up to do. Also, you kept it a secret. From your fiance. What just happened? I got a ding a ding. I'll ring a ding a ding. Uh, I... You kept this secret from your fiance. You intentionally withheld this information from her until you got to the restaurant. So on her birthday, I'm talking to boyfriend right now, not OP. On her birthday, your girlfriend's birthday, this girl you supposedly, I'm assuming, love or say that you do on her birthday, drove her to a restaurant and surprised her by doing the opposite of what she asked you to do. And then called you immature so that your feelings weren't valid. Uh, This, this guy gets the Ascon one brozo dumbass dipshit award. Man child. I'm assuming if he can't do anything without his bros, he chose to make you uncomfortable rather than his boys. It shouldn't be like that. If they're really your boys, they'll understand, right? They'll understand. You chose to make your girlfriend uncomfortable on her birthday rather than making your boys uncomfortable on any other freaking day in the on in the year. It's just another day to them. Like you said, it's just dinner. It is to them. It wasn't to her. He made his choice. OP, he made his choice. 
He's probably too big of a coward now to be like, yeah, I made my choice. I guess that means that we shouldn't be together. So he's leaving that action to you. Whatever. Get the hell out of there. Run. Run. Zero is greater than negative one. This guy's a negative one in your life. You'd be better off alone. Jessica, thanks for the love and the super over on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate it. Ah. Ooh. Yeah. He gets a DFHB rejection. Terrible. This is not okay. Like I, how how someone could do this to another human being and expect them to still want to be in a relationship with them is beyond me. This is beyond me. I do not understand what is going on in Brozo's head. Unless he thinks he's God God's gift to women or like he's much cooler than he actually is. I don't know. There there's there's this sense of narcissism really that would go into saying, oh, "I'm just going to withhold all this and uh I'm just going to play stupid and she'll be okay. She'll make it. She'll, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Shells. Thanks so much for the love on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate that. Rejected. Genie. Heck yes. It's giving narcissistic behavior. Yeah. Disrespecting your boundaries, devaluing your feelings. Absolutely not. It's not okay. He knows it's not okay. That's why he was a coward and chose to keep it a secret until they got there. Yeah, rather than forcing the pain of telling you that I didn't do exactly what you asked me to do for your birthday dinner, I chose the pain of surprising you when uh, when we get to the restaurant where you can't run away. Well, guess what? She can. She did. She ran. Keep running, OP. Keep running. Erica, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Heck yes. Uh, Sergeant Mack, you may have a point there. He places all of his decisions in the hands of his boys. You can't be with someone like that. You can't. In order to have a functioning relationship, you have to have a relationship that exists sans friend group. Maybe he's just maybe he's got some some uh, insecurities where he, being with them makes him less uncomfortable, but it, it doesn't matter. You work through those or you don't be in a relationship. That's it. That's it. We are 1960, a 35 hundo on the high bear, still pushing, but this is going to unlock a best of Reddit or update story, which is the longer, juicier, twisty, turny story. Group presents, too. Yeah. Did, did all the friends bring presents? Little Fox says, but no, that friends checked on checked on her, not him. You know why? Because he showed his cowardly ass again and wouldn't tell them what happened. They were asking if she was okay because he went inside and he's like, I don't know where she went. Oh, nothing happened. Nothing was wrong. I didn't do anything. There's no reason for her to be mad. Jackass. <laughs> Sergeant Mac. I'm going to try to play it safe today. Playing it safe. It is garbage behavior, radiant decay. Yep. Ben, it's been good, man. We're an hour and 15 minutes in. We've survived so far. And as Caden Thunder said a few minutes ago, home stretch. Home, home stretch. Anna, thanks for the love. Greatly appreciate it. Minions Den, Diana, thanks for the shares there. Greatly appreciate it. April, welcome to the Gosh Heckin' fam. Glad to have you. Probably told him she wasn't feeling well, Courtney. Probably something like that. Because he's just like, well, I don't I don't know where that level, level of cowardice comes from or stops or changes. There's got to be some pain. And maybe this is the pain that, that changes things for him. Something's got to give. Something has to change that behavior or he's never going to have a successful relationship. You can't. Even if even if the whole friend group has girlfriends and those girlfriends all hang out and everybody hangs out together. What happens when you go home? You guys sleep in barracks? No, you have to have the ability to have a functional relationship with just you and your partner. Jamal, uh, did, you, did I always know I was going to blow up? You mean like on the social channels? Oh, hell no. This started as an experiment. Um, we run a marketing company, so we started an experiment to try to understand algorithms better and figure out how we could uh, better use this for, for clients. And no, uh, the experiment took on a life of its own. And here we are today, a year and a few months later. Hey, Gabby, heck yeah. Welcome to the welcome to the YouTube side. The dark side. It's not really the dark side. Yeah. Nine boxes. We're already at nine boxes on the on the on bingo. Holy cow. Holy cow. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and dive over to the next story here. Reminder, we're almost at 2K of 35 hundo to unlock that best of Redditor update story. Uh, we good to move forward? Awesome. Got to keep myself hydrated today. As a reminder, <laughs> today's 24-hour live stream is brought to you largely by Jot Coffee, which you can save 20% on at Jot.co by using the code DUSTY20. They're, they're not paying me to say that. I'm just saying. I'm drinking a lot of chalk coffee today. A whole lot. Hori sheet. Oh, man. Uh, Danny or Mirjam. Dusty Thunder is a cool name. Just to be born with that name is a sign to be successful. Uh, so my muggle name is Dustin Storm. Which is equally as cool, but we chose something different for the social channels uh, because Dusty Thunder is just a little more fun. But yeah, Storm is actually our, our our last name. Did Navy let me sleep before the live? Navy did. Luna, our big golden doodle dog, did not. Decided to, to snore all night. But yeah, uh, our, our actual last name is Storm. That's why we have Storm Cloud Marketing. Um, yeah, and we have the Storm as our, as our family over on the, the TikTok side and Thunder Crew and all that kind of stuff. Why would you think your friends should be at your girlfriend's birthday, though, Kiersey? I think it's I think it's cowardice. I think that's it. I think he I don't know. He can't survive as an independent. And that's that's troubling. All right, let's dive into the next story here. This one is from the AITA subreddit as well and is called or titled. Am I the astronaut for yelling at my roommate over dishes? So I, 29 male, live with two roommates, Olive, 28 female, and Sam, 30 male. We're in college, met in college, and decided to rent a house together because we got along. It's a two-floor, has two living rooms and two kitchens, and has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Sam and I share the upstairs bathroom since Olive is a neat freak and cleans a couple of times a week, and we only clean once a week. She's in the basement by choice as she prefers having her own area. Me and Sam split up the chores. I tidy up and he takes care of the cats. We each have one, which is also why Olive is in the basement. She loves cats, but is too allergic to be near them. And she knew about the cats before agreeing to rent. We split dishes and cooking. I cooked last week, which meant he was on dishes. And since I cooked lasagna, which he and Olive both wanted, if it's a lot of food and is safe for her, we invite her to come up to eat too. But she has a gluten allergy, so cooks in her kitchen. If Olive really wants a certain food, she'll ask us to make it if she doesn't have the energy and vice versa. Sam is usually good about doing dishes and is a good roommate for the most part, but his room can get gross and he tends to dirty the whole house if he's tired. I went to go tidy up after we ate and he asked if I could do the dishes tomorrow. He asked if he could do the dishes tomorrow and I said yes. The next day we ordered out, but he still didn't do the dishes. I offered just to do them, but he refused saying he'd get to it. He was raised not doing chores. Oof. So he does this sometimes, and he didn't do them. He didn't do it the next day either, despite constant reminders. He also neglected the cats, so I did their boxes and fed them. Olive came home today, saw mold in the dish, and promptly vomited. I walked out of my room, looked in the dish, and gagged. Sam came out, saw it, and said we were overreacting, and then he'd do the dishes after I cooked dinner, as I have for the past few days. I yelled at him for being a pig, being lazy, causing mold in the house and neglecting the poor cats, causing me to do most of the chores. Olive said she's going to call our landlord to get Sam out of the house if he doesn't start cleaning regularly, as this is nasty. Sam flipped us off and locked himself in his room. Me and Olive split the dishes on the condition that I make her dinner for three days, not counting today. I made all of us salads, per Olive's request, and some gluten-free pasta. Sam told me to F off when I offered him some. It's now 10 p.m. and I worry that we were too hard, so Reddit, am I the astronaut? Hmm. Thoughts here? Thoughts. Did this just cause immediate involuntary vomiting? It's pretty bad. Yeah. Sam is a baby. Sam was raised as an entitled little shit uh, who never had to do any kind of work for anything. So this is, you know, this was likely to happen. Um, and, 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 you know, it didn't start like that. It's once he... Once he got comfortable enough to show his true self, that's whenever this started coming out. But no one is going to be okay with this. No one. It doesn't matter what roommates he gets or if he lives alone. If he lives alone, what's going to happen? It's just going to become just a a dump. It's going to become an actual dump with like trash juice on the ground and stuff. It's not it's nobody's going to be okay with this. The question is. Is am I the astronaut for yelling at my roommate over dishes? No, hell no. 
Hell no. You know what I would do, actually? I'd call I'd call Sam's mom or message Sam's mom and be like, look, uh, <laughs> here's what your boy's doing. Uh, either tell him to get his ass in gear or he's getting kicked out and he's going to have to find his own place. Because telling him he did what, you know, what a teenager would do when they get in trouble and marched to his room and slammed the door and locked himself in. And now he's just being shitty to everyone because of his choices. You're not, you guys, no. OP, you and Olive are not the Askonauts here. You have a shitty roommate. It happens. Either offer to train him on how to do these things, or if he knows how to do it already and he's just choosing to be lazy, you guys, it looks like you created the boundary here. Set an, set an amount of time on it, right? Give him a chance to turn this around because pain creates change. But say over the next 30 days, you're on probation, bro. And if over the next 30 days you don't stay on top of your shit, we are going to ask to have you removed from the lease because we will not live like this. Right now, he, he doesn't think there's going to be any kind of consequence, right? And now he's just mad at you guys because you guys got mad at him for, for being lazy. So give him an, an amount of time to change the behavior. It has to stay that way or you enter this cycle again. Give him a chance to change it, I would say. Um, and then uh, because you guys like each other, it's just if he starts cleaning, everything would be fine, right? If he did his job, if he stayed on top of his shit, it would be fine. So give him the chance to turn that around, understand that he was brought up not having to do any chores. So this is the first time that he's learning this and imagine or remember what it was like whenever you started doing chores, you buck against it too. It just, it happens. He's going through that teenage phase of learning how to do chores right now. So give him some time, give him the chance to turn it around, but zero tolerance if knowing he's on probation and if he does it again he's getting kicked out he does it again kick his ass out that's it it's not that hard it's not hard it's not hard to do but for somebody but for somebody who's never had to do that before or stay on top of chore kind of things it's learning a new system right it's learning a new behavior and they have to be consistent with it because his default which he backslid to is to just let shit pile up. And I'm sure his mommy would do everything. There was a good, a good thought here um, ba -ba -ba -ba, about charging a house housekeeping fee. Peppermint, which yeah, charge a housekeeping fee for picking up the slack. There you go. I mean, you could say that you could say, look, if you don't, if you don't stay on top of your shit and put it in writing, have everybody sign it. If you don't stay on top of your shit, you will incur this fee because then we have to hire somebody to come in and do this. So it's got to create pain either way. Right now, his laziness just creates pain for you, OP, and for Olive, not for him. Because what happened? You guys did the damn dishes. He still didn't have to do it. That's enabling. Understand what's happening right here. You guys let him get away with this, so he thinks he can do it again sometime. Yeah, there was a little, there was a little tussle, but that was it for him. He didn't have any pain, didn't even end up having to do his dishes. And now he knows if he waits long enough, you guys will do them. You got to create some kind of system. You got to put it in writing and got to stick to it. Stick to it. Steady says a uh, hubby was doing this with suit jackets in the living room. So I hung them up in a tree. Pain creates change, right? Pain creates change. Tony Sparks sending through a super on the YouTube side says, don't forget, everyone. We have a subscriber goal of 10K new subs. So please have to hit that subscriber button on the YouTube side. It is free to subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe is the same thing as follow on TikTok. So probation period. I'm saying I didn't put it in writing. I think this is the kind of thing you have to put in writing. And I would if if you have had any kind of communication with his mother to this point at all, I would reach out and let her know what's going on because she, if anybody or parents might be able to crack the whip and at least say uh, this, get your shit together. And, and part of it is on on them for not not training him how to do this. So, Oy. but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys, uh, OP and all of you can, you can get creative, you know, to make sure he stays on top of his shit. Somebody said, uh, you know, like throw the, the dirty dishes in his room or on his bed or something. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, welcome. Uh, 2310 to 3500 on the high bears. We're getting there. We are getting there. Uh, is this an ESH or was a roommate in the ASCON scale? Roommate definitely is. It's an NTA for OP. Roommates. Uh, oh. 
I don't think the roommate's evil. He was raised to be a brat, a spoiled little shit, right? And they have to train him out of this. I think what he did was it definitely shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to put him on ask on too. I think you can train him out of this though. It's just everybody has to be trained into this at some point in life. It's happening much later for him, right? It's a two for me. I, I mean, it's going to be different for for other people, but it's a two. Is a two for me. Uh, Meg, uh, we don't know exactly where, what we're going to be doing with the the twenty four hour recording. I can tell you for sure it will at least stay up for YouTube members to access. I don't know anything beyond that right now. <laughs> Tony Spark says we we'll, we never want to see it again. Ah, ah, catch it up. All right. Summer place. Kim, Amarillo, Hickey, Roberta, York's Puddin, Candace with an I, a Jocelyn, some Tom, Tom, Candace with an I again there. Elsie, Priya. Thank you guys so much for the love on the TikToks. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Nikki Hale says, by this time he knows what he's doing and he's manipulating the situation. Sure, just as he did as a, as a teenager. And, you know, when when we were all... When we were all... Uh, kids, and, and when you first get into chores, you know, it happened much, much earlier. I saw the alfalfa comment. I'm trying to change my... Trying, trying to get my, my hair flip up. You know what? I don't care. Whatever. Um, you think about how you as a kid reacted whenever you first started learning to do chores. It's the same reaction he's having now, but as an adult. So it's the adult form of it. The The roommate is a two for me. Ask on two. Ask on two. Just ignore it. They'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, Sergeant Mac. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to dive to the next story here. We have a limited amount of time to unlock this best of Redditor update story. I'm hoping we get there. It's a juicy one, I think. It's the best Redditor update story. They're all juicy ones. So, I'm going to look like Bart Simpson by the end of the 24 hours. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> Carly, you got to change your name on here? Hey, hey. Oh, the bloopers from the live and make a video. Oh, live bloopers would be a good idea. I don't know what you're talking about, though. Um, we're not going to screw up at all. There will be no bloopers. But yes, my beard will be white by tomorrow morning. Full white. Full white. No bloopers today. We're not going to screw up at all. Hey, fairy flights. Thanks for jumping over to this side. Very, very cool. Callie says, my daughter is seven. And it's helped with chores since she was a toss. And that's the right way to do it. That is definitely the right way to do it. Okay, next story here. And again, we're at 2453 or 3500 on the high bear goal. If we hit that goal, we'll be able to read a best of Redditor update story before this chunk ends. We are on TikTok until noon. So we got 30 more minutes. Um, and then we'll be just on the YouTube side for a while. And then we'll jump back over to the TikTok side at, at 4, 4 p.m. So, yeah, yeah. But you can just come over to the YouTube side. Words are miraculously easy now. Totally. To totally. All right. This story is from the AITA subreddit as well and is called Am I the Askonaut for rejecting a baby name suggestion from my mother-in-law after she claimed it would serve my daughter better in the future? <laughs> Not a mother-in-law story. Not an unreasonable request from a mother-in-law. Also, irksome. Irritating, annoying. Why must you be so constantly irksome? We're going to go through a few of those today, too. My husband and I chose the name Kala for our daughter who is due soon. Her middle name has not been revealed as of yet, but we have chosen one. My mother-in-law asked if we meant we are naming our daughter Callista with the nickname Kala, and my husband said, no, just Kala. She asked who came up with the idea, and my husband told her we decided the name together, and we weren't changing our minds either. He said this because she made the face like she was in pain. Is that the name you chose, or is that just short for something? A few days later, mother-in-law suggested to me that I should seriously consider doing Callista 
with the nickname Kala instead of just Kala. She said Callista would serve my daughter better as a grown woman. She told me my family might like unusual names. I'm Lyric, for example, but many people struggle because of them. And while Kala isn't that unusual, it's not as known as Callie and doesn't have any real nickname, nickname options other than Cal, which sounds more masculine. She told me I never had a nickname to fall back on, and Lyric is such a specific name, and Kala is as well. She told me to take what we like out of it and think about our daughter's future. I told her we did think of our daughter's future. It's why we gave her a name that was not difficult to say or spell, but was still uncommon enough to not meet others or many others with the same name. I told her the name sounded good to our ears on a woman or a little girl. And for that reason, we would not be using Callista instead. My mother-in-law told me I wasn't really listening to her and she had just given us a way to still use the name we wanted, but just to do better for our daughter. She accused me of not caring about the impact the name Kala could have on our daughter. She told me she wouldn't even bother with my husband since she, since he has always refused to go by his full first name. But she had thought as a mom and as someone with an odd name, I would care more for my daughter's happiness. Am I the astronaut? The question is, am I the astronaut for rejecting the baby name from my mother-in-law after she claimed it would serve my daughter better in the future? No. No, you're not an ask. You're not an astronaut for not using the, the name that your mother-in-law strongly suggested. And it was strong. It was strongly suggested and call it a c-a-l-l-a uh callista was c-a-l-i-s-t-a uh yeah yeah uh no uh, let's talk about mother-in-law for a second though mother-in-law the way that she approached this um <laughs> i love the if someone doesn't accept your suggestion saying oh no you're not listening to me that's her that's her reaction if if she doesn't get her way. Oh, you must not be understanding me clearly. Please try to listen closer. No, mother in law, I'm pretty sure that we heard you perfectly. We understand what you're saying. We're just not accepting that suggestion. Sorry. The suggestion box is closed. And thus begins the lifelong battle of mother-in-law trying to control everything. I would like to know. I wish this was a follower submission. I'm curious how controlling mother-in-law was during the wedding, which is, you know, usually the first indicator of how controlling they're going to try to be for the rest of your lives. I imagine she tried to exert some control and Opie and hubby drew a line and said, hell no. And this is attempt number two. She's not doing anything crazy. She's just doing the, no, you must not have heard me. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's their choice. It's their choice what to name their kid. Just a grandparent, don't get a boat. Sucks, right? But that's the way it is. You don't get a boat. For for me, it's the mother-in-law. It's the mother-in-law's reaction to no. No is a complete sentence. Uh, it's the mother-in-law's reaction to that saying, oh, you must not have been listening to me. Oh, yeah, because because, yeah, you have to be right about everything, right? Uh, Marble City Mom Meow says if Kala doesn't like her name when she's older, she can change it. My daughter changed her name. There you go. She can make that decision when she's older. Uh, Meg, not Megan, says I'm just Meg on birth certificate and everything, but people always try to add letters to it. LOL. Ah. The Mad Hatter. Uh, sorry, we can't answer your call right now. <laughs> Our give a flay hoot is completely empty and will not refill until 18 years later. Please call back then. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. Uh, when I was going through this story, Kala, uh, every time I said the name, I was like, <laughs> I was like, Kala, what's your issue? <laughs> hey, uh, when she gets old enough to have a license, it's going to be a caller ID, right? Uh <laughs> I do. I got my light up drumsticks from Sebecca back here. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're going to find a way around it. And maybe maybe that's not even how you pronounce it. But but it's their choice. It's their choice. What to name their kid? You don't get a vote. And, and no is a complete sentence, mom. So when somebody says no, they mean no. This oh is going to be fun once the baby is here, because 
she's not done bitching about it. Guarantee to you that she's not done bitching about it. And also, I think she's probably going to pull shit like this with every decision you make for your child, where they're going to school, breast or bottle feed, what you're feeding them, how you're dressing them, how you fix her hair. It is all going to be a matter of contention for mother-in-law, and that's going to be a hell of a good time. And Pickerel, it's too early to get slap happy, um, for sure. Just imagine where it's going to be, you know, hours 18 plus. It's going to be bonkers. Saying it in Spanish sounds like the word shh. Huh. How's dad joke not on the bingo card? That's a good question. I don't make a ton of them on stream, do I? Eh. Eh. Uh, Tattoo says, Dusty, what were the three names the parents wanted to change? And they said no. The three names they wanted to change. Um... Callista was was the one that she was suggesting. And Opie's name is Lyric, so yeah, Call is a very cool name. River, ocean, and something. Oh, okay, okay. Is that previous story? Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember either. I can't remember. River Cove. Yeah, there you go. I couldn't remember what Justina Hot Beverages, y'all got it. Yep. Cove. That's it. Trevor agreed. Making a suggestion is fine or offering up an idea is fine. Ignoring their no thank you and continuing to push it and assuming that they just didn't weren't listening. That's the shitty part. Oh yeah, I forgot I've been on the scale this whole time too. Um I'm you know what? I'm going to give mom a two right now for this isolated incident. However, I think in the grand scheme of things, this is probably an ask on one mother-in-law. If she did interfere with the wedding and she, and she did what she did here, we know. But if she does interfere with uh, with everything else that you do for your baby, and I think she probably will, she's going to find herself in ask on one territory very quickly. For this specific instance, it wasn't crazy. It was just disrespectful. And she definitely shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Okay. Twenty nine seventy five to thirty five hundo. We have read the stories that we have available, and we got to hit this high bear goal so we can hit it. Oh, we're gonna do a Q&A. Tony Spark is doing a little impromptu Q and A. We're gonna we're vamping. We're vamping. Okay. Okay. Are you, are you gonna dance? No. Yes. Tony Spark, ladies and gentlemen. There will be no dancing. Okay. Yeah. Hey, in the middle of the night, I plan on dancing. I'm just telling you. So. Okay, we've got these little Q&A cards that we're planning on doing with um, our guests throughout the day. Um, and so also chat, you can chime in and be, you know, chime in your answers to what these would be. Okay. Okay. So for Dusty, who, we did talk about this a little bit on the VIP live. Who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? I, so I think, um, personally, I think my choosing someone to play me in a movie about my real life is dangerous because uh, in the VIP, we talked about how uh, Blake Lively would pay, would play candy thunder, mm -hmm. which, which by proxy means that Ryan Reynolds would play me. He's obviously a much better looking guy than I am. Uh, but, but that makes sense to, I would love, I would love for Ryan Reynolds. to play. He's me. funny. He's witty. He's, yeah. you know, you got all that. Man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, that would be awesome. I don't think I'm worthy of that, but uh, but it would be awesome. Now, Blake Lively for Candy Thunder. Yeah, I see that for sure. Faux show. MJ Newcomb, thanks for the love. Robert Downey Jr., Leanne. There you go. Jack Nicholson in his youth. Mel Gibson, Michelle. Oof. Wow. Oof. John Hamm. Ooh, John Hamm. The yeah. bearded John Hamm, yeah. maybe. Hey, I, I am an I ad see guy. That. Jack Black. <laughs> uh, it would definitely not be. Uh oh, what's his name? Give me a, give me a Nick Offerman. It would not be Nick Offerman. I'm not doing that. Okay, but I okay. or or Ricky Gervais. Not gonna. It's not gonna be either one of but those. But Nick guys. Offerman's cool. I like Nick. Offerman. Nick Offerman's cool, but it's the picture. Is when I had longer hair. Mm -hmm. Um. But I get I used to get a lot of Ricky Gervais. Matthew a lot. McConaughey. Jack Black has the beer. Jack Black. All right. Me. All right. All right. Okay. 
What is your favorite binge TV show? I feel like this is tough because I know you've got several. We go through we go through binge spurts. Like right now, we're we're rewatching Stranger Things, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to safety shows. Safety shows. Um, Shit's Creek has got to be number one. Ooh, yeah, it's got to be number one. And then uh, New Girl, right behind that, is number two. Friends is still there, but. But where, whereas that's probably Candy Thunder's number one, it's probably number three for me. Nice. Also, people were saying Jack Black. I picked Burt Kreischer is who I would want to play me in a, in a movie. Because I love Burt, and I feel like Ted and Burt are pretty similar in a lot of aspects, so that was my choice. Does anime count? Heck yeah, anything. Oh, Any, whatever, whatever your show. favorite binge show. Whatever show. It's funny because we talk about the safety shows a lot because you guys, like, I have the same thing. Like, the show, I call them my fall asleep shows, like the ones I just put on when I just need something to put yeah. on. And it's always, the like, Friends, show. Parks and Rec, The Office. Yeah. New Girl. What, uh, wait, go back one. Here. Well, I got to ask you, why are these sticky on the back? Just, don't, we don't want to talk about it. They're not, okay, first off, stop. No, they're not sticky. It's it's photo paper. That's, you wrote on photo paper? Listen, there was a supply issue when it came to procuring note cards. So we improvised in the moment, and this is what we have. Okay, let me ask we're you. We're a low budget here. show here. Hey, 3291 to 3500, we're almost there. We're getting there. We're almost there. Uh, let me ask you one here, Tony. Okay. If you could meet any celebrity, dead or alive, who would it be? I know who this is. Okay. Do, okay. I, I know Listen, who this is. I know. I know that the obvious thing. I'm going to. Here's because I think the answer is so obvious. Okay. Would you put the. I, I understand the paper is. Listen. It's so, you know, you don't. You lose your grip on it. Um. Okay. Chat is, well, chat is going with the Taylor Swift. Yes. For sure. But I'm going to give one dead and one alive because I feel like the Taylor Swift one is that because there is somebody else who I would really love okay. to meet who is is Chris Farley. Oh, yeah. I absolutely <laughs> am a huge Chris Farley fan. In a fan. van I, down by the river. I love Chris Farley. I think Chris Farley is pro arguably one of the funniest human beings to have ever lived. And I just think he is awesome. So I would say, obviously, Taylor, we were, Candy and I were having a conversation about Taylor the other day and we were like, what would you even do? And like, would we even be able to speak? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> We'd be talking like Sims characters you would over just, here. You would just faint. Yeah. It'd you just would be just like, faint. Ha. It'd be the <laughs> ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then Chris Farley. What about you? I, I don't know. I don't know that I have an answer to that. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could think of one eventually, but but right now, uh, you know what? Oh, there you go. It's got to be. I but like it, we would have to. Like we'd we, have to have a several hour long conversation because yeah. I I I need I need I need like details about about like <laughs> where she pulled inspiration from and and also uh, Catherine O'Hara is just brilliant. All the acting brilliant. that she does, she's been so many characters and so many different things, even just voice characters. Uh, and yeah, it, people are saying Dusty Thunder. Hey, that's, that's their there celebrity. You go. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it would be. Ooh, Matthew Perry. That's a good one. Too. It would be amazing to to be able to chat with her for a while. Matthew Perry would be a cool one too. But I got to go with Catherine O'Hare. Yeah. Beetlejuice. Damn Beetlejuice. Lady. They're making a new one. Did you see the picture of the of the house in the? Yeah, it looks cool. With uh, what's her name, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, Jenna Ortega makes makes a whole lot of sense for that, right? I think so. She's Wednesday Adams. And is is Michael Keaton coming back? Is be oh, okay. Yeah, that's gonna be a home run. Is he? Yeah. Oh, hey, that's we hit awesome. the goal. Hey, look at you guys go vamping, vamping for the win. Vamping worked. I hope you have hey, a lot of those sticky no, the, cards the ready the key for today. Is if we need to get a goal, put Tony Spark on screen, and people can't wait to get him off. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you also got to be careful how you say that last I part. Know. Just that. I heard it. I said it. Oh, shites. Oh, my gosh. Okay, here we go. You guys hit the goal. We're going to do it. We're rocking. Good timing here, too. In the number one spot, Kelly Peru. Nice work. And then we got Dr. Sweets. We got Amber Hill Hickey, TLS Journey, Southern Country, Haunted Gal, This Is Fine, 01, Kit Loves Books, Joss VP, Carmel Cat, Adventures with Pam, Pixie Dust, 
Peggy's Bias Jump, Dazzy Bear, Elise Newman, Tony Spark with the save for numbers 15 and beyond here, Developer Girl, Mags Mazing, Fane 13, Chef Tila, Kez Reigns, Emily B, IVF Mama, AK Mary, Miss Helene, Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Baby, Jenny DeBlock, Tanya Kays, Kirsties, Kimberly Clevenger, Berlioz, Akasha, Hostel Cakes, Rakes 2, or Ray X2, Candy Thunder, Vagina, Not That Ellen, Mama Silver, uh, we've got Krista Skillern, Bo Blaze, Roberta Snyder, M. Pickerel, Angie Holding, um, Zantika Mala, Lisey Lex, 1000 Tap Girl, 10,000 Tap Girl, uh, Dylan Sprague, Flower Girl, Aurel Mansell, and Blessed Wonder Woman. You guys are freaking awesome. That's all there is to it. You're just freaking awesome. I'm going to set up a new one for while we're reading this and going through it. This one would open up a cake story. If we hit that, are we just going to extend and go a little bit longer? Okay. I. Okay, this one will unlock a cake story if we hit it. Might be doable. Okay, there we go. We have 650 donuts for the cake story. But now, now, now. We get to read the best of Redditor update story. Let's go. Let's go. Number seven in the current daily rank, Amber. Hell yeah. Look at us. Hell yeah. Becca, you're good. I think most people are going to be jumping in and out today. Most people. Trini, you're in your Moira Rose phase right now. You oscillate between her and David. Oh, for sure. For the gifts that go around between Tony, Candy, and I and our conversation specifically are 90% Shit's Creek. There's a lot of David and a lot of Moira. Yeah, I, I think having a conversation in all gifts only or all gifts only is is great. Is great. Uh, Dreamcraft Angels, I have been on for an hour and 40, 49 minutes right now. I've got check this out. I've got uh, I've got this timer right here so we can pop in and, and check that. Check it as we go here. There we go. There we go. And uh, mods on both sides rock and rolling. <laughs> You're always too late when you do it. You see it on a delay. You see it on a delay. <laughs> Caden thought it was the second time in a row when I go to that camera too. After I go back to to this camera, he starts waving because he sees himself on camera too. But but it's already it's already it's already too late. It's already too late. Okay, here we go. Best of Redditor update story here. This one is titled, Am I the Askinaw for bailing on anniversary plans with my boyfriend last minute for a friend's emergency? Justina, thanks for the love over on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, here we go. My boyfriend, 21 male and I, 20 female, had fancy dinner plans and tickets to the movies to celebrate our one year anniversary. We were both super excited about it and had planned it a while ago. However, an hour before our reservation, I got a message from my close friend. He texted me saying he was having a family emergency and he needed some support or someone to talk to right now and asked me to come over. I've been friends with this person for years and I've always been there to support him and cheer him up as he has some family and home issues. So I called my boyfriend who was driving back from work to tell him we'd have to cancel because I have to go be there for a friend. And he got mad, even though I told him it was out of my hands. I then hung up because I didn't want I didn't want him to carry on driving and being on a call, especially if he's angry and said, I'll speak to him later. Cut to me coming home a few hours later and he was pissed. We then got into an argument and he said that I prioritized another guy over him and that my friend is a grown man who could have waited until the next morning to have me come over. He also got more mad when I couldn't tell him what the emergency was that ruined what was meant to be a special day, even though that's my friend's personal information and it's not my business to share. I felt that it was very insensitive of him to not understand why I had to go and be there for a friend of mine. And yeah, we lost a bit of money for tickets, but we can just reschedule. But I can see why he's frustrated as it's our first anniversary and he had planned it a while ago. Plus, I got angry at him for being insensitive, which only heated the argument and made it worse. It's been a few days since the fight and he's still being frosty to me, waiting for me to apologize. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if I handled it right. Am I the astronaut? 
We've got uh, we've got some some relevant comments here and 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 how many updates? Two or three updates. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we've yeah we've got some stuff to go through here. We've got some stuff to go. I have questions. And, and at the beginning of the story, I'll, I'll tell you right now. At the beginning of the story, I, I kind of felt like the boyfriend was the asshole. Finding out that the friend was a dude does change things. It shouldn't, but it does. I think there's people who have friends of the opposite sex have to have understanding partners. And if they if they're partners, if that makes them uncomfortable, they have to do even more work to overcome that. Right. So so I feel like she has more of a burden to be uh, to be explaining things especially because it ruined this date but then it's a private issue there and i understand that too so it's just it's a complicated situation there's nothing easy about this nothing easy here's some relevant comments info was this something that could have waited another day original op no my friend had a big argument with his dad and without going into lots of details my friend struggles with alcohol problems so i went over to help smooth things over and gave him someone to talk to and distract him as he was very upset when my friends, when my friend asks for emergency support, I don't ask questions. I go. How could I have enjoyed my night knowing he was struggling anyway? That's a good point. That's a really good point. Comment, girl. Let me tell you this right now. That boy is using you. If he has an actual emergency, like needs a ride to the hospital, or his parents both just died, or he's depressed, or he's so depressed he's standing on a ledge and needs a friend to talk to talk him down, that's one thing. But if he has a fight and it might cause him to drink, f that. That's not an emergency. I was married to an alcoholic. One of the many things you have to learn in any relationship with someone who struggles with alcohol problems is that it is their struggle. If you keep letting them use you as a crutch so they won't drink, they will keep abusing that power over you. And then they will blame you the minute you turn you turn your back and they take a drink. His fight with his dad, that's his problem. His, him wanting to drink, also his problem. You cannot and should not always be at his beck and call to keep him from going on a bender. It's not healthy and you're not helping. You're actually enabling by letting him think that you were always available to be a barrier to drinking. He needs to be able to not drink on his own. So apologize to your boyfriend sincerely. Explain the situation to him the same way you did to Reddit. Then get yourself to an uh, an AA meeting and learn how to be a true friend to an alcoholic while not being addicted to caring for the alcoholic. Another good point. Comment. Can you see how this must look to your boyfriend? You ditched him on your first anniversary on your first anniversary to go to the emotional rescue of another man. That doesn't look good. I'm sure it felt awful. Then you accuse him of not being sensitive and understanding when you are doing the same thing to him. You're the asshole. Reddit voted. You're the asshole. Before we get into an update here. Before we get into an update here. Um, yeah, it's it, yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of really good points being made here. A lot of really good points being made here. Um, and and yeah, you have to be understanding to the boyfriend here. Also, there's this little seed in my mind that is like, look, if this friend knows about this anniversary date and has some kind of hidden feelings for OP, would it not be unreasonable for him to fabricate this thing to prevent that one year anniversary from happening? And also to test the waters to see if it would be possible if OP would choose him over her boyfriend. It's possible. It's possible. But it's complicated, right? This is not an easy situation here. Let's get into the update because holy cow, update six days later, after reading everyone's comments, I realized I was in the wrong and I didn't prioritize correctly. I came off pretty defensive at first, but after thinking about what people said, I shouldn't have been. I apologized to my boyfriend and told him nothing like this would ever happen again. He's still pretty mad, but after a serious conversation about setting boundaries between me and this friend, he's willing to move past it. Tony Spark, Thunder Crew member for seven months. Look at that. He says, don't forget, it is free to subscribe to YouTube. Help us hit our goal by, sub by hitting that subscribe button and sharing the live. We're trying to get too close to 40K uh, subscribers slash followers on the YouTube side today. What are we at now? Yeah, we're at uh, we're at 42,000 already. Is that what you said? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, 
He did say if this happens again or if I cross any boundaries with this friend, then he's gone. So it obviously did affect him more than I thought. I'm willing to respect this and try to consider my boyfriend's feelings more while still being there for my friend. We have rebooked our tickets and dinner for next weekend, and hopefully it can still be special. What I will say is the emergency message I got from my friend at that time didn't have much detail, so I didn't know how serious it was. Obviously, when I got to his place, he was very upset, but it wasn't life and death. And in hindsight, it could have waited until next morning. You think there might have been a reason it was vague? I'm not trying to make any excuses. I just thought some comments were a little harsh. I care for my boyfriend and very I care for my boyfriend very much and I'm happy we got this resolved. The comments about my friend's alcohol alcoholism made me realize that I needed to give him the resources to help himself, which I will do if he's open to it. I've never had someone I care about deal with an alcohol issue and was a, and was a bit naive to think that I could help him without professionals. I spoke to my friend on the phone this morning, and even though he was very defensive, he agreed to meet with me to talk about the next steps for him getting help. His dad is threatening to kick him out of the house, so I think that was a bit of a wake-up call for him. Also, I don't believe my friend had any malicious intent when he asked for me when he asked me for help, and I won't be cutting him off like some of you suggested. I think healthy boundaries to prevent any misunderstandings will do. That's the update for some of you who were asking for one. Relevant comments here. Number one, I love how you still refer to it as an emergency when it was very evidently not an emergency. More like some guy just wanted her attention and OP just ditched her boyfriend for him. Kelsey, thanks so much for the love there. Says, don't forget to like the stream so it gets out there and we can reach that goal. Heck yeah. Thanks for the love over on the YouTube side. Number two, I gave her boyfriend a week before he dips. If she would take some accountability, maybe there'd be a chance, but no way the boyfriend continues to tolerate the disrespect. I know I've broken up for less. LOL. Original OP, how am I disrespecting my boyfriend? I apologized and took accountability that I was in the wrong. I agreed when my boyfriend asked to put boundaries between my friend and I, and I've done everything he's asked, so where's the disrespect? Is there? Is there still disrespect whenever she's willing to create boundaries? Now, as some commenters said before, the friend is abusing OP's willingness to be a crutch. And she still wants to be there for the friend, but but doesn't want to abandon the friend, wants to help the friend get some resources to, to help himself. I still think there's a chance this was a call for attention to divert, to try to bust things up between OP and the boyfriend. It's possible. I'm not saying that's what it is, but there's definitely a chance. Uh, Aaron says... I was friends with an alcoholic for many years. I ended up being emotionally used and hurt badly. You can't fix them. You can't save them. They will use you to relieve their emotional pain. So there's two possible routes here. Either it is an addiction and it's it's abusing the relationship like that. So there's that side of it. Or it is there's a, a secret love interest and he's trying to break up the relationship by choosing the timing that he chose. We have more. We have another update. We have another update before we get into that. We hit the donut goal. Let's talk about this for a second. Heck yeah, Dr. Sweets leading by a mile. Holy cow, rock and roll. Amber Hill Hickey up there as well. You guys are rocking it out. TLS Journey, Cali Peru, Berlioz, Wayward Darling, Diana, 5520, and Hodoxen, aka Mary Akasha, Adventures with Pam, Joss VP, Ms. Pamela L, Mariah Janae, uh, Melissa Roderick, perfect timing. Emily B, IVF Mama, Not That Ellen, Nikki Hale, Lindsay Love, Mama Silver, M. Pickerel, Madam Snortigan, Lisey Lex, Blessed Wonder Woman, Ray X2, The Other Ashley, Bebop 610, and Trini Marie 83. You guys are awesome. Candy Thunder and Navy Thunder are here. Just walked in the door. Hi, big girl. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. She's excited. She's excited. You can come in to see Tony Spark. All right, I'm going to set the next one up here. I don't know if we'll have time to get to it, but we got to read an update here. This one is uh, just because. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this one is a just because we did unlock a cake story, so we'll be going a little bit longer over on this side. But first, Navy. Navy. Hi, baby. Hi, big girl. Hi, big girl. Candy Thunder and Navy Thunder are here. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, I, I don't think she's ready to, to join me over here just yet. So I'll, I'll get into reading the rest of the updates here and let's hope she warms up here. Okay, update two. 
Am I the asking off for bailing on anniversary plans with my boyfriend last minute for a friend's emergency seven days later? I wasn't going to update again, but people were asking for one and everything kind of went to shit. Me and my boyfriend went over to my friend's house to talk about getting professional help and they kept throwing little digs at each other throughout. It ended up escalating to a full-blown argument between them and I'm not going to lie, they were getting into each other's faces and I didn't really know what to do. I ended up dragging my boyfriend to leave and we went back home where we had a pretty big fight. During the argument, my boyfriend snatched my phone and saw text my friend was sending me apologizing about arguing with my boyfriend and asking if I was okay. Hi, Buggy. Hi. You look beautiful today. You gonna come see me up here in a minute? Okay. Are you coming right now? Come here. Oh my goodness. Say hi. Say, can you look right there and say hi? Say hi, everybody. What are you wearing? You wearing Snow White? What? Oh, look at your pretty nails. Look at those pretty nails. He's so pretty. Who painted your nails? Mommy. Mommy painted the nails. And you got your pretty bow in too. Oh my goodness. You want to say hi in the microphone? You know how to talk in the microphones. You do it at home all the time. Say hello. 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 You want your mommy? Okay. Hey, I love you. I'll see you again in a minute. Okay. Okay. And Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen, you got to pop on and at least wave. Candy's here. Hi, Candy and Navy are here. You say hi. Say hi right there. Hello. Look, you see those big hello. numbers? Yeah. You say hi, numbers. Oh, hello. Hi, numbers. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Bye, guys. You're such a funny girl. I don't, I don't know if it's the lights or what it is, but she gets very shy. She'll, she'll open up to it. She'll get there. She'll get there eventually. Uh, okay. My boyfriend just kind of snapped and said, you either never speak to him again or we are done. I stated that's so unfair when literally the day before we were moving on from this and I just want to come to cut and want to just come to a compromise. He said he was really hurt that I'm not taking the relationship as seriously as he is to skip a lot of back and forth. We couldn't agree and decided to break up. I didn't actually think we'd break up over this, so I was kind of shocked. But if he wants to throw our relationship away because of this, then fine. I obviously feel pretty down about it. Because of this, we never really had any, or before this, we never really had any problems, and now it's over because of some shitty decisions that I apologized for. But then I would feel so guilty if I dropped my friend who's struggling when he's always been there for me, especially during a tough time in my teens. My boyfriend clearly didn't believe in me when I said I would never prioritize anyone over him again. I think what some of you guys said was right. The damage was already done, and I didn't want to accept it possible i tried to speak with my boyfriend the next couple of days but he didn't want to hear anything i had to say which made for a very uncomfortable few days living together i'm going to stay with a friend for two days as she was looking for a roommate anyway a part of me wants to try to reconcile with my ex-boyfriend but then a part of me knows i should just let it go and i'm not going to be happy going no contact with my friend and he's not happy with a friendship even if I wanted to go no contact with this friend, it wouldn't have worked as he's in my friendship circle and he would be at all of our get togethers and try to talk to me anyway. A part of me is confused about my friend now. He provoked my boyfriend. He he provoked my boyfriend when he knew we were up when we were up on rocky grounds. I hate that I'm having to question a friendship that I've had for years, but I did say I would give him the benefit of the doubt this time and maybe I'll end up regretting what we'll see. That seed that was planted earlier is just sprouting now. However, he's now started AA meetings, which I'm proud of for him, and I'm hoping he sticks with it. He's apologetic about the role he played in our breakup and says he's going to get his shit together and be a better friend to me. Anyway, I think I'm just going to take some time for myself, process everything, and going to be single for a little bit because it's actually too much stress. Comments tear into original piece predictability. She replies to a lot of comments still defending the friend. Number one, make a list, tally or whatever. Every time you canceled with your ex for him, every instance that you can remember, mark it in some way. When that's done, do the reverse. Mark how many times you canceled with a friend for your ex. Original OP, no, I appreciate you giving advice still, even though I effed up. Canceling on my ex wasn't a regular thing. A handful of times, maybe. It's hard to remember, to be honest. Number two, comment number two, have you spoken with your brother yet? Curious about what he makes of the situation. Original OP, yeah, my brother tore into me. He thinks I was way too trusting of my friend. He said just because he was a good friend doesn't mean he still is, and I should no longer speak to him because this was intentional. He lectured me for ages, to be honest, but that was the gist of it. He understood why I wanted to defend my friend, but I said I effed up. 
or but he said I effed up badly. So yeah, he was also disappointed in me for ruining a good relationship. He liked my ex a lot for a clingy asshole. So yeah, he didn't hold back. Now, he said I should be careful about how my friend is going to respond to this, especially if he's still a bit unstable. Yes, I showed him all the posts, and yes, I told him about the jokes. He was honestly a little speechless when I told him, but yeah, he said it was too fresh to be making those jokes. That he was trying to get my ex on purpose, and that me not choosing a side, which is choosing a side, is a relationship killer. And that's why he said the friend has gone, has got to go, because he knows what he's doing, and I'm not holding my own. <laughs> Another comment, you're not very bright, are you? Don't watch a lot of drama movies. Blind Bat could see this shit clearly from a mile away. Original P says that's easy for you to say when you aren't in the situation, when it's someone you've grown up with and thought you could trust. Another comment here. Lady, everyone on the internet and even your own damn brother is telling you this friend of yours is no good. His own father wants him out of the house for Pete's sake. Yet you're still over here being buddy-buddy with this guy. I think the only way you'll have a romantic relationship without dropping this guy is by having a relationship with him, which I guarantee will be your doom. He's a clingy asshole alcoholic, and he's not going to stop drinking because he definitely hasn't hit rock bottom. The opposite. He had a little win in getting rid of your ex, and now he knows you'll always pick him. Reading your replies to the comments is amazing. You keep putting blame on your ex-boyfriend. You keep stomping on someone who already who you already hurt so much, and you keep blaming him. Wow. I do love happy endings. Maybe your ex will be happy. Original OP, I'm not blaming my ex. I know this is mostly my fault, but at the end of the day, he ended the relationship by giving me an ultimatum days after we discussed how we were going to move past this. Yeah, but OP, then new stuff happened. Like your friend got up in his face. I didn't even get a chance to show changed behavior. Obviously, I feel guilty that I hurt someone I really care about, and I'm hurting too, but what's done is done. OP eventually has some realization. What's going on over there? Uh, OP eventually has some realization comment. See, the thing is everyone was telling you this repeatedly and you kept blaming your ex and it looks like you still do. You don't own any of this at all. You owe your ex a huge apology, but you ignore it because he won't talk to me and you clearly think you were still right. Original OP. I don't blame my ex and I do owe him an apology. Waiting for candy thunder to turn her speakers down over here. Original OP's response, I don't blame my ex and I do owe him an apology, but I don't know if that might make it worse. He may just want to be left alone. Yeah, I just really, really wanted to believe in my friend, but obviously I was, it's looking like I was wrong. I no longer want to speak to my friend. How do you suggest I tell him that? I've just been ignoring his calls the last two days. Like, should I just go speak with him about everything and bring someone with me? You've succeeded in scaring me a little bit and I no longer know how he's going to react. But I've also got to try to keep things as pleasant and civil as possible because we have the same friend group and I'm still going to see him often. Of course, I feel sympathy for my ex. Of course I do. As I said, there's no excuse. I'm obviously so upset with my friend. And if I could have and if I could have it my way, I would never see him again. But we have the same friends. We hang out in the group all the time. I'm allowed to acknowledge how awkward that is going to be. Yeah, I'm going to apologize to my ex for what I did and how I hurt him. Even if he doesn't respond, I want to give him that closure. Commenter responds, do it over text. Tell him you've thought about it and you can't forgive him for ruining your relationship. Keep it about that. If you can, try to get him to admit he did it on purpose. That way you have proof for your other friends. Also, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry I scared you. But this world can be a bad place with bad people in it. Sometimes fear is a gift. It can keep you alive, but it's panic that will get you killed. Keep calm and don't panic. And for the love of God, don't let him be alone with you. Another comment here. Guess then that you're that there's no chance of reconciliation for you and your ex. OP, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I would want to, but it feels like the damage is done and this would hang over our heads. I don't know if he would even ever talk to me at the moment. That feels cowardly to me on OP's part. This feels like OP is just like, uh, I don't want to risk getting hurt by apologizing and him or trying to reconcile. So I'm not going to do it. It feels cowardly. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like um, the. Fr I don't know how your friend's going to react here either, but it is it is going to be awkward if you couldn't get the friend to admit that he did this intentionally and that it was because of some kind of romantic interest or whatever. For whatever the reason was, if you can get him to to say that the friend group needs to know about this, because if if you have no chance of avoiding him because he's a part of the same friend group, then those people and proxy need to know what's going on here as well, because they need to know if they're walking into an awkward situation. You owe your friend group that, right? Yeah. 
you owe that. Uh, Angel, did OP even really like the boyfriend? It sounds like she's more broken about the loss of the friend than the boyfriend even now. I think what I get vibe wise from OP here is that she doesn't like to to risk getting hurt. And and there's a risk of getting hurt whenever she if she put herself out there again and tried to reconcile, there's a chance that he could say no. So she's not going to take that chance. That's a hard way to live. Savior complex. Maybe Shiloh, maybe, maybe, but I think that the friend got in Opie's boyfriend's face and that, that alteration altercation escalated is another indicator that, that this is because of some kind of either control she didn't want the friend didn't want OP to have a boyfriend because that interferes with her ability to serve him as an emotional crutch or a romantic interest. Frankie J's mama just sent a gifted sub out to um, Bibaloo. Welcome to the gosh, I can fam Bibaloo. Heck yes. Heck yes. She has a version to confrontation. Yeah. It has to be on him, though, but the friend group needs to know. And and maybe once you fill the friend group on everything that's going in going on here, and maybe if you get him to admit it, so you have some kind of proof, there's a chance he could be excommunicated by the friend group or they would at least keep an eye on him or they would at least try to do things with you without him. There's there's there are solution paths there. It sounds like OP is afraid to test solution paths. Fear of rejection, whatever it is. Anyway, wild, wild, wild story. The the initial question was, am I the asking for bailing on anniversary plans with my boyfriend last minute for a friend's emergency? We know now. Yes. Uh, but OP was also duped, was duped by this friend and was used by this friend. So so the friend abused the relationship, abused, um, abused the connection that they have to try to get her away from the boyfriend. We still don't know if it's a control or romantic interest kind of thing. Um, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I, I hit one. I meant to hit two. I think she's in a two. She definitely should not have done this. She should not have done this. She was being naive, but she should have seen what was going on here. And I, I understand you, you have some friends that you're ride or die for, right? Everybody has those friends where it doesn't, they don't have to give you an explanation. If they say, I need you, you, you go, right? But if one of those ride or die friends abuses that friendship and abuses that connection, then they can't be that way anymore especially if they are directly trying to interfer, interfere with your life and blow it up. Yeah, we are at 840 of 2K on the finger hearts right now, which there is not a uh, there isn't a there isn't a, a reward for us just because. But we did unlock the cake reward story here as well. So we're going to get into that. We're going to rock and roll here. We're doing it. Cake reward story. It's our last story of the TikTok per portion of the stream. We've been live for two hours and 14 minutes. After this, we'll go ahead and close up and we'll still be on YouTube, but we'll be taking a break off the TikTok side here for a little bit. So cake reward story is this. Am I the astronaut for refusing to pay for cake slices that my teenage daughter ate? I, female 38, am a single mom with my teenage daughter, Carly, female 17. My sister, female 36, lives nearby with her husband and two kids, female nine and male seven. Carly sometimes babysits her cousins on the weekends so that my sister and brother-in-law can go out, usually for three to four hours. In exchange, my sister gives her 30 to 40 euros cash in hand. Me and my sister do not make Carly babysit. She volunteers to. She likes having the extra money to fund her Starbucks addiction without a part-time job and fast food or retail. Plus, the kids love getting to see her. I'm glad that she's getting to learn responsibility. I think it's a win all around. Last weekend, there was a problem. A couple of hours after Carly came home from babysitting, my sister called me. It was my niece's birthday two-ish weeks ago, and there was some leftover birthday cake in their kitchen. It was a custom-made fancy lemon curd cake, and I remembered at the party a lot of the kids didn't want to eat it, so a lot was left over. Whilst she was babysitting, Carly had eaten two slices. My sister said that she should have asked before helping herself with the cake and that it was expensive. I apologized to my sister and told her that I would have a word with my daughter. She mentions again that... She mentions again that the cake was custom made and expensive and says we should be compensating her. At first, I honestly thought she couldn't be serious, but she didn't want to give me her money because of the cake. Oh, wait, what? At first, I honestly thought she couldn't be serious, but she did want me to give her money because of the cake. I mentioned to her, I mentioned that surely the cake was going bad soon if it wasn't already stale. I said this lightheartedly, trying to lighten the mood, but made it clear I'm not giving her money. She says she paid 70 
I guess it's 70 pounds, right? She says she paid 70 pounds for the cake and she expects me to give her 20. I told her I'm not doing that. My sister says I'm being inconsiderate and that my daughter ate the slices without permission. I feel like she's being petty. And what difference would it have made if it all got eaten last weekend or at the birthday party? Am I the asking off for refusing to pay for her cake? Hell no. Hell no. Hell, hell. It was leftover. It's not like she cut into a brand new, freshly unsliced cake. And also, when you have a sitter, food is fair game. That's like a widely accepted rule, right? If it's something that you don't want eaten, label it. Label it. This sounds like buyer's remorse. I wish I wouldn't have spent so much on this cake. Oh, well, she ate a couple slices. I guess I should get somebody to to pay it back. It's also two week old cake. How good can that two week old lemon curd cake? Yeah. How good can that cake possibly be at this point? Even if it was a whole cake, I think it would have it would have depreciated to zero value within one week. Right. It would not. It's not worth anything after two weeks. If you held on to it for two weeks. And now you're trying to charge somebody? That's nuts. That is nuts. Nuts. It's leftovers. Yeah. No. And if you have a sitter, the food is fair game there. That's I I think that's a widely accepted standard. But again, if it's something you don't want someone to eat, put a freaking label on it. This sounds uh, this is greed. This is greed and regret for spending so much on a cake that nobody wanted to eat. That's it. That's it. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. Good gravy. NTA. Sisters nuts. Yeah, surprised they didn't have mold. It just becomes like a like a special cake after that point, right? Start seeing stuff. Melissa says, as a pastry chef, um no, gross. From the expert. From the expert. Must not have been that good. Or just lemon. Lemon's a hit or miss thing, right? I don't like lemon flavored things. I think it's like a 50-50. Hey, out of the studio right now, chat. Let's do this as well. Do you like lemon stuff or not? You like lemon flavored cake? Yes or no? Studio, raise your hand if you like lemon. No? Half. 50%. 50% 50%. 50% in in studio likes lemon. I think we have a lot more people in chat that do like it than don't, which is surprising. <laughs> Emma Von Lu hate. Kate on, yeah, but not as much as chocolate. Yeah. Only do lemon tea, but in light amount. Yeah, I'm just not just not a fan. I will squeeze a lemon on like fish or seafood, something like that. That's pretty much it. Lemon TikTok, only lemon Danish. Hey, speaking of Danish, we're on a Danish kick right now. Uh, Rediscovered, love them. We've got one over here on the table with our 24 hour stream snacks. (laughs) Christian Museum Girl says, I made made lemon desserts for a coworker. Turned out she hated me, wow. Wow, Elise, thanks for the love on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate that. We are going YouTube only now. So we're going to be there for a while. Will we cut? We will cut back in over at 4 p.m. Central Time on the TikTok side. But until then, we'll be just on YouTube. So if you want to continue hanging out and partying with us, make sure you subscribe over on the YouTube side. It costs nothing to subscribe over there. So come hang out. Here she is again. Maybe there. Hi, baby. Hi, big girl. You wear the headphones? Music. You say YouTube? No. You booger. And hey, don't forget, we're going to spin the Wheel of Thunder in the, on YouTube. So, um, for me, we going to the Wheel of Thunder from this TikTok portion and spin it over on YouTube. So, jump on over and hit subscribe and uh, keep watching. We've got, what, 20, 22 hours to go. Like, Caden said, we're on the home stretch. Mad Hatter, thanks so much for the love there. Said I tried making a lemon meringue pie for my mom once for her birthday. Didn't come out great, but it, but it was tasty. There you go. Lady Bear. Hi, Hi baby. Hi, Boogie. Okay, I'm going to get set up on the... 
I'll see you again here in just a second, kiddo. All right, here we go. Flipping over to the YouTube side. TikTok, we'll see you in a bit. Or come hang out with us on YouTube. Also, a team YouTube. Team YouTube here. Let's do. Oh, I'm gonna bust up my recording. I'm gonna stop my recording real quick and I'm gonna start a new one. Do. It's just less less computer intensive if I don't. Keep the dance going. Which VR today's your birthday? Happy gosh heckin' feed day. Heck yeah. The numbers next to people's names, yes, that's that's how long they've been with that's how long they've been with the um, with the Thunder Crew, which is the paid membership side. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Struggling with the montage. Five months into the Thunder Crew. Heck yeah. Claire, there is a playlist for YouTube only videos. Uh, it's been a while since we've updated that. Now, if you're a member, the member exclusive stuff, there's definitely quite a bit of. But also, you got compilations over on the YouTube side. You got the podcast over on the YouTube side. There's a lot that isn't on the TikTok side. Oh, show. Yeah, we're live, Mary. Heck yeah. Hey, uh, okay. Okay, gotcha. I'm gonna get the next document pulled up here. And then Tony Sparks gonna come hang, hang out for a minute. I'm gonna take just a few minute break while he's doing the Wheel of Thunder. The Wheel of Thunder. Fluffy buddy, yes. Member for five months is welcome all from TikTok. Make sure you like the stream. Yes, please and like, share, stream. Macy, ESH is everyone sucks here. Valerie, good to see you. Clay, hey there, Taylor. No bathroom break yet. Not doing it. I told you I'm reabsorbing it all back into my body. Reabsorbing it all. Miss Krish, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Glad to have you there. Candace, you've been watching on the on YouTube and on TV and gifting on TikTok? YouTube has a five second lag. I oh, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Yes, as soon as you jump in here, please like and share and subscribe. Greatly appreciate that. Victoria coming over from TikTok. Risa, heck yeah, with the flying astronaut. Elisa, Winter, Donna, Claire Smith, Angelina, Carabites, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Gwendolyn, did OP's daughter get sick from the two week old cake? Uh, good question. They didn't say anything in there about it. Kylie, good to see you. Danny. Actually using your Dino MacBook, I'm gonna say, you're in awe that it's keeping up with this. Heck yeah, there you go. Heck yeah. Patrice, Miss Krish, how do you become a, a member on YouTube? Um, if you go to the channel, if you're just on like the straight up channel page, it'll say join. There'll be a thing that says join there. You can go that way. Jessica, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Ms. M. Bash, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Bets lose. Thanks for the super over there. Greatly appreciate that. Sergeant Mac, you should have pitched in for a pilot's piddle bag. <laughs> pilots have that kind of thing? Lauren Balderas, thanks so much for the love on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate that. Um, Kristen, that's perfect. Yeah, if you guys if you guys are on the road today doing a long drive, we got you covered. By golly, we got you covered. Ariel, Daniel, Debbie, Trini, Nisi, heck yes, Roberta, Brooke, Kathy. Leslie Johnson, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Jessica, heck yes. Jen, we should bathroom break for the bingo card. <laughs> Joss VP, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Heck yeah. Uh oh. I did not see the spammer. What happened on TikTok? You just got back, Holly. Um, well, I, don't, I don't think anything crazy happened there. Uh, Tony Sparks is going to jump in here in a minute, and he's going to spin the wheel. 
And then uh, and then we're going to get started on Chunk 2. We're two hours and 26 minutes into this 24-hour stream. We're just resetting here a little bit. Just resetting for a moment. And now I get to take my YouTube chat full screen. Heck yeah. Whoa. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and talk about this. I'm gonna go ahead and do an intro here, Tony, and then uh, we'll jump up. Welcome to hour three. This is, I mean, it's we're diving into hour three right now. It's officially hour two. I don't know how that works. We're in hour three, we're in hour three because we we're two hours and twenty six minutes in. Starting hour three. <laughs> what does it mean? For those of you joining from the TikTok side, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us on this crazy 24 hour live adventure. Our goal is to hit 10,000 new subscribers on the YouTube side. Subscribers, not not members, not the paid side, just followers on the YouTube side. So if you don't follow already there, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Remember to please be kind in chat. We have a great group of mods starting us off. We'll be um, who will be monitoring chat. We've got more that we can tag in if needed. Remember, no spoilers, please. And remember that this live is a little bit different than normal lives. We may do a few different things other than just reading stories, but don't worry. We'll be reading plenty of stories today. A hundred ish over the next 20 over the next 12, 19 and a, um, no, over the next 21 and a half hours. Math is hard. Words are hard. Math. Math is even harder. So kick back and enjoy the show. Enjoy the stories on the YouTube side. It is quite a bit more chill. So uh, so we'll get rolling with that. We have a healthy collection of stories to read here. We've got follower submissions. We've got stories from AITA from the Dusty Thunder subreddit. More follower submissions, more AITAs uh, and even a petty revenge here. So it's going to be a hell of a good time. Bingo card people. Uh, Want to know how it works on YouTube first time around, Joss? It's very similar, but but we don't have like the gift goals or anything like that. So um, we aren't unlocking things as we go. We're we're just going through and reading stories, and we'll spend some time chatting in the in between. So that is uh, that is about it. And in the meantime, we have Dirt Keg. All right, Tony Spark is ready to jump in over here, and he's going to hang out with you for a few minutes and vamp, do a little song and dance while uh. We'll take a, a little few minute break and, are, and get reset here. How are the vibes? How you feel? How how we feel? The vibe first is good. Two and a half hours. Vibe is good. Do you do you want like uh do you want music and celebration graphics no. or just Caden's doing jumping? Caden's jacks got jumping here. jacks going. I'm All good. Right. I'm good. Yep. All right. I'm good. I'll be back in a few. Yep. 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 What's up, everybody? Hey, which is the lower setting on here? Four? Four. Got to get this back down to the right level. What's up, everybody? How we feeling? How we feeling? We made it. We made it for the first two and a half hours. Caden, you got to you gotta get in here. Here, switch me sides. You go on this side. Caden's here. We're all here. I got the Wheel of Thunder. Got the Wheel of Thunder going. Whoa! Uh, wake up! Caden's pumped. Caden's pumped. Yep. We're at, what, two hours, 29 minutes? Got a, got a little ways to go. So, uh, yeah. So, we're going to spin the Wheel of Thunder here and give Dusty a little break. He's going to get a little Navy time in. Um, anybody who doesn't know what the Wheel of Thunder is, if you're if you're new here um, from on the YouTube side, on the TikTok side during our lives, um, the Wheel of Thunder is made up of the top 10 gifters from TikTok. And then also a little spin on this today. We have, because we're doing so much on YouTube, we have a uh, YouTube gifter on here and a YouTube member on here, as well as an existing subscriber from TikTok and a uh, a new subscriber on TikTok. Facts. Elise, I, I don't know. I don't know that two and a half hours in and they've already just, it's just me and Caden up here. This is, this. I don't know if this is going to end well or not, but anyway. We got it. Anyway, yeah, the I guess I called it a gift on YouTube. I guess it's called a super chat. I don't, I don't know on YouTube super enough chat. to to know what that is. But uh, Union <laughs> Bets Lou says Union Break. Yeah, it's a Union Break for for Dusty. Facts. Yeah, it is not. As far as I know, it is not a bathroom break. He did not go to the bathroom. There so. was no bathroom break. No bathroom break. No, no cheating on that. No cheating on that car. Our body break. Yeah, he's reabsorbing it. 
It's a Navy, Navy break. break. It's a Navy break. Yeah. Chug a honey badger. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen, I got a. I do have a funny story about a hunt about. You know what honey badger is? No. So honey badger is a shot of fireball and a shot of American honey. Oh no. And it is not great. I couldn't even do the shot of American honey. I couldn't. I I did it once at a at a Kenny Chesney concert. Um and. Yeah, it didn't work out well for oh, me. Yeah. A room temperature, um, yeah. a room temperature honey badger shot uh-uh. outdoors was not great. Uh-uh. No, it was bad. It was I bad. can't. I can't hold any alcohol at all. So <laughs> I had one one hard Mountain Dew and I'm down for the count. <laughs> one hard so Mountain one Dew. One hard Mountain Dew and I'm gone. So yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, yeah. That's it for me. Not great. Not great. Okay, so I'm going to read the names off. Here's all, who's on the Wheel of Thunder. Um, and we're going to spin this. And then um, we're going to spin it a couple of times. And you're just going to get a mystery prize, to be honest. It could be a poster. It could be a mouse pad. It could be a signed copy of Piano Man. Um, could be stickers. Could be an autographed be all can sorts of, of stuff. beans. Could be an autographed can of beans. I, I don't know. Yeah. If it, the people it could, want it. It could be anything. Br- Brannigan. Br- how would you say that? Brannigan? Brannigan. Brannigan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So on today's Wheel of Thunder from the first TikTok portion is Patrice Welch, uh, Mad Hatter Gal from YouTube, Shanna Lee from YouTube, Dr. Sweets, Amber L. Hickey, Callie Prue 1987, Haunted Gal, Southern Country, TLS Journey, This Is Fine 01, Carmel Cat 81, AK Marie, Joss underscore VP, Zool123, who is a uh, news, maybe a new subscriber. I wrote an S on here, so it's either subscriber or new subscriber. And Patrice Welch. Whoa! Yay! Thanks. Um, and it's probably just going to be random. We got a low. We saved up some good gifts like the signed Ascon poster. Um, we saved some bigger gifts to use for today. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I see that that's funny, but okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. I thought it was funny, but probably not for chat. Okay. Yeah. Caden, spin the wheel. I'm going to spin the wheel. Here we go. Big money, no whammy. And the winner on the first spin is... Who is it? A.K. Marie. Woo! That was a very excited... I'm so very excited. I'm um, so excited. He's so excited. You're never going to get that energy from me ever again. I mean, that's a little bit of a... Unless yeah. you do. Okay. Hold on. I got to write it down. One of our one of our regulars over on the TikTok side. So, uh, thank you. yeah, thank you. Let's go. Uh-oh. Okay. Potty, potty break is happening. Dusty Thunder is taking a bathroom break. He's relieving himself. It's it's happening. Apparently he's already failed at being Schmidt. <laughs> he's already he's already failed. So maybe he just needs privacy to reabsorb. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's good. You know how it is. All right. We're gonna spin it again. All right. Oh, boy. Go for it. Oh, where's the Ready? 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 Huh? Ready? Huh? Wow. Big spin. Big spin. What is it? Who is it? Zool one two three. Yeah. Zool one two three. Awesome. And they are a subscriber on YouTube. So yeah, that's Thank awesome. You. That's awesome. Cool. We value you. We do. Very much. Very much. Juliet, if you go to dusty thunder.com, you can get a bingo card. I'm going to apply my chapstick. And now, Caden Thunder is, is applying caps, chapstick. Soothing Aloe Lip Balm by Burt's Bees. Wow. Are you a Burt's Bees guy? Is oh, that your Burt's brand? Bees guy. It's my brand. I'm a, I'm a Blistex guy. Ah, the little little, little like green one. You don't like that one? No. No, that's, I'm my, sorry. that's my go-to. I, it's just not personally. I, I went Burt's <laughs> Bees and I'm never going back. You know what they say about Burt's Bees. Once you go Burt, you don't go back? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Bet's Lou, honesty is the best policy. So the bingo, the bingo card's fun. So we're we're not trying to cheat anybody out of it. 
Let's go, fun. bingo. Desi, welcome back. It's good chapstick, man. Good news is we've got 22 hours and 24 minutes. 21. 21. Something. Yeah. 21. What did I say? 21 and a half. How's off? I'm math is not my strong suit. So you've already failed at the absorbing. I know. The, what happened there? I know. Hey, there she is. What's up? AK hey, Marie or Mary What's West? Up? Marie? Marie? We get it wrong every single time, and I know we talk about this every single time. I can't remember if it's Mari or Mary. Yeah, we have Carmax, Marie Marie? but Marie. I'm still a Burt's Bees guy. Carmax? Yeah. I'm, I'm just been a, I've always been a Blistex person. Always been a Burt's Bees guy. Yeah. Yeah, she just won Wheel of Thunder. It's nice. AK Marie. Congratulations to the first Wheel of Mary? Thunder. AK winners. Mary. She just won on Wheel of Thunder because she's awesome. Yes. Get it together. I know. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm trying to get it together, Brenda. I'm just trying to hold it together. They want to know how their name gets on the wheel. How the name gets on the wheel. So we do the wheel um, when we're on TikTok, um, and it's the top 10 gifters. Um, and usually it's two new subscribers and two existing subscribers. But because of the YouTube portion of today, um, we're going to do one new subscriber from TikTok, one existing subscriber from TikTok. Um, somebody who has sent a super chat and then a member of the YouTube store. For sure. So, yeah. Yep, that's what's up. Yeah. Yep. Uh... Randomness, one of the biggest ones. That's interesting. That is an interesting fact. Black right, label chapstick. All right. You ready to tag back in? You gonna, are we sitting? You standing? We're, I'm sitting. I'm all right. Sitting are you guys ready for some more? Dusty Thunder. Because here we are, two hours, 37 minutes in. We're ready to go with block two. The one. The only. Dusty. Thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder. The one that's on the right. <laughs> Hey, all right, he's back. Thanks, guys. See you in a little bit. We got a lot more stories, so here we go. What are you doing, baby? I'm much shorter now. Hi. He's better, right? He's better. This is better. We're gonna rock this way. We're gonna rock this way for a little bit. I'm gonna try to alternate here so I don't uh, I roll into frame. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to sit in the in between. I'm gonna try to alternate. Uh, I just peed out all my height, Jen. I did. I did. Uh, Cassandra, Baby Thunder, Navy. She was on for a minute. She'll jump back on here in a minute. She's making me tea right now. Making me a making me a hot tea. Oh, here we go. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to block two of 12. We're going to rock and roll here. Thank you guys so much. Uh, congrats to our congrats to our wheel winners. Very happy for you here. We have a bunch of stories to go through in this next chunk, and it's going to be all kinds of fun. Mods on the YouTube side, thank you so much for uh, for for rocking out here. Um, yeah, yeah, Jen, yeah. So uh, whenever we do like the the YouTube member exclusive lives, I'll sit for a lot of those because they're longer stories. If we're doing longer lives like today, I'm just going to alternate. Uh, I have back problems, so I can't sit or stand for for any length of time <laughs> without it being uncomfortable. So I'm just going to alternate. I'm going to alternate, and we'll see what happens here. We'll see how it goes. Um, but, 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 um, yeah, Mary West, thank you so much for the super chat over on the, uh, the third super chat sitting through over there. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You know, there's a, I, I was a trumpet player back in, in my high school days, a little bit of college, but, um, there was always a theory about Blistex. Was it no Carmex Carmex because it has camphor in it. It actually dries your lips out. So you need more Carmex. So it creates like an addiction. Um, and I just don't use any kind of, of chapstick or anything now. So Marilyn, yes, we're going to do this once a month moving forward. Ah! <laughs> oh, gosh, I quit. <laughs> 
Once every four years, we can do that, right? Once every four years. Hey, Caden Thunder, will you do me a favor? We'll see how the rest of this Will you goes. tilt this camera down just a hair? You just push on the top of it. Yeah, just push forward. Until we'll keep going a little bit more. Yeah, the tilt position for sitting versus standing a little bit different right there. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. All right, let's dive into our very first story here. This one is a follower submitted story and is titled, Will I be the astronaut for saying no to a promotion? Ah, Kirsty, thanks so much. Says woohoo, loving the live. Thanks for the super over there. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, okay, let's dive into the story. Hello, Dusty. I'm a big fan and have been listening for several months, but now started wa- started by watching your TikToks. Oh, sorry. I just complete words are hard. Hello, Dusty. I'm a big fan and have been listening for several months now, but started by watching your TikToks. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate that. I write here for anonymity because my manager at work is an avid redditor and i'd feel worse if he were to read this story from a throwaway account and piece together that it might be me a little background i 30 female worked as a nurse for four and a half years right up until two weeks leading to the statewide pandemic shutdown in 2020 the timing was perfect when i decided to quit nursing and take a sabbatical for mental health reasons and burnout i've left the medical profession entirely and don't feel like i can cope with the stress of the profession anymore since then i've explored a lot of different jobs the last few years In September of 2022, I landed a job at a local tourist spot in my town that I found a love for. I've been here for one and a half years now and enjoy it, even though I don't make that much earnings from it. My manager, 29 male, let's call him Ray, has been working here off and on for the last eight years, leaving and coming back to his fallback job until he landed the manager position a few years back and stayed since then. Back in June of 2023, he confided in me that he was going to take the next three months looking for a new job, and he said that once he landed one, I'd be promoted to GM. By that time, I'd only been there nine months, but I was the most qualified with the hardest work ethic. I felt excited to take over a GM position that also comes with a pay raise, much better than what I was currently making. I agreed to take over once Ray had found a job and he'd be leaving. Three months passed and Ray still hadn't found a job, and I was still in the same position, but taking on more duties as the assistant GM. It did not come with a pay raise until I hit my one-year mark with the company. By this time, I'd hit some financial struggles and was having to sell off unused possessions or take on side gigs just to get by for rent. Around December of that same year, Ray had landed interviews for a job he was an absolute shoe in for. He was so excited about it and started getting me more comfortable and ready to move up the chain as GM. I saw this as my best opportunity to finally get the promotion and pay raise I needed. That is until he said he didn't get the new job. He was bummed out and disappointed, but also discouraged to where he stopped making efforts to continue his job search. I felt like I had moved two steps forward and three steps back and struggling more and more financially with student and credit card debt and a steep rent that I couldn't break the lease on. I took it upon myself to seek a pay raise from the boss and owner of the company who told me to wait for the promotion to get a pay raise. Yoko, thanks for the love. MJ Newcomb, thanks for the love over there as well. Much love for you guys. Greatly appreciate it. Uh <laughs> This month, I spoke with my boyfriend, 33 male, and he encouraged me that this is not working out the way it's been planned for me since June last year. And if I'm struggling this much financially, then I need to take matters into my own hands and find a better paying job outside of my nursing background. Here's where I find the conflict. If I leave my current job, that would leave us dangerously understaffed. We're already understaffed, and I've seen how the hiring process is extremely slow here. Usually take usually takes two months to hire anyone. If I stay, I feel as though this promotion will constantly be dangling in front of me, but always out of reach. But if I leave for a better paying job, I'd be able to financially support myself better and pay off a lot of my debts. Ray has spoken highly of me for the last few months and has has stated how much he wants me to take over as a strong leader. He knows I can be, but I'll never know that if he doesn't leave like he says he will. I've had a hard time telling people no because I don't like to disappoint others when they're relying on me. So will I be the astronaut if I say no to the promotion to leave to leave? Sorry, words are hard. So I, so will I be the astronaut if I say no to the promotion to leave to better myself financially, but leave him and the company in a high and dry position? Ah, Fane, love of the live. Thanks so much for the love. Debbie, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Tracy, I see your comment right there. Being short staff isn't your problem. Can't let that hold you back. Agreed. It's not a you problem, OP. This is not a you problem. The company's problems are not you problems. And as much as I, as a small business owner, you know, love to see that ownership mentality in people and love to see how they're thinking about the health of company and and you know, what actions 
would affect the company it's that's not an expectation that's that's ultimately not your responsibility i think there are a couple of solution paths worth exploring here first if your current manager who is trying to get another job is hell-bent on finding another job how about he steps down to a gm to assistant gm so that they can go ahead and put you in the GM position, which gives him the ability to support you as you get started in this role while he continues to find another job. Yes, he would be taking a pay cut to that, but the pain from an employer standpoint would be much less in that case because then they have a stable environment here. I would actually pitch that to Ray and to the owner and say, look, uh, I'm getting ready to have to find a new job if this doesn't happen soon. So what if we go ahead and do something now? Or maybe Ray takes a little bit of a pay cut so you can get a little bit of a pay bump and you guys are co, co-assistant co GM, something. There's some kind of middle ground here that probably hasn't been explored yet that is a possible solution because I don't... I, Ray may be selfish here, because, but he's also leaving. You know that he's going to leave. So so his, his investment into the give a shit side of this is going to be non-existent, probably. I know they're grooming you to be GM, but but ultimately he's planning on bailing anyway. So his opinion doesn't matter here. I would actually have a conversation directly with the owner and say, look, here's what's happening. And here's the situation that I'm in. And if this promotion doesn't happen now, then I have to find another job. And then you're going to be in a bigger lurch because Ray's going to end up finding a job. I'm going to be gone. You're going to have nobody. So there's there's going to be some kind of solution there that the owner can implement. I wouldn't I wouldn't raise opinion again. Doesn't matter here because he's leaving anyway. And I'm sure if he gets a pay cut, that's going to suck for him. But again, that's a him problem. It's a him problem. Uh, let's see, Amanda. What did Amanda say here? And thanks so much for the love there. Greatly appreciate it. Carissa Weig, thanks for the love there too. Vicky A, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Amanda says, promising you a promotion before it's even available makes the employer the asshole. Yeah, I get that, Amanda. Um, I I get that. And that's a little bit weird, right? Because the employer saying wait for the promotion means that they do know about it because prior to that, everything had come from Ray, who was the GM who's planning on leaving. So, at that point, it's not even the employer who knows about it, but but they said, wait for the promotion. So they know. Do they know that Ray is trying to leave and find a better job? Because if they know about that, they'd be even more likely to do what I said, which is uh, or to do to to act on the suggestion that I had about about approaching them to go ahead and make this move. Now, it's then their best interest to go ahead and do that. It's not in Ray's, but Ray's already trying to leave. So it doesn't freaking matter if if that doesn't work and they continue trying to dangle this in front of you, then, you know then you know it's a no-go and you have to leave, right? But before leaving this job that you have a passion for, you have a love for, and that you just need to, you need to become the GM to be able to do, I would make one last bold move before, before doing that. Jessica agreed. And and again, it's not what happens with the company and the company being short staff is not a you problem. Not making enough money to survive right now is a you problem. But I think if you present this to the owner, they are they're the person with the power to be able to make this change for you and to solve everybody's problems. Right. Not raise, but that's a him problem. You need to focus on the you problem right now. Focus on the you problem. Uh, Chris, yeah, it is. It is blackout bingo blackout. OP needs to put herself first. Jenny agreed. Leslie says they're never going to give you the promotion as long as you expect what's going on now. Um, Agreed. Uh, Yeah, I I think you have to create some personal boundaries. They're going to let you work as hard as you're willing to work for what they're paying you for right now until you create a boundary and say no more and say this is what's going to happen if this doesn't get fixed. The proposal here is reasonable, though. Ray's already leaving. Wouldn't they want you in that GM position as soon as possible so that you can start benefiting the company? And if Ray's still there as an AGM to you being a GM or co-GMs or whatever, he can help train you in that position while you're in that position. That is the biggest benefit to everybody. That's the biggest benefit to you. You don't have to go find something new. You love what you're doing. It's the biggest benefit to the company. Uh, Ray is the only one that suffers there at all, but he's already leaving. It doesn't matter. He's already leaving. (laughs) Blackout means filling, filling in all the boxes. Yeah.
Kirsty, that that is a good point. What confuses me is how are you AGM but not being paid for that? And they say you got to hit a one year mark before you can get that pay raise. That smells fishy, right? That's not right. That that is that's horseshit, which is a ding against the company. And I would say it's even more cause for for using how they how they handle this situation with you pitching, um, pitching, going ahead and taking the position if they if they string you along at all done oh we can't do that we can make you the gm but we couldn't pay the gm wages until the one year mark horse shittery that is not true not true at all sharon thanks for the super over there it says absolutely love the thunder fam heck yes debbie thank you so much there too greatly appreciate that let me look at this real quick I'm going to look at something right quick. I may not be able to change anything right now, but I know there's a timeout um, at some point because um, because you can only go like 12 hours or so. Uh, let me try this. Let me know if those ads stop for you now. Okay. Let me know. I'm trying to change something on my end. Let me know if that works. Uh, aren't the cards all the same, just in different places? There's three different cards, but there's only three. Yeah. 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 They are. They're all in just in different orders. So, uh, it's just for fun. And when you send it in, uh, Jessica, yeah, I, I just made it. Uh, I don't know that I have any, I don't, I don't know that I have any control over it at all, but I tried to make a change on my end to see if that would stop it. It may take a few minutes or it may take re refreshing the stream or something, but um, it, it may happen no matter what. If you have YouTube premium, you won't see them. Um, but if you if you don't have YouTube premium, you you will. And I might have some control over that might not. So I, I've tried doing a, a different a different setting on my end. We'll see. So Aaron says I, I don't have premium and I haven't had any ads. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, OK, yeah. So if you don't have premium, Elise says there is a, a free week trial. If you join today for YouTube premium, I have YouTube premium and freaking love it. It is worth it. Just saying. It doesn't benefit me at all for you to have YouTube premium. I'm just saying. I, uh, I'm a fan. I am a fan. Uh, so this was an NTA. This is definitely an NTA uh, for saying no to, remote, to a promotion. But I think there are a couple of things that you can explore before before doing that. Right. I think you can you can greatly benefit yourself by not having to go through the pain of finding something else and going through the pain of that job search, which Ray has been experiencing to this point. You don't have to do that. You love what you're doing. You have a position there. Force their hand. Force them to make the choice. <laughs> Mr. Dark, thank you. Greatly appreciate that. Crispy. Got the crispy beard going on. Yeah, the ads probably do depend on uh, on settings for your phone, VPN locations. I yeah. Yep, yep, yep. If watching from an app on phone, no ads during stream. Gotcha. Okay, so if you're watching, interesting. Interesting. Okay, we've got another story to dive into here. I'm gonna take a a wee little sip. I finished my jock coffee uh, earlier before the the first chunk, and now. Now I'm hitting some monster rehab tea, some water, and Candy Thunder is making a, a hot tea for me. It's steeping right now. Got to protect those pipes throughout the day, you know? Come here, baby girl. Oh, you got a an open marker. Okay. What is that? Oh, you got marker on your hand. That's yeah, that's what happens. Can you come sit with daddy for a second? Here, I'm going to put this down. Put down the weapon. Say hi before we dive in on another one. Amber Clarkson says we love the Thunder Talks. My husband and I love talking and communicating afterwards, and we really like the different perspectives we both share. Thank you so much for the love. And Sharon Newton, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Heck yeah. Are you picking your nose on camera? No, surely not. You got a bug? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, don't do it. We'll get a tissue. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mommy. Mommy's got to get the tissue. Mommy's got to get the tissue. She told me that I asked her to stop putting the Expo eraser on her shirt. And she told me that I needed that I wasn't making good choices. <laughs> Candy, I don't know if you guys heard that. Candy Thunder said that Navy said, uh, or 
She told Navy to stop putting the Expo marker on her shirt. And Navy Thunder said to Candy Thunder that she, that she wasn't making good choices. <laughs> she said, you weren't making good choices? And I said, well, you're not making good choices. I wasn't making good choices. You're a silly kid. You know that. Can you tell everybody hi? Hi. Hi. Her little munchkin voice is. There's some ASMR for you. <laughs> Choose better. Yeah. Okay. Let's just. There it is. Digging for gold. <laughs> She's been posted over. Don't do it. 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 Hey, is, is pick a nose on the bingo card? <laughs> okay. I thought it should be. Oh, right, well, there it goes. Let's okay. pick your nose off stream. Love you, monkey. I'll put your marker right here. Yeah, hey, you're going to be back. You're going to see me again in a minute, kiddo. And I'm right here. Are you going to finish making daddy's tea? Hey, there she is. She's already back. Hi. Are you jumping? Are You, you know what? Here. If you guys haven't seen this yet. There we go. We get the BTS cam. Oh, you got your marker. And are you running off now that you got your marker? She brought my she brought my post-it note back and she's taking her marker. Still digging. Still still digging there. Two hours and fifty-seven minutes in here, as you can see the, the timer right there. Yeah. And you get a you get a an interesting look at the, the the BTS there. That's what the studio looks like. Just big open space. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, let's dive into our second story here, shall we? This one is from the AITA subreddit. And again, if you are jumping in from the TikTok side and you have not subscribed over on the YouTube side yet, please do so. It costs nothing to subscribe. It's like a follow on the YouTube side. Our goal is to gain two or 10,000 new subscribers during this 24-hour stream, which is a lofty, lofty goal. But we're game. We can do this. We can do it. Do we have a story count going? I don't know that we do. Oh, Tony Sparks keeping track. Hey, it's Grammy Thunder. Grammy Thunder is here. Grammy Thunder, would you like to come over and say hi? Oh, why not? She says, why not? She says, here, we'll give you the uh, the BTS cam. You see Grammy Thunder coming over here. This is my mom, everybody. Uh, you guys, you guys have not met my mom yet. I'll have to bend down to get into camera here a little bit, but let me flop over here. There we go. You can see up there where you mm -hmm. are. So come forward quite a bit. Come forward. Yeah, toward the mic. There we go. Oh, there you go. This is Grammy Thunder. This is my mom. Everybody. Hi, everybody. She's got her Chiefs gear on. Of go course. Chiefs. Of course. Go Chiefs. She's here to uh, to pick up Navy Thunder so they yeah. can go have some fun for a while. We're going to go play. We're going to go have Aider. fun. She, she wouldn't stop talking about going to see the fish uh, oh. with you and, and Papa. So okay. always has a great time. Okay. Every time it's a nice day, we go down to Big Spring Park and feed the ducks in the She fish. has so much fun. She wouldn't stop talking about it. Okay. it. Talking about how you guys already went, not saying that she was no, no. demanding you, you go again. Not that that wouldn't be a Navy Thunder thing to say, but hey, yeah. there is a, yeah, yeah, Grammy, Grammy hopped on. Um, also, that there's a, a book on the table with a post-it note that says Grammy on there, Mom. Okay. That's you. Okay. Yeah, I swapped it out for the other one, too. Okay. I know who Grammy is. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Love you. Love you. Okay, cool. You guys got to meet my mom. Awesome. I was hoping it would be. I was. I was hoping it would work out like that. Mary, thank you so much for the love. They greatly appreciate it. Uh, Danny says thank you for helping create the legend that is Dusty Thunder, Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> Beth, welcome to the Thunder Crew. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh, okay. Love you, Tiger. Hot tea time. Here we go. I'm going to have to do a lot of this today. Oh, it's very, very warm. Yep. Very. <laughs> Here, this is hot. Takes a giant. Oh, okay. oh my God. There's a difference between warm and burn your face. I, I gave him the. I gave him the McDonald's warning that said this. The contents of this cup are hot. You and said. He, you said warm. I said it's still very hot. I, th I think we might have a replay. Okay, let's play the replay and see if she said warm or hot. Chat, you heard it. it was warm. Warm. It's very warm. Extremely warm. It's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Tater. Love it. Navy. Navy Thunder. 
Maybe. Hey, mwah, I love you. You have fun with Grammy. Bye, Gabby. Bye, kiddo. <laughs> it's a little munchkin voice. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in here. This is a story from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Not Going to My Wife's Friend's Wedding? Burner account because my wife knows who I am. I hope so. My wife's best friend, let's call her Becky, has been engaged for about a year and is getting married in May. They live a couple of states, a full day's drive, a relatively short nonstop flight away. When we first found out about the engagement, we discussed the logistics of traveling with two toddlers and decided that I would stay behind with the kids so she can enjoy the wedding stress free. I'm also not very close with Becky and only met her friend's fiance once and he was very drunk. We'll call him Jack. And that also played into this in Words are hard. And that also played into the discussion. Jack cheated on Becky last August by making out with some stranger at a bar, and this devastated Becky. My wife encouraged them to get into couples counseling, which they have been doing. However, they still have not been intimate since he cheated. And that was when? Last August. And this was posted. Posted within the last week. It's been a minute. It has been a minute. Today, my wife said Becky would probably be really happy if the kids and I also went to the wedding. I brought up how we were already discussed this and that in light of what happened last August, I really don't feel like buying two more plane tickets and using two of my five PTO days for the year to attend a wedding that I don't think will last is a good idea. My wife and I had an elopement because we both agreed it was selfish and silly to have traditional wedding and to expect people to show up and bring us gifts. So she understands my sentiment toward taking extended time off and traveling long distances for someone's special day. And either of us would only and neither of us, either of us would only do such a thing for a handful of people in our lives. So the question is, am I the astronaut for not going to my wife's friend's wedding? Hoy vey. Uh, Triple V Threat says, can we please have a visible timer for bingo? YouTube on mobile doesn't show time elapsed on live or I can figure it out. So if you're if you're playing bingo, just use your local time. The time's going to be different for everybody. Just use whatever time roughly it is for you right now. And that and that's totally fine. It's not going to be an exact science kind of thing. There's a lot of ice chewing going on in that house. Not that Ellen. <laughs> I forgot about that, but but chewing on ice is a sign of sexual frustration, right? That's uh, it's one of the things about it. Uh, I, I mean, ugh. so this is this is hubby writing the story and he doesn't want to go to this friend's wedding because. It's expensive and very highly likely. Wasteful. And also, it wasn't Becky's idea. It was the wife's idea and just said it would probably make her really happy if you did this, too. So there's no expectation on Becky's side. You can still maintain your friendship or whatever. What other over words are hard. What other, you know, uh, whatever kind of a relationship you have with Becky right now, her being a friend of your wife, that's not going to be damaged if you don't go or if you do. It's. It's not going to change anything. It was just your wife's suggestion. I'm sure she wants you there for emotional support or for comfort or for whatever. But now you're not the asking out for not going, for not spending a ton of money to go to a wedding for that is clearly a poor decision on their part. Right. Clearly a very poor decision. The only way this would make any sense for you at all, uh, you have two toddlers, too, is if you guys used it for some kind of vacation, some kind of family vacation. Um, after the wedding, right? Not hijack it to use this whole thing as a vacation like we heard in the story earlier, but but do something afterwards. That's the only way that would justify spending the money and going through the pain of going through going to do that kind of trip. If that is not feasible, don't go. Because I agree, it is very likely wasteful, very likely hella expensive. And that's no. No, no. NTA for you here, OP. For am I the astronaut for not going to my wife's friend's wedding? There's no expectation. Your wife suggested it or said it would probably make her feel better. But <laughs> yeah, this wedding probably shouldn't be happening in the first place. So, yeah. So, yeah. And enjoy the time alone without your kids, Farrell. Uh, Jeannie says they very clearly haven't worked out their issues yet. It's a no for me. Kirsty says, I have to agree with hubby just because of, of the traveling with toddlers. 
And traveling with toddlers is hard. Very. Very. And if you're not doing it to some kind of benefit to the entire family, then don't do it. Don't do it. Angel, thanks so much. Great, greatly appreciate the, the help. Greatly appreciate the help. Hey, we've got Ryan Klaus up in here. Member of the storm for one month. Uh, it says NTA, but I'd go for the free party. Yeah, that's, that's a great there's only the only part of it is that is free is is the party part of it, though. You still have to. The cost is high to travel there, but to travel there with toddlers even higher. And uh, based on this. It says when we first found out about the about the engagement, we discussed the logistics of traveling with two toddlers and decided I would stay behind with the kids so she can enjoy the wedding stress free. Stick with that, because that either means they don't have somebody that they can leave toddlers here with. um, So they would have to bring them. And that's that's um, no, you're not you're not going to enjoy any kind of party time if that's happening here. Also, yeah, uh, Ryan Klaus, that's Candy Thunder's brother, my brother in law. And of course, Ted speaks up here and says, of course, well, yeah, Ryan has a point, especially if it's an open bar. You think you'd make your money back on the open bar from the plane tickets? I would give it my damn. I would, <laughs> I would give it a shot. I'd give it the old college try. Uh, Ted would be out on the dance floor and doubles and ordering shots for everybody. I would make the bartender just keep pouring. I mean, if you're going to make the best out of a bad situation. I hear you. I, I mean, I, I hear you. But it's either mom goes by herself or if the whole family, if hubby comes, the toddlers come with him. So there's there's no even if you can found somebody to watch the kids for that night, like you still have to, to come back and caring for kids or toddlers hangover morning. I imagine is not fun. I imagine it's not fun. New Ted would, would make an opinion. No, there you go. Yoko. Uh it's not official. It's not official Tony feedback yet. We haven't done official Tony feedback yet. It will come. Disembodied Tony is the point and says. <laughs> Brother Thunder. I like it. Oh, developer girl. Yeah. Don't be that guy that dumps toddlers on other sober guests because of an open bar. Yeah, that's why if you're like, it's not worth it's not, You don't. There's no party if you're bringing your toddlers. None. None. Okay. Uh, hey, in this next one, in this next one, uh, this next story, I think Candy Thunder is actually going to give some feedback at the end of this story. So you ready for that? <laughs> She's over there munching on something, got her mouth full. It's okay. You got some time. I got to read the story first. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Fluffy Buddy says, so the mic he gave earlier, or the feedback he gave earlier on the mic didn't count as feedback. What did you get feedback? On camera, on camera giving He's got to be on camera giving his feedback. That's what the that's what the square is intended for, at least. Official. Official. Save your money, take the toddlers to a playhouse and wear them out. There you go. There you go. Okay, here we go. This one is from the Dusty Thunder subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for not cleaning our dog? My 19 male and my fiance, 19 female, got into a fight earlier today. Our dog was in her crate and she had diarrhea everywhere. I asked my fiance nicely if she could clean it as this wasn't the first time this had happened. And the last time it didn't ha- last time it did happen, I cleaned it all. She made the excuse that she had to make dinner. But first of all, it was the weekend, so no need to rush. And second of all, it was a bit early for dinner regardless. I told her that the kids could wait just a bit while it was cleaned, then we could make dinner afterward. I also told her that it was her dog. She fought back by saying, no, it's our dog. She only ever refers to her dog as our dog if it benefits her or if it's a chore. Cleaning after the dog, taking out the dog, feeding the dog, etc. is usually my job, mainly because she simply won't do it or she will ask me to. This is when she's our dog. But whenever I'm trying to train the dog, play with the dog, or if we're talking about vet bills because she pays for them, it's suddenly her dog. Jennifer, thanks so much for the live, says, hey, I'm enjoying the live. Thanks for the super there. Greatly appreciate it. I said this all. I said this all to her and it made it even more and it made her even more mad. She then called on her father to watch the kids while me and her both cleaned. We get downstairs where the crate is and she starts yelling at me and cussing at me. I asked if she could please stop yelling at me if she expected help. 
She then told me that she's yelling because when I talk to you, I always feel like I have to explain things when it should be common sense. Oof. And then she left the room and went upstairs. She's making me feel like a complete idiot. And it feels like there is something she's keeping. It feels like this is something she's been keeping inside for a long time. Part of me feels like I'm in the wrong here, but the other part of me is still pissed for what she said. So am I the astronaut? Edit for some clarification. The dog was not in the crate as we were cleaning it. I know it seems like I'm keeping score, but that's not the case. I'm not the only one who thinks my fiance isn't doing enough around the house. She never does anything to take care of the dog other than pay the vet bills. She doesn't even give the dog meds or take her outside or anything like that. She also doesn't do much with the kids when they're home. She usually sits down looking at her phone rather than giving them any attention. I've also been asked what I was doing at the time and why I couldn't just clean it up if I wasn't doing anything. I was the one who was watching the kids while she was on her phone. I went downstairs for a moment to get some diapers from for my youngest as she didn't have any more upstairs at the time. While I was down there, my fiance's mother was the one watching the kids while she sat on her phone. I noticed the diarrhea when I was downstairs. When I came back upstairs, she was still on her phone and that's when I asked her to clean it. Then she made the excuse of making dinner, even though she said nothing about it and wasn't moving at all beforehand. So, ladies and gents, let's go ahead and get the one and only Candy Thunder up here to have a discussion about this. I'm going standing mode. I was wondering. Going standing mode. Did you, did you want me to sit on your lap? There we go. Go ahead, jump in. Um, why why did this woman get a dog if she doesn't want to take care of it? I I, I, don't know. I mean, I feel like, um, I don't know. I mean, if the dogs get sick at home, I feel like you, if you're there, like, I don't know. You normally handle that if the dogs do get sick at home, but I'll do it if I have to. Like, and I think that's just more like you do that. I don't know, because you don't mind or you love me. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I think this all ties back to the uh, the me, not we approach, right? Right. That's there's true. there's a teamwork yeah. side of this that I think comes maybe with some age and wisdom. But but like Chad is getting stuck right now. Oh, she's 19. How are they 19 with multiple kids? I mean, that's, it's possible, but that's uh, she's OK. I did not see I didn't hear the 19 part. Um, So she's. 19 um and has kids and a dog and when you get kids or a dog we've said this yesterday you realize how selfish you are and you have to change you can't you can't have kids and a dog and expect your life to remain the same because it's it, it is not possible um you're you have to put them first sometimes and you have to give them your everything and you get what's left and that's how it works when they're small and then you get more freedom back but she just doesn't She's not putting that selfishness away and it's it's evident and I don't I don't think that he's wrong for asking her to help with the hard stuff too and not just pay the vet bill or something. Yeah. I don't this is very weird. Yeah. Well, I mean the, you have to be willing to do anything basically. And I mean there was an amount of time where where we were going through a lot of cleanup issues and, <laughs> and Luna, like, Luna was young. Yes. Like somebody said here uh a lot of that who's going to take care of it comes down to who has the stronger gag reflex. Okay. I have a very when when it comes to navy, um I don't have a gag reflex at all. I can change any dirty diaper out, out there. It does not bother me whatsoever. Dogs um bother me so much. Like the smell and the it it bothers me very much. And so he he will handle it. I will handle it if I have to. Only can, only because she gets like violently I just dry heap a lot and I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop. It is so funny. <laughs> It's so funny. She she also did that the first time I took her to the dump. Uh, it wasn't like a date or anything. We were taking a, lo a truckload to the dump and open up the door like at the part where you shove everything out. And there's actual trash juice on the ground. Right. I said trash juice earlier today. This is the second time. Um, <laughs> Add that to the bingo. Three, three times, I guess. But it was everywhere. And she's like, oh, my gosh, she was wearing a T-shirt that says I'm a Rachel. Uh, and and it was just it was you couldn't script it any better. It was so great. It was it was hilarious. Uh, but. She's 19. They have multiple kids. Don't you think there's probably a high likelihood that PPD is involved as well, though? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how. There's Maybe. probably, I mean, there's a potential for postpartum. There's a potential for just regret and Gosh, losing out on, just... on a part of her life and just clinging to just checking out mentally. 
Uh, they are both 19, 19 yeah. male, 19 female. Um, I, this is so hard. I, kids are something that you have early. I don't think, I don't think anyone ever in, intends to get pregnant at 16 or 18. Maybe I'm miss, I'm misspeaking, but I don't think that's true because you, I think at 16, 18, 19, like you, you deserve to have that childhood. You don't having kids immediately cuts off your childhood. Like you're done. Yeah. You, you're, you, you are graduate adult. to adulthood yeah, immediately. It, it is, it is quick and it is fast and it's done. Um, and I, I just, I have to wonder how you have how multiple. That's just, that's, and then you get a dog on top of that when you don't even want to interact with the kids that you already have. Like right. that's, I don't know. It's like, I think you see people that have these lives that feel like they're, they're doing it all um, with the kids and the dog and, but what you don't see, and it's like the social media thing, but you don't see the hard parts of that. You don't see the mess in the kennel. You don't see the no sleep. Like you don't see all of that. You see people happy with their kids and their dog. And that is not real life. Like real life is shit in the kennel. And, and, and how and you having, handle it. And how right, you handle yeah. it with your partner. Real life is pouring into your partner so that you have a strong foundation and not just a, it's your turn to do the dog shit. It's your turn to do the dog shit. That's that's not a partnership. No. And and I think you build toward that though, right? right? Like we're at the point now where we know what needs to be done. It doesn't matter who does it. It just, these things need, need to be done before we can do this. Right. So we both run at things and and yeah, there's a lot of talk about, OP being frustrated with her just choosing to sit there on her phone. That is a mental checkout for her, right? As it is for a lot of people. That's an escape for her. That's an escape from the reality going, going on around her. That is a problem. But also the, the in-laws were referenced here. I don't know if OP lives, if they live with her parents or. She said she tagged in her dad. So I would assume he was either close by. So or in the house, yeah, which I think makes it a lot more. So they're enabling her ability to check out because I'm sure oh, yeah, mommy yeah. is there to jump in and yeah. to to help yeah, take yeah, care yeah. of the bebés and do everything for them. Ah. Uh, so this is this is tough. It's a tough position yeah. to be at a 19. She does either, you know, whether it's whether it's depression induced or whether it's just her regretting choosing to grow up or accidentally growing up at this point in her life, whatever it is, she's going to have to grow up eventually and right. snap out of it and put the phone down and actually engage with the real world happening around her. She's going to have to do it. <laughs> Candy Biddle. Candy's alike. She said she, her Diet Coke is bubbling over. <laughs> Frozen Diet Coke. Oh man, Coke. I've got one in the freezer. Oh no. I got to get it. <laughs> no, it's only been in there for a couple of <laughs> Um Also, while we're on the subject of dogs, and I think everyone here probably that has a dog, one of the dog, but man, do not get a dog if you don't intend to pour into that dog and take care of that dog and be there for that dog because a dog is like a child and they need that attention. They need your focus. They need to be trained. Like it is, a, in some ways, dogs are harder because it's all at one, like this two month period where you're training, training, training. And if you don't get a dog until you know 100% that you want that dog, go spend time with dogs if you yeah. haven't before like they are hard work they're not easy and to get one and then like not want to take care of it just pisses me off so bad maintain a plant for a while first I, I think it's a it's yeah there's, there's a lot of work involved and a lot of things in life are like that it's the same thing with relationships right. you know people want a relationship but they don't want to do the work to maintain it it's it's a and dogs poop a lot you know i mean what? and don't get me wrong my dogs poop a lot my dogs are they're they can be assholes too like but I still love them, and I I agreed to take care of them. I adopted them. I brought them into our lives. I I did that. I'm 100 percent certain that that was all me. They <laughs> they are my dogs sometimes. Well, Luna is. Yeah. Oliver, I don't think is ever my dog because he's just he'd crawl inside your ass if he could. He he's just that kind of attached he's a, to his he's mama. He's a tiny pup. But yeah. but Luna, yeah, Luna becomes my dog sometimes. Yeah. She's uh mostly when she's done something wrong, right? All right. <laughs> or needs yeah. a bath or needs to go outside yeah. or when she if she 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 has only really gotten sick one time and we had come back from branson and we walk into our house and our whole house had this smell and we we're like what is that because someone had been there dog sitting for us um but they had left a couple hours earlier um and it was like we finally found it upstairs it's like she was so embarrassed that she got sick it was upstairs and it was full-on giant dog sickness and 
She was like, I'm so sorry. Oh, there's, there's but been, the whole house was just like, there was a time freaked. when the first and only time we ever got her a pup cup at, uh, Oh, she got so sick. Was it Starbucks or Chick-fil-A? I can't remember. No, it was, uh, Freddy's. 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 It was, so it was custard. And I think that was the problem. She found says out. a very sensitive stomach. Yeah. Well, of course she does. She's a golden doodle. She's, uh, she's yes. Found out right then and there that her stomach is very sensitive. and can't handle a lot of things. No, pup just cup. Only dog No food. bueno. And, but this this is a theme for their life right now. And age right. obviously has a lot to do with it. You are completely out of I'm sorry. Right I'm sorry. <laughs> she drifts backwards. like stands there. Well, I was like, going to I was gonna head off so we could read the next story. Uh, it's like you, you've got the, the candy thunder moonwalk. Yeah, I just, I go into the bushes. <laughs> you got the candy thunder, candy thunder moonwalk going on here. Yeah. Luna is like just all people food intolerant. Um, except for plain glazed daylight donuts. <laughs> That dog would eat a whole bag of donut holes, and it doesn't make her sick. And Freaking she, dogs have sweet tooths. So I don't know. Yeah. She gets so excited if Dustin brings her donuts. Donut, oh, donut, donut I'll holes. get a bag of donut holes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's just, what's hilarious, though, is that, you know, normally with a dog, you can be like, sit, and then you can toss it up, and the dog will grab it. This dog has no coordination whatsoever. She will miss 10 out of 10 times. But she tries so hard. <laughs> <laughs> then it hits her nose and then it falls down. We need to film it because it's just, it's truly Oliver, embarrassing. Oliver just goes like this <laughs> and watches it hit the ground and he's like, mine. Oh my God. Okay. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Bye guys. Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm going to just stay standing for a bit here. I got, I got my sitting break. Stand up for a bit. We're three hours and 22 minutes into this 24 hour stream. What have we done, Tony? What have we gotten ourselves into? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> gut pile mafia. I'm not sure about that. Um, dog actively avoids any treat being thrown to him. And that that's almost Luna, but she tries, she tries really hard to, to snag it. She just got no, no coordination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just, she, she and she chomps like a shark when she's going for that treat too. It's like whack, a, totally miss. There's a video on my Facebook reels. Oh, you have a Instagram video reels. on your Insta reels yeah, of Luna catching goldfish. Oh, nice. Okay, Candy Thunder's Insta reels have a video of of Luna not catching goldfish, right? Or she actually did catch it. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, you just watching Shit's Creek? Heck yes. Like, I've got to film. I've got to film her uh, trying to catch treats and failing. It's going to be hilarious. I got to slow-mo film it, too. Okay, here we go. We're going to dive into the next story here. This is another follower-submitted story and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Making My Mom Cry? Don't forget, if you've come over to the YouTube side from TikTok, which we'll be back at at 4 p.m. Central Time, um, to like and subscribe and share the stream, please. Greatly appreciate that. Kim, we're getting you through a very slow work day. Yes. Awesome. We we have a theory that that this is going to fly for us because we're going to be busy the whole time, but we'll see. Um, come midnight, we may have a different opinion. Hi, Dusty. Long time listener. I'd love some feedback about this. My brother likes to call him Ricky, 27 male, and I, 25 female. I'm sorry. My brother, let's call him Ricky, 27 male, and I, 25 male, made a comment about a past birthday party, and it made my mother cry. For context, I have never had my own birthday party. I've always had to share it with my brother and five to six cousins born around the same time. I loved it as a kid, but once I became a teenager, I lost interest because I knew I'd just have to share. Ricky seemed to as well. Ricky was turning 18 and I was turning 16. Since both birthdays are milestones, my mom asked us if we wanted a party. We weren't for it at first, but she had recently gotten a promotion and was making more money than ever, so she convinced us to finally have a party again on one condition. It would be just our party. No one else would get to have a birthday cake or presents. It would be just our party for once. She agreed and promised us that it would be just our party. Well, this is some foreshadowing. I think we know what's going to happen here, don't we? Fast forward to the party and it was a great day. Lots of family showed up, including my cousin Ellen and her six-year-old daughter, Justice. It was a great party. We had custom cakes and everything was themed to Ricky and my interests. We played football all day. Then after we blew out the candles, my mom took number one candle off, off of my cake, leaving the six and told everyone, 
We're all going to sing happy birthday to Justice real quick. Bum, bum, bum. Got the womp womp on that one, right? My brother and I were very taken aback. Apparently, it was Justice's birthday that day, and Ellen told my mom that she wanted something done to recognize that it's Justice's birthday, too. My mom agreed without ever asking us if it was okay or at least giving us a heads up. It honestly hurt a lot. I never had a birthday party again and never wanted one. Fast forward to the present day. When I get around Ricky, he and I will sometimes discuss our not the greatest childhood in a joking way. It's our only outlet for it and we can relate to each other. I brought up how the birthday party fiasco made me never want to party again and described what happened in a room full of close family. I did it lightheartedly and didn't have and didn't have some breakdown or anything. Candy Thunder. What do you do? What do you, what do you she's like, I just want to try it. I just want to know. I just want to do it. Uh, <laughs> Candy Thunder, thanks so much for the super there. Greatly appreciate it. <laughs> you know, a portion of that goes to YouTube, so so actually, like, that just cost us. Right? I'm just kidding. I just, I know you want to try it. Out. That's, that's hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. I saw it pop up and I looked over and I'll be damned. There it is. It's Candy Thunder. Okay. But when my mom heard it, she left the house and I found her crying outside. I asked her why and she went off about how it wasn't a big deal and we should get over it and stop trying to make her look like a bad mom around our family after giving us what we asked for. I told her, that's the thing. You gave us exactly what we didn't ask for. She left the house and hours later I got a text from her telling me I owed her an apology for how I treated her. I don't think I did anything wrong, but some of my family members think I went too far and should have just let the past be the past while my brother and our wives are on my side. I'd love an outside perspective. Was I wrong for bringing up the party from so long ago? No. Nope. No. no your mom's in denial here. And go back to that specific instance. She knew. She knew what she was doing. You guys specifically asked for that not to happen. And she even nonchalant slid it in. She's like, oh, we're just going to do this real quick. Without telling you ahead of time, there's a reason she didn't tell you ahead of time because she knew it was wrong. She knew she was wrong. She knew it, knew it, knew it. And that's why she's in denial now as well. She just doesn't want people to, she doesn't want you to make her feel bad. She doesn't want to return to the feelings of feeling like shit about that. Uh, and it, no, it's it's real. Her pretending like it doesn't exist is is not healthy. And apparently she still has some some issues with this or it wouldn't have hit her as hard as it did. It's like you 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 recalled a bunch of of suppressed. Not trauma, but you, you recalled a lot of suppressed feelings that she has about this topic. Guilt is a huge, huge thing for parents, a huge thing for parents. And maybe maybe her sister guilted her into to doing the thing for justice, but it doesn't matter. She promised you guys that she would do this without doing that and then broke that promise. So what the what what the hell do you want, mom? You want us to pretend like it didn't happen? Pretend like you didn't lie? Pretend. She's in denial. That's it. You're not an asshole for making your mom cry. And, and I would reword that that. Uh, that title or the question here, because it's, it's, am I the asking out for bringing this up? The fact that it made your mom cry is a her problem. It happened. Yeah. The past is the past, but, but it happened. Oy vey. Oh, uh, what do we need to talk about here? I'm looking at chat. Ah, okay. So yeah, yeah. On on this, you actually have to hit the like button for the video, and it is like the thumbs up like button. Yeah. Right? So if you're wa if you're watching on desktop, right underneath it, it's got the thumbs up. Um, and then if on mobile, if you're watching the three dots at the top right corner, you can click that and hit like. Yep. 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 There you go. You like it that way. Uh, developer girl says likes on YouTube are the thumbs up button, not the hearts. Still love the hearts though. And also thanks for the super developer girl. Greatly appreciate that. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, Madeline. Yeah, it happened. It's a fact. I'm not talking about it. Isn't going to make that go away. 
And I understand. I understand that she doesn't want to bring that back up. I get that. But it happened. And she has to accept responsibility for that. The whole victimization here of her saying, now you guys owe me an apology. Bullshit, mom. You owe us an apology. What exactly do we owe you an apology for? For reminding you of this shitty thing that you did? Reminding you of that time that you lied to us? Cool. Still doing a bang up job. It's garbage. Uh, It's garbage, but she knows it's garbage. This is a deflection. And everybody else in the family, that's like, oh, you took this too far. They know that their lives are going to be hell for a while. We talk about this a lot. They're, they know the pain they're going to experience by listening to her dribble on about this for the next few days. That's why they're like, oh, walk it back. Apologize. Do it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Because they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. Jennifer with us for seven months says hello everyone glad to have you here Jade thank you so much for the super greatly appreciate that thank you thank you thank you thank you for children uh, it's a thing not to believe mom mom's words again yeah uh, there's, there's Roy there's not a huge thing about just the thing with justice is that mom promised to make this party only for them and ended up going back and breaking that promise during the party. And then years later, they brought it up joking around about it. She left crying and now called and says, or sent a message and said that they owe her an apology. <laughs> Yoko, I didn't, I didn't see that we had above, uh, above 900. Heck, thank That's awesome. That's all. It doesn't show me what the active number is right now. I don't think, uh, 834 right now, at least for, for what I'm looking at. Heck yeah. That's awesome. The hurt was enough for it to be remembered for years. Kiersey, yeah. Yeah, absolutely it was. And her pretending that it doesn't exist doesn't make it not exist. And that may work for her. doesn't work for everybody else. Sandra says, if she apologized back then, you don't need to rehash it to the point of hurting others. But she never did. She never did apologize. Right? Nope, never did apologize. Never talked to him about it beforehand or afterward. Just like now, pretended that it didn't happen. Pretended that it didn't exist. All righty. Let's dive over to our next one, eh? Jump over to the next one. We have been live for three hours and 33 minutes. Home stretch. Yes, Blessed Wonder Woman. If she had apologized years ago, it wouldn't have been brought up. Yes. Yes. Mobile keeps freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, Alan. Thank you for the reminder there. It is free to subscribe on YouTube. Help us hit the subscriber goal. We're trying to get 10K new subscribers today. I don't know what we're at right now. What are we at? Oh, dear. I've messed up my windows now. I've got to fix those right quick. Boop. Boop. Here we go. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. I, I clicked the wrong thing. What is happening? You're going to hear something weird here in a second because I know this thing auto plays. I'm going to try to stop it. Oh, no, it didn't. Perfect. Okay. We're at, uh, are we at 28.6? Is that where we're still at? Okay, we got a long way to go. Make sure if you're not subscribed on the YouTube side already, make sure you do that. Um, or yeah. we'll be streaming for 72 hours and we'll still be like, guys, oh, if we, we can don't get there, if we don't hit 10,000 new subscribers by the end of the 24 hours, Dusty and Candy are going to fire me. So <laughs> we've got to uh, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your male person, tell the person at the drive through window, tell them to subscribe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know what? I, ha I, I have kid. To, I kid. I, I got a message. We got a message. As on, Candy shakes her head. No. <laughs> we got a message on uh, on on TikTok. I think it was yesterday um, from one of our new our new members of the gosh heck and fam over there. And uh, and she was letting us know that she listens to us while she grades papers. And when she listens to the content while she grades papers, she generally gives out better grades. Like she just looks at things through a different filter and thinks about things through a different filter. So she's explained to her students that that she does this and that they generally get better grades when she's listening to the Dusty Thunder content while she's grading. And I'm like, that is amazing. That is amazing. I love it. 
Karen subscribed yesterday. Heck yes. <laughs> no, bug daddies. You can't resubscribe and then or unsubscribe and then resubscribe. That won't help. That won't help us. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. It is. It was a. Uh... <laughs> Tony Fib Square. I like it. I like it. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into our next story here, right? This one comes from the AITA subreddit as well and is titled, Am I the astronaut for eating pizza that was left out on the counter overnight? Is that a is that like a cardinal cardinal rule? Is it one of the seven deadly sins? I've done it. I'm not going to lie. I've done, I've done it. For some background, I currently work nights, and so I am on a different sleep schedule than most of my family who I live with. When someone in the house cooks, it is often shared around with the person asking others if they want it. Because of my schedule, it's pretty common for me to wake up or come home from work and find dinner in the fridge or occasionally on the counter, and I'll help myself to some. I live in a sort of separate separate. I live in a sort of separated apartment from the rest of the house, so we're in different worlds at times. In this situation, I woke up at around midnight and had some cereal. I briefly checked the main house and nobody was awake, so I went back to my desk and played played some games for a few hours. At around 4, I went back up to check the fridge and see if any food had been made, but I didn't see anything. I looked around the kitchen and found what looked like half of a homemade pizza that my sister had made. When food is left out on the counter, I often take this as a sign for me to have the rest of what is left because I know it's unsafe to leave food on the counter for too long. So I took the pizza, heated up what was left, and ate it as my sort of dinner. Everything was fine for a few more hours, and then at around 10 this morning, this is secondhand info, my sister asked my grandmother where her pizza was. My grandmother tells her that it should still be on the counter, and my sister comes to me, to which I tell her that I ate it. My sister freaks out at me, yelling at me that it wasn't mine to eat and that she was looking forward to having it. If I knew she didn't mean to share any of it, I certainly wouldn't have have had any of it at all and i probably shouldn't have had all of it so our words are hard that came out really weird if i knew she didn't mean to share any of it i certainly wouldn't have had any of it at all and i probably shouldn't have had all of it i reasoned that if i had made pizza the night before at 8 p.m and left it out for over 12 hours until 10 in the morning the next day it would kind of be garbage to me even the six hours until i took the pizza was kind of stretching it to me and if she was going to leave it out so long where it could gather bacteria i figured she had what she wanted of it and didn't care for the rest if it helps she often makes things she does not like very much and makes a fuss of me or or our grandmother eating her leftovers to not waste food Though I think my reasoning and the situation is pretty solid, I feel like I might be the asshole because she was extremely upset. I also could have put the pizza or some of the pizza in the fridge when I found it instead of taking it all. I would have done this, so I knew the situation would turn out like this, but as I've explained, I didn't think anyone wanted it. Though I've never done anything like that before, and usually leftovers that are meant to be preserved are put in the fridge, am I the asconaut? Hell no. 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 I gotta reset here to be able to pull up the NTA in T A. Not the Askonaut. Jennifer agreed. Sister feels like a brat. Why? What? Why? If you leave it out on the counter overnight, it's fair game. If you leave it out on the counter, period, I think it's pretty well fair game. If you don't want someone to take it, label it. She did none of these things. It would have been wasted had you not eaten it or or <sighs> she's mad because you didn't read her mind, right? She's mad that you didn't read her mind and, and automatically be like, oh, she forgot to put this up. Let me put it in the fridge for you. Nah, it's not your fault. It's not your fault that she screwed up. It is not your fault. If she wanted to keep it, she should have put it in the fridge or, or put it in a container of some kind, just leaving it out was making it fair game. If you live with others, yeah, and you want to save it, put your name on it. There has to be some kind of note. There has to be some kind of indication. The the accepted process at this point was if it was left out, it was fair game. Yeah, Martinez, he was supposed to supposed to wake everyone up at midnight and be like, hey, is this your pizza? Is this okay? Is this, uh, this your pizza? That's okay? That's okay? That's okay? Should have sent a text, left the note, or put it away. There you go. Allie's unholy. <laughs> Beth says, I'm used to my kids eating my leftovers, even if I label it. Fluffy buddy, I think that's the kicker. She deviated from the expectations. She deviated from the process. Uh, so 
It's a come what may situation. Come what may situation. She left it out. <laughs> Metallic Diva. If you like it, then you should have put a name on it. Getting, getting some Beyonce going there. There you go. That we need it. You know what? We need to make a video that is about this. That just goes along with these kind of stories and this kind of content. And it is about uh, not being able to bitch at people um, who eat food that's been left out or that they didn't label or something like that. And it is that. We'll just make a music video. If you like it, then you should have put a name on it. There is <laughs> just a little preview. There is a story later on at some point in this stream about what happens if you repeatedly eat someone's food that's not yours too. So here while we're talking about this. I'm gonna move this. So oh, no. so when no. Yeah, you can. Now you now you guys get uh Whenever Candy Thunder and or Tony Spark chime in, we can go over there and you can still see the clock to see how, how long we've been on here. There we go. Did you, hide, did you hide behind the monitors? Candy Thunder. Candy Thunder. Uh, we have a team of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 eight ish. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tony's bark said we'll be one lighter if we don't hit 10k <laughs> Peter says I had to advise my spouse to labor the, label the lef leftovers from my dad hey you know what I, I think that's the way I, I think we should do a music video it would be amazing but it's an NTA it was, it's, a, it's not your fault that she screwed up and she might be frustrated at herself more than you, but is projecting it out at you because she doesn't know where else to go with it and whatever. But it's not your fault. It's definitely not your fault. All right, we are jumping to the next story here. We're just bopping along, bopping along. How are you guys doing? You hanging in there? We're doing all right. We're live. Uh, Francis, we are jumping back over to the, yep, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. You guys already took care of it. Look at that. DFHB music videos. I, and that can be the first. I'm game. We uh, do what? I know. She, yeah, Jesse on our team who isn't here today, but has been wanting to do uh, a music video for a long, long, long time. Um, Candy Thunder and I had an idea for a hilarious movie trailer. I can't remember the concept now. Oh, it's Jumping Jack. Yes, it's Jumping Jack. I don't know what where this came from. Uh it was, yeah, it came from Elevation, but but here's the general premise, and it was much funnier at the time, and it'd be much funnier if we actually made this, because me telling you about it isn't isn't the same, but it would be, I thought we could use like, you know, like Caden, uh, we, we'd have like a young couple like sitting there watching a movie or something, and then they hear something, and they pause the movie, and they look around, and they're like, what was that? What was that? And then you hear this sound, like a, they hear this like swish and a swish clap, swish clap. Uh, they're like, what the, what the heck is that? And they go kind of looking for it. And they look down the hallway and they see a silhouette of, of this guy standing there. But he's doing jumping jacks like toward them. Just jumping jacks. They're like, oh my God, it's jumping jack. Jumping jack can be like like, like, a, like, a, like a horror movie villain. Only it's a parody. It, it is. This is a parody. It's not a real scary movie. But we make jumping jack like, like, uh, like Jason or Freddy Krueger or something like that. And it would be hilarious. But we do it like it's all legitimately scary, but it's Jumping Jack. Jumping Jack. Uh, Mary. We've been on for three hours and 45 minutes now. We did two hours on a little over two hours on TikTok. And uh, and we're going to go back there at 4 p.m. Is his name Flash? No, it's the guy. No, it's Jumping Jack. It's his name. Jumping Jack. What do we say? Uh, never turn your back. I'm jumping jack. There was something else there too. We had so we had some good things for it. We laughed our asses off about it at the time, and I still think it would be hilarious. <laughs> yes, it's still funny. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Miles gonna play Jack, jumping Jack. He good. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping Jack Flash. Oh, okay. That's a movie. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg thing. We'll have to look it up. We'll have to look it up. 
All right, let's dive into the next. No, I'm on both. Uh, Kaylin, we're going to be on YouTube this whole time. I think YouTube has like a max out at 12 hours for a stream that we'll have to reset and just start like right back up again. Uh, but we're going to be on YouTube for this entire 24 hour stream. And we're just jumping into TikTok a couple times intermittently. The goal is to grow the YouTube side. So that's why we're primarily over here. Dylan, yes, we absolutely were. But it's still funny if we did it right. And we have the means to, to I mean, we've got all the camera gear and the ability to make a, a, a realistic looking movie trailers. I really want to do it. Really want to do it. Jack versus Caden and his army of beans. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping Jack and the beanstalk. All right. This one is from the AITA subreddit and Candy Thunder is going to give feedback on this one as well. Title of this one is Am I the Astronaut for Watching Shows Without My Wife? This started a while ago, but I was watching Invincible on Prime. Cool, fine, whatever, but I told my wife about it and how it's been good so far, and she got upset that I watched it without her. We never said we'd watch it together, though. Should I have assumed that we would? Probably. That's when, or then she wanted to watch Beat Stars. Is it Beat Stars or Beast Stars? Anybody know? Beast Stars? It says B-Stars on here. Um, then she wanted to watch B-Stars together. She already watched it, but wanted to re-watch it with me. But I wasn't in the room at the same time. So she already watched three episodes without me, but I didn't say anything. The next day I said, I'll just watch the three episodes and catch up to where you are now. That sound, that seemed like the perfectly reasonable thing to say, right? Wrong, I guess. She got really upset and was on the verge of tears. We discussed why she was upset, and she thought that I meant... I would just watch it by myself all the way through. Simple misunderstanding. Then, uh, oh, I have to work on this pronunciation. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. How do you say that? No. Is it Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah. Okay. Then Jujutsu Kaisen became popular and neither of us had watched it. So we said we would watch it together. Great, I thought. We finally get to watch a good anime together and there's nothing that will go wrong. Well, we watched two episodes and I had to beg to watch them with her. She would rather watch RuPaul's Drag Race. I have nothing against the show, but when you say let's watch JJK together and just choose not to, what was the point in saying let's watch it? I made a joke about watching myself and she started crying and got mad at me. To this day, we have still only watched two episodes together. I've watched a few episodes myself privately. Then she wanted to get into Naruto, which I'm a big fan of. So I put it on my TV while I cooked her dinner. She watched a couple of episodes with me while we ate while we ate the food. Everything was going great. The next day, she turns on the TV and goes right back to RuPaul's Drag Race. I get it. She likes the show. I have no problem with that. But why does she say, let's watch this show, then never watches it? Then I watch it by myself and she gets mad at me. I'm not saying she has to watch the show every day, but even when I bring up, hey, let's watch an episode or two of Naruto, she gives me a stink eye and groans. But I want to watch Drag Race, she says. Fine, then watch it. I don't care if you watch it. Do what makes you happy. But if I want to watch a show, I'm the bad guy and I don't care about her. So am I the astronaut for watching shows by myself? If I'm doing something wrong and I'm just oblivious, please tell me. Oh, I, I'm really interested to hear Candy Thunder's thoughts here. So let's bring her on. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder once again. Oh my God, it's Candy Thunder. It's loud. You think, you think I'm still going to be uh, able to intro you like that at midnight? For sure. If anyone oh, can do it, you got this. Ciao. I believe in you. Um, it's not about the TV shows. Correct. It's not about the TV shows at all. It's and about... thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. I'm going to step you up a little bit. Okay. Feel, I feel oh, so... Okay, feel I what? don't... You feel so well... I feel like I'm in the mic whenever I do this, but I'm not. I can see that on the camera. So. Yeah. Um, I don't... I don't not... This is not about TV. This is just about... Um, I think it's more about like a love language that's not being fulfilled. And so the one-on-one -on -one time that you get while watching TV is what she's craving. Um, but she needs to learn how to communicate how she's actually feeling and not make it about watching TV shows together because you can't, you can't read her mind. You can't figure that out. And she has to be able to communicate what's not being fulfilled for her in this relationship. And I can guarantee you it's not TV shows. Yeah. My first thought here was this is... Like we we use shows as a quality time thing because mm -hmm. because you know we've got eight thousand things going on any given day and and we have to be intentional about our time and and 
a an unwind time that we need to have anyway, we use this quality time. Right. I think that works well. Krista, thank you so much. Great. Yes, I appreciate thank you. it. Super. Uh, in this case, the shows that she's presenting are our quality time shows. And whenever you put them on um, and you let her watch a couple episodes while you cook dinner, that's not fulfilling the quality time that she's looking for. It seems like if this were her and I, it would be a, well, I'm not going to watch it if we can't cuddle up and watch it together because that's that's right. the whole intention of the That's well, just like intimacy um, doesn't always mean, you know, sex. And you have to be intimate in other ways. And I think that that's what she's wanting. But again, you can't. You can't expect your partner to read your mind and say you want to watch this show and expect them to know that that means quality time. Um, I think, and I don't mean this as any offense, but I think guys in general need you to communicate clearly, whereas girls can pick up more on what she's feeling because they understand it. But a guy is going to need you to speak. Tell your me mind. what you mean. Yep. And not just like say, I need this TV. I want to watch this TV show with you. Tell me exactly what it yes. is that you're needing and that you're not getting from me. Re, thank you so much for the super there. Greatly appreciate it. I don't think I don't think anyone is an asshole in this story. I mean, maybe her a little bit because I feel like she's being a little bit childish in the way that she is going about this. Um, instead of saying you're not I'm not getting this from this or I'm not doing I, she needs to speak up. I uh, I don't know that she realizes what she's doing. Aww. You know what I mean? I don't mm, I don't yeah. know that she realizes it because she's she's saying, you know, when she has the choice to sit in and watch her show by right. herself, she's going to turn on the show that she wants to watch by herself. Right. She may not realize that like she thinks if it's an us show, it's an us sitting together show. And if I'm sitting alone, it's a me show. That may be just how how, how simple it is in her mind, but yes, don't make it a puzzle. Yeah. If she realizes what's going on, she definitely needs to speak up and communicate that. It is a communication issue, period. Um, it is definitely a communication issue. They need to figure out. Well, somebody has to figure this thing out and be able to communicate it and say, okay, what's this really but about? Isn't it wild that a lot of relationships end um, because you didn't say like exactly what you need or what you want. Yeah. Like you, and so, and that leads to like passive aggressive behavior and, and things like that, which I kind of think is where she's heading with this is, is being a little bit passive aggressive, like with her, if she realizes what she's doing. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe she doesn't, like you said, if she's younger, they do, it doesn't give ages. I did check, but um, if she's younger, I don't think she would probably even realize what she's doing. And I don't think you realize that until you get a little bit older and more mature, but yeah, this is this is definitely not the way to accomplish what you're wanting to to get out of a relationship. Yeah, Jennifer Langton says here, uh, one month in th thunder crew. By the way, words are hard. After my first marriage, I learned it is more satisfying to just say what you need than get it. Yeah, uh, I think you get over that at some mm -hmm. point. Over like I shouldn't have to say this, or I don't know how to verbalize this. At some point, there's enough pain where you're like, okay, here's what I need to happen. Um, and, you, and you're right. You tell me that all the time. You're like, I mean, but this has been a while, but just say what you mean. Don't. And I was passive aggressive. I was hardcore passive aggressive and it was ugly and I would never go back there. Um, so if I if I feel myself getting frustrated about something, um, I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to talk about it so that it doesn't fester within me and create feelings of of this where I'm not getting what I feel like I need yeah. to get. Well, I think there's also a personality type difference in here as well, right? Because because I, like you've said before, I walk into a room and I'm laser focused on what I need to do in that room. Even if it is stuff we're doing at home uh, and, and I've got, got missions of whatever the heck I'm doing in there, if there's some kind of subliminal thing going on, I'm not going to catch it because I'm super focused on what I'm doing right now. So and if, and if you have that, if you're already being passive aggressive and the person doesn't pick up on that you're upset, it just leads to more passive aggressive behavior. So it's yeah. never going to get it's never going to get you what you want. It's never going to be the end game for you. So they're in frustration right now. <laughs> right? Yeah. And they're going to lead to resentment. Well, this this I do feel bad for this guy cuz he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand and I I, I, I do feel bad for him because he's yeah. like, I'm, am I, is it just, is it obvious? Am I not seeing it? What do I do? Tell me. Yeah. Um, I, I, well, I think that's the biggest thing is that he has to realize that, that it's not about the shows. It is about like your butts parked there together, actually maybe cuddled up, whatever, however right. you guys do it. But the quality time 
It's not about the shows. It doesn't matter what you're watching. It is about spending that time together. And if she is sitting alone, she's choosing a show that she's only going to watch. And if you're cooking dinner or something, I, I think the connection for her is, then it is not, we're not doing that together. It's not a quality time thing. Also, all the shows, I'm like, I feel like you definitely don't have kids. That's 100% certain. Because none of these. Oh, shows yeah. Are, like, there's a, there's like this line where we, we get like this tiny a bit of TV time. And so it's like, we're intentional with, it's with what we get to watch. Maybe one hour before bedtime. And then we're like, we're too tired. Maybe. <laughs> I'd rather just go to sleep. I so sleep is better. My my predicament always comes up because I'm used to staying up quite a bit later <laughs> Sorry, than Candy okay. Thunder. Um, were you were you not in yeah, frame was, again? <laughs> she just she just doesn't like being in frame. I don't know what the deal is. She likes to be on the very edge of frame. Um, mm-hmm. it is a uh, yeah. thank you, Ellen. By I, the way, I saw that happening. Thank you. Um, I am used to. <laughs> I am I am used to staying up quite a bit later. And uh, so it's always a matter of like how many episodes you got in your Candy Thunder, uh, like yeah, he's, are, you, are you game for one? Nope. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes she's like, yeah, I think so. And then two minutes later, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so no, uh, all right. But I, I do a lot of work at night, or in the past year, yeah. I have been, I have been choosing to just to just go to sleep more often, which has been crazy. <laughs> Fernando got put in timeout. Yeah, Fernando. <laughs> Fernando. Um, but maybe I've just been banking up oh, sleep for the past year for for this for this twenty four yeah, hour stream. All right, next story. All right, it's the last one of this block. Candy Thunder, ladies We're right and gentlemen. on time. Good job. Nice work. Oh, we have two more left. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, we no, got no. it. We we've been running a little bit long anyway. I'd rather I'd rather be running a little bit over than behind or or ahead. Yeah. Candy not in frame should have been the bingo card square. There you go. Happens every time. I'm going to hang a tennis ball. Oh, I'm going to hang a tennis ball like in the garage. Like, I'm going to hang a tennis ball. It's going to touch your forehead to it. And then you know where to stand. That'll work. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. Uh, next to last story here is a follower submitted story. And it is titled... Am I the astronaut for not wanting to celebrate my birthday with my parents? Hey, Dusty, I've watched plenty of your videos and thought that you could help me, especially since you're a parent. I would like to get uh, I would like to get your opinion on this. I, 36 female, soon to be 37, grew up as an only child. However, my parents raised me as if I had siblings. This mainly had to do with the fact that their job consisted of lots of traveling and there were always other kids around. So they taught me to be selfless, pretty much. If anything, I am a people. I am a people pleaser now. Anyway, whenever my birthday rolled around, there was always something else going on. Something with my church, someone else's birthday, or whatever. I didn't really care, but my parents and I always found a way to celebrate one way or another. Sure, as a kid, it would be actual parties, but in high school, it became just the three of us until I started dating my now husband. Now, growing up, I had a pretty good relationship with both of my parents. Well, that changed recently. My relationship with my dad is pretty much the same. We occasionally meet up for lunch and catch up on life. My mom, on the other hand, well, that's a different story. Whenever I would text her, it would take her at least three hours to respond. Now it's eight hours to three days. That's right, days. Even if I call her, she won't pick up. I have to call my dad. It's like as soon as I said I do, a switch flipped because she will respond to my husband in a matter of minutes. We both know this because we tested it. My husband knows that I'm not happy about this, but I try my best to not let it affect me. Now, on to the current problem. Both of my parents have asked where I wanted to go for my birthday. I gave them two options. One, dinner at theirs as a quiet get-together. Two, go to this little quaint winery directly off the beach about 45 minutes away. Immediately, they both had an issue. My mom didn't want to stink up the house from the food. Then my dad complained about the distance for driving. We've been there before. I was completely flabbergasted because in the past they would have said sure to either one. Then my dad started to recommend a place that I had never been to and is in a part of town that I don't feel safe in. I tried to not let their responses affect me, but I know that if my husband had suggested what I did for my birthday, my parents would have been more than happy to do it. That's screwed up. That's not okay. So I am at a loss for what to do because I am hurt by my parents' thoughts. It's to the point that I don't even want to celebrate my birthday. I know that you say pain creates change and this really is changing my or in this is really changing my relationship with my parents because I don't even know if I want to be around them anymore with their actions. 
Anyway, I just want to thank you for taking the time to hear me out because it feels like I have no one who can give me an honest answer. So am I the... Am I the Askinaut for not wanting to celebrate my birthday with my parents? Uh, no. 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 You, okay, let's get this out of the way first. You are not the Askinaut for this, right? You are not the Askinaut for this. I think now it's a matter of where you go from here, right? You're not not an asshole for feeling this way. You're not an asshole for, for not wanting to, to spend time with people who clearly don't value you. Why is a question that I think only they can really answer. Maybe they don't even know. Um, but where do you go from here? How do you, how do you actually mend this <clears throat> or at least provide fertile ground for a solution to present itself? And, and I think you have to be, if you want to have a healthy relationship with your parents, I think you have to have an honest conversation with them and be like, look, here's where we're at. Uh, I've verified that this is happening because we've tested it. I want you to know that if I try to text you, it takes you eight hours to three days to respond. If my husband texts you, you respond right away. Uh, I think you have to spell all this out in black and white for them because either she doesn't know what's happening or she is being intentional and there's a reason behind it. There's a reason behind it either way, but I think you have to present them with the facts and be like, look, this is happening. I know it's happening and it sucks. If it's going to keep happening, fine. But we're not going to I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to allow you to continue treating me like shit. You don't get to be in my life. It's that if that's the case. So present them with the choice and say, look, if you want to be a part of my life. And I think I mean, I would hope that you do. But if you want to be a part of my life, this is what needs to change. Because right now you're a negative influence. Give them the choice. This number one alerts them to the fact that they're doing it. And if it is unintentional, maybe that's enough pain. It would be terrible if I found out if one of the kids brought this to me and said that that I had done this to them. It would be terrible. The other side is if you don't want to mess with that and you know that's malicious, then you just go no contact. I think the the. I think the smart play here is having the conversation with them and hitting them with the facts. Make them aware of it, number two. Tell them what needs to change. And then give them the opportunity to repair this thing moving forward. If they don't, they've made their choice. Yeah, yeah, not that Ellen. Ask why things have changed and what she's missing. If it is unintentional, at least forces them to do some soul searching and figure out themselves what changed because something triggered it. And she says it was right after saying, I do. So what about getting married made her less valuable to them, but not her husband? It doesn't make sense. If she was like this with everybody, if the mom was like this with everybody, then it, it wouldn't be an issue. It'd be like a personality change or you know, something that happens over time. But the fact that the AB tested this with OP and her husband and she responded quickly to the husband is a red flag. Here she says, sounds like they only wanted one child. A mother wanted a boy. It's possible. It is possible. Uh, Alejandra NTA parents asked her what she wanted to do and they weren't happy with the choices. Why, why even ask? Yeah. But the crazy part of that is if hubby had presented the same thing, they would have said yes. So what is it? A lot of people are getting the whole mom wanted a son thing. Alexa mom sounds like a narcissist. Could be. Could be. Oh, uh, or it could be a religious thing, Debbie. It, yeah, I mean, it could be. I, I don't know. But it doesn't mean So if they always wanted a son, it doesn't mean that you get to start treating some your your daughter shittier. They have a son in law. The fact that they have a son is dependent on the fact that they have a daughter. Right. And maybe enlighten them to that because they're about to lose access to both of you by continuing down this path. It is a respect issue. I, I, I mean, surely they know they're doing this, right? Surely she's aware. But her, her mental priority is just, she's bumped her daughter way down in line. Celebrate with hubby. Tell parents not this year, Mary. It, I think, uh, did, did OP eat their leftover pizza? <laughs> uh, Am I am I awaking people's Amazon assistance? I think it comes down to 
what what you which direction you want to go op if you want to repair this relationship and start down that path i think bringing it to their attention letting them know how it makes you feel and letting them know what will happen if they don't fix it is important if you're just ready for the pain to stop and you're done and ready to cut them out of your life then do it for sure for your birthday just be like sorry it's you guys are already dragging it down we're just going to go celebrate by ourselves so we can actually be happy it sucks it sucks is op's husband their siblings ex or something uh, i don't know that's i don't know and jennifer yeah what could happen to make op's parents start treating their own daughter like shit i don't know uh elizabeth says race may matter because hispanics would be like no I can't see the rest of the text. No, don't get him mad. Huh. Daughter could have been bridezilla. I'm something happened, but but OP clearly doesn't know what it is. Just getting married. That's when the, when the change occurred. That could be what it is. Or it's like she thinks that she's not her responsibility anymore. And she's handed her off. And now she's the husband's responsibility. OP's husband. So only, but it doesn't, it doesn't explain why she just responds slower and obviously has less, less of a priority on him. It's weird. I was buffering. Yes, I was absolutely buffering. Okay. Uh, but it, it is an NTA. It's just a matter of which way you want to go with it. OP. Like, do you want to try to really fix it and get back to where you need to be? Or at least get some concrete answers about why the hell this is happening. And if so, I think confronting them is the way to go. Um, if not, and you're just ready, ready to call it quits, then by all means, you have the right to go no contact here. Oh, Ackerman says, I know exactly what it feels like being an unwanted daughter. Such an awful feeling. That sucks. Sucks. Terry says, being an adult, you and your husband go sit down and have a conversation with your mom and dad and talk about how you feel and then give us an update. There you go. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. I think a conversation is the right way to go because they may not realize what's going on. They should, but they might not. Okay, here we go. Last story of this content chunk as we head to our next next chunk of content here, our next block. It is. We've been live for four hours and eight minutes so far. We're still standing. I'm still standing. I don't know. Okay, here we go. This one is from Petty Revenge and goes like this. I live in one half of a duplex. The other half is occupied by the owner, my landlady. My landlady is waffle. I won't go into detail, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Since we live in close proximity, I do everything within my power to keep the peace and prevent either of our daily lives from being too miserable. That patience finally wore out. My landlady decided to sell the entire duplex. Fine by me. I'm protected by my lease, and I figure my odds are decent of getting a less shitty landlord out of the deal. Obviously, she needs to show the property to prospective buyers. My lease states she needs to give 24 hours notice before entering my half. I told her I was even fine with less than that as long as she let me know the night before. I also set her up with a personal code for my alarm so she can get in if I'm not home since I travel frequently. However, even this has been too difficult for her. Had a knock at the door last week. It's the landlady with a nice young couple. She asks if they can take a quick look. I say, no, sorry, I haven't had time to prepare for a showing since, so, no, since she gave me no notice. She pouts and says, can they just take a quick pick, peek from the doorway? Words are hard. That was a hard one. Okay. <sighs> she pouts and says, can they just take a quick peek from the doorway? I stay firm. Tell them they can come back tomorrow if they like and close the door. A few days later, I'm heading out the door and bump into my landlady out on the street with a strange man. She says, sorry for not calling yesterday, but asks if they can go upstairs for a viewing. I say, no, I have laundry out that I haven't put away and I'm not comfortable with a strange man looking at my underwear. She pouts. I'm in a rush and jump into my car. I arrive at work with a notification on my phone. It's my ring alarm system letting me know that my landlady's code was used to deactivate and reactivate the alarm within the last few minutes. She's older and probably has no idea who uses the alarm code. I am seething. That night, I deleted my landlady's alarm code from the system. I did not inform her of this. I figure if she needs to show the property while I'm out of town, I'll just deactivate the alarm remotely from my phone. 
The next week, I'm traveling for work. I spend the day in meetings. I check my phone to find a million notifications. Ring has let me know the alarm was tripped. My landlady has called a dozen times, left voicemails, and sent angry messages. Yes, she tried to go into my apartment again without giving me a heads up. She was unable to she was unable to deactivate the alarm. Let me tell you, that alarm is loud. I assume half the neighborhood could hear it. I pay for ring monitoring, so the police were also automatically called. Since she owns the property... It seems they didn't give her too much grief, but as the neighborhood Karen, boy, she is pissed at being the center of drama. But hey, I bet she won't try to go into my apartment unannounced again. Dig That's awesome. That is a great petty revenge. Petty confetti, shall we? Shall we petty confetti this? I think that's fantastic. And also, you probably have some legal recourse. You probably have some, some footing to stand on here to be like, look, she's entered uh, and broken the contract multiple times. Should you need to take any kind of action, you have the agreement in writing and you have the proof that she that she broke that agreement. So good for you Uh, as she goes to as she goes to sell. This is just extra security for you to make sure that you're you have some lenience as you go through that. Ah, no petty confetti bingo space. Ah, landlady went into show and freaked out saying someone was breaking in mom rushed home and yelled at the landlady mercy yeah it's got there's got to be a heads up there has to be a heads up oh man awesome uh so that is the end of content chunk block number two i say chunk it's block so we have made it Four hours and 12 minutes so far. We're going to keep going. We're going to start up the next one here shortly. I'm going to go ahead and get that document opened. How do you guys feel? Starting block three. Heading into hour five. What? Crazy. Are you jumping up? Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want music or no music? No music? He's like, I don't need no music. He's going to provide his own song and dance. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, ladies and gentlemen, to vamp for a moment while we reset and get started the next one, I leave you with Tony Spock. Oh, my God. Is this Tony Spock? I'm swooning. Hi, guys. I'm swooning. What's up? How's everybody feeling? Four hours, 13 minutes in. We're doing good. Everybody's everybody's with us. Landlady. I can just imagine how pissed the landlady was as this alarm is going off during this. But yeah. Wild. Wild. Oh, thanks to Espresso Espresso. I was wondering the same thing, what that meant. We're singing, uh, hey Desi, thank you. Um, when he did the I'm Still Standing, all I can think of is Sing, the movie Sing. And then I had my jaw hit the floor because Candy Thunder has not seen Sing. And I, am, I, am I crazy for having thought that? As have you guys seen the movie Sing? That's what I, I was like, there's, an, I don't know how you haven't seen it. I love that movie, I think it's great. The music in it is so good. Great movie. I'm still standing. Taron Egerton kills it in that movie. You haven't seen. I I don't know if I've seen the second one. I know. I know. That's why I said Navy Thunder would love it. That's right. See, I was shocked too. I was shocked too. Oh, good Lord. I've seen it hundreds of times. I don't know how many times I've seen it, but. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I don't know if I've seen Sing 2. Maybe I have. Uh, I don't think I've seen Sing 2. Maybe I have. I don't know. All right. So, Miles, are you ready? You guys ready for the the Miles debut on the 24-hour stream? Four hours, 15 minutes in. We're going to bring Miles up here. Do you have a thing? You don't have a thing. You do have a thing. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, 
some Q&A questions for Miles and I, I let him pick out his questions and what did I what did I say when I told you about the questions uh, well, I have to give a single answer and it has to be straight and to the point and I can't I like, said don't try do to make the, everyone happy I was like when I asked the, well, I said these are like some more either or questions and I said don't do the Miles thing <laughs> When he said yeah. that, I thought he meant don't have a well, seizure when he's he asked armed. me the question. Yeah, don't do that, please. <laughs> uh, Dusty is currently not in the bathroom if, if for anybody who's... He's eating, a protein, he's eating a protein pack right now. He's having an adult Lunchable snack at break. the moment. Yeah, snack break. Okay, so we're going to ask Miles some questions. And you chat, feel free to chime in your answer to the question, too. Okay. What is your favorite food? Um... Personally, I'm a sushi guy. Uh, specifically, really like California rolls. They're they're awesome. Interesting. But I could eat anything sushi, honestly. Like spicy, you like spicy. I okay. I do like spicy in the right places. There are some things that are meant to not be spicy and meant to be sweet. But yes, Sergeant Mac. Yeah, they're um, they really want to check off that bingo that, that bingo square. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Mac said that. Um, this group is strangely curious about Dusty's bathroom habits. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Okay. What is your favorite Dusty-ism? Uh, definitely words are hard because I use it myself all the time. Yeah. I can't read very well. So anytime I'm like reading something out loud to somebody, I'll, I'll just, if I mess it up, I'll say words are hard also. That's a good one. I think I like, I like that. I also like the Moira. He does such a great Moira. I can't do the voice well, so I yeah. don't imitate that. Well. He does like the Moira and the way he just switches too, and how he'll just rereading and just he can just turn it on, just off. flow. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> okay, I I also want to say this next question I did not ask Dusty Thunder earlier because I know his answer because yeah he has a very strong stance on this next one. iPhone or Android? Um, I'm I'm an iPhone person. Uh. I, I'm actually an Apple ecosystem person. I have the watch, the an yeah. iPad. I have a MacBook. Everything. Yeah. Dusty. Uh, Dusty's not a not an Apple guy. He's not an Apple guy. It's uh, it's a very sensitive subject. <laughs> we try not to bring it up that much. Yeah. He's a he's definitely a Google Android guy. I think I feel like Apple. I'm the same way though. Like I like Apple. Got the watch. I don't have an iPad anymore, but I've got a Mac at home. I will say for the first 10 years of my life, I was an all Android person because my dad wasn't big on having like iPhones around and it was just me and him that lived together. So I've seen both sides. I still prefer Apple's perks in certain places. Again, it's one of those. Yeah. Whatever works best for I me. I feel like I think I, I'm pretty sure I had an Android, but then the iPhone came out. I think my first iPhone was like a five, four or five. So however long ago that was is when I switched. When I had the, I had the Android that was the. Did you have the slider? Did anybody have this? You're too young. I what do you I had the I had the one that slid up this way, but then I also had when the screens came out and it was like this. It was like a brick, yeah. but it was a full screen, so you could do that, or you could slide it up with the keyboard, and you're like, man, look at me and my cool slider phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to, man. Those days of having the kids today will never have to understand. If you had to send a, what is it, an S or whatever the one you had to tap like four times, people don't know the difficulty, you know, the difficulties of texting back in the day. My first phone was a smartphone, so I can't Yeah, (laughs) see, kids kids today just don't understand the old T9, you know? Oh, they're so heavy. My, the screen on my first phone was the same size as the one I have now. Yeah, no, the the T nine texting and also the um, the limits too. Like, do you ever have limited? Um, like you can like, only have certain characters. No, 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 no. Like so many texts in a month. Oh, do you remember no. that? Yeah, man, I remember how and my parents would be so mad at me because if you go over, if you would go over on text, it would charge you for every text. 
Oh. It'd be like 10 oh. cents a text or something like that. Yeah, it was a bad that deal. Awful. It was a bad deal. <laughs> That's yeah. I remember. Yeah, the charge. So <laughs> that sounds like the most free annoying, calls, aggravating thing to oh, have to do. It was the worst because then if you used up your text, it was like, well, talk to you next month. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there were that. Yeah, that was no internet back. Yeah, when you wanted the internet, you had to do it in spurts because you would take up the phone line with the dial-up internet, and then your Burn. yeah. A three thousand dollar texting bill one month, dude. My parents would. I would have been unalived I by my parents. My phone away, but again, I didn't live in this era. No, get it was. <laughs> yeah, the free. It was always free. It was free after a certain time. Yeah, it was. <laughs> kids, kids today just will never know the struggles that we had to go through. Yeah, but anyway, I feel like a toddler. <laughs> you were you probably weren't even what year were you born? Oh four. Oh god. That makes me feel I'm really I'm sorry for anyone else in chat that wow. just heard my birth wow. year and freaked out a little oh, bit. Oh four. Yeah. That's how we I just asked Miles, I go, when were you born? He goes, oh four, and I go, oh god. <laughs> Oh, four. A, bu a bunch of people in chat did the same thing. So. Uh, let's see. Where, how old have I been? Uh, I think I was in seventh grade, I think, in 04. Uh, Caden was two in 04. Wow. Dang. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Thanks. for those that don't know, I'm the youngest one. Yeah. Here. He just made us feel no like. No one a, else is going to make you feel any. Yeah. Older. He just made us feel like a bunch of senior citizens here. <laughs> 2004. Good God. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay. Who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? Um, There are a couple of different good answers here, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick with. Ashton Kutcher, but like mm. that seventies show era uh, Ashton Kutcher. Like young Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. Nice. Good all these people that you have offended with your young age, Miles. I can leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. Oh, that's crazy. That is really like two thousand and four. Good God. I definitely had a texting limit in two thousand and four. Cause I would have been like, yeah, seven. If it makes you feel grade. better, I didn't have a phone in two thousand four. You got a phone before me. That's true. That's true. I'm about to turn 16 and first phone is a flip phone. I don't think I had the flip phone. I think when I, I got my mom's old Nokia phone, and then I got a slider, I think, after that. I don't think I ever had the flip. Do you have the candy? Did you ever have the flip phone, the razor, or any of those flips? Like, Remember the razors were like the cool thing? Really? I mean... I've never personally used a flip phone, but I have multiple. I collect weird old tech stuff sometimes. So. <laughs> oh. Okay. I have a very funny story because I the I had a, the pink razor, um, and then I ended up losing it. I sat it on the top of my car, and it flew off. And we searched for hours and could not find it. Um, so I ended up getting an iPhone, like the very first iPhone mm -hmm. that was like my, and the I was iPhone so excited. The brick. <laughs> yeah, the brick. I had it for like a year. Um, and then I set that on top of my phone when I was putting Ava in the car and that flew off too. Um, and so I did not get a new phone. I had to go back to like someone's old razor that they found in a drawer because I got in some serious trouble for that one. Yeah, you can tell him Dusty's on a bathroom break. Oh, Dusty's going to the bathroom. <laughs> also, people were yelling at me because I said old tech. I'm sorry. <laughs> old tech, old yes. tech. Yeah. Yeah. Back when we had the chisel and the stone to communicate. Yeah. No. If it doesn't use the internet, it's old. Apparently. When it comes to playing tech. snake. Listen. Wow. Uh, you didn't back things up then. You didn't have backup. Yeah, yeah it was just gone. That was it. <laughs> It was just gone. Like when you would get a new phone and you'd have, they'd have to plug it in at the store and swap over your stuff. And sometimes you'd have to leave it there and come back and get it. And like, yeah. yeah. Now it's just all in the cloud. I broke it, but it still worked. I could call my mom and ask her. Yeah. Yeah. I never had the razor. 
Uh-uh. I think I went from like the Nokia and those over to the um over to the other one, the iPhone. All right. Last question, because I think Dusty's coming back here soon. All right. I'm over my 10 minutes. I know. Give me the hook. I'm going to get pulled off here in a second. All right. What is your dream job other than working for Dusty Thunder, obviously? Oh. Well, I, I picked that question specifically because I was just going to say I have my dream job. Aww. Um. Anything in this field, honestly, I feel like I, I have a good time with. I'd love to be on some sort of big movie production set Ooh, at some cool. point. Um, that'd be cool. I, I also looked at acting in the past as a career line. That's just a rocky one, so I never dug too deeply into it. But <laughs> yeah, nice. I like working. We're going to movie would scenes. be cool. Yeah, yeah. Tony's generation created the emojis to get around the text limit. Yeah, man, that text limit was that was brutal. <laughs> Because you think about it now, think about how many texts you send in a day. I mean, for even a month, like you had a, you had a limit for the month. Like it'd be 500 text messages in a month. See, I don't that would be the limit anymore. So see, there's the miles thing. You could have just said the story. Yeah. No, I, Sh- I shout out it. to those who use Snapchat more. Well, see, Snapchat wasn't a thing. <laughs> we didn't have Snapchat. I know it was a joke. Well, Ted. Will Ted appear? No, Candy. Ted is Ted is not going to. Uh, Ted won't be around tonight. It'll just be Tony. Just Tony. Okay. Oh, mine did. The bag phone. Yeah, my parents had the bag phone. A buddy of mine has a bag phone. Then they had the the phone that was like this. It was like this thick. It was like this, but and it was like. It had that piece that flipped down that didn't do anything. The piece of plastic that flipped down and the pull-out antenna. <laughs> you know? Well, it flipped down because when it was flipped up, it covered up. Yeah. It, well, yeah. There you go. It covers that, the that key. Was the purpose of it, it covers the keyboard, and you flip that down, and you got to pull the antenna out. <laughs> like that was a that the bag phone. Yeah. Bag phone. It was like basically a a phone. It was a big phone, kind of like what you would have on your desk in your office almost, but like in a bag. Yeah. And then you would put it in your car. So you could take like it from car to car phone. and you'd plug it in in the car. And yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when you remember Ask Jeeves where you would ask an internet butler to Google things for you? Matt Hatter, MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. You've got mail. Yeah. And the drama that the MySpace top friends could cause too. If you're like in school, you go to school and like, you only had eight or 12 or 10 and like somebody's in the top friends and then you move somebody out of there. And oh man, that was some drama. But anyway. All right. Well, thanks miles for holding down the fort and making us all feel really old. I'm sorry. <laughs> once again, appreciate that. It's yeah. What happens when you ask me trivia questions? Top eight, the top eight. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, that was a big, that was a big deal. But okay. At least Are I you know guys, what my space is. That's true. You, that, that is true. All right. We're on uh, our, well, we're into hour five. We've begun hour five, so. Sure, Kate. Okay. I think it's five. Well, yeah. Do you guys like this? You like the little in between, little break, little chats? I mean, if I mean, we're gonna keep the doing chaos. them, so I don't know. But I think I would say it's a break from the chaos. It's but a good it's really little just adding more. Yeah, chaos. it's a good little break for Dusty. Get some time and uh, yeah, it's fun. So, all right, we're gonna get back to stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to uh, like the stream, subscribe, and uh, thanks for hanging out. And we got we got more stories to go. So we got another 20, what, 15 hours, or how many hours? I don't know, 19 hours of math, 19, or 19 hours of stories left to go. So, yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Look at that smooth transition. Hey, Miles, will you tilt that camera down just to here? Right there. Good. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Miles handles a lot of video edits on the uh, uh, specifically on the um, like YouTube member exclusive videos that we do. Uh, also handles a lot of the discord side, handles some mod stuff. And uh, yeah, but it's specifically on the Dusty Thunder project. So <clears throat> uh, I did get a pee break in. Thank you very much. It was lovely. Uh, had a protein bag, got a pee break in a protein pack, got a pee break in and brushed my teeth. Had time to do all that. 
I feel refreshed. Even got some biofreeze on. Got it on my. Bless you, kid. Got some biofreeze on my back and my the back of my neck too. I am uh, back at it. I'm refreshed. Yes, uh, Angel agreed. Glad to see Miles back on camera and doing well. He has. Yep, he has been doing well. Uh, okay, here we go into hour five. Thanks for hanging out on this crazy twenty-four hour adventure. Uh, let us know how long you've been watching. How long have you been with us? How long have you been with us today? We'll check in with you a few times on that. Who's been here since 10 a.m., since the beginning? Salon pause. I hear good things. Josh ja, since the start. Coral since the start. Time waster, the start. Wowza. Since a whole lot of people since since the very beginning. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> that is awesome. That is wild. Yeah, we're four hours and 31 minutes in. Heck yeah. That is that is amazing. Uh, the goal, again, is to hit 10,000 new subscribers on the TikTok side. So, or I'm sorry, on the YouTube side. If you have not subscribed on YouTube, please, please do that. Um, remember to be kind in chat. We have a great group of mods who, who are going to be monitoring everything. We also have some guests that will be popping in throughout the day as I jump out to you know, eat a protein pack and pee and brush my teeth. So uh, so just please, please make sure that... Uh, that everybody is being kind to our guests that are popping on. They're donating our time for us, and, and we'll have more of those jumping in later. So please be kind. Uh, no spoilers again. If you've heard the story that we're talking about, make sure if you know how it goes, you keep that to yourself. Because you love the the Thunder Crew. Heck yeah, Elise. Heck yeah. Yeah, just don't forget it's a little bit different. Um, we're going to be doing things different today, but don't worry, plenty, plenty of stories. So kick back and enjoy this next chunk of content. We have quite a few mother-in-law stories coming up on this block. <laughs> uh, Moira may be making an appearance. Maybe. Johnny Hyde, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Glad to have you there. <clears throat> uh, Ackerman, hear you. Hear you. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be jumping in and out today. That's that's all good. I'm going to get some Walter in my system here. I'm hitting the, the hot tea, the water, the monster tea, all kinds of stuff right now. Doing great. I'm uh, ingesting a lot of fluids, so yeah, I realize that every time I have a break, I'm going to have to pee because I'm ingesting so many fluids. It's going to happen. Uh, all for my two little angels, your daughter, the chicken chic on TikTok, and yourself since 10 a.m. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Th thank you guys for hanging out with us. Greatly appreciated. Okay, first story on this block of content is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for not wanting my future mother-in-law to bring her eight dogs with her while she's in town for our wedding? How do you travel with eight dogs, yo? That's a lot of dogs. Like, how would you travel? I just imagine her driving around with one of those humane society or animal control trucks. How do you travel with eight dogs? My fiance and I, my fiance and I are supposed to be getting married this summer. We live in the Midwest and his mom and her husband live down south. Me and my fiance rent a nice house that's one bedroom. We also have three dogs of our own. My fiance is a truck driver and is out of state four to five days a week. He called me from his hotel last night and told me the plans with his mom changed. She called a few days ago and said that her original arra arrangements for her stay on the week of the wedding fell through and asked if she could stay with us and if she could bring her dogs with her. She has eight dogs. I don't care if you have eight kids. I'm probably saying no. The week of the wedding. Yeah, cool. My fiance told her yes without asking me about it. Oh, boy. You done fudged up right there. I told him she could stay, but a total of 11 dogs was too much. Too many puppies. Too many puppies. Some Primus for you. <laughs> also, it's our wedding week, and it's going to be hectic as it is, and I don't want to worry about playing hostess and taking care of our dogs and hers. This has happened before again. He is refusing to see my point, so I even went as far as to say, if she shows up with eight dogs, I'm telling our landlord. He called me an asshole and said I was bashing his mom, and if I backstab him and his mom like that, the wedding is off. I lost my temper and yelled back, then go and marry your mom then. The wedding is off. And hung up. <laughs> get it op get it also 
His his argument here, if you backstab me like that, didn't he backstab OP whenever whenever he went ahead and approved this without discussing it with her first? I think he did. Am I the Ascanaut and letting my temper get the best of me and threatening to bring our landlord into it? Part of me feels like I am overreacting, but the other half says my reasons are valid. I'm heartbreaking, so please no hateful comments. Thank you for listening. <sighs> All for my little two angels says, LOL, I clapped when you said our names and my service dog in training. Maximus raised his head and looked at me like I was crazy. Then you start a story about dogs. Heck yeah. Uh, um. Man, you got some you got some bigger problems than the dog here, right? You guys are getting married. We talk a lot about the whole me not we approach. This is one of those times where allowing this to happen takes two yeses, right? Because it is a major inconvenience. You have a one bedroom place, three dogs already. You clearly do not have the capacity to be taking on this kind of workload and stress and space you don't have space for all of that you just don't have the space you certainly don't have the time for it and it's your wedding week you already have plenty of shit going on this is not the way to start it this ain't the way bro and yeah we're giving him this He gets the Brozo Award. Also, I like in my sitting position here, whenever I hit Brozo, how my face is right in the middle of it. It's like it's calling me a Brozo. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can do it again. Now it just won't do it. It's like, nah, I'm not going to do it. That's, uh, yeah, it's not. Even if it wasn't the wedding week, no, there's no room, Trini. Yeah, agreed. The, the fact that he did this without consulting you at all, OP, is a major red flag. And we did red flag it. We're going to red flag it again. We're going red light mode back here if it will kick on. Uh-oh. It's not kicking on. It is It is inexcusable for him to do this without consulting with you first. And then to get butt hurt and pissed off because you said no is not okay. I understand he feels for his mom. I understand it's his mom. He wants to to help accommodate her at all. Inviting her to stay at your place with her eight dogs is not the answer. If you want to help her help coordinate a place for her to stay, I bet the place she was going to stay fell through because they found out she has eight dogs. See a recurring theme going on here. How about she boards her eight dogs and comes without them? If not, if she insists on bringing her eight dogs with her, She's got to find a place that will allow that. It's not your one bedroom house. That ain't it. It's not it. It is not it. It's not okay. It's an NTA for you. Um, where would you put hubby here, though? Because I, I understand it's his mom, right? It's his mom. It's his mom. But... Doing this, like if I had agreed to this, even when we have a little bit more space, eight dogs, you don't you don't agree to this kind of thing without consulting your soon to be spouse. <clears throat> I don't know that it, I don't know that he's evil for this because I understand wanting to deal with your mom, but but putting this in putting them in this position and then threatening to call off the wedding. If you don't allow this OP like that, 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 those are, those are big flag. Those are big red flags. And actually for him threatening to call off the wedding, if you don't allow his mom and her eight dogs to come, I'd, I'd say that's probably an ask on one thing. That's a, that's a truly terrible thing to do to you, especially right before your wedding, especially right before your wedding. He gets into brozo ask on one ter territory here. This is not an okay thing to do. And, and at this point, I think, uh, it may be worth postponing your wedding anyway and being like, okay, clearly we have some stuff we need to work through here. Clearly we have some stuff to work through. Allowing it and saying that he would do it without consulting his wife brought him up to ask on too. It is when he threatened to call off the wedding. If she called the landlord, backstabbed them, that's when he graduated to ask, ask on one because he's choosing his mother over his spouse. Not okay. After he climbed up to one. For me, at least, it is 
100% not okay. She's OP's response here. Go marry your mom. Wedding's off. Cool. Uh, I, I think it draws a line and creates a boundary. It, it, there is no update that we have here, at least. So it would be interesting to know where, where they go from here. Uh, it would be interesting to know if he walked it back and figured out some some other solution so that he could he could have a relationship, you know, like still not lose his his soon to be wife uh, or if he stuck to it. And the wedding got called off. Of course, if the wedding got called gets called off, she's got no reason to uh, to come there anyway. Right. So. Huh. Huh. Yoko, thanks so much. for the love greatly appreciate that. How can you not with Navy? Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Red R Dog, thanks for the love with the super over there on the YouTube side. I guess we're only on YouTube right now. Suggestion for the Ascon scale add subdivisions of Ascon 1 based on the Doomsday Clock. Thank you for being an amazing husband and dad role model for men. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. We uh we talked about we talked about writing a book. Oh no, because someone had commented that I should write a book about uh about like how to be an, an awesome husband and dad. And I was like, I don't feel like I'm qualified to do that. Uh, you said you could write one that's how to not be a shitty I could write one that is how to not be a shitty one though. Yeah. How to, how to not be a brozo. I think that's what we ended up at. I could, I could definitely write that one. Uh, but, but I mean, everything I've learned, I've learned from making the wrong choices. Right. And for you, you learn things the hard way. And I, I think a lot of fires you just have to walk through to learn. And this may be the first time that he's hitting this kind of thing. But OP says that he did do this kind of shit before. Or they ended up in a position where she's having to take care of of his mom and all of her dogs before. So this is not the first time they've hit this, which is why she has such a firm boundary about it. Him. You're not overreacting here, OP. He is. He for sure is. For sure. And I'm glad that you that you said what you said here, because hopefully that's enough pain to create some change. How to be a DFHB. And there you go. There you go. Sergeant Mac, mine, mine probably will, too. <clears throat> mine will, too. I, I'm to the point where I have to be very, very, very careful about what I say, because Navy is a little parrot right now. And she will repeat anything and everything. Anything and everything. Uh yeah, Angel, there you go. Blended families making it work without becoming an ask on one. <laughs> yeah, but having a floor of ask on three somehow. How to live life on ask on three. There you go. There you go. But no higher. Ask on three, but no higher. I like it. I'm down. Yeah, this this just feels like you've got bigger issues here. Um, I think you need to have a serious conversation about why it's not OK. And um uh, and really get to the bottom of that before you move forward getting married. Because at this point, if you know you're headed into a da- dangerous situation and and weddings are stressful, the stress of the, the pending wedding may have you may have flared some tempers on both sides. But this is a point where you guys need to have a serious conversation. And, and if you're still pissed and you still uh, you still haven't worked through this, I, I feel like you shouldn't get married. This is like this is like jumping onto a sinking ship. Why would you do that? Get it figured out first. And if you can't get it figured out, postpone. Third rock on the Ascon scale, Claire. There you go. There you go. I called him an Ascon one uh, because it was the ultimatum and uh, threatening to to cancel the wedding. That turned him into an, into an Ascon one. He was already a two for doing it behind her back without getting her, without discussing it with her at all. And then basically forced it on her. And then that was a two. And then the ultimatum jumped him up to one. Stress from the wedding stuff is enough to uh, to to deal with. No need for the extra stress from having anything else. Agreed, Tammy. Agreed. Fluffy. Understood. Uh, yeah, I imagine. I imagine a lot of people are going to have to jump away and jump back in. Trini, thank you so much. Our blended family is definitely goals. Uh, how about a book of follower submitted stories? That would definitely be possible, too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Ask on one. He threatened to end the relationship first. Yes, because of his mom. I think in general, choosing he cho- chose his mom over his spouse, and it was it was a choice. And he knew he knew going into that. 
Uh, Jasmine, do my ears hurt from the headphones? You've got yours since the beginning and I'm suffering. You know what? These these Rode headphones are actually the most comfortable headphones that I've ever put on. Um, Candy Thunder's bows are really comfortable and lightweight too, but the padding on these is kind of like a suede material and they aren't. It's not. I, I'm a big fan. I did break them once, but they fixed them and sent. Uh, ended up sending me a new pair back, and uh, I'm 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 a big fan of these. They do not hurt. Dante, happy gosh and birthday to you. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, let's go ahead and dive into uh, let's dive into our second story here. I I feel for you, Op. I don't. Uh, yeah, that's tough. It's a tough situation to be in, but I think you got to stand your ground here. Otherwise. Oh, the rest of your life is going to be going to be very difficult. I've got to put my phone back on the charger here. Hey, awesome. Uh, Tanya, we, we got it figured out. No ads for a while. I think I got it figured out. I think I got it fixed. Colton, heck yeah. Hanging out. Kimberly, you always listen to calm down when having panic attacks. Today it's even better with the live. Well, that's awesome. That's all I, I'm. I'm glad that I can be a calming presence for a lot of people because I feel like I'm not that for, for like in, in physical presence here. I feel like I yeah. I feel like I can be a, a calming presence to you guys because it's not that way for me. It's not that way. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the next story here. Mad Hatter, is it fixed now? He's fixed. Uh, Shell, your name is green because you're a member of the Thunder Crew. Yeah, one of the members over there. <laughs> Angel. Uh, yeah, she's going she to say no. She's going to say no, I'm telling you. Tell you, tell you, tell. Ashley, that's awesome. Oh, Darley had a track phone where he had to buy the minute cards. Oof. All right, here we go. Story number two is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Telling My Mother-in-Law to Shut Up About My Gap Year? Is that the year that you worked at the Gap store? <laughs> uh... I, female 26, have been with my fiance, male 26, for three and a half years, and we live together. He completed grad school two years ago and has been working. He was in an accelerated program, so what would have been seven years of school between undergrad and grad was only six years. It's a big point of pride for his family, especially his mom. I never really thrived in academia, so I took a year off after undergrad to work, live on my own, and figure out whether I truly wanted to pursue grad school or not. It was the most fun year of my life. But ultimately, but ultimately, my career aspirations were solidified during that year, and I needed to go back to school to pursue what I wanted. I'm currently in my final semester of law school. Mother-in-law frequently brings up the year I took off from academics after undergrad, referring to it as my gap year, which I guess is technically correct, but I never viewed it like that. When I took that year, I was genuinely unsure whether I'd pursue more education. That's beyond the point. Anyway, mother-in-law makes it abundantly clear she looks down upon this year. Comments about how I'd be in the workforce for a whole year by now if you hadn't taken that gap year. How my fiance and I would have already been married by now, waiting until I'm done with school for the wedding. And how my fiance is two years ahead of you. My fiance, my fiance and I splint Words are hard. You splint? We splint rent and utilities. My fiance and I split rent and utilities. But since I work part time right now and he works full time, he tends to contribute a larger percentage to groceries, miscellaneous household expenses, expenses for our dog, etc. It was mentioned to mother in law once she asked, and she's not happy about this either, and talks about how if I hadn't taken that gap year, I'd have only cost her son extra money for one year instead of two. It's literally constant. Just about every time I speak with mother-in-law, she makes a negative comment about the gap year I took. She visited last weekend and was constantly bringing it up, and I eventually snapped at her that if I hadn't taken my gap year, I wouldn't have been in the headspace to even attend law school and that it was the time and that it was time for her to shut up about it. I also reminded her that her son has six figures of student debt and I have 15k and said something along the lines of 
So which of us is really more behind financially? My fiance supported me and reminded her that 26 is a normal age, if not young age, to be finishing law school and told her that he agrees she needs to stop bringing it up. She left crying and saying that we attacked her. Father-in-law is asking us to apologize. Am I the astronaut for standing by what I said? Hell no. Of course, your father-in-law is asking you to apologize. He wants his pain to end, right? This is not uncommon. Not uncommon. It is. <laughs> yeah, good job, fiance, standing up, standing up uh, for you, OP. That, that was a little surprising in there. Uh, but it's... <sighs> I am curious, I would love to know what mother-in-law's education background is. Because this could be a projection, right? But I think more than anything, this was, she she waited until she had one thing. When she had that one piece of ammo, she was going to run it into the ground. I don't think this is a, I don't think this is truly about the gap year. I think this is always, this is a... <laughs> Angel says we need to get a, a jar of mother-in-law tears for the shelf. I like it. It just gradually fills up over time. I like it. Or it's always full. It's always overflowing. It could be like a little fountain that we turn into a jar. Um, I, I don't think this is really about the gap year. I think this is either some projection because she didn't get to achieve what she wanted to achieve when when she was younger. Uh, and maybe she didn't get to go to school because she got pregnant or something. Or... It's just a general opposition to you, OP, in general. So she found one thing. She's going to run it to the ground because that's the thing she can use. It's the only thing that she has. So, of course, she's going to run it to the ground. That is, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, gap year changes nothing. But you had some clarity and you got to, you had some mental health. Her son cost her son one year, dear God. It's none of her damn business from the get-go. It is none of her business. I truly think, though, there's either one of two things afoot here. And that is either she's got something in her past that she's unhappy about and she's just identifying with you here and projecting on it. Or or she's just grabbed this one thing and is just going to run it to the ground. Yeah, Sergeant Mac, it's the only thing she's got. Hey, Brenda, you're on break. You're here with us. Yoko thinks she's 100% projecting uh kaylee yeah you aren't good enough for my son yeah it is giving that um and, and but this is the only thing she has is that one stinking thing and that's it that is it looks it. it's the only thing you leave high school at 17 18 who knows what they want to do we've talked about like i i mean i think it's perfectly okay to not know what you want to do i don't know I don't know. Um, I really think it has something to do with with her position in life or some some kind of regret that she has later on. But it's perfectly fine not to know what you want to do until you figure it out. I mean, I was 30, I think, before I figured it out. Am I out of focus? I don't think so. Are we blurry? It's possible that we're blurry, but I don't think I, I shouldn't be out of focus. Um She's fishing. There's nothing on OP and she keeps that gap year as a weapon. A hunter. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it's definitely not about the gap year. It's something else. It's just which narrowing down which one of those things is the way to go. The question was, am I the astronaut for telling my mother-in-law to shut up about my gap year? No, you had heard it enough times. You wouldn't have been an asshole if you said it the first time she brought that up. It's like it has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. Just also none of your business, mother-in-law. Stop. Or you will no longer be welcome here. And if, again, father-in-law wants his own pain to end, so his opinion here doesn't doesn't mean jack. It means nothing, nothing. Ellie says, "I still don't know what I want to do, and I'm older than Dusty. I think it's perfectly fine. That's totally fine. I think you find it when you find it." Radiant Decay, uh, we've got Shits Creek Pops and uh, two Thunder Crew Pops back there. There's a, a Dusty Thunder, which is this one. And Sue Beck, I sent this one to me for my birthday. Uh, he's got a cake and a gray beard. Perfect. And I had this one made because you can't have a Dusty Thunder without a Candy Thunder. She's got a can of Diet Coke, a phone, and a puppy. 
She just held up her phone and her Diet Coke can. <laughs> Uh, it'd be quite a bit more difficult to to get the puppies up here. Luna, well, you also, yeah, she doesn't want to go on stream, but I also had to pick up the 85-pound horse and try to hold her up to get her on stream. So that's a little bit different. Yeah. Blessed Wonder Woman says, absolutely not. Do not apologize. I graduated uh, high school and did college online. Went to work a year or so later. It was how it was meant to work out for me. I have three degrees and I'm working in a field. And it's, oh, that doesn't have anything to do with any of them. It's just how it was meant to be. Uh, I, I think there is. I think there's a gravitation. You think hubby overshares with mom, Mary? It's possible. Um, hey, you guys watching the YouTube side of the feed over there? Are you getting any kind of blurriness, pixelation? I think it's got to be a feed thing. Got to be a feed thing. Uh, Alice Unholy, welcome to the Gashak and Thunder crew. Glad to have you. Elise, uh, Tony is around. He's right here. Oh, where's the Tony pop? Gotcha. Yeah, we've got to get a Tony made. we got to get a Tony and a Caden. we we got to get the whole crew made. We're taking it slow. We're taking it slow. Taking it slow. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead and dive over to the next story here. I, I mean, man. Mother-in-law's. Oh, this is the mother-in-law block of content, isn't it? This is the mother-in-law theme. What did you say? Heavy on the mother-in-laws. Got it. All right, here we go. Next story. Comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askinaw for telling my sister-in-law that if she's pregnant again, she's taking her family and moving out? Long story short, she has four kids, a two-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, and seven-year-old. My husband and I have one five-year-old daughter. I'm 31 and my husband is 32. We've been together for nine years and married for six, so please don't immediately say we should separate or something extreme. This is probably the biggest issue between us in all those years. He strongly feels that supporting his family is his responsibility, especially because we're pretty well off compared to his family. He studied hard and got into college on a scholarship, and he helps manage a small construction company. I tell him it's his effort, but he insists it's partly luck. So about a year and a half ago, his sister and her boyfriend couldn't pay rent anymore, so we offered to let them live with us. We own a three-bedroom with a home office that we converted into another bedroom when they moved in. So now my husband and I have one room. My sister-in-law... My sister-in-law and her boyfriend have one. My daughter and her two oldest kids have one. And her two younger ones have the office slash bedroom. But it's cramped. And honestly, it's a lot of work for me to deal with all the kids. I'm a stay-at-home mom. But now I have to be that for all these extra kids too. Because my sister-in-law works full-time for a barely above minimum wage job. I've even asked her if she could stay home and help with the house and kids. But she says she needs to work so they can save up to eventually stop taking advantage of our kindness. Their words. She's 26, if that's relevant. In the beginning, I told my husband this wasn't working, but he said it would just be a little while longer. Then, obviously, I started to love her kids, so I stopped saying anything. But last week, she announced she was pregnant again, and I just got really angry and said some things that I regret. I said that we have literally no room for another kid. True. And I'm sick of seeing them all day. Not true. And by the time her baby is born, I want them all out of the house. Now, it's technically my house because it's my family's that they gave me, but my husband said I don't have a right to say such things in the heat of anger without checking with him. Also, they don't have anywhere to go, and now that my sister-in-law is especially furious because her oldest heard what I said and thinks I hate her. This I feel terrible about and tried to apologize by saying I was upset and didn't mean it, but still, am I the ass cannot? Oof. Oof. Oof, oof. Panda girl, yeah, you can get personalized pops made. They're like 40 bucks. They gotta go, Kim says. Uh, Cora Wilson says, nah, uh, NTA, if they can afford another kid, they should be able to afford their own place first. They have four kids already, and they have another one on the way here. Angel says, you don't have to check with your partner on your feelings. 
How do you get pregnant again when you can't afford to support them on your own? Yeah, that's uh, you would think that there would be some care taken there to make sure that they didn't put themselves in a deeper hole. It is a uh, that that's probably the biggest issue here, right? This like there's no effort to climb out of that hole. There really isn't. There's no there's no real effort continuing to work. The shitty job that she has right now is not creating any momentum. I'm guessing she was working that whenever they got themselves into this position. Every kid they have drives them deeper into the hole. Why are they still having them then? I'm sure it was accidental. I'm sure it was not on purpose. But if you're in a position where you can't do that, you have to take extra care to make sure you don't put yourself in that kind of position, right? You have to. There's no... This is a them problem. And I understand that your husband feels like he is responsible for supporting the family because he's he's better off than the family. That does not mean that they get... That, that they just get to keep taking advantage more and more and more and more. Yeah. You shouldn't have said what you said about the kids because it wasn't true. And you, you identified that you connected with that. You have a a relationship with the kids and you love them. And I think you can mend that fence, but, but they have to go. If there is no pain for them, there will be no change for them. Right? So right now they have a place to stay. There is nothing There's not enough pain for them. They have a place and it sounds like they're staying there for free. So uh, who's to say that they aren't on birth control and it failed mama ranger. It's possible. It is possible. (laughs) Five times in a row. Um, Yeah. Uh, And it doesn't say that she announced it and, you know, announced it like they were. There's no context for that part. Still, there has to be extra precautions taking taken and they're already in this position take the baby out of the equation, right? Let's say if they just had uh, had four kids living there rent-free in a, a space that's not big enough for them to be there in the first place, at what point do they wear out their welcome? Heather says the sister-in-law and family are freeloading, period, 100%. Donna agreed, the poor kid who heard her. But, but I also think that, I mean, what she said was, uh, I'm sick of them being around all day. That's not like saying... She hates them. I understand that's what was taken from that conversation, but but I feel like that's a that's a fence you can mend. Um, <laughs> two kids ago, Miss Krish, that's that's at the point they would have overstayed their welcome, even if it was just them and no and no kids. Um, they have a free roof, free uh, free food, free utilities, and free childcare. Yeah, where's the pain? Where's the pain that's going to create some kind of change? It's nowhere. It is nowhere their solution here and probably their line of thinking is if they have another kid, you guys are going to get a bigger house for all of you. Wild. Libby, thanks so much for the love with the super chat over there. It says, don't forget to click the thumbs up to like the stream. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Kids are uh, two, four, five, seven, and now one on the way. There's a lot. This conversation parents have had with the should have had with the child about how adults need space sometimes. And it's not anything the kid did wrong. Agreed. Um, but, but yeah, it's OP and her husband are being extremely taken advantage of here. And there is no pain for them to create any kind of change at all. So they're just going to keep doing it. Now, OP snapped and created the situation where a bunch of pain is injected into this scenario. It's where does it go from here? You are not the astronaut for telling your sister-in-law that if she's pregnant again, she's taking her family and moving out. Hell no. Uh, her, her pregnancy, uh, I don't think is a contingency for, for that. I think it is, uh, it is a, you have X amount of time to prepare yourself to be independent and stand up on your own feet. And that could be six months. That could be one year, whatever it is. I think you, if you institute a a process and give them time to figure it out so that they can actually do something about it, I think that's what creates enough pain to actually induce some change here. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. And maybe nothing would happen if you gave them a timeline, too. They just at that point would be would be trying to freeload off someone else. But at least you give them time. Time is the thing here that I think um, can be used against you. If you say... You're getting kicked out and you want them gone. Um, they're going to victimize themselves and they're going to really lay the guilt on thick with your with your husband, their brother, her brother, um, and and act like you threw them out on the streets. Right. 
give them time and say you have 90 days to get your own place, whatever that is, to figure something else out. You are not beholden to care for that entire family. Your husband feels like it, though, so you've got to have some conversations with him. Um, I think you you had a feeling that you blurted out, and part of it you meant, part of it you didn't, but it caused enough pain for you to do that. And and you're right, Angel. You don't have to you don't have to to check with your partner on your feelings. It is acting on them though that can make you the asshole or not the asshole. So in this case, I don't think she's NTA for all of it. Um, she wishes she hadn't said what she said about the kid, but that wasn't the, the, the question here, the AITA question. Um, something's got to give, something's got to change. And you've got to work on your, your hubby here, OP, because the guilt that he is letting drive the boat right now is going to keep driving you both deeper and deeper, and deeper into a hole. And he has to realize somehow that that guilt has to be transferred, right? So he has guilt for taking care of his family right now. That guilt needs to be transferred to to the position that you were putting your five-year-old daughter in right now, hubby, is so much worse. You are giving her so much less because you feel like you have to care for your entire family and they are taking advantage of you. So imagine what we could be doing for your five-year-old daughter if these people weren't harming this situation. Maybe that's the play. Maybe trying to redirect that guilt because he's going to have guilt no matter what. The guilt he feels for his daughter should override the guilt he feels for his sister. <clears throat> Worth a shot. Lone Star or Angel, I wonder how much of the work of taking care of his family falls on her versus him. Uh, financially, I think it's probably 100% him, but but time and task, 100% her. She's a stay-at-home mom watching, watching, well, to at least two of the kids, a five-year-old. We don't know um, if if it's in school or not. It's got to be, it's got I don't know, at least two of full-time childcare, and they'd be paying for that somewhere else. So how, like, how many layers of advantage are they are they taking of you here? It's too many, too many. Magic drop. Good to see you there. Uh, timeline contract. Blessed woman or woman. Yeah. Move out by X <clears throat> or get put out. Yeah. I think it's you have it till X to to find a place. And that's it. There's no other option. You have till X. Uh, SOS there. Um, it'll buffer for a little bit. I would just leave it. Just just keep watching for five minutes and see. See if it stabilizes, but YouTube will buffer until it uh, until it preloads enough of it. It'll pixelate it. Shelby, thanks so much. Appreciate the love from you and your mom. Elise, I mean, if she's like freshly pregnant, that she has had plenty of time that she has plenty of time to find somewhere. True. Freshly pregnant. <laughs> Uh, was this stale pregnant? Was that toward the end? That's yes. <laughs> you're gonna find a find a very pregnant woman and be like, "Oh, you look stale. <laughs> look like you're getting stale there, mama." <laughs> oh my gosh, thin bones. We are doing a 24 hour stream. We are five hours and nine minutes in. Let me show you the BTS here. Uh, so yeah, we're we're five hours and nine minutes in right there. We've got Tony Spark over here. We got Candy Thunder over there. Caden Thunder right here, right behind this light. Now you wave, Caden. There you go. We got Miles over there. We got Shane over there. Dug in, uh, working on some web projects here as well. So uh, this is it. This is the twenty-four hour stream. We're rocking and rolling. Elizabeth, hello. Good to see you there. We are rocking. Uh, Wonder Woman said, is the need to take care of family a cultural thing? I absolutely could be. Would not be surprised. I think I think it it's um, more than anything. It is he knows he is much better off than the rest of his family. So that's where the guilt comes from. He feels like he he has to take care of them. Uh, Kimberly, we don't have a published list. We have we have. Uh, I mean, we've got. It's almost 100 stories today. So we've got documents aligned on our end here, but we don't have a, a, a publicly available list. Uh, Nizuko, yeah, nice to meet you as well. Thanks for coming in here. 
Hillary says you can charge them rent and save it for their first last in deposit. If there's no other way to get them out, offer to help do a budget, but they need the fire lit under their feet. Something's got to, something's got to light that fire. Something's got to create the pain that need that is needed for change. How many are we at angel uh, angel asked, do you know how many stories were down? Probably. 20. 20 stories down ish. Wowza. Wowza. Mad Hatter, uh, you can listen to it while picking up your inventory for a convention next week. So we know for certain the 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 recording from this from the 24 hour stream will at least be at least stay up for uh, the YouTube members to be able to watch. I don't know what else we're going to be doing with it, but it's going to stay up. So at least YouTube members will be able to watch which you are. So that'll work. All right, we'll rock and roll. What official time is it? 3.09? Hey, we're going to be back on TikTok here in 50 minutes. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we're going to dive in on the next story here. And again, if you've jumped over uh, from the TikTok side or it's your first time joining on the YouTube live, please make sure that you like the stream, share the stream, and uh, subscribe to the channel, please. The whole um, our mission today is to really grow the subscriber base on the YouTube channel and subscriber on YouTube does not mean a paid thing. It is just like a follow on TikTok. So Coral, they shouldn't have to treat two adults with four kids like they're teenagers. Agreed. Unfortunately, there are just so many people like that who will keep having kids with no intention of of actually providing for them. And it's yeah, I mean. Th- there's that part of me that's like you should have to pass a test to be able to have kids, but then there's the other part of me that's like, there can't be any interference into that, into, you know, that personal side of life. So I don't know what the answer is there, but I know that there are a lot of kids in shitty situations because people who have no intention of providing for or caring for kids keep having them. So what do you do? (laughs) Sierra, (laughs) YouTube keeps you focused up. Oh, time waster. Oh, no. Yeah, we're an hour behind. We're we're central time. Laura, they're also kissing out on the one one binding with their own daughter. Yeah, that's that's where that's where I think you can you can transfer some guilt and that may be the best play. Hey, shout out, Nick. Shout out, Nick. Gear is it gear gear parenting classes should be required. I mean, Uh, Yeah, because pretty much the only kind of class that you get whenever you have a baby now is like, don't shake the baby, right? (laughs) If you could just not shake this baby, that'd be great. If you could please just not shake this baby. Okay, here we go. Next story here is a follower submission and Candy Thunder is going to give some feedback on this as well, which means I've got to convert here. We're going standing mode, folks. We're doing it. Angel, thanks so much for the reminder there. Reminder, please keep chat kind. Let's be nice. Jonah, thanks for the love there on the super chat. Greatly appreciate that. I had to get the the camera tilted up there since I'm standing mode here. We're way behind. It's 8.15 a.m. Friday for you, Shell. That's wild. That's wild. And again, Jonah and uh, Angel, thanks so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. All right, here we go. Follower submission. Candy Thunder is going to give feedback on this one as well. Let's rock and roll. Title of this is, Am I the Askinaut for Screwing Over My Best Friend? I, 23 female, am a stay-at-home mom of my son, one. My best friend, 26 female, we'll call her Kate for this, had a son a month before I had mine. She is, she also has another son, five. When I told her I planned to be a stay-at-home mom, she asked if I would be able to watch her son, youngest, when she and her husband, 25 male, had to work. The understanding was that it would just be for her one son, never later than 5.30 p.m., and payment would be based on what they could afford. She had told me $150 a week, and I agreed. Her oldest son was supposed to be watched by his dad's side of the family. I began babysitting when my son was a month old. Second day of watching their son, Kate's husband, Dave, who I am also very close to, shows up at my house with both kids, saying that I had to watch both of them for that day because the other babysitter fell through. 
The same thing happened the rest of the week and has not ended. I was still paid $150 a week despite having another child added. I kept my mouth shut and continued to watch them both weekly on top of having my own new son. Dave started picking the kids up late, making runs to the liquor store, getting his hair cut, etc. prior to getting his kids. He never told me when he was doing this, so I was just blindsided when I had the kids for an extra hour. Payments became bi-weekly, totaling $200. Even what we agreed on, one child and no later than 5 p.m. would have totaled $300. I asked Kate about the payment, and she said finances were hard. I tried to be understanding, but did bring up late pickups as well. It's now been a year and a half of watching their kids, and I am now four months pregnant. Dave recently got a new job. This job is allowing him to make almost twice as much as he did at the last job and is putting them in a very good financial position. There have been days where he works overtime with no heads up and I am left with the kids until 7 p.m. This means I'm also doing nighttime routines. None of this was agreed upon. I told Kate that while I love her children, my life doesn't revolve around them. With being pregnant, I'm tired all the time and I just don't know what I can and I just don't know that I can stand this much longer. I have expressed to both parents that the hours, stress and unexpected changes to schedules have been very hard on me. No matter how much I express these things, there is no change made. I officially told them I was done last week after the kids were dropped off at 6:30 p.m. and were not I'm sorry. After the kids were dropped off at 6:30 a.m. and were not picked up until 9 p.m. My husband and I had reservations for dinner that night at 7 p.m. and had to cancel because the kids hadn't been picked up. I had I had messaged multiple times to ask where they were and didn't get a response until they were at my door. I told them I'd watch the kids for two weeks so they had time to find someone else, but that I was done after that. Kate yelled at me and told me they couldn't afford anyone else. Dave told me he was disappointed in me because of my selfishness. Some of our mutual friends also said that I was in the wrong because I don't work a job like everyone else and I should be willing to help other people who are doing something with their lives. My husband obviously agrees that obviously agrees that what I did was right, but now I'm second guessing everything. Should I take the kids back? Candy Thunder's pissed. <laughs> Candy Thunder is pissed. Uh, uh this is garbage also also the friend group if you're hearing from anybody else that says that you're in the wrong who's their source what information do they have and from whom is op here op we need you here ladies and gentlemen candy thunder this is a she riled up make sure you get close yeah this is this is bullshit that's what it is. It's bullshit. Uh, being a stay-at-home mm-hmm. mom is a is one of the be a staying home pa- being a stay-at-home parent is one of the hardest freaking jobs. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. You trade with a stay-at-home parent, and you are going to realize how freaking hard that is. Where is their mom? Dad's doing drop-off. Dad's doing pickup. Where is Kate? 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. That is, you are more of a parent yeah. to these kids than their parents are. That's oh my a gosh. problem. I think they are taking full advantage of you, and that's why they are so pissed off, because mm-hmm. they are losing their free time. I wouldn't be surprised if the Kate and Dave are out on freaking dates while you're stuck at home with their damn kids. But to not communicate that. Oh. I mean, if you're going to do, if you're going to be late to just not communicate intentionally and then just show up at the door and be like, oh, we'll just, we'll just go there. We just won't even message her. That's just 100% disrespectful. and Taking on somebody else's kids and doing that every single day, that is a hard job, especially when you're pregnant, especially when you have your own baby. That is a hard freaking job. And for people to say that you're not doing anything with your life, uh, yeah, you are. You're raising Kate and Dave's kids because Kate and Dave are doing whatever Kate and Dave do. That really just came out like Kate and Dave. Kate and Dave. (laughs) Kate and Dave. Uh, That's Kate and Dave. (laughs) Kate and Dave just going to Dave and Buster's every day. My God, what's going on now? How do you, how, how, I just, I mean, I understand if Dave got a new job and Dave is working overtime, but where is mom? Like, why isn't she showing up to pick up the kids at a normal time? N- picking your kids up at 9 p.m. when it's not agreed upon is a normal I'm gonna tie time. I'm a string to you, lady. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times I, I gently nudge forward. It just feels like right. it's right in my bubble. It's a microphone. It's I supposed know. to be in your bubble. <laughs> Good gravy. Uh, <laughs> I've got my I've got my knee behind her so she can't back up further now. Uh, so I, I think he really this, does. I do. I have her propped up with my knee. Um, 
I think this comes down to <laughs> there wasn't enough pain for them to induce. They clearly don't respect you at all. So they're no. not friends. Let's get that out of the way. But there wasn't enough pain for them to induce any kind of change until you said, I'm done. And then they flipped it. Fleeped out. And then they fleeped out. Flea flop. They fleeped right out. They Je flipped out. <laughs> Je me flew. Uh, then they flipped out because, of course, they had just ignored the pain, thinking, oh, she's a pushover. We'll just True. keep going. You're in a year and a half into this. You started when your kid was a month old. What? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean it to sound, but these people took a lot away from you and your kid um, by having another child there all day and if that's what you chose then i understand but they deprived you of a lot of bonding time with your kid yep. specifically please do not let them do it a second time and I'm, I'm glad that you said something and stood up for yourself because you deserve to have that time with your kids as a stay-at-home mom like being a stay-at-home parent it, i mean if you're being a stay-at-home parent and running an in-home daycare that's one thing that is not what you were doing you were helping out friends who were having a hard time, $150 a month or every two weeks to watch a kid is, that is not standard. That is a very small amount of money for watching a child. I mean, you break that down to hourly. Two kids. Yeah. yeah. That is not enough money. Yes. I'm going to panic moonwalk away from the microphone. It's like, I'm like, I'm just gonna <laughs> hold her here. Every time it she feels comes out, wrong. I'm just going to hold her right here. It feels, I don't like things in my space and it feels like it's invading my space. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna throw a wider angle lens on so you can have more freedom to just like walk around. But then, but then you're too far from the microphone, and then I've got to bump the yeah. microphone volume up. It would be, it would be fun. It's like I'm 15 a, bucks an hour for. I'm a high center. maintenance. I'm sorry. Even daycare is 350 bucks a week for That's one infant, for one kid. One, right? one, yeah. And there, she's being paid. What did it was it 150 dollars every week. two weeks? But it was supposed to be okay. a week. But that was for one kid, and right. then they automatically showed up with two, and that never stopped. And then it was 200 dollars. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's just hide this person from here. I'll do it myself. Uh. Way to get booted. Yeah. He's Brozo. Um. <laughs> they these people are not your friends and i would honestly the other the friend group that you have that has uh, an opinion that thinks you're the asshole we need to find out what version of the story they have because i guarantee you it is <laughs> yeah. not your version of reality right. let's re let's recap this dave was disappointed in me because of my selfishness yeah um, some of our mutual friends also said that i was in the wrong because i don't work a job like everyone else and I should be willing to help other people who are doing something with their lives. Yeah. Okay. You don't need that friend group. Period. No. That friend group is gone. Find new gone. friends. Gone. Gone. Good gravy. I should be willing to help other people who are doing something with their lives. Because raising the future generation is just horseshit. Clearly. <sighs> raising Kate and Dave's kids is clearly just your lot in life. Kate and Dave. Kate and Dave. This the, is a this is a follower submission and okay. You're out of frame, I'm lady. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying, but it feels wrong. <laughs> here, yeah, I'll do that. Does that help? It helps when the microphone is down here because then I feel like I can get up close to it. Okay, I can be friends with it. Okay, we can be together. Okay, okay. But you okay. always move it back up when I move it down. Okay. So I'm sorry. Okay. You should be. I'll make sure I lower I'm it. In, I'm up. in a, I'm in spicy I'm learning. zone. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm spicy. Raising, like being home with kids is the hardest. Dude, it's. It's I, harder than any job. So when Navy comes, I enjoy like our Wednesday streams, but sometimes Navy has to come with me or like we did one week, we did it on a Tuesday. So she was here with me. Um, and I don't realize how much I enjoy like that time being here, not being in mom mode. Mm -hmm. um, and it means like. And then when I see her here and I have to be in mom mode and do the things that I'm doing, like it's so much harder. And so being a stay at home parent is, is not, not it is not for people heart. who, I mean, you realize it's like you're selfish with your time. And when you don't have to be in mom mode, it's, it's very nice. Um, and not that I would trade it, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's hard. Yeah. It's not, it's not for people that have selfish tendencies and it does not sound like it's for Kate and Dave. Gosh, Kate and Dave. I just, I don't know. I just can't imagine taking advantage of no. someone like this, and then and then I to can, have that person speak out multiple times and be like, guys, there's uh, we get so like nervous about 
overdoing it like with people i mean people don't have to watch our teens so i'm not bringing them bringing them into this but with navy like we get so nervous about taking advantage of people who watch her and it's mainly just our moms but like we never want never want our teens to feel like we're taking advantage of the them of them wow that just i <laughs> buffered <laughs> We never want them to feel like we're taking advantage, and we definitely don't want our moms to feel like we're taking advantage because yeah. it makes us nervous. To, to I can't imagine just showing up to someone's house, house with an extra kid and just being like, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Year and, and a half just later. just leaving them and not like compensating them, overcompensating them for that because that would just... No, no. It's making me sweat just thinking about it. Desi says, just want to say that you guys are pretty much my internet parents. <laughs> Love your quirks, and I want more Thunder and Spark podcast episodes, too. LOL. Your yes, advice is helping me of the open seven. my mind yes. more. One of the seven, yes. One of the Thunder and Spark <laughs> uh, That's amazing. Uh, 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 yeah, Janine, um, I want to get Kate and Dave on the phone and give them a few home truths. Yes, and Michelle Heather, I saw your comment there. You've been a stay-at-home mom for 14 years. Wow, that's... Uh, that's a. I I imagine that being like being like a, what's a really hard like manual labor job like a, something that's really difficult. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't. But it, but that's like one of the hardest jobs in the world. Like I have so much respect for people who pull that off and do it well. <laughs> I'm like mind yourself. <laughs> Where mind you go with that. Mind yourself. <laughs> Where you go with that. I, I think it's it's admirable. Hey, um, another Thunder and Spark 7. Hey, oh, nice. Oil rig worker. There you go. I was going to say lineman, like in a line person. Yeah. I don't, yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. It's, that's tough. And just having people who yep. take advantage of you. And, and like Candy Thunder said, the cost of missing that bonding time with your youngest, who you started watching other kids at a month old, and they pretty much became your baby's siblings. Yeah. Uh, without choice involved, it's garbage. I feel bad for the for Kate and Dave's kids. I really do. Yeah, there and those two as parents are missing out on on so much. I just I'm so confused as to where Kate is. Kate just works up from sun up until midnight, and she has no time. Apparently, I don't understand. They're, um, whatever they're choosing to do, they're choosing over their kids. And and like she said, he's going to get haircuts and going to the liquor store and doing all kinds of him shit. So. It's they've just to- chosen to they cashed in on this relationship. They mm. knew they were taking advantage of you. This is not a surprise that no. it was going to blow up at some point. Them trying to make you feel bad by saying the mm-hmm. shit that they're saying is them trying to salvage their ability to take advantage of you and nothing more because they do not respect you as a human being. That's right. it. Agreed. <clears throat> no, okay. Bye, guys. Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Go pick up. Ah. Oh, yeah. Okay. She'll be she'll be back. I yes. Um so I am gonna I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna read a story around 7 30 ish. Um my sister will be here, and that is going to be Dusty's um biggest break. Um so we'll have a lot of people that will be on at that I'm time. I'm gonna get to pee twice. He's gonna take a nap, a short power nap. Um so there's going to be that chunk. Um, I think it's going to be from like seven to nine where we will have a lot of guests. So if you are just here for Dusty, take that as your power nap time too. But um, our guests are awesome. Yeah, but our guests, guests are, are awesome. awesome. But I know that there's people that just just love to watch for him and that is totally fine. That is whatever your thing is. I don't get it. <laughs> but seven to nine is going to be, is going to, going to have a lot of guest time um, and he is going to get his his power nap during that time. So we love you guys. Thank you. And I will see you back. I'll be back around five. Bye, guys. Pick up. Hi. Ah. We almost like headbutt kissed there. That was strong. That was a strong, strong side. <laughs> and strong side. Nikki Bolton, welcome to the Gosh Hack and Thunder crew. Heck yes. Cassandra says, I love watching for everything everything is basic thank you so much greatly appreciate it uh, i'm gonna attempt to get a power nap in later we're gonna see what what happens i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do it but i know i should i should now coral yeah there are podcasts there's the dusty thunder podcast which is uh, me with a guest and then the thunder and spark podcast is candy thunder tony spark and me and we talk about we do a couple of stories in that but it's a lot of like uh pop culture topics watch we're always willing to add to the thunder and spark seven so if you hey, um, just want to show up and watch Thunder and Spark or follow me on TikTok. <laughs> Griff Strutton, welcome to the Gosh Heck and Thunder crew as well. Glad to have you here. 915 viewers. Heck yeah. Rock and roll. 
Uh, Kimberly, yeah, we're live. We are live. We are five hours and 30 minutes into this 24 hour live. We're rocking and rolling. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. All right, let's dive into our next story here. Next story comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Refusing to Let My Mother-in-Law in My House to See My Son? Another mother-in-law. My husband Jared and I have a six-month-old son we will call Jed. I'm a stay-at-home mom and my mother-in-law Susan lives next door to us. She just moved next door to us a couple of months ago. It's not like we could stop her. So this didn't happen during our son's early months. Since she moved here, she has taken to just showing up at the door to see Jed and continuously knocking since she knows I'm home until I open. It's a real problem when I'm trying to put Jed down for a nap or feed him or nap myself, etc. And she has woken him up multiple times. Heard. Thank you, Candy Thunder. My dog doesn't even bark, but starts pacing and whines the entire time from excitement and anxiety until she leaves or until I open the door. Susan showed up two weeks ago knocking after I told her the day before that Jed was teething and sleeping terribly. She came right as I had gotten him to sleep and woke him up. I told her at the door that it was not a good time and she said she'll come back later. I told her, please text me so I can make sure he's awake first. It took two hours to get Jed back to sleep and she came over 10 minutes after I got him down without texting me and woke him up again. I didn't answer the door. I have a ring camera and she stood there for 15 minutes knocking every few minutes or so. After 15 minutes, she finally texted me saying she was here to see Jed. I texted her back saying he was sleeping and I would let her know when she could come see him. And then she finally left. When Jared got home, I told him everything and he went to talk to Susan and told her she needed to text me asking if the time works before just showing up as she keeps waking up Jed. She said she understood and would only come over when she knew he was awake. He told her to only come over when I say it's okay. Susan has now taken to standing outside our front door and listening to see if she can hear Jed. It's a small old house, so if if a baby is talking or crying, you can usually hear it. If she can, she'll knock and stay knocking until I answer. Dear Jed. God, this lady sounds awesome. I've taken to just ignoring her and taking Jed and my dog into the backyard or as far from the front door as I can and playing until she gives up and I see her leave on the camera. I told my husband and he agrees with me not letting her in unless she texts me first, regardless of whether Jed is awake or not. My father-in-law, Grant, who is divorced from Susan, texted me and Jared yesterday about how she is hurt and how we are being cruel by ignoring her and how she's always wanted to be a grandma and she deserves an opportunity to bond with her grandson. She hadn't seen him in over a week. We were out of town over the weekend and made a Facebook post about how much she missed him. Susan's siblings were commenting about why she couldn't see him being next door. And she said we weren't allowing her to for no reason between Grant and aunts and uncles. I am beginning to feel like an asshole, but I'm not sure that I am one. Jared did text his dad back explaining, but Grant said that we are being petty. How does no one understand this? Grant just wants her to shut the fuck up. (laughs) Grant doesn't think you're being petty. Grant is going to say whatever the fuck he needs to say, so she shuts the fuck up and leaves him the fuck alone. That's it. Those are his only motivators. He doesn't give a shit. She is crazy. You've explained the rules. She understands the rules. She understands the rules. She is breaking them on purpose because she doesn't want you to be able to control her. That's what this comes down to. She is causing your child harm by maliciously interrupting nap times by maliciously not following the protocol on here. I am dead serious. Call the police next time she she shows up and has not texted you ahead of time to clear it. Call the police. If she comes to your front door and stands there for 15 minutes knocking and refuses to leave, call the police. 
create some pain. She is refusing to be controlled, and that is all this is about. And now she's playing the victim to the rest of the family and the entire internets on Facebooks to try to gain their sympathy. She knows she's wrong. This is 100% malicious. Do not back down. She is already trying to steamroll you. She's bullshit lying to her son saying, oh, yes, I understand. I will only come over whenever she says it's okay. Had no intention of following through on that. Diana, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate that. Yeah, Hillary, yeah, warn her first. Say, look, if you do this shit again, I'm going to call the police. And then she'll choose to do it again because you know that she'll do it again because she doesn't like to be told what to do. And then call the police. Dead serious, do it. Your hubby here has to become more firm with his mom and boundaries. Yeah, he marched over there and said what he said. She's not taking him seriously, which means she doesn't respect him either. She doesn't respect either one of you. This is a power struggle. Move. Here, here you go. Move. See you, Kate Dutter. We'll see you in a little bit. Move. She going to buy move where there isn't a house available for sale next door. And if she buys that house because it comes up for sale at some point, which she probably this house probably came up for sale because she stood at their door knocking until they agreed to sell it. That seems to be her tactic. Move if you have to. This is harassment. Turn the sprinklers on, Melissa. There you go. Turn the freaking sprinklers on. That that would do it. That would do it. Ah. Diana still rockets at the beginning. Hell yes, that's awesome. Move and say nothing. There you go. Just just poof. Just go. Just disappear. Just disappear. I think um want something has to give here. She's clearly not gonna listen to anybody, so it's gonna take some kind of force like the police for her to finally listen to, and even then she's gonna victimize herself. Just be ready for it. It's gonna happen. But in no one else's opinion matters. So accept that right now. She's gonna victimize herself. Anybody who buys it, it doesn't matter what they think. So stop giving a shit. Freaking Grant, you know what you know what his motivating factors are. There's a reason he's not married to her anymore. But she's still calling him to bitch about you. He just wants it to go away. Dear God, this this would this would be a nightmare. Am I the astronaut for refusing to let my mother-in-law in the house to see my son? No, it is much more than that. Uh, the title makes you sound like more of an asshole, but you're not an asshole. It's, this is her. You're refusing to open the door when your son, who is having trouble napping, is trying to nap, even though you have a structure set up to make sure that her visits don't interrupt his sleep. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't give a shit about her grandchild. That's the funny part here. That's the hypocrisy of it all. She doesn't care if it interrupts his sleep. She doesn't care if it causes his harm. She wants what she wants and she wants it for her, not for him. People who want to spend time with your kids because it selfishly is for them, not for the kid, don't get to spend time with your kids. Dr. Sweets pulled the gym from the office. Just have an Asian family answer the door and tell her they have always lived here. I love it so much. So much. That would be amazing. Next time, open the, di the door with a full diaper and hand it to her and then shut the door in her face. Or, or have that full diaper open and just chuck it out the door. There you go. There you go. Cut her off from visits. They're, I mean, they're trying to, but, but it is, it is legitimately going to take police showing up for them to do anything about it. All right, we're going to dive over to our next story here. Give her set schedule and don't deviate until the kid can go over by himself. God, I wouldn't let my kid over there. You can't trust her. You can't trust her. She doesn't give a shit if if what she does causes him harm. She just wants her selfish desires fulfilled. She wants to fill up her own cup, and that's all she cares about. <sighs> okay, this next story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Not Having a Separate Wedding for My Mother-in-Law? The what the what? 
The what? The what? The what? My fiance, my fiance and I have been together for a little over four years. He and I decided that we would prefer to have a small elopement in the Caribbean with just us. We love that it would be more cost efficient and the intimacy behind it. We agreed it would be more enjoyable and there wouldn't be drama like a traditional wedding. <laughs> I assume mother-in-law had different plans. My mother-in-law is Catholic and has raised my fiance as such. He went to a private school growing up. My fiance goes to church on occasion as is not super religious anymore. My mother-in-law and my fiance have always had a rocky relationship. They are either good or on little speaking terms. It fluctuates month to month. My fiance and my relationship had a rough start. When we first started dating, it took four months before he even introduced me to his family. Before me, he didn't feel comfortable bringing any girl home. When he would stay the night at my apartment, his mom called him at 2 a.m. asking him where he was and to come home. He was 20 at the time. Around six months of dating, he moved in with me. Shortly after, she talked him into moving back with her, and he complied. We nearly broke up. He lived there for a few months. We decided to find our own place together again. She talked him out of signing the lease. We again nearly broke up. Weeks later, his mom and he got into a fight, and then we found a house to rent together. We were perfect for two years. We bought a house. We invited both of our parents to closing day. My mom came and his mom didn't. She didn't seem happy for us. Shocking. We have lived here for a little over eight months and she has came over twice. Despite us having invited her over for dinner several times. When my fiance proposed, he made sure to ask his mom for permission to ask. She said it was okay. We FaceTimed her right after we got engaged and she was less than thrilled. My sister-in-law hosted us for dinner and invited his mom. She never asked to see the ring or welcomed me into their family. Still hasn't to this day. Should have done this a long time ago. We'll do it now. That's red flag time. My fiance told his mom our elopement plans alone. She told him she was supportive of the idea, but only if we had a ceremony at the Catholic Church with just our immediate family here. She offered to pay for the ceremony, which would essentially mean we would have two different wedding ceremonies. My fiance and I got into an argument about it. I refuse to get married in a church. My family isn't Catholic, and I feel like they would be uncomfortable sitting through a mass in the same way I do. The idea of having to sit in the front of the room while having no idea what's going on makes me so anxious. My fiance is saying, is saying that I'm being completely unreasonable, but not complying. He said I needed to make compromises. I feel like I am the only one compromising with this. He said that he doesn't want to start his marriage off with his family upset with him. I personally don't see the point in having two different ceremonies just to please one person. I also feel like she is once again trying to control us, and it's so frustrating. Of course she's trying to control you. Of course she is. Why does, why does he need her blessing to propose to you? She has done such a number on this dude. I, uh, I, I, I'm surprised you were good for two years. I'm surprised about all kinds of things. Uh, th yeah, this isn't a compromise. You're right. It's, it's not a compromise at all. Having two weddings, one for just his mom, is not compromise. This is giving in to her. She has gotten. She has his number, right? She is so good at guilting him into the ground, into submission about doing exactly what she wants him to do. She has gotten so good at it. She's got the, the puppet strings just dancing along. She can get him to do anything. And she failed when he went and moved in with this girl for two years, but she'll be damned if she doesn't have some kind of control in the wedding. At this point, it is a look, hubby, soon to be. If you don't cut the cord, we can't be married. We can't be married and have you with your mom's arm up your ass making your mouth move. We can't. We can't be married and have a successful relationship while your mother still has complete control over you. We can't. It will end in flames. This will burn to the ground. It cannot be done. So cut the cord or we don't get married. Or cut the cord or our relationship is through. Because what's the point in continuing at that point? Knowing that he's never going to change. Knowing that he's never going to break the chains. 
And maybe he doesn't even understand because uh, clearly he was raised this way. And she, while the, the reins have loosened a little bit, she still very much has control over him. <sighs> Danny says he really needs to either finally back her 100% or it's time to leave this relationship because it will never change. How many times have they almost broken up already and they aren't even married? Strictly because of the mom. That's it. Just because of the mom. Control. I just, I just, why, why are some people so hell bent on ruining other people's lives just for control? Just power. I just don't, I don't get it. Don't get it. Coral, this is all crazy though, because again, Catholicism is very ritualistic. So trying to force her is wild to me. It is just it's control that's what it is it is all about control oh oh beer today hey brother how you doing should have should have left in the first time this stuff will never seem to improve yeah it won't it won't improve good gravy cut the cord just do it just do it all right we're gonna bounce to the next one we're reproaching our return to the tiktok side here too you want to go ahead? Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, bring Tony Spock back on. He's going to vamp and do some dancing again for you. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get ready for the next segment here. Thank you guys for hanging out for this uh, this segment. It has been a fun time. It's so much more chill and calm when we do the YouTube only side. I know. I love it. I'm a fan. I'm, gonna myself. I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm going to give you some music. Is that okay? Or do you want nothing? Music time. Make sure you're talking close to the mic. Yeah. <laughs> We're ripped out of the scene. Yeah, should I? Full candy thunder. Full candy thunder. Are you gonna, is that on the whole time? Do I turn it on? I don't want it on the whole time. Okay. I'm back. Hey guys. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Way less Moira than I expected for the mother-in-law segment. Yeah, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of Moira there. There was some. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? We're five hours, 47 minutes. We're, we're doing great, I think. Morale's good. No, Jessica, I'm, I'm, it's doing good. It's, I mean, it's 3.46 p.m., so it's kind of just still that normal, normal work day. Um, normal work day time. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm uh, my stress level is kind of dipped down. It was a little, a little high this morning before we started, but it's uh, it's good. I think it's going well. I hope everybody's having fun. Um, thanks for coming along on this crazy journey. I uh, turn this off so you guys don't have to listen to the music. <laughs> Um, how's the snack table? Uh, I think it's okay. I saw Dusty was eating some protein candy. Thunder made us so like a cool little Easter basket thing with everybody in the office's favorite candies. So that was cool. Um, yeah. So it's doing good. It's doing good. Well, I'm sure the, I feel like the late night when it's like midnight on is just going to it's going to be like we're in a dorm room over here, like just me and Dusty hanging out and eating junk food and drinking five hour energies. And yeah. <laughs> uh, Coral Thunder and Spark is you can actually it's here on the YouTube channel um, on the Dusty Thunder channel. It's also on Spotify um, and Apple. It'll be under the main Dusty Thunder. So like on Spotify or Apple, you'd go to Dusty Thunder and it's on there as a podcast. And then you can also find the videos uh, on the YouTube channel, too. Uh, Jessica, I did. I did. This, this was my, uh, it was, I don't know if it's a good idea, bad idea, dumb idea. Um, I'm, uh, I, I was watching a live stream, um, that one of the Barstool sports guys was doing. He was trying to hit a hole in one and to celebrate getting a certain number of subscribers. Um, and yeah, I think he got to like 50,000 subscribers and he was, uh, he was like, I'm going to hit a hole in one on this golf. I'm going to hit this golf simulator until I hit a hole in one. 
he thought he'd live stream for like five hours, six hours. Um, and it kept going and going and going. They ended up live streaming for like 37 hours. And, uh, and before he finally hit the hold of one, but it like took over the internet. Like he was the number one trending thing on Twitter. And, um, I mean, number one trending thing on Twitter, he gained like 70,000 subscribers during that period of time. So naturally I was like, Oh, I was like, I wonder if we could do something like that. And, you know, try to grow the YouTube channel. Um, so, so that's what we did. And I, I pitched it to dusty thunder and surprisingly he was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Well, you got to talk to candy thunder. And I was like, Oh boy. So, uh, yeah. So candy, uh, and then surprisingly she didn't say no either right away. Um, and we talked about it on the VIP live the other day, like their, their whole philosophy is always like, if you have a plan and you have an idea, like bring us a plan, make it as turnkey as possible. And, and let's, you know, see it from there. So I put together a plan and I mean, I, I like to think it was pretty turnkey and you know, I had it all laid out. I don't know if you guys have seen or talked about, we have it broken up into blocks today of like two hour blocks and it's very organized. A lot of work went into it. It was, uh, I've read a lot of stories, a lot of Reddit stories over the past few days. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going well so far. I'm, I, I feel my, my anxiety and my stress is a little lower than it was this morning. So I was doing pretty good all week too. I wasn't really stressed. The weather's been really good too. So I think that helped. And then this morning, it was one of those, you wake up and you're like, what did I do? Why? Well, whose idea? And I keep saying, whose idea was this? And everybody's like, you dumbass. So, yeah. Hey, thanks, Angel. Yeah, don't forget to like the stream. Uh, if you're watching on desktop, the little thumbs up there. And if you're watching on mobile, the little three dots at the top of the screen. Also, if you haven't subscribed, uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe on YouTube. So we're um, we're trying to we're, I set a very lofty goal. I, I don't know if we're going to hit it. I don't know if we're going to hit it. I set the goal of 10,000, um, but I, I think we're we're at like 700 or so new subscribers. So that's pretty good. You know, um, hopefully we'll pick up some more here when we switch over to TikTok and bring some of those TikTok people over. Um, but yeah, I, thanks for hanging out, guys. This has been fun. Do we get a day off tomorrow? I can tell you that um, Dusty and I will be leaving as soon as the stream is over. I am going to be in bed. I think I said the other day, randomly, like 1042. So uh, by the time I get home and crawl into bed. Uh, so, yeah, I will not be working Friday. Uh, hey, thanks, Betz Lou. Appreciate that. Uh, Clay, I mean, I'm pretty comfy right now. I got a hoodie and, and like some khaki shorts on. I might put on some gym shorts later. And I got another hoodie and shorts. But Dusty and I both brought changes of clothes. Definitely going to wash the gel out of my hair probably a little later and put on a hat. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun. And I, I do I, the stories, like, it's kind of funny. I, those of you who watch on TikTok all the time or on YouTube, like, you know, sometimes every now and then a story slips through and it's a new one, but I am, I can say with 99.9% .9 certainty that every story that uh, we're reading is, is brand new or at least brand new to us and we haven't read. So. I've, uh, I can say I've personally read all the stories that will be, will be on today. So <laughs> work for State Farm. I do not. Oh man. Oddly specific. Yeah. I don't know. I just do that all the time. Or I'll just say a random number. I've also realized like, you know, when somebody's just like, when you say a random number about something and you're just like, oh, blah, blah, you know, oh, it's going to take so long. Mine's always 432 and I don't know why. Like I've said it 432 times. Like, I don't know why that's my number, but yeah. Hey, Dusty, before you come back on, um, you should make a story to post to tell TikTok people that we're coming back on live. No, that's okay. I've got to ask like 10 more people those questions tonight. So I'll, uh, yeah. 843 subscribers. Is that what we're at? Somebody said that. That'd be cool. That's cool. It's great. Gonna have a pizza party. It's like having a slumber party. Yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, we got some really great. I'm really excited for our guests. Um, if you guys have been followers for a while, you you should pretty much know about everybody. 
Um, we, uh, Bree, aka Sassy Merlot, she's done the podcast. Um, she's going to stop by here about 5 30. She's going to read a story for the first time. That's going to be cool. Get some feedback from her. Um, we've got James, Bearded Day, or Bearded Jay. So, um, he's going to stop by and also his wife, which is Candy's sister, Sarah, is going to come by and she's going to hop on for the first time. Um, Candy and Sarah are going to read a story together and give feedback. So that's going to be cool. Candy's first ever time uh, reading a story. And then um, Steve, like what's his, uh, his, what is his Stevie, Stevie wonder, right? Stevie wonder from the podcast is going to stop by too and read a story. So we got a whole bunch of, you know, the, the five 30 to 10 o'clock is going to be wild. There's going to be a lot of people, a lot of coming and going. That's probably where my, my stress might just inch up just a little bit more, just keeping it going. But, um, Candy will probably be reading about 7-ish, 7.30-ish, I would say. So we're going to be live on TikTok from 4 to 6. And then we'll be back, you know, stay on YouTube. And um, she'll be about 7 or so. 7-ish. Do I have PJ's packed? Yeah, at least I've just got, I've got another hoodie. I, I, I think I brought, I don't know, maybe I didn't bring. I think I brought a pair of gym shorts and just, yeah. candy story about 7 30 i'd say somewhere around there i know she's a little nervous about it so we're gonna have to make sure to hype her up all of our guests make sure to hype them up um you know we're really we're thankful they're all showing up so it's cool it's most of them you know they all work and and come in after a work day and read some stories with us and hang out it's fun and that's awesome so yeah we've got i don't know we're at 20 uh Let's see, nine, seven, we're at 24 stories I think we've read so far. So we've got a long ways to go when you look at it like that. I shouldn't have, I should have done that math and I shouldn't have, Dusty, pretend you didn't hear that. We're at 24. I think we've got 96 lined up. So, um, and, and so far we're pretty much on pace. So, um, for where, where we were, what we were hoping for. So we're figuring about four stories an hour and we're doing pretty good on that. Dusty's doing a great job. So he's the real super. He's the one putting all the, he's the one who's the star today. <clears throat> Caden, um, Caden will be here probably on nine ish. So I'd say nine to 10, somewhere in there. Um, he'll be, yeah, he'll be back some around eight and then jump on somewhere. <laughs> We're doing this 24 hour stream once a week, right? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> I would I would never sleep, I feel like, if we did a once a week stream. On vacation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bree. Oh hey, Bree's in the chat. She's nervous about Bree, don't be nervous. You got this. You are you're gonna rock it. Don't worry, I only picked like a 15 page long story with a lot of really long words written from somebody at Harvard. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. No, you're going to do great, Bree. We're, we're excited. It's going to be awesome. I would love to see a, a work day long stream. That that might be a little more manageable, Angel. A work day, like, you know, an eight hour, but still. That's that would have been smart. That's a lot. We decided, you know, why like test it out with like an eight hour to now? Hell, let's just go all the way. Let's just go all the way and just 24 hours. And we kept joking that we would um, everybody would come in at like eight o'clock and Dusty and I would be all jacked up on jock coffee and be like, we're going to go for 36 hours now. We found some more stories. We're going to just keep going. And everybody's going to be like, OK, we need to shut this down. I haven't been ready for a second cup of coffee. I'm, I'm still good. I'm still on my Starbucks. But like I said, it's still, I mean, it's only three, it's four o'clock. So I, I'm still in that normal. Dusty's the one who's, who's, yeah, he's the one reading and that's a lot of effort. So yeah. Fourth of July, 24 hour stream. If there was a fourth of July stream, I guarantee you Ted would be there because Ted is Ted's favorite day of the year. Yeah. What happens if we run out? Run out of coffee, energy, stories, what? Claire. I don't know what we what we're running out of. I think we're pretty stocked up on about everything. We have an unhealthy amount of five hour energy in there. there we go. Like if we drank all that five hour energy, it might not be good. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be good. Sorry. 
I need a words are hard. Um, I need a words are hard shirt. Dusty dash thunder.com. Also, how's everybody's bingo cards doing? Good. We doing good on the bingo. I think so. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Uh, everybody on YouTube, keep hanging out. We're going to, we're going to turn on TikTok here in a second and do TikTok and YouTube. And we're just going to keep going. We got, we're six hours in six down, 18 to go. We got it. You got this dusty. How's the vibes? How you feeling? Vibes great, man. Vibe is great, dude. It is great. Uh, I'm going to get this. I'm getting the TikTok side set up here. We're going to go ahead and get our music rocking. Uh, I got a minute. Got some push-ups in to get the uh, blood pumping. I'm just trying to keep myself going. I'm getting like a little bit of a weird throat scratchiness, but I'm just, I'm hitting the hot seat. My hot tea is supposed to help with that. So mm. I do need to start recording now. Good call. Um, I'm not recording the, the bits where we're just doing the TikTok side, just doing the, I'm sorry, just the YouTube side. TikTok versions I am doing because we're going to crop those or chop them up for content. So all the ones that are, all the stories we're reading on the YouTube side, that's just for you guys. You can see it. Um, the the recording for the 24 hour live will definitely be left up for youtube members to be able to see we don't know what else we're doing with it beyond that but for sure youtube members will get to see it in its entirety tony spock appearance will be unlocked with 3k bolts on the tiktok side as soon as we go live there which we are doing right now a calisthenics break i like it Teresa said is it hot tea or extremely warm tea <laughs> <laughs> right now it's just warm it's lukewarm tea now that was funny as hell, though. Oh, and hey, I forgot to shout out all our mods when I was up there, but they're doing a great job. Mod mods, awesome. shout out. You guys are awesome. We got a good team of them going on there. Heck yes. Love, 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 love. Let's do it. Going back. Going back on the TikTok side. TikTok side. <clears throat> Keep going. Keep going. We're quarter of the way through. We can do this. Meanwhile, my watch is like, oh, parent square. Navy does look like Palmer. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. We have a question on the VIP Facebook. Uh, what the sit down sit stand desk I use? Oh, it is an uplift desk. Um, love it. Flip and love my uplift desk, man. I've got, I have a cheaper uh, like Amazon version at home that I use, and it's not the L desk. Um, this one here, like, let me give you a little bit of a view on it here. Ah, you can't really see it. Um, here, I'll move this. This. Yeah, that's a very weird look. I understand, but uh, yeah, this uplift desk is. I'm I'm a big fan of all my all my controls for my numbers and stuff are over here for all the different positions, and uh, I'm a big 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 fan. Big fan. Big fan. Oh, hold up. For some reason it said I didn't go live yet. Do it. Go live. There we go. Now I think we're live on the TikTok side. Danny, it's awesome. The uh, the cheaper version that I have from from Amazon is just like a, a single shorter desk, and it has the buttons to do the up and down too. This one is a lot more stable, and they have a lot of accessory options and design options and finish options. And it uh, it came with like a sound um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a sound dampening back to it. It's there's all kinds of options here, but I'm a big, big, big fan of this desk. I would definitely definitely get one again. Hey, oh. TikTok side, good to have you here. We got a goal of three cables to get Tony Spark up here. We've just spent the last few hours over on the YouTube side hanging out, having a chill good time. Hey, 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 hey. Come to the Thunder fam over here. How do we join chat on the YouTube side? Anybody can chat on the YouTube side. Cam, anybody. Uh, you just go, just go jump in with the live. Is that a photo on my desk by my left hand? Uh, by my left hand, it was these Moira cards. This one is Petifogging. Petifogging, placing undue emphasis on petty details, arguing over trivial things. Alexis, now is not the time for petifogging. 
two of them down. Shells, thanks so much for the love over on the YouTube side. Hope it gets, hope as it gets later, y'all take turns, rest, take short naps, so no one is too tired. We have some guests coming in. We have some desks coming in. Uh, send you the link of the table. Let me see if I can find something here real quick. So if you go to upliftdesk.com, that is it. Uplift, U-P-L-I-F-T, upliftdesk.com. Uh, there's all kinds of options. Tons of options. Oh, it's a Leap Gear flash sale. There you go. hey oh. I should be repping for them. They have so much stuff. Like an incredible amount of stuff. And if we could afford it, we'd have one for everybody in the in the office here. Someday. Someday. Jocelyn, you missed your, your emote stickers over there? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Surreal Detective, you should watch Shit's Creek again. That's one of our safety shows. Christina, there's so many options there. Yeah, and again, they have they have like cheaper dupe options on Amazon. I, my home, my home setup uses one of those, and it was like 250 bucks. This one was obviously quite a bit more, but but they do like a firm and all the payment options there too, so it's fun. Charlie Diego, thanks so much for the love. Appreciate the super. Oh, Danny, there you go. There you go. Please explain how to comment on the YouTube Live. I sub and couldn't figure it out. Uh, you should be able to just straight up comment on the YouTube Live whenever you see it. Uh, I don't know that I can watch it here. Uh, Tony Sparker Mods, we might need to give some help there about how to chat. There should be a chat window open, um, or you might have, when you click on the Live to see it full screen, there's probably an option, lower left or right, to be able to open the chat up. Uh... You so you have to have a YouTube a YouTube user. You have to have a valid YouTube account to be able to to comment. So yeah, you have to have YouTube yeah YouTube account. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you have to have a YouTube account to be able to to do that, but get it. You have to create an account to be able to comment. There you go. There you go. Get this though, this will keep me up. Yeah, but if you are subbed, you should have a YouTube account. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what would be preventing you from being able to comment. That's weird. We're going to have a rave by the middle of the night here. We're going to go like lights off mode, have glow sticks and shit. It's going to be amazing. Uh, Goober, this this track is not Miles. We have another version of this scene that has the, the music that Miles made. Live goals already achieved, man. Let's go ahead and get those those bolt goals shouted out here. Leading the board here, we got Southern Country, then Wolfie, Shadow Fox, TLS Journey, Hoon, 2010, Prep Girl, 313, Kimberly P, 77, Amanda Mills, Hostel Cakes, Joss VP, The Funny Farm, TF90, Kid Roscoe, Fane 13, Amber L. Hickey, Outdoor Girl, 2426, I Need a Save on 15 Beyond, those will come shortly. We'll get the next one set up here. You guys, you guys couldn't get enough Tony Sparks, see? They could, they could not get enough of you, Tony Spark. Fane, Amber Hickey, Outdoor Girl, Snowman Collector, Trini Marie, uh, Guthrin Sart, Guthrin Sart, Ms. Pamela L, Jenny on the Block, Kez of Rains, Ali Franz, Tony Spark, Amanda Lee, Shaz, 5951, Witchy Baby, Bitchy AF, and Jerry Lee go forth. Thank you guys so much for that. We'll get Tony Spark up here. Let me set up the next goal. We are going to open up a cake story with this next one. Can't help it. I got a dance. Oops, chose the wrong thing. Well, I just done stirred that up. Yeah, I screwed that up real nice. This one is gonna unlock a cake story. Cake? And it is 750 donuts. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and start it off with the life of the party himself, Tony Spark. Oh my God, it's Tony Spark. Jumping down to four for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, look at it. Monica, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love. I'm back. 
Did you guys miss me in that whole like ten minutes, whatever, eight minutes, whatever it was? What's up? Yeah, you or TikTok. I've got this. There's all the little emojis. I do have glasses on now though to match my little emoji guy, so that's cool. Am I gonna be reading? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna read. I think in this. Uh, I think a goal coming up here is uh, I, I is me reading a story. So get those uh, get those bingo cards ready because I haven't read one yet. I've made it six hours so far and haven't had to haven't had to read. So <clears throat> happy birthday, Christina! Leap day birthday. That's crazy. Tony goes like, man, I don't know that. Oh, and if you didn't know about the bingo. We've got these handy dandy little bingo cards. You can uh, you can get them at dusty-thunder.com and print them out or fill them out digitally. Um, I'm willing to bet that even if you haven't filled out a bingo card yet, if you got it now, you're we're gonna probably fill this bingo card by the end of the stream still. So, <clears throat> uh, Brandy, I think uh, the ESH means everyone sucks here, and DFHB means decent effing human being. Coral, I would just bet that if, if I would bet that if that is mentioned at some point, that counts and you'll 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 hear it when it's mentioned. We'll make sure to shout it out on some of these um, and whatever. He, if he says it does, right now, does not count. But you see that. Oh, yeah. So we'll make sure to call some of these out because I know there's there's some like the quotes from New Girl, um, a couple of references on there. If you don't know, them, we'll, we'll try to call it out. And chat's been pretty good so far about calling out um, calling out chat or calling out bingos. So. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing on TikTok? Where are we at? Views. It's like it's so much with the two chats. <laughs> Cause there's like two they're all in like one. The chats are all like lined up on one thing, but there's two chats and they're both going like this and then uh bathroom break. Yeah, Francis, we've been on top of the bathroom breaks. I don't know if Dusty appreciates that or not, but uh he's he's we've been on top of when he goes to the bathroom. I'm not Dusty. I'm glad. Boxer, but here's Dusty. I'm glad that you didn't put like Dusty number one and Dusty number two. Yeah, no, we're not going. We're not going that intense. It's so just so far. It's only been number ones. Just one. <laughs> just clarifying. I tried absorbing it all, and it just didn't. It didn't. It didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's uh, we're we're six hours and twelve minutes in. That's that's yeah. It's great. It's been fun. They haven't told us to Tony that from Riggs. Yeah, that's not a bingo square. <laughs> TMI, what you talking about? Yeah. You'd be lucky I'm not going live from the bathroom. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, get your bingo card. Fill it out. It's fun to play along with. Um, once you get the the squares all blacked out, emails at the bottom to send it into. And um, yeah, it's, it's been it's been fun. Coffee or naps. I've only had one coffee so far today. How many jots have you had? I've had, uh, well, it was kind of a super jot, so Probably call it two. To call it two. And then hot tea, and uh, this is my second monster tea, too, so. I'm doing good. I'm on my second Yeti of water, and then I've had a cough, uh, Starbucks, so. Yeah. There's a little mini Dr. Pepper probably calling my name We're rocking. a little bit. We're rocking. But yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, Dusty's gonna gonna read some more stories. We got, uh, I think, our first uh, surprise guest, or not a surprise because we've been telling you about it. But our first guest will be here in about an hour ish or so, Reese. So, yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sassy Malo. See you guys here in a bit. I think uh, I'm gonna maybe read a story here in a little bit if there's if we get there. So, bye. Yeah, we will. We'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, yeah, the goal after the one that we're on right now, we're, we're at 376, uh, we're at 50%, 376, 750 on it right now to unlock the cake story. And then <laughs> Lilith, I could mess with everybody and just pee in a bottle, just blow the camera's view. <laughs> we talked about it. We talked about getting a cat bag in a bucket. I'm not going to do oh, it because, you know, you know, you know, you know, I talked about it for a second. That's right. There you go. I, yeah, it was, it was me. I talked about it. Uh, here we go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Welcome to our 
we're, we're jumping into our, our seventh hour here. We've been on for six hours and 14 minutes so far here. Uh, we want to know how long you've been with us. We had a lot of people that, that have been with us since the very beginning, which is amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Everybody hanging in there, let us know uh, in chat what time you started watching today. If you're just now joining us on TikTok or YouTube, welcome to the 24-hour stream. Six hours and 15 minutes in, and we haven't lost our shit yet. Still pretty early. 25% mark, like right here, right? It's 25%. We're a quarter of the way. We're half We're we're half of halfway right now, man. We're half of halfway. We're practically there. It's amazing. It's going to be awesome. We got this. We got this. Uh, this is going to be it's going to be interesting in the wee hours of the night. Um, as, as I was walking with miles, um, coming back in after taking that short break, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to read in the wee hours of the morning, the home stretch of this words, words are hard to begin with hours 20 ish through 24 are going to be words are going to be amazing. As we get later in the night, you'll notice your paragraphs are broken up a little bit smaller and it's a little, it's, it's hopefully will be a little easier for you to read. And that's, they have been very well proofed. That's amazing. To, so no, they're small they words only. Yeah, hours small words, just like word space, word space, space, space. space word, like. Find the thesaurus and uh, any words over two syllables I need replaced, please. It's just that's that's the way we're going to have to do it. It's got larger fonts. Yeah, I can I can at least control that. Um, I've got like 150 percent on my Google Doc here um, and and it may get larger as the night goes on. But then I got to scroll more. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Lilith just got here. I've been watching law tubers about a judge in Florida stomping on a YouTuber's legal rights. Oh, crap. Well, luckily, we're in Missouri. Holy cow. Tony Spark for MVP. Heck yeah. Heck yes. All right, let's get rocking and rolling here. Coming up, we have stories about lying on or about the job, sibling favoritism, wedding baptisms, forgetful husbands, kicked out mother-in-laws, petty revenge, and of course cake and oh yeah we still have dozens and dozens of stories left to go on this 24 hour stream we're 24 ish stories down with a uh, uh, 96 is the total that we have yeah 96 freaking stories this is nuts holy cow lala luca francis by 12 midnight my voice is going to be deeper than darth vader's oh yeah it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens here um squishy how long have you been dreaming call jesse we are six hours and 17 minutes in. I may lose my voice, but that's why I've got the hot tea. I've got some honey in it, too. Candy Thunder is taking care of me. We've got a we've got a regimen. I've got some of that throat cooling hot tea uh, to use later as well. So. Mrs. M. Bash says, thank you guys for being such a positive part of my day. I'm so stressed right now and it's helping. Much love to you. Much love to you. Uh, positive vibes out your way. Everybody's way. Uh, and we hear a lot about how we are somehow. A, a, a positive force in a lot of people's lives or calming force in a lot of people's lives. Um, even even teachers who grade papers while listening to us give their students better grades while listening to us. That's awesome. I think it's super cool. Super, super cool. <clears throat> the first. Well, we've already. Oh, wow. Um, oh, did you change up the, the gift goals based on. Sorry, I was looking at. I think I'm on the right doc. Yeah. Uh, in my talking points, it talks about Candy Thunder being the first goal. Uh, yeah, we, we already blew through a bunch of this. We do have a goal of 10,000 new YouTube subscribers. If you're not subscribed on YouTube, please go do that. It is free. It is basically the equivalent of following over there. Following over there. Uh, we're trying to get close to 40K. We're close to 30 to begin with. We started at like 28. So, uh, we, yeah, we're trying to make a, a big jump of growth on the YouTube side. So please help us out and go uh, go subscribe on the YouTube side. We greatly appreciate that. Jackie Kelly, welcome to the Gosh Heckin' fam. Glad to have you here. We hit the freaking donut goal already. You guys are awesome. Let's rock and roll. We've got Dr. Sweets leading the board here, followed closely behind by TLS Journey and Hostile Cakes. Callie Brew, Wolfie Shadow Fox, Tanya Case, Prep Girl, Ambriel Hickey, The Funny Farm, Cole Barber, Southern Country, CKNY79, MJ Newcomb, Golden Al Supply, Ollie Franz, Fane, Anise Moon, Olivia and Sons, Adventures with Fam, Outdoor Girl, Katisi, Sally Meiske, Sharon Dean Newton, Sherry Lowell, Sherry Lowell, sorry, or Cheryl Lowell. Dang, I screwed it up twice. Donna12661, Joss VP, Sarah Neal, Jenny DeBlock, Kid Roscoe, Southern Norswich, 
Blessed Wonder Woman, Christian Museum Girl, Yvette, Miss Pamela L, and Brandy Hicks Davis. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. That unlocks a cake story. We'll just go ahead and start right off with that. We're going to do it. And up next, we get to unlock Tony reading. It says, Tony reads appearance in confetti. How are you going to read in appearance? I had to change things on the fly because I forgot when Caden was leaving and I got a half distracted. I got a lot going on here <laughs> because there's a lot happening. So I'm going to, the goal is me reading the story. Okay. Tony Spark is going to read a story. And you could shoot me with confetti if you like. Hey, yo. Tony's going to read a story and I'm going to shoot confetti at him. We're going for 2K. Pumped up, which is a crazy looking guy, right? It's like 2K pumped up. That's what we're going for. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Michelle, welcome. Cass Black, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Heck yeah, I'm going to miss some stuff, guys. It's going to happen. Uh, yeah, so uh, apologies for for me missing stuff. It will definitely happen today for sure. For sure. Uh, don't forget, this live is a little bit different today because we are doing a 24-hour stream. We're going to have differing things other than just reading stories. We're going to have special guests. We're going to have feedback from them. We're doing a bunch of weird stuff in between. So uh, please be patient with us. And as our guests come on, please be kind to them as well. If you only want to watch Dusty Thunder for whatever reason, uh, when I take a break, you can take a break. So we have a solution there. Uh, our friend Bree Sassy Merlot are going to be joining us in a bit to read a story or two as a chat and give some feedback. She's awesome. You guys, uh, you've seen her before on podcasts. So this will be your first time on a live. You're going to love it. First story today is going to be the cake story that y'all just unlocked here. This is a follower submitted cake story and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Traumatizing My Child with Cake? Well, when you put it that way, makes it kind of hard to see as not the astronaut here. OP. It is a follower submission too, so OP, if you're in chat, shout us out if you want to. I fear I may have ruined my toddler's relationship with cake forever. I, female 32, and my husband, male 33, have a female five child who we'll call Kip. Kip is super sweet and doesn't throw as many fits as you would expect a child her age to. A few years ago on Kip's second birthday, we tried to introduce Kip to a cake for her birthday. Just a little tiny taste and she seemed to fall in love with it. Toddlers love cake. It was her favorite thing. As soon as she started talking, she started asking for cake all the time. Hey, I like this kid. A little at a little after her third birthday, we went to my brother's wedding. Part of the family tradition at weddings is shoving the bride and groom's face into a slice of cake. We've had a lot of stories about that. It's a consensual cake attack, not a surprise one. But my husband and I's bright idea was to introduce Kip to the family tradition by sh by softly shoving a little bit of cake into her face since she loved cake so much. After she saw my brother's face get shoved into the cake, she couldn't stop laughing. Perfect timing, we thought. We went up and took my daughter's cake and very lightly shoved it and shoved her face into it, thinking the fun would continue. That was a mistake. The laughing instantly turned to sobbing. Everyone at the wedding began staring. All the attention from the bride and groom turned to my screaming, cake-covered toddler, and suddenly I looked like a monster who had shoved my baby's face into a cake. My husband had inched away as soon as the tears started and left me in the fire. Nice work, Dad. Where to go? He's like, I'm gonna let you deal with this. Ah, duck cake. The uh, now, anytime my toddler sees a cake, she has a fit. She screams, she cries, and she wants nothing to do with it. I thought it would be fun for her to participate in the family tradition. I was extremely soft with the cake that had been shoved in her face, so no, it wasn't because she was hurt. She just dislikes having a mess on her face but I worry I may have ruined my daughter's cake relationship forever. Parenting is making mistakes and learning from them, so I know to never do this again, but am I an astronaut for doing this? Uh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. A, uh, the wedding, a public setting was not the place to do this, probably, to, to experiment with this. It, it, here's the difference. The family wedding thing and what she saw, what she saw, what her uncle do was consensual with her. It was not consensual because she's a kid. Now you just like lightly dab frosting on her face. That's a different thing. It's embarrassment, probably more than anything and surprise and and probably feeling uh, feeling like she had been betrayed more than anything. Like, yeah, I don't know. Playing pranks on your kids is, is a dangerous game because there is this. There's this trust barrier, right? Like they trust you with everything. And uh, and if you play a prank on them, you risk you risk turning that into a feeling of betrayal. And that that is 
tough. The uh, it could be a sensory issue, Alexa. You're right. It could be. Uh, your parents do make mistakes. Make mistakes. Wrong place to do it. But but giving yourself a break, I think, is a good idea, uh, Don. I think that. That is a good point there. Everybody makes mistakes. As long as you're learning from them, I think you're fine. I, I I would be surprised if she had these feelings toward cake forever. Hopefully you've done your best to explain it and continue explaining it over time. Um, even, you know, even so much as like watching funny videos of bride and groom with cake smash kind of things. Let her smash a cake in your face. Like do do some experiments here to try to make her more comfortable with it or try to move past it. I don't think this is going to be a forever thing. I certainly hope not. So long as you're working towards some kind of solution on it. it it's, parenting, you're right, is screwing up. It, it is hard being a parent, and a lot of times you will try things. Those things will not work, and you learn from them. Every kid is different, right? Now, something that she had a, an intense love for and now has an intense fear of or aversion to, that sucks. But I think that also makes it more likely that she'll come back around because there are things that she knows she loves about it, right? Tiptoe your way back into it. Try a cupcake. You know what I mean? Tiptoe your way back. Uh, it, one of the confetti cake flavored cookies or something like tiptoe your, your way back that direction. But I think reaffirming the trust and saying, look, we were just trying to be funny. You can do it back to mommy. That's fine. Uh, dad, yeah, dad's a little bit of a brozo here for abandoning you right there. That sucks. I'm making you look like the asshole in front of everybody. That's not cool. Uh, that's not, that's not the team approach. That's not, uh, that's not cool at all. I do not understand though. Uh, Sergeant Mack, parents could have couldn't have known that this would have been the reaction. Agreed. They they couldn't have known that this she would react this way. Um, but also, I, I, I go back to the example they were showing was that it was a con- consensual cake attack that they were watching. And then they did not. It was not a consensual cake attack with with their kid. If they had said, hey, do you want to try this? They would have known right then what her thoughts were on it. Right. So maybe having that communication ahead of time, it's a five-year-old, it's tough to, to really communicate through that, but at least attempting it. Now you know, though. Now you know. I think it's now just just a way that you know with your kid right now, pranks aren't a great idea. Communicate ahead of time. Make sure that uh, that that she's comfortable with whatever whatever you're looking at doing, and you learned a lesson, a valuable lesson as a, as a parent. Sarah Liss, great idea there. Bake a cake together. Let her pick the icing and flavor, too. Uh, and then have the kid try it. H bear. Yeah. Have the, have the kids smash a cake in your face or do whatever they want to do. Like get them, get them worked back into it. Tiptoe your way back. And I wouldn't do any pranks anymore. Make sure that you uh, make sure that you explain that you thought it was going to be funny, but you won't ever play a prank or, or do anything like that again. You just have to work your way through it. Work your way through it. Yeah. We, we've had a lot of stories about how, how brides are like, do not smash a cake in my face. And then the groom does it anyway. And it's like, well, come what may. Come what may. Dory, is the next story going to be the bride asking, am I the ass can offer yelling at my in-laws for ruining my wedding? Eh. Hey. Oi. It's tough. Being a parent is tough, man. I mean, you, you're going to feel like you're failing no matter what. Here's the thing, though, if you feel like you're failing, if you're if you're feeling bad about something, I think that means you're doing it right, because that means you care. Right. And it, it means you care enough to self-reflect and self-evaluate, too. So if you're feeling bad and questioning yourself, you're you're doing the right thing. At least partially, you're headed in the right direction, your head's in the right place, heads in the right place. I, I definitely. Yeah. I wouldn't have done it this way. And maybe maybe parents do end up on the ask on scale for that. You know what? Let's talk about it. It's probably a. Um, it's a three for me. This is a, a, a should have done it differently, not a could have done it differently, but a should have done it differently because you use this consensual example, but use something that wasn't consensual instead of communicating about it first. And had you communicated about it first, I think you would have discovered real quick what her thoughts on it were. But now, you know. Now, you know, moving forward, right? So like somebody just said, fail upward, fail up, file up. There you go. It's cake. Yeah, she'll end up getting over it at some point. It's cake. Debbie, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the love for the videos. And I, yeah, I think my wife is awesome, too. She is pretty cool. And she puts up with my shit. So that's a big deal. Dylan, thanks for the pumped up there. Greatly appreciate it. Jenny, welcome to the gosh heckin fam. Heck yes. 
Greatly appreciate it. We got Candace with an I, uh, Brandy, Ms. Pamela L, Ambriel Hickey, Hostel Cakes, Laura, you guys are awesome, and Jocelyn, you guys are great. 847 of 2K on the Pumped Ups right now to get Tony Spark up here to read a story. Trust is broken. Yes, yeah, Squishy. So trust is a bigger issue here, and I think that's going to take longer to cure than the than the aversion to cake. We'll see. All right, the next story here, which is officially story number one for this for uh, this block of content, which is block four for us. We have two hour blocks of content. Block four. Holy cow! We're six hours and thirty minutes into into live streaming. <laughs> Crazy. Kindle, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Um, and if you guys hadn't seen this, if you're just now jumping in, we did add another little feature here. We've got the BTS cam. We've got the the six hours and thirty minutes timer right there. And I had this turned a little bit. Yeah, let me turn it back. It's okay. I got to turn it back so they can see Tony Spark. Just ignore my giant hand. Give him a wave, Tony Spark. You see Tony Spark over there too. So that's that's where Mr. Producer Tony Spark gives me directions from. It's amazing. He's got his mic right there, too. I haven't told him to use it yet. I know that's a bingo space. I haven't said use your mic yet. That doesn't count. I feel like I've been really good at using it today. So you really have. It's a little maybe it's a little mind trick on the on the bingo. You know, mm-hmm. I joked early on that uh, that that Dusty taking a bathroom break was going to be one that never got crossed out because I was just going to absorb all my pee. Uh, it didn't work. It, it didn't work. I'm, I'm I'm ingesting too many drinks right now. In that BTS shot, you might have seen I have a, a hot tea mug right here. I have a monster energy tea, and I have two water jugs right here. I'm just I'm just ingesting way too much. Smoots. Smoots is in the house here. Heck yeah. Melanie, Liza, Wonder Woman, Nana, Prep Girl. You guys are awesome. Jill, Dylan Sprague, see you there as well. Thank you so much. Here we go. This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Will I be the Askonaut if I tell my aunt that I know her, that I know her son is lying about a job he's supposed to have? My cousin, male 38, has had a long history of quitting jobs for random reasons. The job he is supposed to have now, he recently started complaining about his boss being snobby and generally too green to be a manager at 27. Oh, it's because he's younger than him. Got it. I've been talking to my cousin about not just giving up on this job because he's getting paid well, the highest he's ever been paid in any job, and he tends to quit without working through the problems. Mostly, they seem to be interpersonal and cousin feeling inadequate since he doesn't have a degree and his coworkers do. Cousin was recently on a two-week leave from work due to some therapy. I kept encouraging him to make small changes like cleaning his room and keeping up with chores, but eventually, he stopped doing that and went back to playing video games all day and smoking. The day he was supposed to go back to work, he came home early and said the manager asked for his medical records detailing why he was out of work or he couldn't come back to work. Thus, he came home. I told him to call to call his HR and tell her that the manager was breaking HIPAA laws by asking this of him. Cousin had already provided HR with the appropriate doctor's notes and his leave was already excused. I was so pissed for my cousin and so was my aunt. That request was a violation of his right to privacy. HR responded and said they would meet about it with the manager the next day. Later that same day, my cousin borrowed my laptop. He wanted to take an evaluation for a new job he was applying to, and I agreed with him. His manager was clearly a dummy, so he should look for another job and just keep the current job until then. The next morning, cousin was leaving and asked me to wish him luck. We had talked several times the day before about what he would say about this violating request, but he was ready to just let it go so he could keep the job until he found another. He left. A little after he left, I pulled out my laptop to start my remote work when I noticed that he had left his email logged in and I saw the first email with the subject line resignation. After looking through that email chain, I realized that he had lied about everything. He had been contacted by HR the previous day because he never showed up to work and didn't call the manager to advise that he wasn't going to work. HR called him when he didn't show, and he told them he wasn't sure when he was going to come back. Then he emailed them and quit. The whole scenario with the manager violating HIPAA was a lie, and now he continues to lie, saying he is working from home and he's not working at all. Should I tell his mom I know he's lying? Confronting him could be a waste of time. I've caught him in many lies over the years and confronting him and confronted him, and it doesn't seem to matter. I know he's looking for another job, so that's good, but this whole lie is so ridiculous. I don't know what to do, if anything. Uh, fairy flights. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. The perfect podcast voice. Heck yeah, we have some podcasts over on the YouTube side, believe it or not. We got the Dusty Thunder podcast over there, and we have uh, Thunder and Spark there, too. Almost halfway. Oh, we are over halfway now on that goal to get Tony Spark up here. Wonder Woman says, yes, snitch to mama. 
Sarah, heck yeah. I've been with us since the beginning here. Heck yes. Developer girl sticking with the gosh, I can fam. Heck yes. Sally, Jenny on the block. Catastrophe. Candace with an eye. Heck yes. Tony Sparks and some pumped up there too. Heck yes. Don't say anything. Somebody says. Well, that's not good. Our power just flickered here and I heard my battery backup squeak. <laughs> yeah. D Today's not the day, universe. Okay. You keep that shit on lockdown for today. Okay. <laughs> what do they get from reporting cousin? Uh, what does OP get? No, I mean, nothing. It's if anything, cousin's mom would get the opportunity to try to write the ship. But this guy's 38. He's 38 and he's got this this cycle of deceit and quitting jobs and lying about it. So I, I, I don't think you're going to change him. Right. <laughs> Carrie, am I losing my shit on the bingo board? No, that's not a square, is it? Dusty losing his shit? No. I didn't think so. That's just a given. That's a free space. <laughs> that's a free space. We, uh, uh, Squishy says the cousin doesn't have to get anything out of it. It's just a case of morals. Yeah, I mean, it essentially comes down to uh, if your 38-year-old child was doing this, would you want to know as a parent? But also, how much... How much control does a parent have over their life right now? And it sounds like they're still living at home with their parents. So where's the pain going to come in? I don't know. And, and and all of this stems from this 38-year-old cousin talking about being pissed off because this boss is 27. He's too green to be a manager at 27. So it was. it became a matter of pride. Someone younger than me being my boss, I'm not okay with. Uh, and that's horse shit. I mean, that age should have nothing to do with it. If he's living with his mom, the cousin should tell Koyo Koyo Rican says, uh, if mom is helping support him, then yes, tell her. Maybe that's the pivot point. I, I think he is. Um, let me skim through this again. Well, yeah, because the, the cycle is he quits and then just starts getting high and playing video games all day. So I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say he is living with his mom, but he's 38. Is anything going to change? I mean, it's a band aid. If he does speak up, it's going to be a band aid. Elizabeth says mom seems like an enabler and I doubt it would happen or I doubt it would much matter. <clears throat> Dr. Sweets, I think if Opie's aunt was looking into legal actions due to a lie, then yes, say something. That's a good point. Dr. Sweets. If if uh, if the mom here, I guess it'd be the aunt, uh, Samantha, thanks so much for the love over on the YouTube side. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, if if his if OP's aunt is looking into to meeting with an attorney and starting to incur some legal fees because she believes that there was a HIPAA violation here, you have to tell her, even if she's just talking about the possibility of that, you have to tell her. Otherwise, she's going to go thousands of dollars into the hole here for a lie. Yeah, I just I don't understand the cycle either. I don't understand why why somebody would do this at 38. I mean, maybe it's be, what they enjoy doing most is is being elevated and playing video games. You know, you know what? If that's the case, uh, look into being a game streamer. Maybe there's something if that's what he truly has a passion for. And I'm sure I'm sure the aunt is, you know, is not supportive of that idea. But if it's something that he could prove and build up and that's what he has a true passion for, then take a run at it, man. There's nothing stopping you from doing that in today's age. It is it. the world is your oyster. Whatever you have a passion for, you can turn it into a career. It is legitimately the most exciting time to be alive. So that's what I don't get his deceit. I don't get the deceit and him keeping it from everybody and concocting these big ass lies instead of just saying, yeah, I just couldn't deal with it and I quit. <clears throat> Crazy cat, your streamer work too. I'm sorry. I stream and, and I still have to, you know, do my day gig and we own a marketing agency. So it's uh, playing games is cool, but the lying is it? Yes, the lying, the lying. He sounds like the dude from Grandma's Boy. No, no, no. He's much worse than the dude from Grandma's Boy. Uh, the dude from Grandma's Boy was a game developer. 
Uh, and yeah, they like to game and get high all the time, but he actually had that as a job too, that he, that he enjoyed doing. And then he built his own game, right? You remember JP from, from grandma's boy? <laughs> Out of the way, nerds. <laughs> God, I hope you guys have seen that movie. Lying is the big issue there. It sucks. Um, will I be the ask on if I tell my aunt? No. No, I, I you wouldn't be because it sounds like there's the potential that she could follow a path that could be harmful based on his lies. And that sucks. It sucks. It's been so long since I saw Grandma's Boy, but I quote it all the time. <laughs> it's that's the kind of movie that I that I could never get Candy Thunder excited about. She'd be like, "Yeah, no, yeah, no, thanks, <laughs> no, thanks." Does the robot voice? Hell yeah, it does. Uh, and JP's voice. Move it, nerds. I am a robot. I have a robot vagina. <laughs> Lilith. Lilith says it seems that the cousin is a neckbeard. He's dirty, doesn't want to work, lives with his mother, and only wants to game. That's a neckbeard. I don't know what the technical definition of a neckbeard is, uh, but I think we should find out. Which is somebody Google it. Let us know what the what the exact official definition is. 1241 of 2K on our gift goal right now. We are going for more of can I pin it still? Yeah. Pumped up. Going for pumped up. That is the goal we're after. VR. <laughs> Anios turd nuggets. Yeah, man. That's so awesome. Also, uh his JP's gaming setup, the one that is like screens wrapped around him. I'm you know. I don't have the the reclining chair, but those those systems are a reality now. Like that exists. Pretty much JP's gaming setup is like a consumer purchase now. It's crazy. <clears throat> it's wild. Mr. Friend, beat this challenge. Okay. Uh Karina, neckbeard is a pejorative term. And stereotype for an adult man or teenage boy who exhibits characteristics such as social awkwardness, underachievement, or pretentiousness. Does that make me a neckbeard? I'm like, oh no, Scoob. Like, I think I might be a neckbeard. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going <laughs> to... We're going to dive into the... Oh, we unlocked the cake story, didn't we? Or do we do that first? Okay. I was like, I'm lost. All right, here we go. Story number two here. This is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Will I be the astronaut for calling out my mom for clearly favoring my sister? I, 28 female, have always known my mom loves my half-sister, Rebecca, 18 female, more than me. I'm pretty sure it's because I remind her of my dad, who cheated on her and caused a lot of strife in her life. I'm also the black sheep of the family and nothing like my mom, which I'm sure contributes to the issues that we have. Either way, she could and would live happily without me. The fact that she knows this sucks. I struggled my entire life. My parents hated each other in my childhood, a living hell, and made my childhood a living hell. Your dad this and your mom that every single day. It turned me into a vindictive and hateful teenager who spiraled. I have since cleaned up my life seven years sober and now have my own family and seven-month-old child who I care for completely. My sister, however, lives a perfect life. I'm not exaggerating when I say she gets whatever she wants. We are living two completely different lives. My stepdad and mom are very wealthy. My sister got a brand new fully loaded when she turned 16. I got a $1,000 1997 Camry. She pursues the sports she wants to. I was not allowed to cheer because it was too expensive and could not participate in competition, so I stopped my senior year. She has been to more concerts than I can count. I wasn't allowed to go to concerts, and the list goes on and on. They take family vacations without me, have family dinners without me, and celebrate birthdays without inviting me. The only things I'm asked to come to are Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now that I have my son, my mom watches him when I have college classes, and even that is a chore for her. I asked her three months before class started if she could watch my baby, and she agreed. Now her hair and nail appointments take priority over watching him the two days I asked, and if I get upset, I'm the problem. What really made me ask this question is my mom got my child and my sister Valentine's Day gifts. Okay, that's awesome. But my sister posted what my mom had written in her card, calling her my mom's best friend and how special she is and how loved she is. For me, nothing. 
Not even a card. I understand that I'm almost 30 years old, but goddamn, this shit hurts me so bad and puts a giant dark cloud over my life every single day. I can't do this anymore. Now that I have a child, I just can't understand why my mother would treat me this way. I don't want my child to be around her because I know when my sister has a baby, my child will be irrelevant. I don't want him to experience this. I don't want him to feel this way. I will do anything in my power to make sure he doesn't. It just reminds me of everything I go through. Will I be the asshole for calling out my mother? No. Is that the question? Will I be the asshole for calling out my mother? No. Do it. Do it. But be ready. Right? Because it, there's, a, there's a really good chance here that you're not going to like what you hear. But you already know is the truth. Just be ready to to do what you're talking about here and and going no contact or going a different path in life and not and not having her in your life. It sounds like, you know, we talk about zero is is greater than negative one. If she's a negative influence in your life, would your life be better? Better. Would your life be better? Would your life be better? That's where I'm at. Six hours and 45 minutes live. It's only going to get worse, folks. Um, Would your life be better without her in it? And to D's point here, preparing your child for that as well. Now your kid's how old? Um, just a few months old, right? Seven month old. And you can't really do much to prepare your kid for that right now, but you need to be prepared to to have other other child care alternatives. You need to be prepared to live a life without her being involved. But but she's a negative impact on your life. You know that already. The potential for being a negative impact in your child's life should be enough pain for you to create some change. I do believe calling her out is smart because that will create some pain for her. I, She's probably going to be in denial about it. She's probably going to say, I, I don't do that. I don't. I don't treat her like that. I don't do that. But uh, just <sighs> Morgan Zane says, just go no contact, babe. There's less pain over here. I, that you're going to end up going no contact because of this. If you want to, if you want to do that while planting a flag and saying, here's why this is happening. So at least it creates some self-awareness for her and the chance for her to create some change. Cool. I, I just wouldn't count on her changing. I wouldn't count on it. And being able to say at this point in your life that, you know, that, uh, that you're, that you're the shit on child is, is tough. It's very, very tough. And also for, for kids in blended families, you know, I always feel bad about, you know, our kids that come from different parents and are in our blended family who who are ex partners. Now, I've seen some comedy bits about what's up, Smoots. My buddy Smoots is here. He's going to jump on here in a minute. I hope. No, you're not jumping on. What the hell? Oh, dude, I thought you came by to jump on the stream here. We'll watch this. I got the booth cam. Uh, yeah, give him a wave. Give him away there. I finally I finally got the camera too, working just for you, man. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> Just for you, um, just to be able to say this. Oh, so kids that come from parents who are no longer together. I, I've seen some some comedy bits about this, too. It's like, you know, uh, I'm half of this parent and half of this parent and they hate each other. So, like, what does that say about me? Um, that's a tough position to be in as a kid. I, you know, I get that. Um, but you are you and you've got to start living for you at some point here. And if these if these people are dark clouds over your life, then just move on from it. You have the choice here when you're it's much easier to make a choice for your own kid than it is to make it for yourself. So you're on the right path here about thinking about your kid and preventing future pain there. Make that choice for your child, if not for you. Make it now. And yeah, you can say something. I just again, I don't expect anything to change from that. I don't expect it. Wonder Woman. Oh, OK, here's a good point here. Wonder Woman says you need closure in order to move on. So in that case, having the conversation and calling her out may provide that. Maybe. Alexa says, as the scapegoat, it doesn't really change. I wish it did. It does hurt. No contact gave me the most peace. Spent too many years trying to get them to change. Just be ready. Be ready. Kelsey says she will try to gaslight OP if she does call her out. Sure. Well, just be ready for that. Just be ready for that. Uh, ba, 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 Olivia, I think I think we got them handled already, but but we have mods ready. Going back here just a second. <laughs> Metallic diva, what you mean? 
I'm not giving I'm not giving blooper content here. No way. I don't, I don't screw up ever. <clears throat> uh, Adri says I've been no contact with my mom for ten years. Best decision ever. Hard not taking sides. Sometime I just don't want to talk to them. <sighs> don't confront. Just walk away. So there's there's kind of different differing things here. If you do confront her, just be ready to be gaslit. Be ready for the answer of denial. Be ready for her to not take accountability for anything. And that's just going to solidify your point of view. But maybe it'll plant a seed with her because when it's five years down the road and she's like, I wonder why my child and my grandchild don't talk to me. She'll have a pre-answer for that already. You can go ahead and pre-answer that because in five years, if you don't confront her, it's just going to be the bad. You're going to be the bad guy and there's going to be no reason for it. And it may be that way anyway, because you may play the victim. But at least if you confront her now, you plant to see that might start to grow later on. Chrissy, we actually decided to do the 24 hour stream uh, really in a focus to grow the YouTube side of what we're doing. So we have a goal of gaining 10K new subscribers over on the YouTube side. Subscribers, meaning followers free just follow the channel um, because we have much fewer on the YouTube side than we do on the TikTok side. So we're trying to grow that side. And also, it just sounded like a hell of a lot of fun. And Tony Spark pitched it. And I said, why the hell not? And uh, and Candy Thunder actually agreed to it, too. So there's that. Cool, cool. Um, sorry, catching up. Hey, Elizabeth, uh, my name is Dusty Thunder. I read stories from Reddit, from followers and from other sources. And then we actually talk about those stories and potential solution paths here, too. So uh, we don't just read Reddit stories. We actually read Reddit stories and dive into what could have been done better. If somebody is an asshole, how big of an asshole? And we have a scale that we use ourselves. We have a custom scale here. It's called the Ascon scale. I'll show you real quick. So we we define how big of an asshole they are based on what they could have, should have, or definitely shouldn't have done, or if they're just a terrible human, um, and then talk about potential solution paths from that. So strangely therapeutic for a lot of people. I hope you enjoy. On YouTube, say name. Yes, Vicky. That is affirmative. And also, uh, I have a link tree link in my bio where you can find links to everything there. So Metallic Diva, welcome to the Thunder Crew on the YouTube side. Heck yes. Heck yes. Hope you enjoy. All right, here we go. We're going to dive into the next. Actually, we're 1842 at 2K. We're getting close to Tony Spark reading a story up here. That's a tough situation, though, OP. Calling out your mom. I mean, no contact seems like the, the smart thing to do here. Strangely therapeutic is really accurate. Uh, Bella did something bad. Bella did something bad. Why does it feel so good? Oh, boy. Hey, Saskia, thanks so much. Great great to see you over here. <laughs> you just articulate why why you love this? Oh, the strangely strangely therapeutic. Jenny on the block. The only creator that makes you all feel important. Well, that makes me sad. Um, wow, Chrissy, that's dark. But I get it. I mean, I get it. If you have <laughs> Candy Thunder. <laughs> Candy Thunder pops in just a comment on me making it a T-Swift reference. Oh, good gravy. Lindsay, good to see you here. How do you become a member? Uh, Christine for JP? <laughs> member. <laughs> so you can actually become a member of the Gosh Heck and Fam on the TikTok side. I think it's lower left. There's a star down there. Um, but it will tell you how to become a member of the VIP group. And, um, and there are a lot of benefits to that. One of the biggest benefits is getting access to the Facebook VIP group, which is another another community. We also when we do TikTok lives, the normal Wednesday TikTok lives, we do a VIP exclusive live after that that uh, only VIPs can get with as well. Now, do we ever do meet and greets, Koya? We haven't done one yet. You know, we've talked about the possibility of it, um, but but we haven't done anything like that yet. Not like that yet. Uh, bug mom says I messed up. I let my mom treat me and my kids horribly. I didn't know I could, I could go no contact. Well, Hey, hell yeah, you can. I mean, it is Koya come to DC. Hey, we may do a tour someday. Who knows? We'll see where this goes. Um, I think there are some obvious complications with going no contact with parents, right? Especially if those parents are involved with providing care for your children and that kind of thing. But but you make choices for you and your kids. And I think I genuinely do think that that is much easier to create boundaries for your children than it is for yourself. 
So thinking that way, like OP did in this last story, is the smart way to go. Emily B, yeah, I get it. I get it. Alex, you joined the Orange Heart Club? Heck yeah, there you go. Heck yeah. Book tour? Hey, I'm down. If we, if we ever have one pick up and go go big enough, I'm down. 100%. All right, let's dive into our next story. Never mind, we uh, we hit this goal, and we're gonna get Tony to read this story. Heck yeah, thank you, Miles. You're on top of it. On top of it, Doctor Sweets leading the board here with Cali Pro right behind, nipping at your heels. You guys, yeah, going big time here, the both of you. TLS Journey going big too. Chef Tila going big too. Hostel Cakes going big too. We got Amber Ella, Hickey, Joss VP, Overkill Mill, Prep Girl, Candy Thunder. Sheila Smile, Sheila Smiles, M. Pickerel, E. Tate Johnson, I am Jill 21, Sarah RT134. See us, Boots. Love you, buddy. Cole Barber, Southern Country Outdoor Girl, Not That Ellen, Tanya Kays, Ann Hodgson, Kimberly P., Fairies Dust, Dylan Sprague, Shannon Aaron, Anise Moon, Lisey Lex, Snowman Collector, Heidi J., Tony Spark, Southern North Switch, Sharon Day Newton, Melissa. Uh, Melissa Mabe, Catastrophe, Sally Maisky, Miss Pamela L, Trey Marie, Blessed Wonder Woman, Envy the G, Tawaz26, Yvette B01, Angie Holding, The Funny Farm, um, OMK Has- Hashim, o- OMK has him, Brandy Hicks Davis. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. We're going to get the next one set up and then we will get Tony Spark up here to read a story. He's going to read a story. He's going to get his smoking jacket and his pipe, and we're going to get a wingback chair, and he's going to read you a story. It's going to be amazing. The next one is going to open up or unlock a petty revenge story. And not to give too much away, but it's a shitty story. It's, it's a shitty story? Is it stinky? Stinky, shitty story? Petty Revenge Story. Okay, we're doing Tiny Dinies now. We're on the Tiny Diny side. Okay, here we go. Let's get Tony Spark up here to read a story, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Spark. I'm back back and so sorry if the haters don't like it no i'm just kidding what's up everybody uh funny funny thing uh dusty will appreciate this um i just copy and pasted a story from the last block that i wanted to read because when you have that kind of control over the story you get to pick the stories that you want to read i am shocked yeah yeah it's also a shorter one so uh, it's a shorter story because i was like okay all of my are kind of long but uh all right so where are we at six hours 57 minutes we're doing good we're doing good oh sure just hey you should are you do you have your phone with you to listen to this so you can give your thoughts when you get back okay all right uh ha, ha, ha. we can use our mo- yeah i know there's no uh i don't the, the custom emoji thing on the on the other side um on the youtube side it's just on the tiktok side so no bathroom breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Home stretch. That's right. Home stretch. Uh, yeah. 14. What is it? 14 hours ago? Seven. I don't know. 17 hours ago. I'm really bad at math. Apparently. No, he's just going to go stretch his legs a little bit. Uh, take a little break. Maybe have a little snack. Probably maybe go to the bathroom. Um, I, I meant to take a picture of his, uh, desk before the live and then see what it looks like after the live with everything. So, Emily B says 14 squares down. All right. All right. Maybe I should have uh, picked a few different ones on the on the bingo card, but it's just supposed to be fun. So, okay. Um, well, you're about to cross off two, two more squares. So here we go. Also, it just got really weird because now I'm the only one in the studio. I don't, I don't know which button switches to the, to the uh, studio. I'd show it to you, but. 
Everybody left me. I'm just I'm in here all by myself. Uh, Crystal, the bingo card is at dusty-thunder.com. It's also posted on uh, the Dusty Thunder profile on the on the uh, his story. Amy, I am not. I'm not regretting it yet. So we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, okay, here we go. This is from the AITA subreddit, and it is... Oh, oh, look, I already screwed it up. I already screwed it up. I was on the wrong story. Uh, all right, this is from the AITA subreddit, and it is titled, Am I the astronaut for not wanting to live with my boyfriend's dogs? I, 33 female, and my boyfriend, 44 male, have been together for five years. We both on, own our own homes, but he is selling his due to splitting up with his ex-girlfriend he bought it with. He's planning to move into my home, but will not be contributing towards my mortgage. This is important to me as I have worked my butt off to buy my own home with no help from my parents or inheritance, and I will not put anyone else's name on my mortgage. The issue is my boyfriend has two dogs. He works long hours and they are left for a long time. He doesn't really walk them, and I don't think he has ever bathed them. Bathed the words are hard. He doesn't really walk them, and I don't think that he has ever bathed them them since I knew him. I can't even say that. They are short-haired dogs, but they smell really bad, and he lets them poop in the garden wherever they want, and he won't clean up the garden unless he's having people over for a barbecue or get-together. I, on the other hand, am not a dog person. I was bitten by a dog as a child, and I was terrified of dogs until I was about 19. Nobody in my family has ever had dogs. I will sometimes cross the street if I see a dog walking my way. I love animals and would never want a dog to come to harm, but I have to, I've, bleh, I've had to explain that if my boyfriend moves in, I will not be taking care of them. Walking, caring, and cleaning up after them is solely his job. My boyfriend keeps talking about dog-proofing my home with baby gates, fences in the garden, etc. I have huge, huge anxiety about this, although I love my boyfriend. I have told him if they move in, I have told him if they move in, they will need to be confined to one area of the house like the kitchen, as I don't want them on my carpets or sofa. He gets in a big mood, and we keep going round in circles. We've had so many arguments about this, as I honestly thought he would end up giving them to his ex, who asked for them, and he used to be the one, and used to be the one looking after, walking, bathing, and picking up after them. This has been a long argument that happens regularly, but is never solved. He's always he has always known I do not want the responsibility of pets, but I think he'd hope I would change my mind. Am I the Askinaut? What do you guys think? Yeah, words were words were hard on that. There was this one sentence. I don't know what it was. I could. It was a. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get that one sentence. I don't, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know. I think. Uh, you know, I mean, I think if he's gonna. It, Obviously, he and his ex had the dogs together, and so at some point, he must have said he wanted the dogs because he ended up with them, and the fact that he now has the dogs and wanted them but doesn't want to take the responsibility for them seems like a bit of a problem, and the fact that he's assuming that now his girlfriend's going to take care of the dogs because because he doesn't want to doesn't make any sense to me. Um I mean, OP, you you you're kind of setting that boundary, and I think he's got to um, he's got to respect that boundary, and I think he needs to take a little bit of. I mean, he's 44 years old, he's got animals. We kind of talked about this earlier on a story. Like, if, don't get the dog if you don't want the responsibility of yeah. it. And you you're you wanted the dogs. You probably put up a fight for the dogs to get them, and now you don't want to take care of them. So, so um, I I think what I see here is that. He doesn't really give a shit about the dogs. It was a point of pride Probably. for him to get them from the ex and to not let the ex have them uh, out of spite, Lexi. Yeah, it yeah. was spite. It was pride. That's the only reason he's keeping them. He doesn't have any intention of hanging on to them. In your position here, OP, I would reach out to the ex and be like, look, this is how he treats the dogs and how he doesn't care for the dogs. Um, and I wouldn't plan on staying with this brozo, but but I'm also thinking about the 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 welfare of the dogs here because the dogs need to be with the ex because the ex actually takes care of them. So I would say, look, this is what's actually happening. Ex probably is going to swoop in and take the dogs back. You and the boyfriend are not going to end up staying together, especially after you reach out to the ex and let her know this, but it's the right thing to do in my opinion. And you've had those conversations with him already saying, I'm not going to take care of them. Yeah. These dogs. But you also have to have that boundary of like, I, I, 
You don't want nasty, stinky dogs in your house no. and not even like this guy should be taking care of his dog. Yeah. Also, what does that say about what it's going to be like when you have kids? If you had, can you see True. yourself having kids with this dude who refuses to take care of them? Uh, now I've, I've been in, in past lives. I've been in relationships with people or a relationship with someone who didn't like my dogs. And I let that influence. Like I eventually ended up, um, uh, ended up rehoming a dog because of it. And, and have a, a severe amount of regret in my life about that now for letting someone put me in that position for that happening. Um, and now, you know, I can't imagine ever letting someone do that again. Uh, you're kind of in the reverse situation where you have the opportunity to to essentially save the lives of two dogs or give them a much better life. Was it two? It was two, right? Yeah. Yes. I. It is. He has two dogs. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So it is. Uh, you have the opportunity here to, to really, save their lives and also probably give give the ex a big opportunity because she wanted the dogs. She cared for them. She was the one who actually took care of them. So uh, I I would definitely reach out and let her know what's going on and then just plan on the blowback from that to be, to be terrible and for your relationship to not continue. But again. Look at this as an indicator of how this guy is going to be like with taking care of things. It is not just a matter of being a dog person or not. It is a matter of accepting responsibility. If it was anything more than pride that wanted that drove him to take these dogs or to keep these dogs, he would actually care for them and yeah. take care of them. But he doesn't. So spite and pride are going to allow him to do some stupid things. Yeah. And that's that's a big red flag. Too. Well, and I mean, you can you can see like he got the dogs because he made a big stink about it and said, no, these are my dogs and I care about these dogs and I want these dogs. And yes. then as soon as you get them, you're like, OK, well, I don't really want them. OP, you are. NTA. NTA. What about what about boyfriend? What is he? I, I'm, I'm going to ask on one brozo. Wow. Well, he is a brozo. Which one? There's mm, he's a brozo for sure. He is a brozo. I'm going to ask on one because because it's clearly just pride and spite and and he's willing to. I think you also have to look at at relationships that people have with exes and in, in, in your case, specifically OP and think about if anything ever went sideways with you guys. He's going to let pride and spite run the show then too yeah is he gonna fight for if you have kids with them is he gonna <laughs> fight for the kids say I want the kids and, and then neglect the kids yeah not okay. Not okay. It's a lot of a lot of buttons here. We got NTA. We got There's a lot of buttons. Yeah. Straight to ask on one. A lot of buttons. Hey, look at that one. Hey, hey Meredith, you're amazing. What's you're that? amazing. Look at that. It was the it was the Ted. It oh, was the teddy bear. Yeah. Look at that. He's All also right. moving in and not contributing to the mortgage. I missed that part. Well, uh, well, to be fair though, she said she doesn't want him. He's not contributing, but it's important to her that. He now, granted, I I can understand the she wants the mortgage. She it's a point of pride for her that she worked hard for this, and she wants she wants to be the only one owning her house. I could get that, but he should still be like, hey, I'll help be contributing. You yeah, I mean, he whether or not he'll own the house or not, that's something they could fight about if anything ever happens. I guess, but it would essentially be rent to him. Yeah, he could still be contributing without, without owning the house. Kind of lean on the house. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, all right, guys, yeah. and yes, I saw in the chat. This does count as feedback and reading a story. So I gave it. I've already been accused of making up the rules as I go along. So I'm not going mean, to. It'll be fine. You got two squares. So it just means that I'm going to make the other ones harder for you to check off. <laughs> Let's gonna, go. I'm going to be Francis, using, yeah, I'm gonna be using yeah. the shit out of that microphone over there. <laughs> Bye, guys. I'm, ne I'm never going to tell him to use it. This is whole time. This whole time. You're I'm just like going to be like, nah. Nah. Yeah, the very, very last minute. Very last minute. Um, he could legally show he's contributing to the mortgage and ask for ownership later on. Maybe. Uh, I, I think I would have a rental agreement set up then. I mean, because by that standard, people who rent a home could lay claim to the home that they're renting as well, right? But not if you have a rental agreement. I would have a rental agreement with this brozo. Not that I suggest him moving in at all, but if, you, if he needs to contribute. But I think a rental agreement would cover that. <laughs> Always using the mic and get it notarized. Yeah. Damn good idea. Damn good idea. 1920 to 2K on the tiny dinies already. You guys are rocking it out. That one is going to unlock a petty revenge story. It's going to happen. Wait. Oh, that you, you put that on cake reward story number two. Is that right? Oh, no. You just added one on.
Picking and choosing. Picking and choosing. Oh, we need confetti. You're right. Hey, get back up for, for a second. I got to shoot some confetti at you. Three bingo squares all at the same time. <laughs> Three bingo squares? We're getting a handle, Dr. Sweets. Mary Bell says, Tony, you talk good. I'm putting my I'm putting my hood up because otherwise it gets all stuck in my hood and there's confetti everywhere and it's ah hey also I just want to say we made it seven hours and nine minutes before we shot confetti that's a lot that's a lot Tony Spark making it rain up in here also now that that's off the board we're probably just gonna go confetti heavy and I don't want to see how much confetti is in here this is gonna be fun it will be fun bye guys. Uh, at the end of the night, we're like, we can't breathe anymore because there's so much confetti in here. I think I got the black lung pop. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. All right, we hit that tiny diny goal. Here we go. Uh, it, oh, Radiant Decay is fine. It's fine. You don't, you don't have to put the specific times on there. Yeah, if you mark them, you can you can make it, make stuff up. It's fine. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dr. Sweets in the number one spot by a mile. Always Dr. Sweets. Chef Tila in the number two spot here. TLS, Journey, Cali, Peru, Theo, Dino, Rex, AK, Mary, Night Shadow, 87, Southern Country, Joss, VP, Wayward, Darling, Prep Girl, Alex is a Dragon, Amanda Mills, Amberiel, Hickey, Shannon, Aaron, Miles with the clutch save here. Uh, Siri H79, Iceland, Anise Moon, Olivia and Sons, Ann Hodgson, Cole Barber, Sunny Lala 79, Twinkle Says, Adventures with Pam, Tanya Case, Trini Marie, Amanda Lee, Blessed Wonder Woman, uh, Nikki Bernal, Lisey Lex, Snowman Collector, Nicole Birch, Tara Rajon, Three Wonderland, Miss Pamela L, Crystal Museum Girl, Yvette B01, J Richards, 4430, Effulgent One, Christy Lee, Hostel Cakes, Anna Hotman, Emily B, IVF Mama. Thank you guys so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. My wrist is blowing up, so I'm going to try to figure out what is going on here. It's Bree uh, texting to see if we need anything. She said, What should I bring? Ah. I said, Your A game. Your A game. Heck yeah. There you go. Bree's going to join us. And have some fun today. Um, uh, Pug Mom, Bug, Bug Mom, you became a member today. Do you have to join separately on YouTube? The membership on the YouTube side is separate. They don't have, there's no way for us to bridge them together. So it is a separate thing, but it also gets you access to separate content. So there is that. All right, let me set the new goal up. This one is going to unlock a petty revenge story. No, that one unlocked a petty revenge story. This is gonna one is going to unlock a cake story. Cake story, and it is going to be Okay, we have 600 donuts to unlock a cake story. New fan members of the country. Hey yo. Hey yo. Jenna Style, thanks for the lot or thanks for the follow there. Magic, thanks for the follow there. So well, greatly appreciate it. Joanne Hunt, thanks for the love you, Joyce, with the donuts. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Brett and Jerry Legal Fourth with Lightning Bolt there too. Heck yes. Mary Bell, for some reason I didn't realize I haven't changed my name on here since I got married three months ago until Dusty Thunder said my name. Ha! Huh? <laughs> we got like Candy Thunder. She didn't. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, before we dive back in here, we are doing the Wheel of Thunder as we as we jump over to just the YouTube side. So after we finish a TikTok, um, a TikTok stand, we will do the Wheel of Thunder, which is this. Wheel of Thunder. Heck yeah. So the top 10 gifters from this stream, plus two new members of the fam, two existing members of the fam will go on the wheel. We'll spin it, we'll spin it for how many? Well, um, a little adjustment to that. We're going to do subscribers um, from TikTok. They're going to be one new, one existing, and then we're doing um, one a gifter from the Super Chat and YouTube and a member of the the Storm or the Thunder. What, what one is it on YouTube? The Thunder, Thunder Crew. Thunder Crew on YouTube. The Thunder Crew. So we're mixing in that YouTube side too. So there we go. But we'll spin when we go straight to YouTube after the TikTok block is over. 
There we go. Okay, so you're gonna have uh, you're you're gonna have some opportunities to get some some goody some goody bags. And we've got mouse pads. We've got a poster. We've got sticker packs. We've got piano man books, which we do signed copies of. By the way, I now have hard copy hardcover piano man. There's only like ten available in the TikTok shop, but I have them available, and those are autographed copies too. Yep, yep. Miss Big Ivor, welcome. Jocelyn almost won twice last time. Oh, you'll get there. You'll get there. Theosaurus, Lacey, Lex, Mary, Mama Bear. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. Hey, oh, okay. We've got the 350 of six 600 already on that side. So now I am reading the Petty Revenge story, correct? Yes. All right, here we go. You guys unlock this. Here we go. Petty Revenge reward story titled, Years Ago, I Had a Lunch Thief. About, about the 12th time. I complained to HR about people stealing my lunch. Mandatory reporting every third or fourth instance. I was seething. Not a damn thing was being done, and I still had to go buy something to eat. I was complaining to my doctor at the yearly checkup about it, and he smiled, saying, So you're constipated then? I was dumb and said, No. Why? He wrote me a prescription for some holy F laxatives with instructions to mix it in with your meal for maximum effect, at which point I knew what to do. I wish I could say they stopped stealing my food, but no, they ate my sandwich with special avocado sauce. <laughs> special avocado sauce. About an hour after lunch, I went to HR and reported two things. One, my lunch was stolen again. Two, my medication was stolen. HR goes, so you got hit by the lunch thief again and your medicine was in the bag? I responded, yes. I have had some digestive problems, and my doctor prescribed a powerful laxative and advised me to mix it in with my midday meal. HR, going white, responded, you what? I smiled, responded, I mixed in a prescription-grade laxative with my food per my doctor's orders. <laughs> and then you just stand by the bathroom and wait, right? Well, being that stealing prescribed medication is a criminal offense, the police were called and found the lead man from a department over absolutely shitting his brains out. He was furious and accused me of poisoning his food, but it wasn't his food. I asked, at which, po at which point did you get the idea that the food was for you? And furthermore, now I no longer have the medication I was prescribed for my condition. It was about this time he knew he fudged up and shut his mouth until he got a lawyer or so I'm told, small town. One of my buddies from high school took his position. I can make and eat my hoagies and I have no clue where the lunch thief went after after his fines and community service. Wow. Hey, and M. Bracker, thanks for the love with the super chat over on the TikTok side. Greatly appreciate that. That is fantastic. Also... Doctor kind of stuck his neck out for you there, right? Yeah, like Doc, Doc kind of stuck his neck out for you. It is, yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, he, uh, he, you're constipated, right? I mean, that was that was an amazing play. We we'll petty confetti that for sure. Got to bring out the petty confetti. Doctor is a legend for real. Like, who is this doctor? Who is this doc? Man, uh, what is what is FAFO? F A F O. I know this. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, F around, find out. Okay, I saw it earlier and I'm like, I should know this. I'm, I'm gonna give my brain time to figure it out. No, now, now we got it, Sergeant Mac. Yeah, we got it. It takes me a minute to figure things out sometimes. Um, Wonder Woman, another creator on, on here. His son did this with a bully at school and a cupcake who kept stealing his food. Man, Man the Moira voices from Shits Creek. The show, which I strongly recommend watching. Not right now, because uh, we have several hours to go. <laughs> but I strongly rec recommend. We are at seven hours and 18 minutes. So check it out. I've got I got camera two here set up and I've got the uh, the timer right here. So you can see you got Tony Spark over there too, giving you a wave. Yeah, we're seven hours and 18 minutes right now. We're rocking. We're rocking. We got a long way to go, though. A long way to go. Okay, so 450 of 600 right now on the uh, on the the cake story. We're we're going for donuts right now on the TikTok side to unlock that cake story. I'll jump back up and resume regularly scheduled programming now. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, Caitlin. Yeah, Lilith, nuclear revenge. We may have to check that out. She says I'm too nice to read her favorite stories. I take that as a challenge. 
nuclear revenge. I apparently there's nuclear revenge stories. Now yeah, we need to look at nuclear apparently. Hey, Angel, Lone Star, Texas Tornado with the super over there. It says, don't forget to like the live stream. Hearts and like are not the same thing over on the YouTube side. Just a heads up. Uh, make, make sure you like and share. Greatly appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed on the YouTube side, make sure you do that as well. That's the main goal of doing what we're doing today. Oh, I read. I have read from that sub. Okay. Candy Thunder says, I, uh, all right. apparently I'm not too nice to read there. Ha ha. Ha I can be mean when I need to be. All right, this one is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for refusing my sister in law in her request to baptize her child during our wedding? <laughs> I dated my fiance for five years before we tied the knot. We have a I have a great relationship with his parents and siblings, except one of his sisters. Hey, Joanne with the coral. Thanks so much for that. That was very cool. Definitely caught my attention. It was like squirrel. Very cool. Uh, yeah. The golden child of the family. She's annoying, but whatever. It's fine. I've been able to keep out of her way for the most part as her family lives out of state. So my boyfriend and I got engaged and everything is going great. Planning with both sides of the family until sister-in-law at the last minute requests that she and her family baptize their daughter during our ceremony. She even called our priest and he'd agreed to combine the ceremonies. <sighs> priest, you should know better than that. Um, what? I said no for several reasons, none of which were good enough. And I was apparently being unreasonable and selfish. <laughs> hey, we got some gifted subs going out here from Dr. Sweet, sent subs to Aurora, MF Designs for you, Tasha, Nicole, Katie, Joe, Cindy, and D. Welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam to all of you. And we hit the subscriber goal. Look at that. Went in my mouth. Sorry. Whoa. I'm not going to say you shot at my mouth. Shut up. I have a cough drop in. I got to get rid of that thing. It's clicking. I just took a cough drop out. He thought it was one of the pieces of confetti. Pulled out a tooth. Yeah. It hit me, man. It hit me. Okay. Thank you, sir. Stop. <laughs> the deconfettiing process is very important here. <laughs> okay, my reasons. We're Catholic and weddings are usually an hour. Tacking on a baptism would either make the ceremony longer or take time away from our ceremony. Our wedding was an evening affair and the reception was only going to be about two hours. So even if it lasted 30 minutes, baptism and their photos afterwards, that would cut our reception down to an hour and a half. Her wedding slash reception was an all day affair. FYI, the baby would be in church in the wedding photos and at the reception. So seriously, who would focus on another wedding couple when there's a first grandchild nearby her reasoning? All the family would already be gathered for our wedding, and it would be a good time for them, her family, to have it. And shouldn't I be accommodating to a first-time mother? They'd only invite about four to six additional people to our wedding, strangers to us, and it'd be easier on them because we'd already have the venue and food for their short guest list, which we'd be paying for. It's the first grandchild and important to the her family. I guess I wasn't part of it yet and not included in this sentiment. My fiance didn't have a strong preference either way, but supported how I felt on the matter. I stuck to my guns and said no, but we offered a compromise. We'd said we'd delay our honeymoon trip and they could have the baptism next Sunday morning during mass. I thought it was a great compromise, but sister-in-law was not thrilled. So that's what we end up doing. But she still brought baby girl in full white satin lace to the wedding and was front and center in all the photos. And they brought their four to six extra friends to our reception without asking first. We never made a fuss about it. My issue is this. I still get crap from this sister-in-law, and it's been a couple of years since the wedding. Snippy remarks made when it's only the two of us around. Passive-aggressive comments in front of others. Bridezilla labels tossed my way. A cold shoulder when I tried to talk to her at holidays, etc. Like, seriously, it was years ago, and she basically got what she wanted. So why am I being treated like I was the asshole? Am I the astronaut? Edit to address repeated questions. When this first came up, I said no. 
My husband took over handling this completely from there. He worked with his mom and sister. I didn't have to deal with anything besides initially saying no. My husband was the point of contact after that. Granted, we didn't know she'd still show up with her guests to the reception or knew what her daughter was dressed in. But at that point, we were having a good time at our reception and we were focusing on ourselves. I only figured out she'd invited her friends when I saw the photos later. I don't know if she ever offered to pay because I wasn't in that conversation at this point. It happened right before our wedding and hubs and mother-in-law didn't want to stress me out. Guarantee you she didn't offer to pay. It was a short evening reception with a buffet. We had about 200 people in total. Her passive aggressive comments in the following years were very subtle. If she said something rude and if I or my husband called her out on it, which he did, she'd claim we simply misunderstood her. We misunderstood her. The rude comments or snubs she gave me directly in private, she'd also claim I misunderstood her or was blowing an innocent comment out of proportion. My husband has stood up for me, but our interactions with her are brief and only once or twice a year. So I'm not dedicating a lot of time to trying to have a great relationship with her. She's a narcissist and I refuse to give her any drama to feed her addiction. It just struck me as odd that she's hung on to this incident for so long. And I began to question if I might have inadvertently been the asshole. Hence this post top comment in TA next time she makes some offhand comment. Just say something like, you're right. I am so sorry that even after two years, you seem to lack the mental horsepower to realize that my wedding, which was an event I planned and paid for, was neither about you nor your daughter. Furthermore, I'm sorry that even after all this time, you are so petty and childish that you feel the need to bring it up. I'm also sorry that I didn't bill you for your grossly rude behavior of inviting guests to my wedding without my approval. And lastly, I am sorry that you lack a basic understanding of gravity and think the world revolves around you. I hope that someday you can realize that you're not just that that you're just not that special. But given how dense you are, I can understand why you're confused. Uh, I, I think that's a fantastic approach here. This all comes down to, uh, yeah, she, she is a narcissist and, and wants to have something, wants the beef, right? She, she loves the beef apparently, but, uh, I'm sorry you misunderstood is not an apology in any way, shape or form. I'm sorry you misunderstood is not an apology. I'll say it again for the people in the back. I'm sorry you misunderstood is not an apology. Is it, it is a deflection. It is her being unwilling to take accountability, to take responsibility for the bullshit that she said. She is. Sorry, I got to put something up there. She, uh, yeah, she's an asset. So, so now years later, OP second guessing yourself and saying, am I the ass cannot for refusing my sister-in-law and her request to baptize her child during her wedding? No. No, don't start second guessing yourself now. She's playing the long game and maybe this is the plan. Maybe she's planting enough seeds of doubt. Maybe she's planting enough seeds of doubt to get you to second guess yourself over time. Maybe that's her game. Maybe she plays the long game here. Maybe you are not the asking off of this. It was your wedding. It was your day. She did things she knew was wrong. Asking was wrong. Calling the minister before talking to you wrong wanting to invite her friends to your wedding and have you pay for them wrong inviting them anyway even after you said no to everything wrong she likes to take advantage of people and then victimize herself and then say i'm sorry you misunderstood me that's bullshit narcissist twat behavior she's a bit snatch that's all there is to it do not second guess yourself <sighs> yeah she gets this <laughs> She gets the DFHB fail. That's all there is to it. Good gravy. Hey, Brett J. Roman Terra, Jenna Lopez, get jazzy on a coil, Rican, Spec Mama, uh, Sarah Iberg, and Janet Lopez. What is this magic that you've brought me, Candy Thunder? Oh, my goodness. Peggy, Candy Thunder's mama, made no bake cookies for the stream. I will now survive, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, now I, I will survive. I got no baked cookies and I got some tea. I'm going to be high. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Peggy. Greatly appreciate it. Is she watching the stream? Peggy, you're amazing. I hope you're watching. Oh, okay. Okay. She brought no baked cookies. I mean, that's amazing. Also, Bree's here. What's up, Bree? 
Hello, Bree's going to jump in here shortly and read a story. It's going to be amazing. Can I share those? I can try to shove them into the camera. I don't think it's going to do us any good, though. I, uh, did she make her famous sweet tea, Nisi? I don't know. Did she send sweet tea? <laughs> no, she did not send to me. She's always got it down at uh, at her house, though. Always. Always. Yeah, Candy Thunder and I got really, really lucky. We hit the donut goal. Let's talk about that, huh? Dr. Sweets in the lead again here. Sally Meiske in the number two spot. Mama Joe and Hot Accent. Theodino Rex, Southern Country, Night Shadow, A.K. Mary. Uh, whatchamacallit. Heck yeah. Also a great candy bar. Happy Bubble, Cerulean Queen, Cassandra Edwards, Julie Crable, um, Atia Rex. A T Rex. Got it. Eh, got it now. Brittany Jane. <laughs> Brittany Jane L. Roman. Then we have Sarah I. Bergen or Sarai Bergen? Terry Bajar, Joss VP, Mama Bear, NC, Cat Heasy, Sunny Lala, 79, Denise Burkhard, um, Karina Kamroski, Lisi Lex, Trini Marie, Apple Kiwi, Kid Roscoe, Christine, 4JP, Hostel Cakes, um, MC's Tachi, MCS Tachi, uh, Joycey Brown, Camo Shield Maiden, Becca Babe, Shoe Knot, and Effulgent One. Got a lot of new names on there. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much for the love. Greatly appreciate it. The L. Oh, the I is silent. So just Sarah Bergen? Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you very much. I, I require lots of help. And Kiara with the Galaxy. Heck yeah. Thanks so much for that. Greatly appreciate it. I'm going to get the next goal set up here. You guys just unlocked the cake story. And let's get it. Let's get it. This one is going to unlock some Tony Spark feedback. Can I get some feedback? There we go. We're going for fire now. It's fire time. We unlocked that kick story. I'm going to get it pulled up here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna dive in on the cake story. I will set it right in Spanish. Damn. All right, here we go. Here's the cake story you all just unlocked. Let's dive in. This is a follower submitted cake story and it is titled, Am I the Askonaut for entertaining my niece's weird cake request despite her mother's wishes? A cake story, hails yes. I, female 42, am an aunt to a female 15 girl who we'll call Lacey. Lacey is, well, a weird teenager. I love her to death, but she's definitely unique. She's in this phase where she cuts up dolls and builds her versions of them with different heads and limbs and stuff like that. Yeah, literally like the kid from, like the kid Sid from Toy Story. Her mom doesn't really care for that kind of stuff. She keeps calling Lacey demented and creepy for doing stuff like that. I think Lacey is just going through an edgy time in her life. She's not doing any harm. She's just she's just expressing a weird inner art form or something like that. But her mom doesn't like it. Growing up, I was a bit more interested in art, and her mom was always a little bit closer to the by-the-book path. Lacey's 15th birthday was coming up, and she made an interesting cake request when I asked what kind of cake she wanted. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm usually the family's glorified baker and occasional photographer. She wanted a chocolate cake with red blood like frosting and a doll head as the centerpiece for the cake. Yeah, I know. But who am I to judge? I thought. So I decided I'd embrace her weird idea and make the cake for the kid. But her, not, her mom was not having it. She berated Lacey for being freaking weird and wanting a doll head cake. She forbid bid me from making the cake too. Well, as my sister should have probably expected when you forbid me from doing something, I'm going to do it. So I made Lacey her doll head cake and brought it for the party. The whole family was well intrigued by the cake and kept eyeing it and studying it. My sister was fuming, but she didn't want to make a scene. Lacey was happy. After the party, my sister told me I wasn't allowed to make any more cakes for her entire household. I get that, fair enough, but Lacey was overjoyed and gave me a big hug. Honestly, that was enough for me. I'll be the cool aunt who makes doll head cakes for my weird niece. Am I the astronaut for doing this? Hell no. No, and good for you. 
Uh, now a doll head on top, a doll head on top of the cake. That's what my understanding is. Doll head on top of the cake. It's, I mean, kids get to a point. I am happy to see a kid embracing their creativity and, and exploring it because so many don't. So many kids are so afraid of being perceived as weird or different that they will never even explore that side, which is a shame because there's so much creativity there that hasn't been ruined by the adult world yet. And I think if kids are given that freedom to explore, you should. And if they show an interest in exploring it, you should encourage them. I wish our kids explored their creative sides more. I wish, but, but I think you get, you get kids who are like, well, you know, other kids, my age, they do this and this and this, and they don't do this kind of thing. All the more reason. To get into that kind of thing and explore it. Why would you want to do the same thing as everybody else? I'm not saying do it because it's different, but saying do it because it feels right to you and you have a passion for it. Get into it. It's cool. Lindsay, people actually make financial means making remaking dolls. I don't think it's weird. Yeah. And you know what? In 2024, you can get into any kind of niche thing that you want. Right. And like you said, I'm sure there's a there's a market for that. So so rock and roll. Let her go through the phase. And if it, you never know, being supportive during this phase could lead to her having a career as an artist or something like that. It could be, you know, it, it could really, you made her feel seen, number one, which I think is huge for a kid, especially a kid who's trying to embrace their creative side. A kid who's trying to embrace him, words are hard. A kid who is trying to embrace her creative side while the mother is actively trying to suppress it. This is a win. W. W. It is a W, Auntie. There's channels. Uh, Ripley says there's channels on YouTube and TikTok where people revamp dolls. Dude, just, there's so much possibility here. Uh, I, I mean, creativity is one of those things that you can't you can't put into boxes, right? Like it comes in many, many, many forms. So encourage it. It's awesome. She's not chasing small animals in the backyard with a weed eater. Let her do her thing, Sergeant Mac. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it's great. And yeah, your sister's going to be pissed at you, but someday I think she'll get it. Someday she'll be like, oh, 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 now I get it. Validation of kiddo is healthy, Jennifer. Yeah, heck yeah. I think that's awesome. Hey, hit the fire goal here too. You guys just unlocked uh, some Tony feedback. And, and I think Bree's getting ready to jump in and read a story here as well. Let's give some some love out for this. Dr. Sweets in that number one spot again. Get Jazzy on it. Southern Northwich, Sally Meiske, Joss VP, Callie Prue, Southern Country, Tasha Nicole, uh, Cynthia, Night Shadow, Janet Lopez, AK Mary, Brittany Jane, El Roman, G Dragon, RVA, Mandy's 975, Katisi, Prep Girl, Adventures with Pam. Sonny Lala, Amber El Hickey, Cole Barber, uh, Gamer Girl Raging, heck yeah, this guy you know, Christine 4JP, Joinson, uh, Joycey Brown, if all you want is Denise Burkhardt, you guys are awesome, thanks so much for helping us get there, you guys are just steamrolling through these gift goals, just steamrolling through, thanks Miles, appreciate the, the save there, the next one we're going to set up is going to be a Just Because. Okay, little memento while I try to figure out what's going on next here. Okay, got it. Now I know the plan. Now I know the plan. Oof. <laughs> Should have made a doll shaped cake with flesh color icing, a red velvet cake with strawberry filling. I mean, she could have taken it further, but she did exactly what the what her niece wanted. And I think if it if it comes down to a matter of mom suppressing her creativity and calling her weird and obviously not doing the right thing. 
then yeah, I'm not going to follow it. And and if that crosses a boundary and you want to say, you want to say F off, then that's fine. Like, I, I think that is, uh, that makes sense. Hey, David, what's what's going on there? David Moxley, good to see you in the chat there. We are on for 24 hours. We are seven hours and 38 minutes in. We got a long way to go. Okay, we have a cake st- No, not a cake story. We are on to our next story. And then we're going to bring Bree up for some feedback here. So are we doing Bree feedback Okay, got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, uh, so, gotcha, okay. So, our next story here, uh, we're actually going to have a special guest jump up and give some feedback with me here. We'll dive into the story first, and then I will introduce her. This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Will I Be the Astronaut If I Didn't Remind My Husband About My Birthday? Oh, shit. This sounds dangerous. My husband, male 34, and I, female 33, have been together for nine years, married for six. My birthday is coming up this week, and I'm pretty sure he's going to forget. He's not a birthday person, and he's not big on getting or giving gifts, and he spaced a lot on birthdays and anniversaries at the beginning of our relationship. But we worked through it and agreed to meet in the middle with him trying harder and me being more chill, and that's been mostly working. But, well, he hasn't asked me about anything, not even if I'm working that night or if there's a restaurant I'd want to go to or anything. And I basically schedule and plan everything we do. I'm so tired of planning thoughtful things for him to do for me so that I have something to say when people ask me what he got me. I don't want to look up restaurants or check menus last year during my birthday dinner. He complained that there were only a couple of things on the menu that he could eat, even though I told him where I wanted to go a week ahead of time and specifically asked him to look at the menu and check schedules and just have him just to have him show up and pay. I want to feel like I'm worth literally any amount of effort or thought that I'm a priority for him, that he knows me and cares about me. I've been feeling like this for the last year and we've been talking fighting about it and i've asked him to take more initiative and act more like my partner but it hasn't been happening i know his mom has asked him about what to get me for my birthday so he's got to know it's coming up i also maintain a digital household calendar with upcoming birthdays and events that i've shared with him multiple times but i don't think he's ever clicked the link which is all to say i'm not trying to trick him or set him up for failure i would just genuinely rather not celebrate my birthday at all than plan everything by myself I also don't know if I remind him that he would even do anything. And I think that's the worst part. If I don't say anything and he doesn't do anything, then he just forgot. If I do say something and he still hasn't done anything, it would hurt more. But at the same time, it feels like it's a dick move for me to know that I want something from him and will be disappointed if he doesn't do it and not tell him. I'm really trying not to do some kind of gotcha thing, but it feels dishonest, especially with how much I've been thinking about it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring up, you've met her before on podcast. This is Bree, a.k.a. Sassy Merlot. Hey, it's Bree. Hello. Go ahead and step Where up on I the at? mat there here. Yeah, there you go. It's Bree. Found it. There you Hi. go. Hello. So uh, you listen to the story. What yeah. are your thoughts? Yeah, there's more here than just a birthday. Yeah. I mean, you are not feeling at all valued. Um. And you got to just talk about it and not fight scooch about it, it right? Oh, Actually, I, we'll scooch it this way. So too. earlier when I was watching, Candy was talking <laughs> about like, I don't like things in my space. That's, yeah, I'm with you. I'm go. with you. Okay. There we go. And if you just project a little bit more, you're good. Okay. Speak up. Go. Okay. Um, yeah. You just need to tell him. You just need to talk about it. Not in a confrontational way. Hey, everybody. Thanks for saying hi. Um, not in a confrontational way. Not in a, in a way that you're trying to fight with him or anything just you need to tell him i feel like if i don't say something you're gonna forget i feel like if i do say something you still may not do anything and really that's what we need to talk about i feel like you don't even think of me and that's the deeper part here i think yeah yeah i think the oh there's so many red flags here at some point i mean i require managing too that's not it that's not yeah. It's not new information to anybody, but there's a difference between needing managing yeah. and just blatantly disregarding. Like for sure. Whenever I would forget about something, I would make a calendar event, make it recurring so it never happened again. That's the first thing I thought of whenever you were reading it is this guy's got to make a calendar event. I mean, she did say though she that she has a him. calendar and he, he just hasn't won't even use it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. ah. I, I, I. There has to be some sort of priority in this guy's life, and. 
if it's not her, that needs to definitely be discussed because it almost feels intentional that he's not giving her. So you think there's something else that is getting his attention rather than her? I don't know if I think it's anything, you know, cheating, whatever. I don't know that I think that. I just think it's this guy and he, I don't know. I don't know what I think his attention is on, but maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe he's was raised by an enabler and has been allowed to not care mm. about other people or never had to do anything or for never himself. had to do any of these things himself. Ugh. And somebody always took care of it. And it sounds like she has always taken care of it for herself. She said she's planned her own stuff. Um, and then he just kind of shows up and pays and she does it so that when people ask, she doesn't have to say he did nothing. At least she can say he did something. Right. Yeah. So it sounds like maybe he's just never had to, step up and take care of these things uh, but you should still want to uh, like this so, is your wife right so kim to your point here you said this is a her problem because she said he's not a celebratory guy that doesn't matter yeah. if you've got a partner who is a celebratory person and needs that then you have to honor that as a spouse right like there's yeah. got to be a balance in there somewhere but this is a matter of and i've seen a lot of comments of there's managing and then there's mom level managing for sure he needs mom level managing is he just a man child is he just in, incompetent? Like, what? what is the real issue here? Because it's coming off as malicious. And yeah. that's, that he's just, he's okay failing. He's okay failing the people mm -hmm. that he loves, supposedly, and that love him repeatedly. And that is, uh, that's a problem. You've yeah. got to be able to step up at some point here. You've got to be able to do something. Somebody said something a minute ago. Birthdays just aren't important to them, so they don't get excited about it. And I do appreciate that there are people who birthdays, it's not important to them, but it's really not about what's important to you. It's really about what's important to the person you love or claim to love, right? So even if it's not a thing for you, it's still a really important thing to them. Yeah. And you have to give them, I've said this actually on a podcast, one of them that I did before. A birthday is your one day that is about you. Mm. Christmas is about family. Anniversary is about the two of you. Birthdays are the one day that is about you. That's a cop out to say birthdays aren't important to me, so I just don't think about it. This is about your wife, your your person. So God dang it, celebrate this lady because it sounds like she deserves it. She takes care of you nonstop, it sounds like. Yeah, and Brett, to your point, um, I think if it was a Jehovah's Witness thing, that would probably mm. be mentioned here because they're also married. And I think well, there's, yeah. there's something that happens with Jehovah's Witnesses when you get married, too. Like it, it, you either get shunned from the community if you continue to celebrate things or it, this this is a he forgets because he puts no effort into remembering kind of thing. Somebody there's else no just effort. also reminded the mother-in-law has mentioned something about it. So this yeah. isn't a forgetful thing. This right. is a not important enough for me to think about. Right. Which sucks. Uh, I, I did not read that they have kids, which I'm thankful for. Yeah. Because she's probably all the kid, or he's probably all the kid that she can manage. He's man child. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, at some point you got to grow up and start doing things for yourself. You're going to lose this person. You've been married for six, together for nine years. How has it lasted this long with someone actively not giving a shit about you? I, that's the part mm -hmm. I don't get. How does it, how does that happen? Uh, well, she might be a people pleaser. I mean, she might be the kind of person that doesn't mind doing for other people. And it might just have bubbled up to the point of almost, it almost seems resentful at this point, which by the way, don't blame you. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We've, we've seen a couple of comments here where it's like Madeline is like, I'm leaving a relationship like this as we speak. There was another comment earlier yeah. that said, uh, my ex was like this. Notice I said ex. This this leads to the destruction of relationships. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any way around that. It doesn't matter what your feelings are birthday on yeah. birthdays are. It matters what's important to your spouse, right? Yeah, and, and somebody made a good point. This isn't about even like money spending, whatever. A homemade card, and as they said, a homemade card and a cheap bottle of wine. Amazing. Perfect. Something. She isn't even asking for anything big at this point. She just wants you to acknowledge it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's sad. And I, if this doesn't get handled, if she doesn't speak up for herself, not even for the marriage at this point, just speak up for yourself. Yeah. Then, and don't show him you have to get 
you have to give me some sort of effort here. I don't know how this continues. Pain creates change, right? Iris just said yeah. after 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 you broke up, that's when he finally started taking it seriously mm-hmm. because that's when the pain came. I think it can be a, I mean, if you want it to come before the end of a relationship, it probably needs to be a warning and say, look, if this doesn't get fixed, I'm gone. Yeah. Because it says to me that you don't give a shit and that's not okay. Right. And so, she has to be clear that it isn't just about birthdays. This is about in yeah. general because, you know, if he is this selfish of a person, the chances of her or him gaslighting her about it. Yeah. I can't believe you're this mad about a birthday. It's not about the birthday. It's about everything. You've got to show me some yeah. sort of effort. This is a partnership, not a me showing up for you all the time. And How shitty of a position to be put in on your birthday to be like, well, if I speak up, I'm going to feel like yeah. shit. If I don't speak up, I'm going to feel like shit. So it's she's she's in a Kobayashi Maru now yeah. because because she's got a man child. And that mm-hmm. is <sighs> it does suck. But at this point, straight up, don't worry about how it makes him feel because he clearly isn't worrying about how everything makes you feel. Worry about what's going to what's going to make you feel better. Yeah. This is one and of those times when you have to choose. You have you, right? to choose you. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, that sucks. I'm sorry. Birthdays yeah. are a big deal to me. It makes Lilith, me sad. Uh, Lilith says your birthday is the one day that your partner should be celebrating the fact that the person they love was born. Yeah. And there's just a complete lack of appreciation here. And that sucks. So the question was, what was the question? Oh, sorry. I'm pull that out. Uh, will I be the asking on if I didn't remind my husband about my birthday? Uh, I mean, no. we're, we're NTA, but it's either way here. Uh, you're pretty much. You have free range here to not be the asshole no matter what you do, up to and including leaving him. So, I I mean, I'm not saying that that's the answer. I think think there is a chance here to create some pain that could create change. Mm -hmm. I don't know how likely that is to happen, but at least it gives a chance. Because so many people here, like they said, they finally took it seriously after we broke up. Yeah. Why not try to make that change happen before then? It's definitely worth trying. It, you need to definitely take into consideration that it may not go the way you want it to. Yeah. And then some bigger things have to be discussed. But I think those things are probably needing to be discussed anyway at this point. So, yeah. Dr. Sweets, to your point mm. here, at this point, it's not a it's not a reminder. At this yeah. point, it is a, a warning to say, look, if you don't change this, um, our relationship is going to be damaged, maybe to the point of being irreparable. So mm-hmm. that 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 at least indication of pending pain may be enough, but it could be like one of those people who who we've heard so many comments about here it has to be the actual pain that creates the change. But by then it's too late. So, yeah. oof. Uh, OK, so Sucks. we've got that one. That one is an NTA no matter what you do here. Yeah. And actually, Brie, a.k.a. Sassy Merlot, is going to hang around up here and read a story herself. So we're going to get that one queued up for her. Hey, yo. Yeah, 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 Thanks yeah, yeah. So okay, so we've got the story here. Okay. Uh, mouse scroll button is gotcha. right here, and that should be all you need. Okay. I'll be hanging around so we can give some feedback there, too. Sounds uh, good. Yeah, and you'll be able to see where your frame is here in this part, and I'm going to lower this just a bit so Thanks. it's more. Oh, this is such a cool desk. I heard you guys talking about it earlier. Yeah. So cool. There you go. Thanks. You're set up and ready to rock here. Headphones, right. if you like them, that's yeah. your call. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Don't be mean to me. (laughs) I'm nervous. Okay. I can read. I promise. Here we go. Um, I've had a words are hard day, so work with me. Okay. AITA for kicking my MIL mother-in-law out after she drove 16 hours to come see me and the new baby. I had a baby three weeks ago, and we just started allowing certain people to visit. My mom and sister and her newborn visited four days ago for the first time, And my mother-in-law was due to arrive the next day to stay with us for a week. My mother-in-law lives 16 hours driving distance from us in Canada, so she had to get a passport. She called us the day she was supposed to arrive and said that she had to stop off and sleep and that she wouldn't make it on the original ETA. No big deal. She shows up the next day at 10 a.m. Now, the issue is that she brought her two granddaughters with her, my husband's nieces, both 12, Not only was this never discussed, she didn't even hint toward it, but one of the nieces in question is someone we no longer allow around our other children due to severe bullying, and my mother-in-law is fully aware of that. In fact, we have had no contact with this girl's mother as well. 
because she defended her daughter after she punched our five-year-old son in the face last year at a family barbecue because he wouldn't give her the squirt gun. That was hers, but that's beside the point. So we have no contact with this girl or her mom. And again, mother-in-law knows this. The other niece is fine. I actually really like the girl, but to further exceed a-hole limits. Um, I forgot to ask cussing. Tony, can I read a-hole? Okay, cool. All right. I just wanted to clear that up. Sorry. Um, to further exceed asshole limits, I allowed the other niece to come inside and meet my baby, and I made M.I.L., mother-in-law, and the bully niece stay outside while she did so. My husband was 100% on my side. He was livid and considered allowing the nice niece to stay for a week and just put her on a plane back home. But ultimately, after her mama, her mama didn't feel comfortable with unattended travel. I don't blame her. Uh, so she ended up going back home when we told mother-in-law to leave. We did not let mother-in-law or the bully niece see the baby. <laughs> we are being called every name in the book by several family members. The sister-in-law that we are no longer we are no contact with is soiling our name by saying that we have wasted mother-in-law's time and we are wrongly punishing her child says we need to get over it my brother-in-law says we are ignorant because mother-in-law purchased hers and her two granddaughters passports so wasted money and wasted time the other sister-in-law a nice niece's mama is on our side as mother-in-law lied to her and said she told us the girls were coming when she did not AITA for letting the nice niece meet our baby, but making mother-in-law and the bully niece stay in the car and then kicking them off our property after she drove 16 hours. Wow. Great hey, thanks. Job. Thank you so much. My mouth got dry. It's fine. <laughs> um, whew. That's a lot. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, no, I don't think that you are. I think that... If you, thank you so much. I think that if you have been clear how you feel about these people, and I mean, you don't touch my kid. You don't mess with my kid. I don't care if you're 12. I don't, you don't do that. And she's been very clear that that's a no-go. Mother-in-law knew what she was doing. She knew she was doing something wrong. And that's why she didn't talk about it and just thought she was going to, bully the this uh op into allowing it not cool don't love that i don't think it, i don't think you're the asshole at all i think that this mother-in-law for sure is the asshole um also i'm really glad your husband was on your side with this whole thing uh that's really important too i would be interested to know how the nice niece felt because that's a little bit um, uncomfortable for her, I imagine. Um, so, yeah. Ugh. And then having to ride back 16 hours with the shunned mother-in-law and whatever. What was she calling? I can't remember what she was calling the bad niece or mean niece or no contact niece or whatever. Anyway, I'm sure that was the worst drive home <laughs> ever. So, yeah, I don't think you're the asshole. Y you know what? You're coming to my house. I have the new baby. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And you don't, we're not, you got to follow what mama says in those situations anyway. What so, is this? I was so thirsty. This is huge. <laughs> I don't, okay. I drink a lot of coffee every single day. And so I got this um, so that I would drink more water. <laughs> You, well, yeah. Actually, my husband bought one of these for himself, and then he bought one for each of my girls, and he did not buy me one. Oh, and no. And so he got guilt tripped to oh, hell no. and back, and so we call this my pity jug. <laughs> it's huge. It's look, it's it's. I don't massive. actually. I don't actually know. Anyway, it's full of water, and I'm trying. Four hundred ounces. I'm trying to be a water drinker. Uh, I'm so a coffee drinker. I, I'm curious. Yeah. If this were you. If you were OP here, mm -hmm. unfiltered, what would be your reaction? So, <clears throat> is this me now or is this me when I had newborns? Both. Okay. Old Brie would not have said a damn word because I'm a people pleaser and I would have 
um, just let it happen, probably. But then she's also not a brand new mom, I guess. Now me would have done exactly what OP did. You don't, again, you do not touch my kid and asshole niece. What I, again, I keep forgetting what they called her, but the mean niece did that and that's a no-go. You right. don't do it. And if I'm clear on that to somebody and they continue to try to bring that person around, nah, you get to be called out and you get to drive home 16 hours for being an asshole. What would you say to her? That's a really good question. I feel like I would love to know actually what she did say to her. I mean, you you call it out, right? You say you 100% knew this was not okay. Right. You 100% knew and intentionally chose to continue to bring this person. And then I'm sure she was gaslit into the whole, well, she's only 12 years old, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Enjoy your drive home, bitch. It does, you don't get to do this. <laughs> That's right. Like, and there was already problems in that family dynamic anyway. Just let it be, let there be problems in it. That isn't your issue anymore. You brought the niece, you knew what you were doing, enjoy your drive home. There you go. <laughs> also, again, God, I'm so sorry for that little baby niece, the nice one. Because can you imagine She's just being in a shitty position? Can you imagine yeah. being stuck in that car? Yeah, somebody said twelve is old enough to know better. Absolutely. Twelve is old enough to know that you're being a bully and you're bullying a little kid. I can't remember how old she said, but she was like, like five? five. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. You knew what you were doing. That's shitty. That's super shitty. Get yeah. the fuck out. Gotta go. That's the answer. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out. All right. We are going to go ahead and uh, and shut down our YouTube or uh, the TikTok side. Let me go ahead and return this to here. Uh, you can take a break for a minute. I'll get okay, this closed cool. down, then we'll bring you back on. So, ladies and gentlemen, Bree, a.k.a. Sassy Merlo, reading the story here. Heck yeah. Uh, she's going to be reading another one here, I believe, on the YouTube side as we, as we get set up for, for that one. So, we are now eight hour mark on the dot for the uh for the 24 hour live here we've been live for for now eight hours um yeah yeah we are 33.33 continuum percent of the way through we're gonna make it we're gonna make it 33.33 percent heck yes so we're gonna we're gonna pivot and just do the YouTube side here. I believe Bree is going to gonna still take over for a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna get a, a wee bit of respite here, uh, and we're gonna spin the wheel of thunder. Heck yeah, wheel of thunder is gonna be over on that side. So uh, TikTok side, if you still wanna hang out with us, come over to the YouTube side. Make sure that you subscribe when you get to the channel there. That's the whole goal of what we're doing with this 24-hour stream today. So come over there. No, it is uh, Lisa. It is for everybody. The uh, the stream on the YouTube side is free. It is not a members only thing. It is a free thing so come hang out with us there uh, are we posting the live part when the stream is over we are going to be using the stories that we're reading during the tiktok portions and cutting them up to use as um as posts but the whole live for sure is going to be available for youtube members i don't know what else we're doing with it beyond then so uh we've got a lot of people who've been with us the whole freaking time so that's just amazing eight hours yeah eight freaking hours so uh we're gonna get set up just move out of the way do you want music or no music? No music? Okay, hold up. Uh, spe special message here. We need the microphone way low. Yeah. And not right directly our faces. There you go. Okay, thanks. Uh, so there's... Okay, she's a podcast guest. Um, Candy. Miss Candy. Bree. We're not, not the same sisters. person. Yeah. Not sisters even. Yeah, but there are people But I am are. very... I'm very thankful that you guys are so sweet and think that. She's stunning. You, she's so stunning. You are... She is no, and chat was going wild, and I that's love that's so it. nice, so guys. Sweet, I guys. didn't. I, it. I can see these things scrolling, but right. I intentionally wasn't looking at them because and they're so distraction, yeah. and yeah. I can't be distracted. ADHD, same. undiagnosed, but here it is. We might be the same person. We, hey, do you not. know a lot of the stuff you post? I'm like, <laughs> totally. Just, yes. So We're, anyway, yeah. um, look at there's. Oh, you guys is, are I'm so all, nice. And they said I'm always out of frame. I was out of frame on the oh, other I side know. this time. Well, here I'm pushing. I'm like. Uh, that's really know, nice, you guys. Thank you so, so much. So oh, thank cute. you too. This is because it wasn't. I didn't wash it, <laughs> and so it needed the, to be put up. I had the um, should I wash it? Should I not? Mm -hmm. What's my shower situation going to look like tomorrow mm -hmm. with Dustin not here? So okay. okay, we had to let you guys know we were already distracted. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Uh, yeah, did, she came over. I came over and Candy Thunder was like, just move. Uh, so I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right, now we'll go ahead and get it shut down on this side. Uh, we are, we're moving over to the YouTube side now, so if you want to keep hanging out with us, come over to the YouTube side. We're going to shut down the TikTok side. We will be back here in a little while. Tony Spark, what time are we coming back? Ten p.m. in two hours. We will be back on over on the TikTok side, so come hang out with us then. Hey, in about an hour and a half, Candy Thunder's going to be reading a story on the YouTube side, so you don't want to miss that. Hey, Angel, thanks so much for the love with the super chat over there. We have a fantastic group of mods helping us out today. Greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, not related. They're not related at all. Uh, yeah, you guys are you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the YouTube side. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, YouTube side, how we doing? How we doing? Doing good? I'm going to go ahead and get the YouTube chat window expanded out so we can see a lot more of it here. Here we go. Breezy already hopped over. Heck yeah. Hello, Alejandra back here as well. Same person, different font. There you go. You're going to keep up on the TV? Nice. Well, a lot of people use, t use YouTube and throw stuff on the TV. I think it's awesome. And we're back. We're back. Heck yeah, Sergeant Mac. Thanks for the love, man. Greatly appreciate the super there. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Penny, good to see you. Hello, hello, Amber. Francis Jules. Heck yeah, Francis. Good to see you there. Not that Ellen. Not that Ellen. Yes, remember to please like, which is different than hitting the heart button. Like the stream. Share the stream. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. That is, that is the goal today. Greatly appreciate it. Nancy, NB the G, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you guys. Those of you who have been on from the beginning or even if you've been jumping in back and forth, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. It is a crazy undertaking, probably a terrible idea, but we're doing it uh, and uh, we're pumped about it and you guys make this possible. So thank you so, so much for hanging out with us today. We're at 954, there you go. Yep, subbing on YouTube is free. It's just following the channel, which is amazing. Greatly appreciate it though. Greatly, greatly. The effulgent one there, LA. Heck yeah. AG, AJP, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Glad to have you here. Nicole, thank you. Crushing it. Hey, we got this. Tony Maestro here has a plan for us. It's all worked out here. We're rocking and rolling. We're rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling. Doing it all the time would be a bad idea, Kira. Yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, Candy and Bree are gonna come back over and they're gonna do a little Q&A and then Tony Sparks is gonna bring the wheel up and I'm gonna bounce out for a little bit of a break. So, I'll see you guys on the flip side. Badoop. There we go, I'm bringing the mic back down for you. Gotta get it set up for the ladies here. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Candy Thunder and Bree, AKA Sassy Merlot. The, the fact that you can just like pull that voice like whenever you want is just wild to me because it is. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay, that's great. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do a little Q&A with Bree so you guys can get to know her better. Um, and then you guys let us know in chat um, the answers to your, to these questions from you. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> the, you, know, you know what I'm saying. Okay, uh, what is your favorite Taylor Swift song? Song. Uh, you need to calm down. I love oh, calm down yeah. so much. I love it. I say it all the time, and then I start singing it. Do you say the calm down? Cool. Well, I don't do the calm down, <laughs> but I do love the accent. Does that count? If yes. I said it like that, does that count on the bingo card? Sure. I had bingo card. I I uh, she's like I'm filling phone. out my own bingo mm, card. I was okay. Um, mine is all too well. Ten minute version. Nice. I'm just obsessed. Yeah. I'm obsessed. And I like to put it on when somewhere like a place is 10 minutes away. And I'm like, oh, I love that. So you I'm time like, it out. You yeah. really do schedule. I know. Times. That's I know. amazing. Tony, what's your favorite Taylor? Yeah. Swift what song? do you have? Uh, my favorite is Long Live. That yes. is my all time okay. favorite. And Candy might have a video of me a little teary eyed at the <gasps> he concert. He did cry during the during the concert. Oh, I cry. It's my favorite song. Oh. And the fact that she just played it the, for the first time the night before we went there. Oh, I love 
love that. Tolerate it. Tolerate's a good song. Uh, and hey, thank you, Preston, and thank you, Zach, for the super chats and YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Thank, oh, thank yeah. you very much, guys. Um, I was seeing if there was any. Never getting back together. That's a yeah. really catchy one, too. I love that one. Okay. Um, where is your favorite place you have traveled? Scotland. Oh, without cool. even one thought. Actually, I think I did a... Um, I knew, I was gonna say, I you knew what I was going to say, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did a like questionnaire thing um, for Stormcloud. And that was one of the questions. Oh, yeah. And I think actually my sister did it too. Yeah, and same, Tony same, said same we had the exact, almost like, I mean, down to the town, right? We both yeah. had the exact same town. <laughs> yeah, it's called Pitlockery, uh, Scotland. And it's just so pretty. It's like a painting, walking around in a painting all the time. It's the best. Hey, there's someone from oh, Scotland. Yay! Yeah. I'll come visit you. Amanda. I want to. I can't wait to come back there. I don't okay. know when I'm going to. I gotta mute this person really quick. Oh, I want my... Look uh, at you, Sergeant Mac. Thank you. <laughs> I want to have my... I want to take my husband to Scotland really bad. Not so because his a, name is Scott, but he's a golfer. Scott in, in Scotland. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it you and your family? Like yeah. Mo and... Okay. Yeah. It actually was a trip I wasn't supposed to get to go on. My oh. This is awful. I'm telling it. Whatever. Um, it was, my mom was taking my grandpa and his wife or my grandma step, but it, whatever family dynamics are weird. Anyway, um, she ended up having to have heart surgery, but they couldn't get the tickets back. So my Mm -hmm. sister and I got to go. Oh, terrible situation, but, but still the best. Also, I got to go to Scotland. It was the best (laughs) trip ever. And, and she was fine, by the way, my granny was fine. So, uh, coffee or tea? Coffee all day, all the days, Mm -hmm. every day. What about addicted? I need to know from chat since mm-hmm. we have so many people from all over the world. Yeah. Coffee or tea? What is your what is your go to? Also, what drinks? What do you like? If it's coffee, what is your go to drink? I'm tea. tea. Are you a all tea? the way? Yeah. I love tea, um, but survival mm-hmm. mode makes me drink coffee. Ice caramel macchiato. Ice caramel macchiato. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's Although good. Really? I bought my own cinnamon. I have oh, that is just that chat just went crazy. <laughs> that's a good. That's like a, yeah, I'm trying. I can't even keep up. Caffeine, just caffeine altogether. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hot tea this is the fastest I have I ever seen. I love hot tea. Travel. Yeah, I love hot tea. No? I love sweet tea. Just oh, mildly oh, sweet. Man. Mildly oh, sweet, not super sweet. Yeah, like a half and half. Mm-hmm. Or, yes, yeah, half and half. Like I a, do love that too. So good. Um, raising oh, canes, nice. sweet tea. Mm. Is so good. That's awesome. Candace, thank you so much. I tried that. The Wheel of Thunder winners. Yes, yes. I'm sure Tony is going to reach out to whoever won Wheel of Thunder. It'll probably be Monday because I think they're probably going to be sleeping right after this is over. Oh, somebody said they're allergic to tea. That's awful, Samantha. I'm sorry to hear that. We made it over a thousand? I can't, I don't know. Yay, that's so exciting. That's the first time I think on YouTube today. Um, if you could meet one celebrity, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh my gosh. Also, I just heard Bon Jovi in my head. Oh, that's wanted. Funny. Oh, I love <laughs> I said- that. <laughs> yeah. I love Bon Jovi. Um, gosh, dead or alive. You know what? This is dumb and don't be mean to me. I want, I would love to meet The Rock. Okay. For a multitude yeah. of reasons. Those um, are my brothers too. He's beautiful, would be the first and obvious. Second, I was in wrestling and I like his he was the personality mm-hmm. like his oh my god his in ring personality was incredible and I loved I didn't really watch wrestling but I ended up in wrestling and then retrospectively mm-hmm. watched a lot of it but his in ring personality was just the coolest yes. um and then his business mind god I would love to pick his brain business mm-hmm. anything I, he's just so cool so cool. And, and he plays Maui. And, oh, and he plays and Maui. And Moana. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's, I'm so excited for the second one. Me too. I love, I just love him. I, I think he's he a would really be. a nice guy too. He seems really mm-hmm. nice. He does a lot like of down community earth. stuff yeah. too, which yeah. is cool. Um, yeah, I think, I think The Rock would probably. I and later on, one. whenever I think about this, I'll probably come up with a million others right. too. But you guys have some good ones. Oh, Audrey Hepburn would be cool. Mm-hmm. Marilyn would be really cool. I don't see anybody has said that, but I think that meeting Marilyn would be really tragic and mm-hmm. sad, but she would be an interesting person to meet. 
um, if I was going to see someone in concert, it would be Elvis Presley. A hundred percent. Have you watched any of the like recent Elvis movies that have come out? I haven't watched any of the recent one, but my dad uh, and I used to watch. Oh, I love Elvis movies. Me too. Love I do them too. So me too. Much. They're oh so my good. Goodness, me too. Uh, my favorite, I think, is Clam Bake. I don't. Yeah, I, I love it so much. Like mm. that's that's one of my favorites. He, Elvis. I grew up. My mom was obsessed with Elvis, so I grew up yep. just being obsessed with Elvis. That's but his was, new yeah. movie, uh, his new movie, he wasn't there. <laughs> um, the one with Austin Butler, I think, is it just called Elvis? I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. I need to. Yeah. Is it's it good? Great. So oh, okay. good. But isn't it the most so sad. sad and tragic? So I've said a lot because oh, it's told Princess from Diana. the story. Yeah, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. I've said, it. I think the movie is told from the point of view of the colonel. And I don't think I ever really understood how horrible that man was and what he did anyway you should watch that movie kind of weird um, austin, butler, really. austin butler was amazing sorry oh we're it's not very it is very sad yeah it is also the whitney houston have you seen the newest whitney houston movie? no oh, oh she, okay so that would be my very that would be a tie yeah. because her voice is just it's a lot like Elvis, where the gives you chills right yeah lives. where the people just kept them the going that they and, should trust to um, run their lives and help Mm -hmm. really Take advantage of them. Yeah. Somebody said no one's really on screen. We are not comfortable. <laughs> I know. We're, this is not natural for us. Two, two introverts. Go, right yeah, two, two introverts, introverts <laughs> drifting off screen. <laughs> we're trying There's to just be a no song. One in the middle and just <laughs> There's apart. just screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. Okay. Um, who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? Oh, that's such a good. Those are good questions. Those are good questions. I don't know. I don't know. Who would you have? Um, Tony oh, we talked. You guys talked about. Yeah, this. Tony said Blake Lively. Blake Lively. I'm going to sure go with you. that because yeah, yeah. that would be so fun. Yeah, and she's just. What comes just, to mind? What is that girl's name? Well, it's Brie, isn't it? Brie Larson or oh, something. Oh yes, that's. But I think I only think of that because her name's Brie. No, I. Think I don't that, know. I could totally see that. I loved her in Captain, the first Captain Marvel movie. I have not seen the new one, but. I haven't either. The I loved her in that movie. Yeah, that's a good. Maybe one. her. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Scarlett oh, Johansson. Reese, some, oh, that's my. Mm. No, that's not my husband. Half of candy and half of free. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, where do I need to be? Right here. Right here. There. Okay. Um, Reese Witherspoon. Oh, she's so cute. Oh yes. Thanks. Yes. I love that. I'll do uh, Jennifer Aniston. That would be someone that I would oh, love to meet yeah. too. Oh, she would be a really good one. To she meet. just seems like she's kind of got like a sense of humor so and also business mind. She's been in it for a mm -hmm. long time. But. She, and she seems like a normal. She kind of seems normal, don't you think? Like a normal, yes. nice person. Yes. Yeah, that would be a good one. A normal, nice person with lots of money. So much money. <laughs> Who has also been married to Brad Pitt, which is. Right. I don't know if that would be a good thing or not, actually. She's a. Clearly she it wasn't. Seems, her. No, I know. <laughs> That was, do you remember when that happened and you were just like devastated? Right, like some like your parents had split up uh, or something. Yeah, it was really sad. Uh, Rebecca, we are only going live on TikTok for a couple hours at a time, so we will be back live on TikTok at 10 p.m. Central Time, and then but we'll be on YouTube for 24 hours straight. And we are at hour just we're in hour that. eight, eight hours and 16 minutes that we've been live so far. Which is insane. Yep, which is insane. Yeah. Dusty's over here and poking there's... around in the kitchen, so we're, we're gonna give him. We're still giving him a break. Hey, Kristen, I wasn't dissing Brad at all. Yeah, I, I love Brad. I love Brad. I'm just saying. I guess the marriage didn't go well, so maybe it wasn't great for her. But I was not dissing him. I freaking love Brad Pitt. Um, I and also, that. he's from not far from here. Right, from Springfield. Mm -hmm. Springfield, right? Mm -hmm. My tongue got all tied. But yeah, he is. My um, stepdad played basketball with him, or something. their daughter, um, Shiloh. Mm -hmm. uh, who looks literally is like identical, like copy paste of yeah. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. It is mm -hmm. wild. Yeah. Oh, are we? Sorry. Bree, you're good. Oh, okay. Well, let my still not. Why can't I? Didn't want to be like on top. Like. <laughs> oh, hey, that's helpful right there. <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to it's watch this, like but we. Well, I know, but I, I have to turn my head that way to see. Okay. <laughs> We're trying. Kristen right. Bell, I like her. Oh, cool. me too. Kristen. I like that would her. Be said, she's so cute. Too. She's so she's cute. And she's too. Drew Barrymore. Her yes. voice is beautiful. Kristen Bell. Yes, please. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tony, are you ready for the wheel? Yeah. Okay. You want to? No, you can come in and do it. 
two introverts are drifting off the screen. Yeah, we keep drifting. <laughs> we're pushing back. The extrovert will take it. Okay. <laughs> and we're out. Bye, okay. guys. See ya. <laughs> My back is sweating. How about it for the lovely ladies? <laughs> they crushed it. See, Candy's just, Candy's getting used to holding the fort down by herself over here. Candy and Bree. They're both over here like sweating now and like, <laughs> oh man. How's everybody doing? Here we are. Uh, our, we're eight hours and 18 minutes in. Are you guys tired of me yet? If you are, it's okay. I am too, to be honest. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. I mean <laughs> Hey, I wonder if it, I wonder if it's what's your name's uncle. <laughs> I had to. I had to, sorry. Uh Hey, there you go. Hey, somebody had an idea in chat that you do a that you do a boss babe like boss girl podcast that'd be cool oh man um doing good doing good thanks guys for all the love all right i'm gonna i'm gonna spin i'm gonna spin the wheel of thunder oh, go this way go this way um so for those of you who don't know the wheel of thunder um we do over on tick on TikTok, um, and it's made up. Usually, it's made up of the top ten gifters from the TikTok stream, um, and then there's two existing subscribers and two new subscribers from you from TikTok. Today, we're shaking it up a little bit because we are focused on the YouTube side. So, um, today we've got the top ten gifters from uh, TikTok, and then we have a uh, member of the Thunder Crew from YouTube. Um, one of the super chat gifters from YouTube and then a new member of the storm on TikTok and a existing member of the storm. That was a lot. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to read these names off and here's who's on the wheel for this. And we'll do the wheel um, again at the I think it's 10 to midnight central time when we're on live on TikTok again. So. All right. On the wheel is. Southern Country, Hostel Cakes, Chef, Chef, Chef Tila, TLS Journey, Callie Prue, Dr. Sweets, um, one of our YouTube members, Yoki Lunari, um, the one of the Super Chat Gifters, Stephanie Vander, I couldn't fit the whole name on the wheel, I'm sorry, but Stephanie, you're on here. Um, one of our, let's see, a member of the storm on TikTok, Jessica LD Cards. New subscriber, Tasha Nicole, uh, AK Mary, Joss underscore up, Theo Dino Rex, Sally Misk. And yeah. So we're going to spin this. Um, I'll write down the names and then um, we'll we'll get some prizes. I, I'm sorry. Yoko, Yo I'm sorry. I butchered it. I did. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna spin the wheel. I had Caden up here with me earlier, but I got it. Ready? A little ASMR for the mic. And the winner is Chef... Tila, Chef Tila, you're the winner. Um, I'm going to write that down so I remember that. Chef Tila. Cool. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back, Curse. Yeah, welcome to uh, Amy. Welcome to the Thunder Crew. I'm going to spin again. And TLS Journey is our other winner, TLS Journey. Congrats, congrats, congrats. All right. Cool. Um, and I think somebody said we were, we've gained about a thousand subscribers so far on, on YouTube. So that's great. Got a long ways to go on our, on that goal, but to be fair, I did set a pretty lofty goal. So I'm just, uh, I'm thankful for all of our new subscribers. If you are in chat and you aren't a subscriber yet, 
on YouTube, it's free to do so. Just tap that subscribe button and, and help us out. We've got, I looked earlier, we have like over 1400 videos on YouTube. There's podcasts, there's compilations, there's past lives, there's all sorts of stories, um, stories that don't get posted on TikTok and, and get posted on YouTube. There's all sorts of content on there. Um, so yeah, yeah. Hit that subscribe button. Um, we, we put out a lot of content, a lot of videos all the time on, on YouTube. So yeah. I feel like I'm just, would you watch a tree grow? Okay. Okay. Almost got me. Almost. Bye. You almost got me. Hey, Mary, thank you. Da, 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 da. Well, Christina, I'm glad you can't wait because there's a lot more. We're at, oh gosh, where were we at? 24, 30, 30, I don't know. We're probably at 33, 34, 35 um, stories so far. So uh, we have 100. So we've got 100 lined up, ready to go. Um, that's right. Uh, ah, that's what I said. That's right, Katie. Subscribing on YouTube is free. It's weird because they, uh, you know, TikTok and YouTube. The subscriber on TikTok is a paid thing, and YouTube it's it's free. They just call it different things. So, uh, yes, Lisa. We're we're just kind of picking random names um, for the new for the new one for new subscribers. Existing subscribers is kind of a random. <laughs> yeah, Kim. Uh, well, so the the ninety six number came up with an an average number of eight stories per two hour block. So twelve of those came out to ninety six. Um, but with the TikTok portions of them, there's a few extras on there. So by the time you get that going, it it comes out to about a hundred. Jennifer, the goal that we have for for this uh, twenty four hour live stream was ten thousand new subscribers. So uh, we're a thousand down. We got nine nine thousand to go. Uh, Rebecca, 10 p.m. Central. We'll be back on on TikTok. Hope y'all got some quality sleep. Funny story, Francis. Uh, I'm I'm dog sitting currently, and uh, the dogs have been really good all week long. And the owners come back tomorrow, and uh, they've been really good all week long until last night, the one night that I really needed to get some sleep. They barked a lot all throughout the night, so. Yeah, but I'm good. I got enough sleep. <laughs> Incognito is that is I, I think that was meant for Dusty because he's the one who carries the carries the show. Um, I worked in real estate uh, before this, so I'm actually a uh, licensed real estate agent. So I've I've did that for twelve years um, before before joining the uh, the Storm Crew. So yeah. Now it's now it's awesome. I don't know about carrying it on my shoulders. I don't. Oh, that's Dusty's job. In case anybody hasn't filled out the bingo square, Dusty is in the bathroom. So there you go. There's another one for that. Do I miss real estate? Uh, you know it. It had its pros and its cons. I think. Um, you know. Uh, they already kind of did that. So you just. Whenever you you just you're good. Finish, finish what you're doing over there. Okay. Um, it had its pros and its cons. Um, you know, I liked meeting people. I loved going to look at houses. That was always fun. Um, the negotiating part was fun too. You know, the sometimes the suspense of are we going to get it or we're not going to get it, all that. But then having to deal with stuff like inspectors and, and appraisals and banks and all that was kind of a pain. And also real estate, is, it goes like this, right? Like you have a really great year and then, and sometimes it's terrible. I joked that um, Christmas for my family and friends, it was kind of like an episode of Oprah's favorite things based on how, how the commission living on a commission lifestyle. Some, some years it's like an episode of Oprah's favorite things and other years I'm handing out free hug coupons. So that's uh, <laughs> that was, that was always my line and you could always, everybody could always tell the year and, and time period I was having in real estate based on what, what they got for Christmas. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes you get to look at really cool houses. 
Shelby? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like something in the water because I love the water. Like a fish or like a, a I don't know, something in the water or a bird would be cool to fly. I don't know. You go like lion, tiger, all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> I, I mean, Tracy, honestly, they're priceless. I mean, I think that's the price you put on a hug. It's priceless. Seven hour 17. Okay. All, all demon peppers. I'll take a note of that. Delirium sets in at hour 17. Somebody in chat says that when she did the 24 hour stream, about hour 17 is where things kind of, you know, so we'll see. We'll see. I think we're doing pretty good right now. I think the vibes are, I think the vibes are pretty good. No, it was de demon peppers. Demon peepers. Uh, yeah, somebody asked about that. The, there is a paid membership on YouTube. Um, and there's all sorts of exclusive content. There's exclusive members only lives. Um, there's a lot of times there are longer form videos. Um, there's certain playlists for that. And yeah, but you can, you can track or the, you just follow on for free. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. So hit that subscribe. And at this Balls. point, there's there's a good chunk of, of member exclusive content in the playlists. Um, and yeah, we do a monthly member exclusive live. It's cool. It's cool. And it's a very chill environment too, which is which is cool. <laughs> Aaron, I'm I'm not working near as hard as what Dusty's doing. So I've I've get a lot of breaks. I just show up, yeah. He just I just kind of show up here every now and then and give him a break. So I'm I'm good. Yeah. All right. Who's ready for some more stories? Oh, whoever just, whoever just, just showed up. whoever just sent an angel door dash from the sky, there's a door dash that showed up. I, I think it was Elise. Pretty I, sure a bag of drugs just got delivered. I, I, it was in a paper bag. I think it was Elise. She just leaned Not that Ellen. Line. I don't know. Somebody sent. Hey, oh. Uh, there's a lot of people. Three, yeah. There's a lot of people raising their hands for door dash. So if a bunch of stuff just starts showing up here, I don't know what's going to happen. Heck but yeah, let's, that's awesome. Let's thank you guys for that. Well, okay. Please, heck yeah. All right. Are you guys ready for uh ready for some more stories? Let's rock and roll. I think I think Bree might have one one more good story read in her. Are we cake? Are we, what? What? This cake? No. There a slice of cake just arrived. No shit. A slice of rainbow cake just arrived. Hey yo, that's awesome. That that is a flippin' awesome. Thank you guys so much. That's <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, Tony Sparks bringing it up here. We got to show you guys. We got okay. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. So who who sent the cake? Who did did they? Somebody own up? Elise, to Elise, Elise, or, or is the cake from you? Thank you. Yep, Elise, you're awesome. Thank you so much, man. These are like dense, heavy pieces of yeah, cake, dude. That's fantastic. Yeah. Somebody says, sorry, the live's over. The cake we lost. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. You guys, there's just a blank screen while he eats cake. <laughs> you come back in a couple of hours and my face is just covered in frosting. That's how it's going to be. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That's Thank awesome. You. Definitely diving into that Buddy's here in cake. a bit. Yeah, the cake boss. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Thank you. It's a, at least, thank you. You're, you're amazing. Like, man, Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> did you say, did you say you uh, reach up in it now? Or is it? Okay, gotcha. You have it on the dock. All right, I need to bring up the next uh, the next document. That's what I need to do. There's a document that tells me what to do. I just haven't looked at it yet. Very nicely organized. Yeah, hey, uh, Elise again. Thank you so much. That is amazing. Uh, also, like she just opened the door, set the bag down, and then backed away. <laughs> it was like, okay, is that a uh, is this, is it food? Is it a bomb? Like what? Uh, what? What is it? That that's awesome. Uh, and thanks so much. Yep, that's uh, that's the uh, Storm Cloud Marketing Addy there in Ann's comment there. That is awesome. Greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> also, uh, also I think it's Kaylee, Kaylee I think, uh, upstairs. So there's a smash room upstairs. Uh, but but discovered that uh, that the daughter of the owners there is is a fan of the Dusty Thunder Live. And I was walking back in uh, just a little bit ago and she was up there and gave me a wave. So so if you're watching, hi, hi neighbor. Uh it was upstairs. We got a picture the other day. It's very, very cool. So one of the one of the few times I can count on one hand that I've been spotted uh and somebody approached me and and 
and knew knew about the Dusty Thunder stuff. So that uh, that's amazing. She, did she panic? Moonwalk back away? No, oh, the uh, the door dasher. No. Hey, Kaylee, there you go. Awesome. Also, the awesome. current uh, story count is 31. 31 stories in. Eight hours and 33 minutes. Let me give you the BTS view here. Uh, yeah, we got Tony Spark here. Eight hours and 33 minutes in. You can see Candy Thunder. You can see Bree on stream there, too, with our, our BTS cam here. Heck yeah. And you know what? I had uh, I had this random idea last night. I was like, I have a camera in the sound booth. I need to move that out and point it toward the studio to, to have it be like a, a, a BTS a BTS, um, a BTS cam for today. And I did it first thing when I got here. So heck yeah, Kaylee. Heck yeah. Glad to see you there. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Uh, greatly appreciate the love there. You guys are awesome. Uh, let's rock and roll and dive in here. Welcome to our nine. Big thanks to Brie, AKA Sassy Merlot for joining us for a bit. I think she's still got, uh, she's going to stick around for a couple more stories here. If you just now hop it in, thank you for joining in to the 24 hour stream. We've been going strong since 10 AM, eight hours and 34 minutes in right now. We are very happy to have you here. Don't forget this live is a little bit different than the normal lives. We're going to be doing some different things other than just reading stories, including special guest readers, AKA Brie, Candy Thunder is going to read here in a little bit, too. Um, and coming up shortly, we'll have a very special segment where Candy Thunder and her sister Sarah are going to be reading a couple of stories and giving feedback together. What's that? Her actual her, yeah, her actual sister, Sarah. Yeah, and everybody. Every time, it, even when you were on the podcast, so many comments on there are like, uh, think that you're candy. It is. It is crazy. You guys are similar heights, though. Like, and you got the blonde hair. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Uh, Beer today or Beer to Jay now is uh, also going to be here. And we can't wait to hear his thoughts on some of these stories, too. We have some very special guests coming in. Uh, Mr. Akio, greatly appreciate the beard love there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Half an hour until Candy Thunder reads ish. Yeah. All right. We're going to dive back in here. So uh, I'm going to read here and then we're going to give we're going to get some brief feedback. And then uh, the next story here, we'll see how it goes. All right, so here is our first story of segment five in this 24-hour stream. Eight hours and 35 minutes in. I haven't lost my shit yet. Not yet. It's coming. I know it's coming. Words are going to be so hard, I'm going to be reading at a pace like this. A-I-T-A for canceling. That's coming. But for now, I'm still good. I got this. I refilled my water. Good to go. Uh, I need to make another jock coffee. That's that's coming. Um, Anti-symmetry. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the super there. Awesome. Thanks for all the love. Greatly appreciate the support here. Here we go. This one is from the AITA subreddit and is titled. Am I the astronaut for canceling on my friend as soon as she showed up? Yes, please. Thank you. My friend is chronically late and a flake. She blames it on ADHD, but I know it's because she just doesn't give a shit about being on time and because she always keeps her options open for a more appealing activity, even after making firm plans. Well, that sucks. She doesn't even apologize when she shows up late. The only apology anyone ever gets is when she's a complete no call, no show. And even then it's half hearted. I've been putting up with this because she really is great when she finally shows up, but my patience has been wearing thin. A couple of weeks ago, she hosted a V-Day brunch. It was also her birthday and picked a place that would 100% give your table away if you didn't arrive on time with your full party. That sounds dangerous. Um, that sounds like a dangerous some choice for her specifically. Everyone else got there a little early to be safe, including her. Whoa, I was honestly shocked. And when we all got seated, I let her know that I was going to go ahead and cancel the upcoming dinner that we had planned since this was the last straw for me. Hold up. Wait, what? Okay. All right. That's what it says. She just showed everyone that she was perfectly capable of being on time when it was her thing on the line. So I wasn't going to put up with her chronic lateness anymore. I was happy to still have a casual hangout with her, but this would be the last time that I was going to do anything with her that required showing up at a specific time. I said that in front of everyone. And in the words of the great Tim Robinson, nobody said shit, dude. Nobody said shit. She brushed it off, yelled at me after, but brushed it off in the moment, and we all had a nice brunch. And I guess our other friends felt the same way because no one has planned any kind of lunch meetup or movie or anything with a specific tart, tart time. There it goes. Words are hard. Or anything with a specific start time with her sense. 
And now today is when our planned dinner was going to be. And she asked if we're still on for it. And I said, no, question mark. I felt like I was pretty clear before we can hang out when you get off work, but I'm not waiting around for you anymore. She is irate. It, I feel it feels bad because she's hurt, but I'm also tired of feeling hurt and embarrassed waiting for her to show up all the time. Am I the astronaut? And here to give us some feedback here is Bree, a.k.a. Sassy Merlot, once again. Hey, I'm back. She's back. Back Back again. Thank you. Back again. Here, you can take the center mat and I'll I'll chill back here. Okay. Look at that. That's cool. Yeah. Anti-symmetry with the love and the super chat there. Awesome. Uh, So thoughts about this? Um, I am a chronic late person, but not because I don't care about everybody else's Mm -hmm. time. I just think I have time. And I don't, um, but not to like you two yeah. <laughs> for people. So I wasn't going to say it, Candy Thunder. What? I wasn't going to out you here for people. So scheduled for everybody else. We're both late all the time. Um, right. <laughs> whoops. That is, anyway, that is ironic, isn't it? <laughs> that, yeah, we were. Um, anyway, I, um, we do also have control issues. Could That's you guys why. be any more alike? It's like, what, <laughs> it's kind of what funny. is happening here? It is kind of what funny. is happening. Okay, I got. I'm sorry. Speaking of ADHD, I got super sidetracked. Anyway, Squirrel. people are saying ADHD is not an excuse, and I agree with that. For this girl, I do care about other people's time, by the way. <clears throat> but for this girl, I think she genuinely does not give a damn about other people's time. And that is a problem. And for for OP to call it out finally and be like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore is totally valid, I think. And I'm sorry that your friend is mad at you, but... Well, she set a boundary. I'm going to scroll back up here so we can more of the story. It's so important that she set a boundary. And it sounds like it's about time. The the rest of the friend group not saying anything. (laughs) Nobody said shit. Mm -hmm. Not saying anything, but... uh, but then not scheduling anything with her that's time dependent to is is just it's validation, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bree just took a DNA I test. Just She's fifty percent Candy Thunder sister. <laughs> I just saw that same comment. That's so funny. <laughs> oh man, that is so funny. Ah, uh, that is hilarious. Um, I, I, somebody else, you know, restated pain creates change. She needed to hear this. And it may not change anything, um, but maybe well, you, it will. I don't know. You, you've at least paved a path for a solution for mm-hmm. her. It, she knows if she wants to repair this relationship and get back on good terms with you, she she now knows what she needs to do to fix it. And that's one of yeah. the most important things, I think. Whenever there is a problem, at least letting somebody know how to fix it or what yeah. needs to be fixed is important. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, but clearly, this is her shtick, right? This is just mm-hmm. this is who she is. And Candy Thunder, yes, you like being on time for things is not your strong suit. Agreed. But it is possible. And yeah. uh, and yeah, yeah. There's yeah, but uh, but it is it is it is not an intentional. I don't. It's because you don't give a shit about whatever. Right, it is. right, right. It is just busyness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this. This is one of those things where where the the differentiator that that OP has seen through experimentation here is that yeah if it is her own thing she gives a shit if it's not she doesn't give a shit and the yeah. whole the whole cake taking uh, keeping it as like a backup plan but if she finds something that's oh, more okay important, I forgot about then that she'll part pivot. that that makes it super duper shitty that right? makes you a shitty friend yeah not OP but this girl that's awful. Don't make people feel like they're just the best choice at the moment. That sucks. Yeah. This girl needed to be called out, and I'm glad OP did it. Sounds like her friends are glad that she did it, too. Yeah. Maybe it'll create some change. Maybe it won't. You're right. I mean, but but she at least knows that uh, that it's not okay with the rest of the friend group now. So Yeah. And I'm glad that they called out, the that OP called out, that she showed everyone that she was perfectly capable of being on time. That is, there's no way to gaslight out of that. I keep using that word because I feel like a lot of these people who are speaking up in the stories that I've been a part of, the people who are um, speaking up are, seem like they're usual, usually people pleasers. And so I use gaslight a lot because I think that people pleasers get gaslit a lot. Um, 
So anyway, I think that it's cool that she saw that, called it out, so that there is no way that this friend could gaslight her out of it. Hey, Matt Hatter jumping in here and hey. saying she's officially a Brie Thanks. fan. I'm Heck a, yeah. I'm a fan of your name. Nice. That's awesome. And also, Michelle Erickson, welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam, member of the Thunder Crew. Heck yes. Very cool. Glad to have you here. Yeah, I think it's um, it's definitely not okay, but but you've shown her how to fix it. Yeah. And, and you are not an Askinaut for calling her out on for her sure. bullshit. Hey, somebody said opportunists are so rude. Agree. <laughs> Agree. That is exactly what this girl is. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a great point. Well, I think I think when you treat people less than in any way, shape, or yeah. form, and that's where it comes down to is that she's got she's got her tiers of people that are like this is more important or yeah. this is a good backup, and yeah, if nothing else comes along, sure we could do that, but I'm gonna wait till the last minute, which means I'm not gonna be on time. That's shitty. Agreed. You can't treat people like that. Yeah, friend is ask on one. I totally agree. Go for totally. it. Totally. Yeah. The Woo. Brie getting her first button press in action First here. button press, and it's an intense one. That's a pretty good one. Got the ass on one for the friend going there. Yay. There we go. I love that. There we oh, go. Oh, see, this lady says I have ADHD and I set multiple alarms because I hate being late. That's a that's perfect. I set multiple alarms too, but there's a little floaty thing in the, I the morning. The fly in the morning. was back. I was like, no. Fly. What did? What was? Yeah, fly Buzz yesterday. Thunder. No, oh, I know. I saw. Was, I saw was like, somebody I was, was calling up Buzz Thunder. <laughs> It was, it was two days we had that thing. Two. I was listen. I was on the live. I was watching whenever she killed it. Candy Thunder, the Fly Ninja, Fly and then, Assassin, and then uh, and then Angel. Yeah, made that AI image and story Hilarious. to go along with it, which is fantastic. We do need to read that at some point. That that was great. So good. Uh, it uh, RIP Buzz Thunder. <laughs> so some pe- some people are asking if you have your own YouTube channel. Do you have a channel? I don't. Because like, guys, do here's the thing. I feel like. I don't know that I would have anything worth talking about that anybody would care to listen to. I don't know. I don't even know what I would talk about. I'll just come visit here. Just talk. Yeah. Just talk about anything. Yeah. Well, until you do start your own, you'll always be a welcome guest well, on the podcast thank and you. jumping on here. And that would be, uh, that, that would be amazing. Hey, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you that bingo box. Not yet. Oh, at some point here. holding out at some point here. Um, gossip and, and merger cases, Matt Hatter. Yeah, they're doing hey, all kinds of stuff. Oh my God. I have been, my husband and I have been watching murder mystery stuff lately. And in five minutes the other day, and this is not an exaggeration. He, if he actually was on here, he could back this up. Um, in five minutes, they had introduced like a few people and I was like, oh, a hundred percent Liz did this. And he was like, okay, carry on to the end of the show or episodes or whatever. 100% Liz had freaking done it and he was alarmed by my that knowledge. You saw it? Yeah. He was like you've already seen this and I said I've not seen this. I just and he just, goes so wait. No. Yeah. He was like do you think like Liz? And I was like I hope not, but I think that anyway, I actually love that murder idea. I can't do cute makeup like that one things. girl who does it though. I don't know. Hey, it's fair game. It's the Wild West. That's you true. Do, you, you were telling somebody earlier. Whatever you like. In this day and age, you, get into you can just whatever crazy stuff you like. Yeah, I think uh, when it when it comes to scheduling and that kind of thing, I I don't think I'm ADHD, but I do know that I have to be very regimented with mm-hmm. like scheduling and calendar events, and I have to keep I have to enforce structures on yeah. myself. Otherwise, I will be late. You know, this. other people enforce structures on you too. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about it earlier, and Tony was talking about when he pitched this idea that he came to you yeah. with it completely timelined out yeah. and ready to roll which is amazing because he he knows mm-hmm. and they know that that like my brain needs a system my brain needs a plan ocd mm-hmm. there you go uh it needs it needs a plan yeah to be able to absorb it i need i need some kind of structure to be able to follow and that's day to day like every part of my day is regimented yeah. and calendared out I, I love that work on like task lists and if there's not a task for something I do i'm that not too. doing it Be, i do it too though so that i can actually i am big on actually writing things down mm. and i do it so that i can check mark and it makes me feel like to i've accomplished it yeah, yeah it makes me feel like i've accomplished something yeah that's a um, big deal it is a big deal i think it's really helpful for people who I don't know. Sometimes I just get tired too, and it makes me feel like I'm accomplishing things. So I want to keep going. Yeah, it's like little Momentum. tiny wins. Yeah, Momentum. that's yeah. great. Yeah. Momentum is good. Yeah. Um, Ariel. Yeah, it could be. It could be uh, OCD, ADHD. Who knows? Uh, oh, there's so many like undiagnosed diagnoses happening here. 
Who knows? I'm probably more. Yeah, on the check mark equals dopamine hit for not. sure. There you go. That's yeah, no, I think where I am you get too. your glasses from. Ah, what? A, oh, I think just Walmart. I think I just got them. <laughs> you're, at looking, you're like, which glasses? I know. I was like, I forgot. Which, um, which, which glasses? Yeah, is. I'm pretty sure I just got them from Walmart. From oh, my see, eye doctor. Isn't just hoarding. Struggling with the montage says, uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I do that too. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Um, but I do know that I have to, if I didn't enforce systems on myself, I would probably be chronically late to things too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I accepted that I have a guy, I'm a guy who has to, has to have regimented systems enforced on mm-hmm. things. And that's, that's how I work best. And then really until I got to that part of my life and accepted that, I was probably a pretty mucky mess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like trying to figure it out day to day without a plan. I, I'm. I can't do it. Yeah. I, I like even I'm trying to even think of weekends and I even start planning my weekends ahead of time because I can't just not be doing yeah. something. I, I'm with you there. there but then all a, I gripe about is how oh, I just want to do. I don't want anything to do. I just don't want to do anything. Elise says, do you ever do something and then add it to your list just so you can mark a hundred percent? Oh, my God. A hundred percent. I didn't know that was a thing that other people do. That's awesome. That is awesome. Way to call that out. Good, good call. That sounds like somebody who she said my planners meeting planners. That's, That's hilarious. Awesome. You guys get me. I appreciate that. <laughs> the neurodivergent folks tend to. That's so true too. And you know, I don't. It's so cool that we are in a culture that that talks about those things now. Because I don't. I would have never known what neurodivergent meant. Yeah. That that was even a thing. I didn't even know until an ad, until adulthood, and really probably my thirties, that I even had these things. Right. And now I'm like, oh, that's actually a thing that people do. That isn't just a weird brie quirk. And so. also, um, we talked about this with with like niche um, interests, right? But I think mm-hmm. this is the other side of it too. Is that is that you're able to niche out with these specific traits mm-hmm. and find a lot more people with with commonalities there. Yeah. And that makes it a lot easier to not just identify, but, but, but identify systems that work for people. Who yeah. And it also gives too. you an ability to research it right? and learn other ways to help yourself, which by the way is so important. Find things to help yourself. Yeah. You have to, um, somebody, I saw something a second ago. Bailey Sarian is her name. Thank you. I love her. Um, somebody said that my glasses remind them of, Classic 1970s men's frames. Me too, and that's why I got them. That's awesome. I love them Um, because they reminded me of my dad, and I love my dad. Um, And I kind of look like him with the glasses a little bit. Anyway. Are those those your Dahmer frames? They are sort of Dahmer Dahmer frames. By the way, I bought them pre-Dahmer, the (laughs) newest one. And then you're like, well, shit, I'm I'm, I'm wearing them anyway. I do rock them anyway almost all the time. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That okay. is awesome. We're out. All right. Okay. Bye. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, Bree. Thank Greatly you. appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. All the Have love. Fun. Bree See did ya. a fantastic job. Um, big, big love. And thanks for showing up and helping us out today by jumping on. Uh, you've gained a lot of new fans today. So, yeah, spool up that channel to talk about weird shit. And uh, and we'll make sure we share the news with you guys whenever whenever that happens. So, uh, yeah, big, big love for Bree. Much love there. Um, in the meantime, we also here. Let me give you the BTS shot here again. Um, over here, we we got Bree talking to Tony Spark. Uh, Beer today, and Sarah. If you want to stand up, lean to your right, and give a wave there. We we've, we've got the we can see hands. Uh, we can see hands there. We've got we've got our BTS shot. They're going to be joining us here in a bit as well. So that's going to be a good good time. Uh, in the meantime, I believe I'm I'm jumping over here to. Programming updates, Tony Spark says. You're going to skip that story. Okay. Then you're going to do that one. Okay. I'm going to give feedback. Okay. Then the, I have adjusted all those notes, and that's how it's going to go. That's what's on there. Cool. We got a programming update here. We're diving into our next story. Tony Spark is going to jump in and give some feedback, and then we're going to introduce our next guests. Hell yeah. Awesome. Beer today. There. <laughs> I forgot about that. Is it is that why you is that why you changed it to the bearded J because of the bearded A the beer today thing beer today oh I think that's awesome it is good to not feel like you're the only weird one Annie Hay yeah uh yeah and I I think it's just so cool that we have the ability to to find people with niche interest or, or related interest however niched out those are um and today it is much more 
we're much more capable to do that than ever before, which is amazing. So very, very cool. Okay, here we go. Next story we're diving into is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for buying a non-traditional toy for my niece? So my niece had this lamb toy that she loved. I should also mention that she is rough on toys. And long story short, the poor little fluff ball has gone to stuffed animal heaven. Oof. Well, my niece was heartbroken and my sister was telling me how down she had been. So I thought I would get her another one. All of the stuffed lambs that that I looked at were just as fragile as before. But when I was getting some treats for my pooch, I was struck by the sight of a lamb chop dog toy. And I had a brilliant idea. I mean, think about it. The lamb chop toy is made to be chewed on and clawed, so it should be able to handle a toddler. So I bought it, and on Saturday, I was watching my niece for my sister and brother-in-law. I gave my niece the toy, and she loved it. She really liked the squeaker, too. So Saturday rolls around. Niece is having a blast with Lammy 2.0, and my sister and brother-in-law walk in the door. Of course, my niece runs up to her parents and shows them her new toy. They ooh and ah over it until my niece squeezes the squeaker, and my sister completely loses her crap. Screams. You bought my baby a dog toy? Brother-in-law just looks at me and tells me I should probably head home. The aftermath is that my sister sent me a bunch of texts, which basically consists of you bought her a dog toy with some choice expletives thrown in for good measure. Our mom asked me what the hell I was thinking. Our stepfather and stepbrother thought it was funny as hell. Brother-in-law is quietly amused, but is keeping his head down. My sister took the lamb chop away and my niece had a meltdown until she gave it back. So now I am getting the double stink eye from her. And my niece still loves her fluff ball. So am I the astronaut? I was just trying to make my niece happy. Hell no. Hell no, you are not the astronaut here. This is ridiculous. I I mean, who cares? Who who cares that it's a toy that was made for dogs? If she's rough on toys and she loves this and it's going to last longer, who cares? Okay, Navy picks up dog toys and I mean, she doesn't take them to bed with her, but she throws them around and has a good time and blah, blah, blah. It's this does no one harm. The only thing that this does potential harm to is mom's ego, apparently. Uh, and and why would that be? So I don't want my kid playing with the dog toy because it's called a dog toy. OK, Tony Spark has some very passionate about this, so we're going to very, very passionate thoughts about this. So we're going to b- bring him in. Words are already hard. It's a good thing. It's a good thing you're jumping break in. It's a, it's, a, it's a good break time cut off here. Uh, oh, there you go, Lilith. It's not a dog toy until it's given to a dog. Good point. Good point. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get your intro started. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Spark. I have very strong thoughts about this. I just want to say that. I just want to say I have very strong thoughts about this. As um, um, I'm lucky enough to be an uncle to a bunch of crazy little kids all over the ranges from like one and and all the way up to 17. So um, I have some very strong thoughts about this. We had a debate in the office about it. I think the sister is way overreacting to this. I think that it's not like she picked up a toy that his dog was using and just gave it to the kid. Listen, it's a, it's a stuffed animal just because it's a dog toy. Doesn't make it not a stuffed animal. It's a lamb. It's fine. And have you ever played with a toddler or baby? They're very similar to puppies. Like you throw, you throw something. They want, they want to play with the ball. They want to play with the toy. You just throw it for them and they come back. They're very similar. And, and I am, I am a Funkel. Thank you very much. But listen, I don't see the problem here. He was thinking smart. He was thinking I could go and buy a stuffed animal that I'm going to have to buy 14 times because she keeps tearing it up. Or I can go get a toy that is meant to be torn up and whatever. And it's going to last forever. And the kid is happy. So what does it matter? Mom needs to calm the F down. Like, it's fine. Again, it's not like he ripped a toy out of the dog's mouth and said, here you go, kid. Play with this. Like, that's not what happened. Sister, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. That's, I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, I could be way off base here, but I don't think I am. And if I am, screw it. (laughs) Wow. Somebody's being loud over there. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example about the toddler and, and pup, you know, baby puppy toddler comparison. When Navy Thunder comes in here, I have this little toy right here on my desk. 
And then she loves when I go like this and it goes. And what does she do? She runs after it. She grabs the ball and she brings it back and she wants me to do it again. Now, I mean, what's that sound like? And she has a blast with it. I mean, this could be a dog toy. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What's the matter? I agree that the squeak could get a little annoying. I could see that. You know, a dog, they like to put, again, the dog likes to squeak it because it makes noise. Kid's going to sit there and squeak and go, hey, mom, look at this. And squeak, 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 squeak. So I could agree. Maybe you need to take the squeaker out, but you can cross that bridge when you get to it, when it gets too annoying. But you know what? OP, you are not the asshole. Not the asshole. Sister, you need to just, you should be, you should be thankful that he is willing to buy your daughter toys and he knew he saw that toy and he's like this is going to make her happy because it's her favorite type she she loves this little lamb toy i'm going to get this it's going to make her happy that's a great uncle so yeah that's 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 my passionate thoughts on this i don't know navy's going to be navy's going to be mad now because i lost the little thing this in here i'm going to figure that out uh, Aaron, that's when Dusty uh, yells at either Candy or I to use use our mic that's over there. So yeah, what do you think, chat? Am I am I off here? I'm looking here. 100 percent agree. Thank you. Jason Kelsey plays fetch with his girls. That I mean. He also got roasted. Well, you know what? That's because the internet likes to roast people. She's having fun. What does it matter? Take the squeaker out. The the squeaker I could see becoming an issue. That that's I. <laughs> But kids toys squeak. Also, you want to go back to the comparisons again. What do you get kids? They chew on things. You give them a little key ring with plastic toys. They chew on it. Rubber things. You chew on it. I mean, it's not like you got her a dog bone. I mean, come on. It is a her problem. Exactly. Thank you, May. May agrees with me. I'm the type of Annie that'll buy a drum set. So what's the squeaker toy going to do? I mean, that's what is what that's what aunts and uncles are for. And seriously, it's like she comes over and is be like, OK, got your food ready. It's down there on the bowl on the floor. Gibble for two days. Yeah. I mean, come Not on. Good kind. I mean, honestly, as as the Funkel, I like to be the one who gets them things that their parents won't get them. So like we had a whole thing. My. My cousin and uh, his daughters one year, they wanted the kinetic sand. And he's like, no, I'm not getting the kinetic sand. So guess what they got from Uncle Tony? They got a bunch of kinetic sand. <laughs> well, it's and it's like they always come out and be like, oh, can I have this? Sure. Can I have that? Sure. Yeah. Make the kid happy. It's fine. But anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. This is all I have to say about this. It's been a debate in the office for a couple of days over the story. But listen, the kid's happy. What's it matter? The Maybe. toys. Mom's not going to have to deal with an upset toddler when she rips that toy up because it's going to last a lot longer than a regular one. Maybe. Maybe you should get another dog toy. Mail it to mom with a little note that says, here you go, you bitch. Wow. That's intense. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Is it anyway. a font? All right. A fan. A fan. It's she's, uh. It's, she's it's, a fanta. It's, it's getting to be Dusty Thunder's uh, nap time here for a she, second. So. She's a fanta. She's a fanta. Uh, like the soda, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give us some music here for just a second because we're doing a little bit of a reset here. Petty Confetti Award goes to Dusty. Hello. Hey, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Tracy. Uh, this is the this is the time. It's nine o'clock. Or I'm sorry, it's not nine o'clock. It is seven o'clock. We've been live for nine hours now. This is when my filter starts degrading, apparently. So we're uh we're not even halfway there yet. Not even halfway there yet. It's a, probably a good thing that I'm supposed to be going into like power nap mode here soon. So uh, do I know how to twerk? I've never tried, and I don't think anybody wants to see that. Also, I have lower back issues, so that would end badly for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like an ambulance showing up here, paramedics hauling me off. What happened? He tried to twerk. Uh, yeah, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. Matt Hatter, I would love another rose skull. Hell yeah. By the way, yeah, Matt Hatter sent this to me, and it is so freaking cool. A rose in a skull, like a resin skull. It's just the coolest stuff, man. Coolest stuff. 
Heck yeah. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, I'm going to dip out for a little bit of a break. We're going to bring on a couple of guests. I think there's going to be some story reading that Candy Thunder is going to get involved with here as well. Uh, you have met one of our guests before, one of them that you have never met before. Let me let me do an introduction for you here. Ladies and gentlemen, you have met him before, a podcast guest. We have Beer Today here today. Hey, oh, Beer hey. Today. And... Candy Thunder's Hi. sister, Beer Today's wife, Sarah. Hey, guys. Hey, yo. With hey. the Words Are Hard shirt and with yeah. the, uh, the Askonaut hoodie as well. Uh, oh. Heck, yeah. That's, oh, uh, Lilith, a nuclear revenge story while my filter is weak is probably not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, no. One of the goals is not to get canceled today. So uh, we'll, we'll just figure, we'll, we'll find out what happens. We'll see how it goes. Uh, they're going to jump in and, and actually take over for a little bit. Candy Thunder is going to jump over and read a story here as well. Yeah, Smash Room is active uh, above right now. So you may hear some thumping and thunking, but it's fine. We're going to push through it. Uh, how's it going, guys? It's going swell. It's going swell. I'm working all day. So. Either she's on a phone call or I'm on a phone call working all the entire day. But the live was going on one of five <laughs> devices the entire the house, time. Yeah, and that's awesome. trying to find which one to turn down so we could hear ourselves on a conference call. Or at one point, I'm trying to talk on a call to a customer and he's got it blaring. And I'm like, pause, pause. You got to pause. You got to pause. <laughs> it's probably one of the times when I'm uh, cursing at things, too. Here, I'm going to jump out of frame so you guys can both jump in. I'll still talk to you, but at least you'll both be in frame and be able to talk here for a minute. I'm going to bump that down for you here as well. Yes, I'm the shorter. We, we, were, we were just talking about this. I'm like the Timu version of Dusty. <laughs> like, I'm a little bit smaller. Uh, no, my voice is not quite as soothing. I'm almost. Oh. I'm close-ish. Who oh. has more gray hair? Oh, man. I think let's let's I think get I'm you guys catchy. in the frame together, right? Gotta, Who has more gray hair? I think it, it probably oh. depends on beard length here. We're probably. It looks like James. We're probably just pretty neck and neck. Kind of yeah, just a little bit. I don't know. So, I, I'm jumping like straight to white. So yeah. Well, I just uh, chopped a whole bunch of it off, and I could see it on the ground, all white and fuzzy. Tracy, I hear you. I'll go check right now. Thank you. Uh, oh. oh, there's a delivery. Yeah. Ah, they're they're doing things. So yeah, no, we're just here. To today was today was our pretty normal. We both work from home. Most of the time, but then there's an awful lot of uh, one of us is going this way and one of us is going that way. So next week I'll be gone all week and then I'll get back. She'll be gone for two days. Then I'm gone and then she's gone and then we're gone. This past week has been we're actually get to spend quality time nice. together. Yeah. But then you get near the that end of the day when that quality time is like, I need you to be quiet. <laughs> Don't speak to me. <laughs> Please don't speak to me. We're just going to sit in silence together. It's quiet quality time. Yes, it's quiet quality time. So sometimes you need that quiet quality time. I hear you. We, we, got, we got pizza there. Nice. I'm going to read the Yes, Dusty, okay. Dusty has a lot more hair, um, both genetically and by choice. I shaved a lot of mine off, but there's not much there, which is why it's so I short. Where you were going to go with it. We're here both. <laughs> no, a the Timu version of Dusty. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, the, it is chaos right now um, around here. Yes, we will be reading and giving some feedback today at some point. I think uh, Tony's going to come up and read a story. story. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That's my new nickname, Timu Dusty. <laughs> I said that. I said that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So they were saying. Like, James calls himself that. Yeah. Me too. Yep. Yes, you were hearing a repeat. No, this is all brand new live. It's chaos. We may have just repeated the same thing again. Multiple times. Yeah. Hey. Also, Tracy, thank you so much. Diving into breadsticks right Ooh, now. They got the breadsticks. Tracy, you're awesome. Isn't she though? Yes. Thank <laughs> you, guys. Dusty, yes. <laughs> So, uh, Candice, you're wanting to do question and answers? Yeah, we're going to do, I'll go ahead and do your guys' Q&A. Oh, oh this, this ought to be good. Yeah. Here, I'll test this space. So. This will be really good because James and I have very different opinions and things. So, we'll okay. see how this goes. Okay. Um, audiobook or paper copy? Paper copy. Paper copy all yes, day we're, long. we're both paper Absolutely, copy. yeah. James bought me a Kindle one time and I used it for like uh, maybe 30 days. And yes. yeah, it's not good. Um, 
Can they, can you guys hear me when I read the questions? If I'm not can too close, hear I just want to make sure. So we guys can. Is that your girlfriend? Is that what it says? No. We're married. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're married. Been married 17 years. Really? He pits up with me, right? Yeah. 17. It'll be, I, mean, I was, yeah, I've been married 17 I was years. there. I was there. I was yeah. at the wedding. But. She was my, yeah, you were in my wedding. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they can so, go. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. okay, guys, you guys play along. You know the drill with the questions. Um, the question was audiobook or paper copy? Paper copy all day long. Yes, yeah, same. I I, yep. I prefer the paper copy. I'm not going to listen all of it. Here, well, we, we can push it down. Just make sure to protect it. Into it. Yeah, down okay. is where I'm at. Um, what is your favorite TV show of all time? Mm. I, I'm gonna really just have to pull up the safety TV show of uh, Friends. Oh yeah. Yep. I would say Friends is what we watch a lot. Oh, but I like Grey's Anatomy. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, I, we're currently. I'm not that interesting. We're currently watching How to Get Away with Murder. I've seen it when it came out. James hasn't, so I introduced him to it. So we're working our way through that. Almost done. Uh, Schitt's Creek. Oh yes. Yeah, so oh yeah, Schitt's that. Creek is a good one. Um. Speaking of Schitt's Creek, what is your favorite Dusty-ism? Oh. Ooh. And I'd love to hear chat's favorite Dusty-ism, too. Yes, what what, what, are, what are all the good Dusty-isms? What about you? I don't know that I... Like his <laughs> Moira voice or Words Are Hard. I mean, Words Are Hard is a good one for me. Yeah. I like Words of Hard. Words Are Hard because obviously... Because Words Are Hard. Because I do yes. this all the time. Um, Dustin and Candace can tell you that I'm that way constantly. So, Words Are Hard... But I love okay. when he does quotes from Schitt's Creek. Guys. Oh, okay. wow. Oh, yeah. oh it okay, is, it hold is, up. Hold okay. up. Look at this. Oh, yeah. You guys are you guys are out of control. We've got ten blizzards from ten Dairy blizzards. Queen That's from amazing. somebody. Thank you right. all. Uh, amazing. Who's Dana that? Dana G? What are her name? Diana. 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 Oh, Diana, Galvin. Diana Galvin. You're crazy. You but thank awesome. you. Oh Holy my gosh. crap. Did you know that I've been craving ice cream all week? Because well, like, <laughs> awesome! Excellent. I'm gonna have a great time. Uh, his his Moira Moira voice. It's hard. words are hard. Uh, yes, words are hard. Yeah. Oh, you like Chico? Yeah, we go. Hey, we've got plenty of moderator in the comments, so uh, they're yeah. they're working hard, guys. We've been at it for nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she said, "You're welcome. Enjoy." Yes, thank you. That's awesome. Yes, I super was, sweet. Okay. I was always originally a fan of the uh, the various accents, but I but I do like the the OG uh, English accent. Oh yes. Likes to drop out. Yes, it's someone Australian. It's like an English Australian. It, yeah, English Australian had a baby. Type. Yes. I have done the Moira voice one time, and it yeah. was like perfection, and I can't do it again. It was a one-time thing. I think you should read never the next question back, in ever. the It happened. Voice. I can't. <laughs> it happened at a Garth Brooks concert when we were trying to get out of the parking lot, and it was crazy, and it'll never come out again. It was just like in the moment, and now I can never recreate it. Oh, someone it. said the Sean Connery voice. Yep. Yep. And now, Big now, Bang Now he Gary. does have a distinct, he has a different distinct Sean Connery impression. Yes, his is very good. And he yes. does uh, Christopher Walken. Um, he does Elmo. He does Mickey. Um, what are some other ones he's done? He's re he can do any of them, really. He's he does. So he good. does like a lot of good ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, and someone said, "Gosh, heckin' fam!" Line. Yes, that yes. is yes. one of my absolute favorite Dustyisms too. I love that so much. It's endearing. And he just he thinks of this stuff on the fly. Like his his wit is. That's what I love about him is that yeah. it's on the fly. It's not planned. Yep. I wish I could do that. I know it's it's very impressive. Oh. Okay. Oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more. There's more. But there's more. Wait, there's there's more. more. Oh my goodness! Holy you goodness! Guys. Yes. Um, somebody made you the comment, Sergeant Mac. Sergeant Mac. Yeah. Someone made the comment. I love that you guys get gifts, but I'm scared about people knowing your address. It's not their home address. It's the business. I mean, which is totally open and public because they have yeah. an advertising thing. So we are good and safe, and yeah, and definitely I'm, watch that. Yeah, I'm sure if you wanted to find out our home address, you could. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah that, that's, that's also public that knowledge. The as well. internet is the internet is accessible. Also, we added on to the house that's on Google Google Earth. Just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of all the food, what is your favorite food? Pop quiz, huh, Chad? Mine? Yeah. 
And ladies and, first, right? Well, I'm a, hey, guys, we're doing the Q&A now because the smash room upstairs is very active. So we wanted to wait until that's over with to get also, into the next round of stories. we're not sure who just DoorDash us, but they just sent um, I think it was Diet Cokes and cookies and adult lunchable and brownies from Target. Was it, was it Ellen and Sergeant Mac? Somebody, from, somebody sent it from Target. It says I think you it was Sergeant another, Mac. It says you have another delivery. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, yep. guys. Thank you to whoever sent the... This fam is just Sergeant fantastic. Mac. You yeah. guys were yeah. awesome. Sergeant Mac. So, Thank you, everyone. Um, we, there is a smash room upstairs, and they have anything you could think of, and they just smash the crap out of crap. That's literally what yeah. it is, and it's Francis, very the, loud. The, the, the smash room is just a ridiculous pain in the tail at this yeah. point because, you know. It's above a above multiple, like it's above a golf simulation business, um, and then it's also above our business. So it's not the smash room's fault because they were rented the, the property. I get that, that niche thing. It's fantastic. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah it's, it's hard. I will be looking up the in red from Horizon Zero Dawn. No, um, and we, we don't really want um, local – coverage unless it's for protect the cake that's that's what we want local yeah. coverage for we, we don't we don't want local coverage for you're doing a for political this, battle no for this event um because it's it's uh our town is different <laughs> yeah it's say. the it's, it's the local thing yep. yeah yep okay last question yes. let's see what the best one is here Ooh, this is a good for a good one for chat pepsi or coke Oh, Coke, but not only Coke, Diet Coke. Diet, Diet Coke, Coke all day long, or Diet Pepper, but Diet Coke mm. recently is definitely a thing. But see, that's where you're wrong. Yeah. It's Pepsi. No. See, yes. Dustin see, and I are the same way. Yes, we are We are Pepsi, very Diet much Coke, opposites yeah. so, in so many ways, but yes, see, it's let's Pepsi. See what, I got to see what chat votes. Oh, yeah, see, we got Coke. A Coke, lot of Pepsi. Pepsi. There's a lot of Pepsi. Mountain Dew, yes, proper, but... So Black did pepper, has Pepsi, anybody Pepsi. ever done Pepsi where you put the salted peanuts inside your Pepsi? No, because we're not psychopaths. But my dad drank that a lot growing it up, like when we came good. back from Germany. Yeah. And it really is. It's like it, that it fizzy is. with the salt. So if you haven't tried it, it's worth a try. Ellen, thank you for the Diet Coke. Love, love <laughs> Diet Coke. Yes. yes. And I was running running low at the office. So thank you very, very much. That's right. It's a southern thing, yes. Yeah. Somebody. I used to love um a proper good cold cherry coke oh, is ridiculous. That's what I was gonna good. say. That's that you'll shift me there, but uh, uh but it's, it's Pepsi. And that's uh, the answer. pre pre COVID it was cherry coke zero. Oh, it was so good. I loved it. Ice cold. Oh, yeah. oh so, see, somebody agrees. Yes, peanuts and Pepsi. Yum. See, it's not, sure. it's not a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. Ooh, McDonald's, McDonald's Diet Coke. Delicious. I can't say. What is it about McDonald's Diet Coke that's I don't so know. good? I think it's because it's more syrupy. It, it really is a different recipe than everywhere yeah, else. Yeah, it has more syrup in it. So it's like, and I feel the same way about Quick Trip drinks too. Like they have more syrup to them and so they Christmas taste. Diet. Mm. I just need quick it. trips tea. Quick trips tea is the thing for me. Yeah, you primarily drink. Well, yeah. I guess it's Diet Coke in the morning and then tea and then yeah, alternate. Oh, sweet teas. Right up until you get to beer of an evening. So. Oh yeah, okay. McDonald's sweet tea, absolutely. Oh no, wait, McDonald's you have one tea. more. I'm sorry. Uh, one more. Um, Yeti or Stanley cups? Oh, that's a big debate, right? Yeah, I'm 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 gonna have to go with the third choice of Arctic because I've had the Arctic cup the same arctic cup for like a decade <laughs> and it's got my logo on it and i will always have that one but i would actually have to go oh. back to yeti because i don't like the design uh, of tina the... says qtt all, all the, way. the way right like yes, the pineapple the papaya sweet tea oh that's going my out thing. of her way <laughs> on a numerous occasions to get hey hydro flask is good oh yeah hydro hydro flask flask, that's, that's what yeah. we started with yes. yeah when we started our cup collection yep yep, yep. I, uh, everybody seems to like the yetis Yep, I have Stanley. I, I, yes, Sergeant Mac. That's the that's the Arctic brand, and it Ozark, works. It does the job. Ozark Trail, Trail. Works great. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can't I beat an Ozark Trail because yeah. it's cheaper. Yep. There's also one called Reduce that you can find on Amazon sometimes. Yeah. And I, they're like a smaller cup with a handle, but I really like those too. I haven't seen those. I haven't seen anybody say Brewmate. Brewmates. I got a lot of those oh, too. Brewmate Brewmate's good. good. That's my. The, yeah, I've showed them. I always forget Brewmate movie. because the, all the Brewmate stuff that we have is you put. I can in, in it. it, but they have the cups. Well, yeah, they do, but you don't ever use the cups. But remember, I, the, I don't have a cup. Uh, Erica Eternal, I left a faux Stanley oh, cup sitting on the counter um, for like two days while I had Diet Coke in it with ice, but the ice was still there when I went to dump it out after two days. So I'm like, yeah. I think it's any Ozark Trail, 
Hydroflask, Stanley, whatever it is, I think they all work the same. It's just a preference of color and style. Oh, yes, we like the... Uh, yeah, so many yes. Stanley's Sounds like do beer have today, them. yes. I thought gone tomorrow. No, it's actually bearded A, but, <laughs> but you can call me beer today. Somebody's waiting on their brewmate. Which one did you get? Did you get a cup or you got like one of their can coolers or... They have a lot of cool things. Oh, oh Stanley yes. Thermos. Jenny, yeah, I saw the reduced cups at Target. They had them at, um, I think it was uh, Academy, too. Yep, the handle on the Stanley, I do love that. Cause Beer today, gone tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> I love that. Well, uh, Erica, A is my last initial, but some people just... Oh, my God, there's more food. Oh, there's, there's and there's more. more. There's more oh, that looks donuts. like no, that looks like crumble. Oh, crumble! Oh, crumble that's, has just shown up at the a house. Big, big Mary, box of crumble. Thank you so much. Oh, oh my gosh, my it's a huge box of crumble is there an cookies. Donut cookie in there. Is there? All right, we we may have to pause. Okay, hold on. We got to pause oh, yeah. the, the old fashioned. Mary, old-fashioned. you made a big thing. Ready? Mary. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. <gasps> there Whoa. Oh, she got it. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. We've got it. Yes. I'm so excited. Dude. That's amazing. Guys, you guys are wild. Holy and they're so nice and warm and hot. Of, yeah, those that, are awesome. That's fresh. Fresh. God, goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think we This 24 hour live is going to end up, everyone's going to get fat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I okay. Think, okay. Right. The Smash Room has quieted down a much. So if you, Tony is going to jump up here and read. Um, James, there, you can. Perfect. We'll step off. Yes. Incoming uh, Tony Spark. Yeah, he's, 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 um, also, again, Dusty is taking a power nap. So just thank you guys so much for for letting us be up here and try to keep you entertained. try to keep you entertained for the next twenty to thirty minutes while he has some headphones on and is just doing what he does best, which is power napping. Because I've never seen anybody do it like Dusty Thunder. All right, Tony Spark, you're up. Yeah, we could probably put those in the freezer if nobody's going to eat them, but. Dude, y'all are wild. This is crazy. Okay. Um, we are, the office is, I made the joke about the dorm room um, earlier, and it's looking more and more like a dorm room by the minute in here, but it's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. I'm going to read a story, I guess. Here we go. This is from the AITA subreddit, and it is, would I be the astronaut for uninviting my sister-in-law's parents to my wedding? <laughs> okay, wait, stop. Give me that. Give me that. First off, We're throwing it away. Why is this the thing? Thunder and Spark 7, <laughs> you might understand this. She just, look what Candy Thunder just handed me. Oh, no. In case you can't see that, oh, no. she just handed me, I, I don't even know why we still have this in our freezer, okay? I don't even know why this is still in our freezer. We tried it on a podcast, and it's the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my entire life. I can't believe it. That was a that was an act of that was that was yeah disgusting, disgusting. Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, would I be the astronaut for uninviting my sister in law's parents to my wedding? My fiance, thirty seven, and I, thirty two, are planning a wedding. Months ago, I was discussing wedding planning with my brother, thirty five, and his wife, thirty six. I mentioned to them that I was grateful for my parents' support because I thought I'd be able to invite more people, like my sister-in-law's parents, who are lovely people. My sister-in-law was touched that I had even considered that, and then we moved on to discussing all of the second cousins I wasn't going to invite. As we continued to plan the wedding, my fiancé and I discovered that we had very different cultural expectations about what counts as a big or medium-sized wedding. My fiancé feels strongly that the bigger it is, the less fun they will have, and I have a very large family that expects to be invited to everything always. We agreed on a hard cap of 100 people, and my sister-in-law's parents did not end up making the cut. We sent out save the dates in the fall, and I figured that was that. Then last night, my brother called me, extremely upset, because his in-laws reached out to him to plan where they were going to stay for the wedding, and he called my parents to see what their plan was, and they were like, um, I don't think your in-laws are invited? Oof. Turns out they have had they have had my wedding on their calendar for months and are really excited about it. My brother was strongly my brother was very apologetic for putting me in this situation, but strongly urged me to invite them after all. If it were just me, that's what I'd do. Like I said, these are perfectly lovely people who I've always gotten along well with, but this is our wedding, and my fiance has already compromised significantly on the size and even chose to not invite most of their extended family in favor of their friends to keep the total wedding size down. 
They are deeply unhappy at the idea of adding more people. Would I be the Askinaut if I reached out to my sister-in-law's parents, apologized for the miscommunication, and let them know they aren't invited after all? They were on our B list of people to maybe invite if we got lots of no's, and I don't know whether to say that or not. What do you guys think? <laughs> Elise, did you see Elise's comment? She said, wait, there are only seven of us that watch the Thunder and Spark podcast? I'm like, no, that's just my joke that I make about it. <laughs> I mean, for a hundred bucks. Um, man, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that you're the Askinaw here. Um, I think that, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, they kind of talked about the wedding and they kind of got excited for it and all that kind of stuff. But I think that's kind of stuff happens. I think you kind of talk about an event coming up, whether it's a wedding or something like that, like people get excited for it. And then you start crunching numbers and realize, Oh, wait a minute, that's a lot of people. And I think that you have to, you have to limit people somewhere, right? Like a lot of these situations, I think the guest lists can get really, really out of hand really fast. And I mean, most weddings can get expensive. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's unfortunate, but I think just being honest with them, I think being honest with them on it and saying, Hey, um, you know, we did want, we originally planned on inviting X number of people. Turns out we talked about it a little more and we got to trim that down. Um, you know, we would love to have you there, but right now, um, you're not on that list. I mean, I think honesty is the best policy, right? Is that's the way I always think. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're, I th I'd have to go NTA on that. Um, Sophia, I think it, they, they talked about it originally, um, because they had wanted to talk. That looks like the family had talked about it, um, before, but yeah, use the venue as an excuse. Yeah. You could do that, but I mean, again, I, th I think just being honest with them and, and saying, hey, we, we thought we could have this many people. We're going to have this many people. turns out we can only have, you know, 100 people. And I think that they'd understand, too. I mean, I understand they'd probably be disappointed about it, but um, chances are they went through this at one time, too, right? Planning a wedding, making a guest list, doing all that, and, and they probably understand how it can get out of hand. And, you know, you got you to gotta do what you got to do. It's your wedding, not an obligation. Yeah. Can they attend the wedding and not the reception? Maybe. But listen, I'm going to be honest. I mean, the only reason I go to weddings is for the reception. I mean, who goes to the wedding to watch the vows? I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody does, but not Ted. The bride and groom. That's about it. The only people at the wedding that are there for the vows are the bride and groom. 100%. Yeah. 100 is still a lot of people. I had friends that have, I had friends that invited me to the wedding, but not the reception might be an option. Yeah. Honestly, if I'm getting invited to the wedding and not the reception, I'm probably not going to go. Should throw that out there. Who told the sister-in-law's parents they were invited? I think it, let's see. It says, I mentioned them. Da, 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 da. I think it just kind of came up in conversation. So I probably had a family event or something. Um, it just probably came up. Well, see, the problem, Tara, is the dancing part, the reception, that's the part that costs money. That's the expensive part. You know, that's the part where you have to limit it. And it says that her fiance, um, his big thing was wanting that that reception smaller because the more people and look, I've never been married, so I don't know what all that I'm. But I have been in several weddings. I've been the best man. So I've been pretty close in a lot of weddings. Um like the bride and groom are very busy on the wedding day. And the more people that are there, the more people that they feel like they need to, um, you know, talk to and say hi to. And, um, so I, I can get it. I can see it, you know, the, you know, going from 200 people to a hundred people, that's a hundred less people you feel obligated that you have to thank for being there and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, at most weddings you have to, they have to make sure that a plate is set aside for the bride and groom. Cause they're so busy the whole time that they hardly get to eat, you know? So I can see where, where her fiance is like, Hey, I want it to be not as many people. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Rosie, we're not 100% sure yet. Um, it'll definitely be up for members, we feel like, but we don't know what we're doing with it yet. It's going to be 24 hours of, of alive, so it's a lot to watch, but we'll figure something out. There's also cake size, the cost, yeah. I mean, weddings, I don't know if, again, I've never planned a wedding, but I've been involved in helping with some weddings are not cheap. I mean, even when you try to, even when you, you know, try to do stuff cheap, they're, they're not super cheap. So I've, I've been to weddings that are in a field and they've cooked all the stuff themselves and had the time of my life. And I've been to a wedding that costs over six figures and you can everything in between. So, Hey, my cousin's here. Hey, Ashley. Rylan is wondering about Uncle Tony's glasses. Hey, Ashley, uh, were you watching when I was talking about um, the the whole dog toy discussion? Because I feel like you'd have a good comment on that. Um, uh, the glasses, they're just blue eye glasses because I've done a lot of reading this week. And uh, I've been staring at a computer screen a lot, reading a lot of Reddit stories. And uh, Candy and Dusty both have them. And I was like, I'm going to go try those out. Now I kind of like them. Might be a glasses guy. I don't know. They do make a big difference. But hi, Rylan and Ashley and Cadence and Kevin. Yeah. This is the peanut gallery. Anybody have any thoughts on this? You guys evolve. You guys are all married. Somebody should have a thought. It's awful. We're really quiet over there. Yeah. They're all just like, st okay, so I, I don't know what button switches over that camera, but they're all just staring at the chat. So they're all, they're all just like looking like this into the computers and like, Oh, looking at, looking at chat. And they're like, Oh, what's that? What's that? And then I don't even know what they're paying attention. Okay. I didn't, you, I didn't hear the story. Oh, mm, now I know how dust. Now I know how dusty feels. <laughs> Somebody who's listening, come get feedback. Sarah, get up here. Tell, tell me, tell me your thoughts on this story. Sarah was listening. So, Thank you. I'm the only good school child, right? <laughs> um, you know, James and I went, James and I went through this when we got married. Um, you know, that's why we loped. We went to Eureka Springs and had a smaller wedding. You know, the people that are super close to you are going to understand. And it's the sister-in-law's parents, right? Was it's the, my sister-in-law. Yeah. Sister-in-law yeah. parents. And I think just a simple phone call of like, Hey, I'm so sorry. We had a limited space. They would understand. And I don't think you're the asshole for it. Like it's okay. Yeah. But, I think I just be honest with them. Just yeah. Like, hey, it's nothing personal. Cause, and Hey, tell them about all the other people that missed the cut. They're not the yep. only ones who missed the cut. Like, I mean, there's their friends, there's family, there's people who didn't make it and it's okay. Like you can't have everybody there for some of those things unless you just got unlimited pockets. But. And here's the thing. If you invite them. Read Josh. Read don't ruin a great memory by overextending yourself to appease others. Uh, exactly. Great job. Yep. Great comment, Josh. Yep. Also, also the <laughs> speaking of Josh, we went to Josh's wedding in um, this last August, right? Is that this August? Yeah. Two August. Two. 2022. And uh, we went and he they they got married in Mexico, right? I believe I think they got married or Mexico or Hawaii. They went somewhere and got married. Then they had the reception back here. Didn't they? I, th I thought they went somewhere. <laughs> oh, I got confused. They went somewhere after. Yeah. No, they got married before. <laughs> just so I know, but I thought they went somewhere and then had the thing. Sorry. Anyway, no. So they they got married right before and it was a smaller private thing. And then there was a big party and it was a lot of fun. But what was funny is the the introverted and antisocial side of Dusty and Candy came out and the very extroverted social side and Ted came out because they're not real big drinkers and Ted likes to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And Josh's signature drink was was old fashions and it was just they were just flowing and it was great. And I had a great time and um, I was might have been working the room a little bit and then. The next thing I know, I looked up and there's no Dusty and Candy and they're gone. And they're like, oh, yeah, we ate, we left. I was like, well. We had four kids in them. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Josh. I got a little confused. I will say this, too. Think about if you invite the sister-in-law parents, somebody else is going to be offended because they didn't make the cut. Exactly. So you already made your decision and it's based off of the space and you just have to go with it. So. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. High five. Awesome job. Glad I listened to you. All right. Okay, so um, I think now 
we are going to have. Are you ready or do we want one more? One more. Are you sure? Are you sure? All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, let's blow up the chat and let's show some love because it is time. Also, we are right on time of when we said this was going to happen. So I think we're doing pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, in the chat, the one, the only Candy Thunder for her first ever story reading. Let's show some love in the chat for Candy Thunder. Do you want, I don't know, do you want me, do you want your intro? Or, okay. All right. Let me, let me find the thing. This one, right? Yes. Okay. My voice me, is going to get all shaky. Let me get, yeah, I'll drink those. let me get rid of that. Let me, let me include. Okay. All right. Candy Thunder. You got this. You got this. Okay. Remember, just ignore it. Everybody love, but don't look at it. Don't look at it. Um, I do want to say before I read the story, um, I noticed that I had missed um, Facebook messages and a lot of Facebook notifications. So I have been kind of running around like crazy today um, behind the scenes. And so I apologize if there are messages. Really, it's been like three or four days of just running around. Um, so I do apologize if there are messages. Oh, thank you, Angel. Angel, yours was one of the messages that I literally just saw. So I apologize. Um, all right. So we are going to read this. And then my sister is going to help me give feedback. This is a there are two sister stories that we're going to read. So here we go. <sighs> okay. Am I the asshole for agreeing with my sister after she accused me of not liking her or caring what's going on in her life? I, 22 female, have three younger sisters, 20 female, Ariel, 14 female, Lily, and 12 female, Michelle. My parents have always been very open about favoring Ariel over the rest of us. Get out of breath. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I don't know how he does it all the time. Okay. Likely because Ariel has more of a social and extroverted personality type, like our parents, whereas me, Lily, and Michelle are quieter and usually stick to small groups of friends. Ariel also only was the only sibling who shared certain hobbies with our dad. So he especially, but still both of our parents, would show favoritism to Ariel. They would show it through things such as being involved in her hobbies, having an active interest in her social life, praising her accomplishments, and getting her nicer presents, whereas I did not receive that treatment. And Lily and Michelle currently do not either. I know that our parents are the ones choosing to openly favor Ariel, and their favoritism isn't her fault directly. But Ariel recognizes the favoritism to the point of being able to verbally acknowledge it. And she is okay with it since she's the favorite. She actually kind of rubs it in, in my Lily and Michelle's faces. Okay, drink. If only there was a back camera for this. Oh my god. That was I just knocked over all of Dusty's 17 <laughs> drinks that he had piled up here into a pile of confetti. Uh, I wish there was a camera on all that. This that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. This is my life. It was the most Okay. Uh, All right. Somebody asked for the ages. Um, OP is 22. Um, Ariel, who is the favorite, is 20. Um, the other two are younger. They are 14 and 12, all female. Okay. And now to the story. Just a few weeks ago, Ariel, t Ariel told Lily and Michelle that it was their fault that our dad ignored them by saying something along the lines of, he'd be interested in you as well if you were good at XYZ. If you want that, then you should try getting into XYZ. I only talk to our parents to stay close to Lily and Michelle. I don't make any effort to be involved with Ariel at all. This school year, both Lily and Michelle made the honor roll at their school. Since our mom didn't acknowledge it beyond, oh, good job, or our dad didn't even, it didn't even acknowledge it at all, I took Lily and Michelle to Dave & Buster's and some of their favorite spots to celebrate. I admit, we stayed out pretty late, my parents were spending the night somewhere else, so only Ariel was home by the time we got back. After Lily went to bed, or after Lily and Michelle went to bed, 
I was preparing to leave when Ariel asked to talk. Ariel brought up that I hadn't come to her graduation. I told Ariel that she never came to any of my graduations, plus she didn't even ask me to be at hers. Ariel told me her birthday last month was bad enough because a lot less people came than she had expected, and I didn't get her a present when I clearly had the money to take Lily and Michelle out. Ariel accused me of not liking her or caring about what was going on in her life. I told Ariel in an in as objective way as possible that her accusation was in fact true for the reason explained in the second paragraph. She said herself, we aren't worthy of being our parents' favorite like she is. So just leave us be. Ariel cried, but I was too tired to deal with her, so I just went home. I talked to some friends about the situation and a few told me that they feel bad for Ariel. They said she is also a victim of our parents' favoritism and now she has to watch her sisters be super close to one another while she's the odd one out. Am I the asshole for still arguing with my friends that Ariel is now 20 years old and is no victim now, but she's the, now that she's an adult? Great job. Okay. All right. Also, yeah, I started Smash Room down here, guys. I knocked over two two metal water cups and the clock, and, the clock. <laughs> and got Dusty's desk wet. And now there's wet confetti like everywhere. It's so, all, it's all, it's all. yeah, Dusty has this down. He reads these for a living. So that's it's much it comes much easier to him. So for the first one, I do read fast. So I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, you did a great job. I, I don't think um, I do agree that Ariel is a victim of oh, excuse me. I do agree that Ariel is a victim of the parents favoritism, which has caused like has driven a wedge between the sisters. Um, but I don't think it's up to the sisters to fix it. I think that has to be up to the parents to bring it to light and fix what they have broken. Cause I don't, I don't know how Ariel goes from being the favorite to not being the favorite without feeling like her life is completely changing. So I don't, okay. Yeah. So, but there's lots of good job candies. So I agree. Um, Ariel needs to make the first effort, but this isn't on her. This is on the parents. And I totally get having different activities or different likes than your kids. We're a blended family and my youngest, Kaden. Okay, hold on. I'm going to, David Wong, you're done. You can fuck off. And when you get there, you can fuck off again. <laughs> wow. That's how Candace feels when it's hour nine. So, um, fun. You're gone. But yeah, so, you know, like my son, we have very different likes, very different things, but I work with him and I find those things that he likes or appreciates and gets on his level. That's on the parents and shame on the parents for ever making feel like somebody's a favorite. Right. We had, um, I mean, there's Sarah is my sister. She's my older sister. I'm the middle child and we have a younger brother. Um, and I don't think, you know, even with us being the two daughters and my brother being the youngest. I don't ever remember like feeling that there was favoritism in our in our family. I felt like our maybe like a little bit of like you had more strict rules because you were older. I had then, to pave the path for them. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had to set the and, then, and then I had strict rules because I was middle, and then Ryan's rules were very lax. So I think, I mean, in that way, I think that's just normal progression and parenting and feeling like you. You know, you're you're more strict with your first one. Candy always, whenever she would get in trouble when she was in high school, and by this time I have moved out of the house, I have a son, and Candy would get in trouble for something, and her excuse was always, "But Sarah did this, <laughs> but Sarah didn't come home till this time in the middle of the night." Always throwing me under the bus. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was always her excuse. I had to, I had <laughs> to make up for my. I was, I was a rotten child. I had to, I had to try to show like. I just always told her I was smart enough not to get caught. That's true. Um, but, but, you know, I know. But so here's the thing. In this story, 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 <laughs> story, Ariel does rub it in their faces that she is the favorite. So she is, parents are an asshole. I think they're the biggest asshole in the story. But I also think that Ariel is an asshole because she is rubbing it in their faces. She knows that she's the favorite and she's using it to jab them, to get at them. And so if. Ariel wants that relationship with her sister, she's going to have to stop. Like, she's going to have to stop jabbing them. She's going to have to stop saying, if you want to be the favorite, you should do this, because that's not fair. Like, you had 
four kids, you have no idea what your kids' personalities are going to be like. You have no idea, you know, how your kids are going to act, if they're going to be extrovert, social, introvert, you know, only have a small group of friends. You don't know what that's going to be like. You committed to having kids, raise those kids and raise them the same. Show them the same amount of love and affection because it's not fair to make. I would never want Navy to feel... Am I off the other side? Yeah, I'm off. I'm close to me. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> I'm a drifter. I have to move around. Um, um, I would never want Navy to feel like I don't love her as much as I love Ava. So Ava and I will probably always have a different relationship, you know, than I'm going to have with Navy because I was a single mom for a long time, and and it was just Ava and I. So I think there's there's always going to be a mm-hmm. different kind of relationship, but I would never want Navy to feel like I love her less than I love Ava or for Ava to feel like I love her less than I love Navy. Well, and each kid brings something special to your life, right? Like Keaton and I were, I was a single mom like you Mm -hmm. for a long time. And so Keaton and I have a very special bond. He helped me grow up. I mean, he really did. And then Caden came in my life and I always say Caden taught me patience, right? So I love Caden for what Caden teaches me. But you love them each on their own. So definitely, I think the parents, this is all on the parents. That Ariel, I think this is on her for rubbing it in. And yeah. all I heard in the story was Ariel once, Ariel once, Ariel once. What has Ariel ever done to try to have a relationship hey. with the sisters? Bingo. She's never done. Yep. She didn't go to a graduation. She didn't tell them good job for making yes. the honor roll. She's done nothing to support them, but is demanding support from her. Uh, Kelsey in anti-symmetry. Thank you guys so much. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, No, I agree with that, too. Ariel never tried. She didn't go to graduation, but bitched about somebody not coming to her graduation. So and if you want a relationship with people, it can't be one sided. It has to be you have to give and they get you know what I mean? You can't just expect people to give to you and not give anything in return. Great. I like this comment. I tell my boys, you're my favorite 43 year old son. Of course, he's the only one that's 43. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, make there it individual to them, you know, yeah. like they, everybody's different in their own way. Um, Candy and I are sisters and we are very different people. <laughs> she is extrovert, social butterfly, always out doing stuff. And I am such an introvert, closed off, like want to be at home. Like it's it, so there's we're completely different, but I don't I don't ever remember our parents treating Loving us, us any, different. any differently. No, no. Absolutely not. Somebody said Ariel's a bully. Absolutely. And she's not getting her way. So she's throwing a fit. So, yeah, Yeah. I agree. I do. I still think that the parents, the parents started this. Like you Mm -hmm. favored a child and that, that will never go unnoticed. Your kids are, kids are very smart and they are always going to pick up on that. I feel like almost all kids grow up, like start as impasse a little bit because they, you know, they feel what you're feeling and they can, they can feel that so much more. So if you're giving off favoritism to someone that isn't them, they are going to pick up on that. And I'm going to throw this out to you. Ariel's 20 now, right? So she's coming into who she is as a person, Dana, right? Thank you. You do a lot of changing and she's realizing, I think that she wants to be a little bit different and have that relationship. Sometimes I feel like we don't value relationships with family until you're older. And now she's realizing, but instead of saying, mm-hmm. Hey, I'm sorry, I was a brat growing up. Can I be included? Um, she. <laughs> I felt like I was in there. <laughs> so, um, but definitely, I would. Uh, sorry. Guys. So, on the Ascon scale, I mean, I agree. Oh, here, a lot right, of people. Let's pull it up. Let's see if we can do it. Um, there it is. Okay. okay. Ascon scale. So, so where where is OP? I'm going to go with NTA for OP. Absolutely. I don't think she's an asshole. I think she's survived in a family that has made her feel less than, uh, along with the two youngest sisters. Um, And then Mm -hmm. what about Ariel? Where where does Ariel fall on the scale? What do you guys think? Ask on two. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Krista. Ask, my back is She's so sweaty, up. guys. It's not even funny. <laughs> I'm not lying. I wouldn't pick. I agree. So there's a lot of that she's an ask on too. Um, 100%. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. I, I think that she's an ask on too because she rubbed it in their face. Yeah. Right? That's what makes her the ask on too. If she hadn't verbally said that, she'd probably be on the three scale. Um, the parents, though, 
the, I think ask on one all the all way. The way. You never let a child know that the, that they're your favorite. You love yep. them for their own reasons. I cannot. I cannot imagine. I can't. I can't imagine making causing that like rift in your family for no freaking reason other than the fact that because your kids are different than you are, they're not worthy of your love. That is just a that is fucked up, guys. Yep. So the chat's really interesting. So we're getting a lot of twos. Everybody agrees the parents are one, you know, and some people are saying she's the one because of rubbing it in. But I still think that was an immaturity thing, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Did it say how old she was when she rubbed it in? It said graduation uh, time. Oh, so maybe 18. 18, yeah. I'm assuming high school. You know, they're still pretty immature at that point. We think we're adults, but we're not really. So I think that was just an immature move. I still agree right. with Ask on too. Right. Yeah, I agree. So she is a two. Parents are a one. Um, yeah. Perfect. All right. This says Dusty returns. Um, but Dusty is not returned yet. No, James is James read. reading? Yeah, James is going to read. Are you? Because we skipped. Yeah. James okay. is going to read. So. Oh, that is not my story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting back to James's story. Yeah. Okay. And then so All right. welcome join for feedback. Bearded A. Awesome job. Bearded A. Chat, where's the love for Candy Thunder? She oh, crushed it. You guys were amazing. No, I, I mean, I know, but like, let's give a little more love. Candy and Sarah, Candy crushed it on her first first ever story. Great feedback. I feel myself reading too fast. <laughs> and I was like, slow down. And then my body was like, oh, yeah. yeah. No, everybody, yeah. yeah, you did great. You both are awesome. All right. So now to read the next story is. Beer today himself. Beer today, yes. Beer today, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Dusty's Dusty's awesome brother-in-law James is going to read a story, and then I think Sarah's probably going to jump up here and and give a little feedback with this one when he gets done reading it. So, yeah. Thanks for hanging in, chat. We're at nine hours forty-nine minutes, so we're closing in on hour ten. Doing great. It's nice to have the uh, the clock right here, right? So you can count down your impending nice. doom. I'm like, oh, it's only 9.40. Oh, it's, it's 9. <laughs> yes, it's Timu Dusty. Thank you. That's what I am. All right, we're going to read some stuff here. Um, forgive me, I am not nearly as soothing and as pretty as Dustin, but let's see. Title of the story today. Am I the astronaut for disrupting my mother-in-law's sleep while she was staying with us and refused to change our sleeping arrangements? Uh, you got to protect that sleep, but let's see where this goes here. My mother-in-law, Jane, 59, came to visit us a couple days ago. We couldn't make it to their house for Christmas, so she decided to spend a few days with us to catch up. For context, I, 34 female, take calls quite often. A day when I'm on call includes my phone ringing at a pretty late hour and me having long conversations over the phone. I mean, that generally... You got to take phone calls. I, yeah, we live that. We work from home. I often have to get dressed and leave so it can be pretty loud. So like a responsible adult. All right, we got that. I don't want to disturb my wife, Bella, 33 female, or our kids, three and five-year-old girls. Do not disturb the small children in the middle of the night. No, that's a, that's a hard no. All right, so we've got our systems. We've got ourselves a system. So for days when I'm on call, I'll go sleep in my reading room downstairs. It's basically a room with my textbooks, journals, desk, and a bed. Our bedroom and the kids sleep. Our bedroom and the kids' rooms are upstairs. Okay, basement, upstairs, office, got it. This way, I won't disturb anyone, and sometimes I even catch up on some work. For the day she was with us, Jane was staying in our guest room close to my reading room downstairs. I was on a call and answered the phone through the night as usual. I had to leave the house around 3 a.m. All right, so we're in the middle of the night. Next day when I came home, Jane was very annoyed with me and said she had heard me throughout the whole night, had heard me talk and pace around the room like a mad woman and heard me get to the car. She said she almost did not sleep at all. Bella tried to calm her down, but she was really upset and said Bella herself 
couldn't take be being near me, which is why she banished me downstairs through these days. All right, so now mother-in-law is trying to pit the two of them together. All right. I apologized and said I was sorry. Jane insisted she was never sleeping anywhere near me during the days, my call days ever again, and called it a restless night. I said I would be on call for a few more days while she was staying with us. And unless she had a plan, I would be sleeping downstairs. I don't wish to change the current arrangements and we have that we have mostly because Bella is exhausted as I am and I want her to get as much sleep as she can. Jane said maybe I just need to be more present and support Bella as her wife and mother of our children. Was I the Askanaut? Oh. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Come on. This is this is my wife, uh, Candy's sister. And we do have, Dusty and I are great that we have great in-laws. We don't have mother-in-laws that are trying to create and incite drama. But what do you think about this? Was there was there any kind of concessions that should be made for a guest in the house? No. I mean, so the mother-in-law wanted to have a better sleeping arrangement and wanted him to interrupt the wife's and the kid's sleeping arrangement. You know, and then her comment of being more present and support Bella, you know, and the mother and be sorry, support Bella and the children through the job was the support, right? That's where they make their money, how they pay their bills. That is a support. And they have a schedule. The wife or the mother-in-law was a guest. I don't feel like I feel like the mother-in-law was out of line. Yeah, the, the mother-in-law was out of line. And I mean, if she complained about the lack of sleeping or the un, unintended consequences of what she was getting herself into. That's one thing. It makes mother-in-law like it bumps her up on the Ascon scale because she's trying to incite that little chip away at the relationship. And that's whether she intended or not, she was doing that, trying to make her case. And that's, that's not cool at all. Yeah. Somebody says my house, my schedule, my rules, you know, and hotel room time. My question is, was this the first time that mother-in-law ever stayed with them? So like, did she go come knowing that, this is how it was going to be if he was on call. And, you know, I don't know that it says that she knew that or not. Um, but the fact that the mother-in-law is trying to play them against each other and make him feel like he's not doing a good job and not supporting his family is not cool. Not cool at all. All right. So let's see what chat says here. I say life goes on NTA hotel room time. Get a lot of hotels. Um, I, I think the general consensus is you've come into an established working system. Yep. Don't you you can't dictate your way out of that. You can't complain your way out of that. Um, you are a guest. Kind of be respectful as a guest. So, yes, I, I think we're we're all on board with the. Uh, well, and Jennifer, I get that the maybe the wife was secretly complaining to the mom, but, you know, that's not her place to talk about that. And maybe the wife, if the wife does have that issue, um, they should have that conversation and a good communication will get past that not mother-in-law's place to do that correct and i don't know that she would be complaining because they had a system set up so yeah. at one point this probably was an issue right between been, the and husband what, and wife yeah and that's why the system was set up of you go and sleep downstairs james is very restless at night um and we have a spare bedroom and he knows like if he's restless he goes in the other room because you don't disrupt my sleep yeah you got to be protecting the sleep yeah. and yeah. i mean it's the kids and, and I would even try to be respectful to a guest, but also of I'm not going to expect a guest to not expect me to walk through my house in the middle of the night because I'm going to sleep in my office. Right. So you can be respectful of your guests, but you can't cave. You can't bend your will because someone oh, didn't like your. OP is the woman. So I had it wrong. Sorry. I yeah. thought OP was the husband. So, yeah. Well, so it's it it's it's two women. Oh, OK. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. OK. So, my bad. I missed that part. And as women, they've got the better communication skills, so they've already talked this out. And, and that's why they out. have a system, <laughs> yes. right? That's why they've got the system yeah, they, in they've place. They've got a good so. system in place. So, still, I yep. I'm gonna go with OP is NTA, right? And what, where's what, what mother are we in law? Mola? Are we saying two, three? I'm going to go with three. I don't have the button, uh, so I'm not going to try and push that. You know, I would say three for originally complaining about it, maybe. But when she's trying to she play them against each other, that's almost bumping her to a See, two. What happens if I do that? Am I going to mess it up? I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't know that they did anything. Maybe it. Oh, it changed the colors back there, and that's it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get in so much trouble if I mess this up. 
<laughs> so, so yeah, um, definitely OP and TA, a hundred percent. Perfect. And I think, uh, oh, they, well, I, I'm, I'm seeing some almost ones, but, um, you know, it happens. So, mm. all right. Do we move on to Tony? You'll move on to the next oh, story. You want me to hit another one? Woohoo! I, I'm hitting all the buttons. I, I tried to hit all the buttons, but they didn't work. Mother Law, DEFCON 2. Uh, Thanks, sir. Wow. James and Sarah crushed it. I mean, they crushed it. I mean, that's all there is to say about that. It was great. It was great. Well, how we doing? We're at nine, nine hours, 58 minutes. We're almost to the 10 hour mark, which means we're almost halfway there. So I don't know however you want to look at that. I don't know. Positive, back. negative. Uh oh, he's back. The body, yeah. Yeah. We're just over here trying to figure out what to do with all this food. There's uh, so much food. Dusty woke up to even more food over here. It's a lot. I, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out what all the wet paper is over here. Anybody, anybody got any ideas of what the, uh, what the wet paper on my desk is about? No comment. Um, <laughs> there's don't worry about what happened here because what happened when you're not here didn't really happen. So okay. It's fine. Is that, nothing, nothing happened here. Nothing happened. Uh, yeah, I, I did not sleep. Of course. I, I, I did listen to some, uh, fan white noise and did some meditative breathing and it was as good of a nap for me. So as good as a nap for me. So it worked out well. Got a refresh. Got a refresh. I don't want to know. I heard. I heard about it. Of course, I heard it. Even even with my noise canceling headphones on here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't tell them. We saw nothing. Candy is innocent. Yeah. They chat saw nothing. They know nothing about how my desk is all wet. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows anything about anything. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, also, uh, Tony's still got his sticky Q and A notes over here. It's uh it's the booby trap worked. Yes. Okay. Yes. But but he was trying to sleep, and I knocked down two metal metal water cups, and then those two metal water cups hit this giant timer. I think you guys have seen on the behind the scenes camera. Yeah, I had to shed my jacket because I was hot. I got sweaty. Um, Pretty much everything in this whole area. Yeah, it all fell over, and then the water started pouring out onto the desk. But I kept reading. <laughs> I only, I only had my face like contorted for just a minute, and then I kept reading. Got I it. kept going, guys. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> the show must go on, Mary. Yeah, I didn't even pay attention to the cleaning. People have sent. <laughs> did you sit your elbow on my desk? She's got a problem with that corner of that desk. It's what is be. happening? Oh, I know you're a one woman wrecking ball. She's the only person that I know that could be standing in the middle of an open field, not moving and still be injured somehow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm always incriminated. Uh, they did an amazing job. Also. Uh, so, so candy thunder beer today and Sarah, thank you guys so much for, for coming up here and holding down the floor for a little while. Greatly appreciated. Also, we've received pizza. We've received crumble cookie. We've received uh, a, a target run. We've received blizzards. We've received so much cool stuff from you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Francis, Dusty, I cannot believe you trap candy like this and put all that stuff up there. It was a trap. It was a test. Uh, yeah. yeah and <laughs> oh man oh yeah so sergeant mac ellen's the same way uh yeah i i believe it i believe it caden thunder just walked in as well what's up caden thunder hey all uh yeah thanks thanks so much for for being supportive of everybody and, and allowing me to get a little bit of respite in um it, it was a good meditation session i cleared my brain my brain cleared my brain out just right so i'm ready to go for another another 10 hours now right Heck yeah. Um, I've got my, my throat cooling hot tea here. I'm set, man. I'm good. And of course, another round of Jot Coffee's rocking here, which, by the way, you can save 20% with the code Dusty20 at Jot.co. That's how I survive. Legitimately, how I survive. Okay, so uh, hey, uh, go ahead and go to six. Box, okay, gotcha. Box six. I didn't know if I needed to punch back in on the uh, TikTok side. We're or? moving on. We're moving on to block six. It's YouTube. Block seven is the 
um, next TikTok one. So two more hours on just YouTube. <clears throat> wow, I don't know what's happening there. Um, two hours on just YouTube, and then at 10 p.m. Central, we'll go to uh, TikTok and YouTube. So gotcha. Block six coming up. I and we were... uh, Caden Thunder's here. So gotcha. Heck yeah. All right, we're rocking and rolling now. We're do what? Mike Quick is here. Heck yeah. Nice. What's up, Mike Quick? Heck yeah. Um, let's go ahead and jump over to uh, our jump, diving into our love. We've completed 10 hours and two minutes so far. Here we go. Rocking. Starting the next content block here. This is block six. Diving into hours 11 and 12 here. Holy crap. Welcome to hour 11. We made it and somehow we're still here. We haven't lost our shit just yet. Thank you to everyone who's been following along with this journey to this point. Let us know in chat how long you've been with us. How long? How long have you been? Uh, how long have you been hanging out with us today? We do have a goal, of course, of 10K new YouTube subscribers currently at, I don't know. Uh, so if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube side, which is just like following on TikTok, it doesn't cost anything. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're liking and sharing the stream as well. I greatly appreciate it. Remember to be kind in chat. We have a great group of mods who are going to be monitoring, but we're going to have guests coming on. Make sure you're kind to them. You guys do a great job. We appreciate it. And the mods are on top of everything. So thank you so much for, for being here, being supportive and helping us through this crazy freaking mission. We're crazy. That's all there is to it. We have such a great support network. You guys are amazing. The folks that we have coming in, jumping in and doing guest readings and stuff with us, freaking amazing. Like this community is just nuts. Just the in the best possible way. And seriously, like so much love. So much love for you guys, for everybody who jumps in and helps us out here. We have a great, great, great community. This community that we have is unbeatable. I, I'm serious. This is what sets us apart from every other creator community out there, every other creator out there. This community that we have, both internally and externally, is just wild. I, I'm blown away by it. Boggled. I am buckled. Hope you enjoyed your time with Beer Today, with, with Sarah, with Candy Thunder. Candy Thunder just said she just she just figured out why Tony did this. It's so he could get overtime. <laughs> He's like, oh, you caught me. You caught me. You got Don Banks. Thanks so much for the love there with the super on YouTube. Greatly appreciate it. And and also, guys, you're sending uh guys are sending all kinds. I know Elise sent some stuff over. Uh God, pizza was great. Um, do you know who all who else sent everything else? If somebody's keeping track of who sent what, punch it and let me know because I, I'm not sure. But you guys are amazing. Freaking pizza, freaking crumble cookie. We got Blizzard sent. We got all kinds of stuff. It's just nuts. You guys are awesome. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreci appreciate it. The graphic makes it look like I'm spitting. <laughs> ah! You just go like that. It's going to be amazing. Uh, hey, uh, also, we're going to continue with James and Sarah here in a bit, and Caden Thunder is going to join in and give us uh, a story reading and give us some uh, some updates on The Bachelor, of course, because we wouldn't know what's going on. Elise, the Starbucks gift card and cake. Hell yes. Oh, Ellen and Sergeant Max sending the, uh, sending the target order with the Diet Coke and some adult Lunchables and stuff. You guys are amazing. Greatly appreciated. The pizza was great, too. You guys are keeping us alive here. So much love. So much love. Heck yeah. Hey, fish sticks. Good to see you there. You want more candy too, Samantha? Hey, I think she's going to be up here in a little bit. Lone Star Angel with the DoorDash gift card. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. You guys are awesome. Nick Gurr, happy birthday. Happy gosh heckin' birthday. Diana with the blizzards. Hell yes. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, Angel. Yeah, we got your t shirts too. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Was it Nick? Oh, yeah. Way to go, ass hat. <laughs> Why? Chanel, happy birthday to you. Happy God checking birthday. How many still here from the beginning, bread ass? Nick. Nick. It was a, it was a name, and yeah, it's somebody who's trying to trick us. So that's gonna. 
That's going to be a ban. It was Nick. Couldn't find me on TikTok? Janae? Oh, well, the live isn't on there right now. We're going back live 10 p.m. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Heck yeah. So many people here since the beginning. Uh, you're all just as crazy as we are, which is fantastic. That's a lovely thing. Got to get the music pumping us up a little bit. We're going to dive into some stories here. Since the beginning, Coral from the beginning, heck yeah. Tracy from the boring London. I would like to be the judge of that myself. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to go visit, and then I'll tell you if I think it's boring or not. Candy. Lemon, heck yeah. Switching back and forth, Southern Country. Penny, heck yes. Uh, Anti-Symmetry, thank you so much. Best day of the year, Thunder fam. You guys are the best. Thank you for sacrificing your sleep and sanity for us. Much love. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Joe, here for the star. Uh, to be fair, it's the daytime in Australia. Heck, I, I understand. Uh, Brett, get you through the work day. Heck yes, that's awesome. Brenda, on and off because of work, of course. Understandable. Clay, Bridget, Compose, Joss VP, switching back and forth. Heck yes. Michelle Heather, you are amazing. Thank you so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. All this time. All the time. Uh, Jen, I agree. Uh, unfortunately, those competing platforms don't get along. But you know what? If you could create some kind of some kind of external third party that you know, like like a one pass at all and tied it together, that would be amazing. That would be very, very cool. Karina, it's your baby's first birthday. Happy gosh and birthday to your bebe. To your bebe. That is amazing. Since the beginning, a lot of people since the beginning. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So the music that we're playing is actually music that we have um, we have rights to from a music library that we subscribe to. So I don't think we can play any actual artists. Not not that these people aren't actual artists. Any, you know what I mean? Any non non library artist here. Nico Rose, that is amazing. Our videos calm your son's tantrums. How old is your son? I, I, we hear so much of this about about people using our content for for calming therapeutic purposes, and I'm just I'm not a calm person. I don't think so. That that uh, how does the clouds and lightning skull? Ooh, ooh, yes, heck yeah, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Compose, subscribe. Heck yes. Heck yeah. Your birthday was the 22nd, Shelby. Happy gosh, I can birthday to you. Mine was the 10th. It's all these rules. All these rules, my quick. <laughs> it's so constrictive. <laughs> Heidi, these videos call me your tantrums. That's amazing. So, Matthew, you put a month worth of Spotify compilations in a list and listen overnight. That's amazing. Hey, Pirate Pops Cole. Good to see you. The voice. Hey, yo. Chanel, uh, music is, is part of this scene that I have set up, and it's from Soundstripe. Not that Ellen, how are we doing on the on our sub list here or sub sub goal? I think it's a slow moving old tra- a slow moving train, but we're good. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. You know, we're in it to win it, right? We're in this no matter what. We're gonna make it the distance. We're going the distance. And hey, uh, one more, a quick shout out to all our mods who hey. have been hanging in with us all day. They've been doing a great job. The spammers keep keep trying to hop and chat, and the mods are mods are on top of it. Yeah, uh, and and um, there was a question about Queen Rocks about the bingo. You think you're doing it wrong? Is it by the hour or platform? Uh, it's like that bingo card covers the whole stream, so it just you cumulatively mark stuff out as you go. Uh, Dana with us for seven months back again. Heck yes, glad to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, so happy there are 898 people on here, Sydney. Heck yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Greatly appreciate it. Mods, you are all amazing. Thank you so, so much for being here. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Watch all the videos on double speed and now everything sounds slow-mo and live. Oh. Never thought about people watching at double speed. Do what? Yeah. I mean, there are like educational training videos. I'll watch at one and a half speeds. And I know that's pretty common, but double. I wonder what I sound like on double. That's got to be nuts. I'm going to have to test it out now. 
Let's test it out. Let's test it out. All right, let's dive back into the story, shall we? Story number one here is from the AITA subreddit, and it is titled, Am I the astronaut for making my daughter miss out on a camping trip? I co-parent my eight-year-old daughter, H, with my ex-38 female. My ex has always been a bit of a helicopter parent with a tendency to be controlling, which is a large part of why we broke up. She has continually been making decisions about her kid's future without consulting me, like booking her for surgery or telling H where she's going to high school, even though we haven't talked about that yet. We've tried me- we've tried mediation. I thought it said medication. We've tried mediation, but anytime I don't agree with one of her decisions, we end up right back in a nasty argument. It's not really mediation, then. Or your mediator is not doing a very good job. The latest debacle happened in the lead up to H's birthday. Her mom likes to throw H big themed parties, which I'm grateful for, as it's a lot of effort and H seems to love them. She had planned it for Saturday afternoon and asked if H could be dropped off earlier that day. I had planned on having a little party with my family on Saturday, but was happy to move this a week earlier to accommodate. A few days later, she asks if the weekend after she can have her on Friday to go camping for the long weekend with her partner and stepkids. I didn't want to give up our whole weekend together when I figured they could just go camping a day later than they originally planned and still have two nights away. They were camping about two hours drive away, which is not particularly far where we live. Originally, my ex was going to let her partner and kids go on Friday and then pick up H and take her to go meet them, but later decided that she was going to go on Friday and could drop H down to her at least meet her halfway. Here's where I think I might be the astronaut because I said I didn't want to drive over an hour out of my way but was happy to do normal drop off or my ex could pick her up. My ex got mad at me and then said I might as well keep H the whole weekend because she wouldn't be able to pick her up. I said I was happy to have H for the extra time if she needed it. Cut to today, H's 8th birthday. My ex asked me not to say anything about H missing out on a camping trip because she would be upset. I wouldn't have anyway, but especially especially not on her birthday. My partner and I took H out to dinner before dropping her back at her mom's. She said it was her best birthday yet. Just after bedtime, I get a text from my ex telling me how upset H is about missing the camping and how she's sobbing, asking why she asking what she can do to change your mind. I feel like my ex has made it out to H that it's all my fault and that she's not getting to go camping, even though her mom could have waited an extra day for her or come to pick her up on Saturday afternoon. I generally consider my ex to be a good mom, even if she doesn't treat me all that well. But ruining your kid's birthday to manipulate her emotions and to win an argument seems like a movie seems like movie villain shit to me. Am I the ass cannot? Oh, man. Using kids is never okay. We don't know for sure that's what happened here. It's painted. It's painted by OP here as if mom intentionally weaponized the daughter and told her about the camping trip, then told her it was all dad's fault. We don't know that that's the case. She could have heard it from one of the other kids. She could have overheard something. She could have seen camping gear packed up, right? It could have. It could be a number of things here. Now, um, now, generally in in parenting plan agreements, I don't know how it is internationally, but but when exchanges happen, it is the parent who is who is receiving the child that normally does pick up at at parent A's location. So parent B, the receiving parent, would go to parent A's residence or wherever and do the pickup there. So so offering to meet uh, or asking to meet halfway is asking somebody to do an hour's worth of driving that they wouldn't normally have to do. Again, I don't know how this works internationally. That's just like baseline standard in my understanding. Um, now, I get not wanting to do that, but also I feel like in my position, we would have done that. And we meet halfway a lot. Oh, well, yeah, we meet halfway. You know, Ava Thunder's dad lives in KC and we meet halfway all the time. It's just the reasonable thing to do. And in this case, I think OP... If you had agreed to make that one hour drive, which is not that big of a deal, it would have led to a more memorable, enjoyable experience for your daughter. And that's where I think you went wrong. You just didn't want to do it because you didn't want to be inconvenienced. But what's the flip side of that? What's the cost involved? What's the cost involved for your daughter? Yeah, it sucks. Mom could have waited, too. So you guys kind of both suck for this because you could have done things differently, maybe to varying different degrees. It wouldn't end up being a two hour round trip for OP. Sure. Um, Sure. But two hours. Is not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal to provide your daughter with with a more memorable experience here. Um, I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think there's enough evidence here, or there's enough of a point here. There's a, enough justification for OP to be like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. There's a difference between can't and don't want to, right? And I understand it would have cost two hours, but 
it's two hours that would be worth it. Um, there's no conflicting event. There's no there's no real reason other than not wanting to do it to not do it. Now, per their agreement, whatever that is, it may be on on mom to come pick her up from there. And if that's the case, I would just say, hey, look, this is the way it's supposed to go down. Just do that. Um, and or could have left a day later. So mom sucks there, too. I do think it's an ESH. I think it's an everybody sucks here. I think it is. Uh, and, and unfortunately, sometimes it comes down to that. That I don't feel like has has a good enough reason to not do it other than just not wanting to. And mom doesn't have a good enough reason for not waiting or not coming to pick her up. So they both could have done things differently and maybe should have done things differently. But at minimum, they're both a four here because they both could have done things differently. It's an ESH. The poor kid is the one who suffers. Right. While you two are bickering back and forth and and maybe it's pride. Maybe maybe it's it's a, a power struggle. Maybe whatever the hell it is. It is one parent not wanting to do something because they just don't want to do it. And the other parent not wanting to do something because they just don't want to do it. That sucks. The kid loses. Now, weaponizing her, if that's what really happened, where where she gets home and mom is like, oh, well, you can't go on the camping trip because your dad doesn't want to drive. Well, it's also because mom didn't want to wait. I think if they are going to spill some information like that, they need to spill the whole story. Now, OP, dad, you cannot... Whenever she comes back to you, you can't be like, oh, I bet your mom said this. Well, guess what? Here's here's what your mom did, because then you're in the same boat, man. You're in the same boat. I think you have to take your ego and your pride out of the equation here and think about what's best for your kid. Right. It doesn't matter. Like Your pride does not matter here. It is what is what is best for your child. Look at it that way. And would you answer differently? Would you answer it differently? <clears throat> Tracy, we did. We did. We did hear. Uh, we did hear from YouTube on what's causing the the price inflation on some different things. If you subscribe on mobile, uh, then your your payment routing actually goes through like your mobile provider, like uh, like a like um, Google Pay or Apple Pay or something like that, too. So so if you subscribe on a desktop. You won't have that inflated rate. It's it's like double dipping on Google's end if it is a Google Pay kind of thing. But they find somebody finally answered us after like ten rounds with support and finally made some sense. And it was essentially that when you use mobile and you're they're routing you through another payment provider, which is which is inflating the price there. So uh, if you have the nine ninety nine one right now, when it's up for renewal, I would cancel it and I would go uh, start a fresh subscription on a desktop computer or go straight to the website instead of using the app. And it, even going through the website on a phone may route you through the same kind of payment thing. I would do it from a computer if at all possible. And then you'll get to enjoy the same benefits on mobile, but you won't have that inflated price. It's stupid. Yeah, you save three bucks a month. I mean, it's 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 silly. And that three bucks a month doesn't benefit us at all. It's just going straight to, you know, whatever the payment portal is. Uh, Gwendolyn, you drive an hour just to go out to eat. Yeah, it's uh, it's not that big of a deal. And when you look at the grand scheme of things, if two hours total cost to you, OP, is worth increasing the happiness of your child's life. What kind of price do you put on that? What do you what do you put on that? Jennifer, you may not be routing through that kind of payment portal. It may not be doing that for you. And it may be when you check out, too. So I don't know. You can set the site to desktop version. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, so it's same with your YouTube premium fee, TikTok coin fees, most things you pay with uh, Google Pay or a- Apple App Store for. And maybe that's it. Maybe you can still use mobile, but not uh, if you don't use Google Pay or Apple Pay or something like that. That's the first thing they told us that makes sense. Nothing else made sense. So, yeah. Jen, thank you for still doing it. I appreciate it. Um yeah, if it's defaulting to a, a payment provider, it's probably inflating it. At least that's what they told us. I don't know if that's true, but it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, I think this is an, an ESH, and it's probably four and above here, which sucks. It sucks for the kid. The kid's who loses, right? Ultimately. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dive into our second story here. Sergeant Mack, yeah, here in Texas, that hour drive is nothing. Oh, gotcha. Hi, Tater. Hi. How you doing? I didn't get to witness you reading your first story, but I'm going to have to go back and watch it at some point here. I just, we just went back and rewatched when I knocked over your cups. We got to clip that out. It was this. That's a highlight. Knocking everything over is a highlight for sure. It's just a normal day in the Calamity Jane. Oh, gosh. 
yeah, it's got to be an app store thing. I mean, there's there's nothing that we control for sure. Um, and Beth it was six ninety nine on mobile for you. Do you not do you use Apple Pay or is it just like a direct pay? See, Vicky, yours is six ninety nine with Google Pay. With Google Pay, I, I don't know. I, nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. And that was the first thing they told us that sort of made sense, but but we have no control over it. Over it, and I know for sure you might go to. If you have the 999, you might use like an incognito browser and see if it shows up differently for you from a different device, like a desktop, and see if that works. Right. Google Pay and Apple Pay are not the same as Google and Apple App Stores. If you're using it through the app, that may be one thing. If you're going through a, a browser, that may be a different thing. Yep. They, I mean, they, they tried to say it was location. I'm like, no, all the people we're getting reports from are in the U.S. It's not a location thing. Um, there you go. Angel sending a super through says, we love you, Candy Thunder. All caps. We love you, Candy Thunder. She walked back to the back. Um, yeah, let me jump up and see if we can find it here real quick. Is there any reason to subscribe to both YouTube and TikTok? Those two give you very different things. The one shared thing that they give you is access to the Facebook VIP group. So if you're if you're subscribed to one or the other, you have access to the Facebook VIP group. What the TikTok VIP group gives you um, is access to the VIP lives. You've got some custom emotes there. You have the ability to DM with us on the YouTube side. It gives you access to a whole slew of exclusive content. We do uh, about an hour worth of exclusive content per week. It's a little bit different now. Um, we do a, a monthly member exclusive live as well. So it's exclusive content on one side. They also have access to uh, to the Sunday or Monday night lives. It's members only after after that live finishes. And this live um, afterwards will be members only at least for a while. So uh, you do get different things. Uh, Cassandra Balsis, the Facebook group is if you just if you just search Dusty Thunder VIP group on Facebook, you'll find that group. Just make sure you ask the question or answer the questions in the question air through there brett you did yours through google play store man i don't know it's it's wild yeah you don't have to join both to get access to the vip group but you do get you get different things which subscription is more beneficial for us i do not know the answer to that i honestly don't they are pretty similar um yeah they're pretty similar uh, the youtube side might actually take less percentage out for us tiktok is pretty money hungry uh, we make a smaller cut there uh, and that goes generally. Um, one of the reasons that we're trying to beef up the YouTube side of things is that, you know, what what we make on the monetization side is pretty equal between YouTube and TikTok. But look at how many followers we have on TikTok versus YouTube. Right. So YouTube is is much more profitable and worth the time and effort. We also have a lot more content on there, though. So, yeah. Uh, I like them both. I think, uh, yeah, YouTube, if you're into the content, if you want more content, YouTube would be the way to go. YouTube membership. Hey, Cassandra, I love it. Say, gosh, I really think I want both. Haha, you're more entertaining than Netflix, HBO, and Hulu combined. Yes. Rock it out. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to dive into our next story here, and I believe Caden Thunder is going to give some feedback on this one. Can we get some feedback? Feedback. Here we go. All right. Title of this one is Am I the Askonaut for Not Paying for My Brother's Friend's Dinner? And it is from the AITA subreddit. Tony Spark, quit jacking with the document right. while I'm reading it, bro. <laughs> well, you were trying to type in chat, weren't you? I was trying to type. To That's the Mike. at Mike. <laughs> it pops up here. Okay, here we go. Weeks ago, I went with my more affluent brother to a university trivity night. Trivity where I'm at. Weeks ago, I went with my more affluent brother to a university trivia night. He's a great guy. Hey, Caden Thunder. <laughs> you, you're, you're messing with the document I'm actively reading, bro. <laughs> Here we go. Weeks ago, I went with my more affluent brother to a university trivi trivia night. He's a great guy, as when we go out to eat in general, he always pays for me because he knows that I have so little money. Is that what makes him a great guy? We met up with a friend of his at 5.30 p.m. When the bill came, as my brother Bill was going to pick up the tab for both of us, his friend made a generous gesture and paid the entire bill for all three with, for all three of us. He said to Bill, you can pay next time. 
We then headed into the room to start trivia night at 7 p.m. for the next two hours. At the next trivia evening, my brother was at a conference in Lethbridge. Now, his friend comes into Edmonton from Westlock, which almost takes two hours. He asked that even though Bill was not there, could we still meet for dinner as before, just the two of us? I wanted to say no, but coming in from such a long way, I thought that it only made sense to do it. I looked at the menu online, and the cheapest thing was a $7 soup. I ordered that with water. When I had a private moment with the server, I gave her a $10 bill and told her to keep the change. In my mind, I know that going to the Bottle Depot Recycling Center the next day could probably cover it. Other team members eventually joined us, and during play, everyone ordered their own stuff. When when the game was over and the server was collecting money, David looked at me and said, So you're paying for me, right? Because I paid last time. I said I already paid the server in advance. She was there and confirmed it. But if he wanted, I could pay for his dinner and drinks with my credit card. I have to admit, I was shocked that he asked me. No, he doesn't know that I have no money, but still, did I mention he's a lawyer? He gave me the dirtiest look and grumbled as he took out his wallet. Am I wrong on this? Ah, that's interesting. Uh, you know what? We're going to get Caden Thun- Thunder up here. Before I give my thoughts, I want to get Caden's thoughts here because it's interesting, right? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get him up here for the first appearance of the evening here. Ladies and gentlemen, Caden! All right, so how's everybody? How's everybody holding up? It's getting pretty late. Home stretch. Getting pretty dusty. This story is uh, usually when when me and my friends are trying to decide how we're going to split a bill or something like that, we each take the end of a fork and we all pull it. And whoever pulls the biggest half of the fork has to pay the bill. Yeah, when you pull the fork in half, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I don't think he's I don't think he's in the wrong at all for I don't know. I don't think he's in the wrong. Me personally, I don't think that he is an astronaut in this situation because yeah, uh, they I mean, he was like when he was with his brother, they were like, "Yeah, we'll we'll get it next time," but he didn't say he'd get it next time. And also, I mean, that guy can, you can't really make somebody pay your bill. Like, even if it was implied previously that you were going to do it, it wasn't impri- implied that he was going to do it. It was implied that his brother was going to do it. But either way, you're not the ask not for something you never promised you'd actually do. In my opinion, with my, my Caden ethics, it's not, you're not. An asshole. The Caden ethics. It's a very, very Caden, official term. There. Caden didn't read yet, but he's giving feedback. <laughs> Me thinks he is not the ass cannot. La la la. You think that was a setup? I don't think it was. I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I need, I need to know more about this lawyer guy. You know, like what kind of lawyer is he? He's like a Matt Murdock or like a Saul Goodman. What are we talking? That's true. It does make a difference. Mm-hmm. Your honor. <laughs> Your honor. Uh, I wish I had a gavel. I could. You guys don't do the fork thing, though? Where each, each of your friends grab part of a fork and whoever pulls the biggest half of the fork I'm, has I'm to pay never, the bill? Never heard of this. You know? You don't pull the fork in half? <laughs> I've never heard of the fork. The fork thing. So it's whoever has the better grip? Well, pays? no, it's whoever pulls the fork in half. The biggest half of the fork. Huh? A spork? No, no, no. A fork. Whoever you 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 all hold part of the fork, and whoever pulls the biggest half of the fork, because you're pulling the fork apart, has to pay the bill. Yeah, if it's metal. What the hell is <laughs> happening here? Like what? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why everybody's lost on it. <laughs> so you shred a metal fork at dinner? Yeah. We bring our own. We don't use the restaurants. I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling. I'm calling bullshit here. Well, you need a visual aid. Next time you do it, film it. That's content, bro. That is. Yeah. That is content. Uh, whoever whoever loses gets forked. It's called right? the great forking. <laughs> whoever loses get gets forked. That's for gets sure. forked. 
You done got forked. Forked. Yep. Yep. That's my that's my two cents. And my fork half. <laughs> All right. Well. I'm forky. See. I'm trash. Hey, you're not going to. I'm, I'm trash. Oh, he's reading I, here. Let me. I let didn't me, know I was reading now. Let, yeah, he's gonna. He, Caden Thunder's gonna read our next story. But before that, I, w- I want to give a little bit of feedback here too. A lot of mentions about communication could have solved this. Agreed. Uh, th- there was there was on OP's part fear, right? Uh, I mean, fear about not being able to afford things caused him to 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 act in a way that he might not have usually. He looked at the menu ahead of time, decided what the cheapest thing was, paid ahead of time, did it discreetly. But by doing so, kind of kind of cowardly got into this awkward position, right? That communication could have solved. Whenever this guy showed up in the first place, or even before this guy showed up and asked if they could still meet for dinner, saying right then, look, I'm broke. Um, you know, I, I can't afford to pick up the tab. Do you still want to meet? That would have awarded this from the get go, or at least let him know that uh, that he'd be he'd be on his own. You guys were going Dutch to this thing, or he might have even offered to pay yours and you wouldn't have had su- had to have soup and a water. So that uh, that would have been <laughs> Caden's forking hilarious. Yeah, there you go. Angel, thanks for the love there. Tracy, welcome to the Thunder Crew. Glad to have you. Uh, yeah, well, he's got to film this next time he goes out and does it because I need some proof here too. Um, I, I think that communication definitely could have solved this and OP maybe has has learned a valuable lesson here. I don't know how old OP is. Uh, this kind of sounds like an age thing too, though. Um, he went with his older brother, so I, I just don't know how, how, how young this guy is. It could be an experience thing. Uh, the friend being a, an attorney I, probably has no bearing on on anything in the conversation. I mean, OP's using it to say he's got money. Um, doesn't really matter when it comes to this. But also, yeah, the conversation ahead of time was was the attorney friend talking to OP's brother, not OP. And I would have clarified that in OP's position in the first place, too, and been like, yo, uh, you had that deal with my brother. I'm the broke brother. So. Um, I, you know, I plan on paying my own way and eating the cheapest stuff I can find. Um, are you cool covering your own bill ahead of time? Um, because he knew it was a possibility. That's why he talked to the server off to the side because he was embarrassed about it. And I understand that embarrassment led him to not want to talk about it because it was an awkward situation. But look at this. Look at in this kind of scenario. You just choose which awkward situation you want. It is either going to be you have an awkward situation where where you have that pre conversation and at least you guys have an understanding going into it and then throughout the dinner or you have the awkward situation that you had. And that is at the end of this, you get the bill and you're like, oh, no, I'm a blah, 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 blah. I, personally, I would rather get the awkwardness out of the way up front because then you can relax and actually enjoy yourself rather than being scared about what's going to happen this whole time. Um, and I think it's a life lesson. I think that's something you learn as you get older here. Um, if you're just joining in, if you're just joining in, yeah, we're reading stories from Reddit and other sources. Some followers submitted stories here and we're giving some feedback on them. And this is a 24 hour stream. We are 10 hours and 35 minutes into this 24 hour stream because we're just batshit crazy. Uh, so we're having a good time. Hope you hang out with us for a bit. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Fairy Gothman, thank you guys. Thank you so much for the uh, for the super over there. Your first one for the stream here. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This could be a communication thing that uh, that solved it. So the question was, am I the astronaut for not paying for my brother's friend's dinner? No, you're not the astronaut for that. Um, well, you know, I think you could have done this differently. You may you may technically excuse me. You're not an asshole for it. You may still be on the scale, though. Because I think you could have approached this differently. You still might have might have ended up, ended up not paying for him, but I think you could have approached this whole thing differently and avoided a lot of pain for everybody, especially yourself. And I think it's one of the wisdom things you learn as you grow up is that you you understand that if you hit these awkward scenarios head on, it's just a matter of when that awkward moment is going to hit. I'd rather eat my frog, get it over with, so I can enjoy the rest of the night instead of letting letting the the event horizon of awkwardness ruin everything before it coral welcome to the thunder crew heck yeah glad to have you here fork off hey okay. wait a minute that wasn't okay. very nice Dusty. there was just... uh-oh what did i miss there was a candy moment oh we had a candy moment <laughs> we're going goes, bts you know candy. it's like the it's like the the what is it the raccoon 
on February 2nd that determines the weather. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that sees its shadow. I can't. I can't. <laughs> and I was like, um, the, the, she goes, oh, ground hog. That's what it candy, is. Candy Thunder in there as well. Uh, the raccoon on February 2nd that determines the weather. The raccoon on February 2nd that determines the weather. That's awesome. Well, why is it a groundhog? Why, why is it a, a groundhog? groundhog? I mean, it's 2024. Let's not discriminate. <laughs> if a raccoon eats trash on February 2nd, <laughs> six more weeks of trash. Oh my God, there's a raccoon emoji. There is a raccoon emoji? That is amazing. Well, that is amazing. Okay. The magic weather raccoon. Yes. All right. So, uh, to read this next story, we're going to bring Caden Thunder up. He's going to read the full story. And uh, I'll jump up and give some some feedback and help give some feedback afterwards. But then we're going to get a Caden Thunder Q&A and a Bachelor update. Hey, oh, ladies and gentlemen, Caden Thunder's story reading time begins right meow. Meow. High five. I hope you guys are ready for this. It's going to be a bumpy ride. All right. Who's ready? Who's ready to get rocking and reading on this story? All right, everybody ready? Here we go. Am I the astronaut for refusing to lend my brother money after he insulted my career choice? I'm 38 male, and I've been running my own landscaping business for about 10 years now. It's not everyone's dream, but I love it, and it's done well for me. My brother, 36 male, let's call him Derek, went a more traditional route, a corporate job, the whole nine yards. We've had our differences, but nothing major until recently. So, Derek hit a rough patch financially. Not going into details, but it was a mix of bad luck and worse decisions. He came to me asking to borrow a pretty significant sum of money. I was leaning towards helping him out. Family's family, right? But then we got into an argument a few days before he asked for... Wait, but then we got into this argument a few days before he asked for the money. He made some snide remarks about my job calling it menial and something teenagers do for summer pocket money. Not a real career for grown man? That's not nice. It stung because I've worked hard to build my business from the ground up, and I'm proud of what I've achieved. When he asked for the loan, I couldn't shake off what he said. Man. I told him I wasn't going to lend him the money, partly because of his financial irresponsibility, but also because I didn't appreciate his disrespect towards my career and hard work. He called me petty and said I was letting personal feelings get in the way of helping the family in need. Our parents think I should just let it go and help him out, saying, that's what families do. But I'm standing firm on this. It's not just about money. It's about principle. I feel like if I give in, it sends a message that he can just walk all over me and my choices without any consequences. So... Am I the astronaut for refusing to lend my brother money after he insulted my career choice? What are we thinking? What are we thinking, chat? What's everybody uh what's everybody feeling on this one? How are we doing? How are we doing? Oh, you know. A wise, a wise man once told me, never bite the horse that feeds you. And I stand by that. You should never, you, if, if you want, I don't think, maybe it's never bite the hand that feeds you. Not the horse. <laughs> okay. Let's backtrack. It's not never bite the horse that feeds you. Although you shouldn't bite the horse either. We're getting stuck on this horse thing. Don't bite the hand. Bite the hand. So if, 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 if you're going to be asking someone for money, you can't go dissing them 
like a couple seconds before you're like you're you're like <laughs> hey i don't have any money also your job sucks and it's for losers but you have more money than me can i have some no why not because you were just a asshole to me well i that's you're being too emotional well that well yeah no so yeah no i don't know how the horse is feeding me guys i don't know where i was going with that don't bite. i just don't bite the horse i don't don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Maybe I got that mixed up with don't bite the horse that feeds you. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I just... I mean, if a horse was feeding me, I wouldn't want to bite it either. So... Oh, yeah, but anyways... um, I I don't think that... The parent, I think the parents are, are wrong too because, like, he he's right. It's about the principal. If you just let it go and just give him the money anyways, then he's going to know that he can talk to you however he wants and say whatever he wants and he's still going to get the money. It's like, it's like letting a dog pee on your shoes. If you don't get onto the dog for peeing on your shoes, then he's going to keep peeing on your shoes because he thinks that's where he can pee. Your brother can't pee all over you. You have to stop your brother from peeing all over you. You can't let him do that. You guys know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? Yeah, so parents, not cool. Brother, also not cool. I'm thinking he's definitely an astronaut. Um, the OP, not an astronaut. He's NCA, but the brother, I don't know. Well, what astronaut ranking would you give the brother for? And thank you, anti-symmetry for, uh, <laughs> and Kelsey Nicole for, and, and Danny Londo Ford. I was missing it. I'm sorry guys, but thank you guys so much for the, um, uh, just, you guys are awesome. You guys rock. Thank you for. Okay. Thank you for the supers and for uh, Sam. Sam. You guys rock. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have I have my fair share of candyisms too. Yeah, don't bite the horse that feeds you. Amber, thank you so much. You guys are rocking it. You guys are doing awesome. Definitely a brozo. Yeah, ask on two, ask on one. Seeing a lot of ones and twos. Oh, you just can't let your brother pee on you. Pee on you? Yeah, it was. You'd have to. You were. You'd have. You had to be there. <laughs> you had to be there. The horse is. I don't know what the horse is doing at this point. It's biting, kicking, peeing, peeing. Something. The horse has gone off the rails. The horse has gone off the rails. The horse is, is off the rails. The horse. He's too giddy. <laughs> nay, nay. <laughs> I say. Yeah. Nay, nay. It's just like, yeah, yeah. It's forking crazy. No, because the peeing thing, because if you if you let your dog pee everywhere on your shoes, then he's going to know that he can pee on your shoes. So you have to, it's the same thing with your brother. If you let your brother diss you and then give him money, he's going to know that he can diss you and you're still going to give him money. So that's why I said you can't let your brother pee on your shoes. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> Don't bite the raccoon that changes the weather, that feeds the weather. Don't bite the raccoon that changes the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have to be. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Monica, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Also, Heather, welcome to the Thunder Crew. You guys are rocking it. No, no peeing on people and no biting horses. That's yeah. what we've learned from this story. Agreed. It's not even. It's not even midnight yet. <laughs> and we're talking about biting horses and peeing on shoes. All right, all right, guys. Oh yeah, bachelor. And update. Oh yeah, here. I'll, you're gonna I'll bounce out for that. I can. We're gonna we're gonna Q and A me and talk about the bachelor too. I can keep talking. You guys like me, right? <laughs> you guys like me? <laughs> I would appreciate it if you did. All right, give us a bachelor update. Oh, what's well, been going on? Can't put me on the spot like that. The bachelor. It's been pretty crazy this season. All right. 
How 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 many of you guys have been watching The Bachelor? I usually don't watch The Bachelor. In fact, I've never watched The Bachelor at all, except for this past season. I, I accidentally watched an episode, and then I decided that I was going to have to watch the entire season, because if I don't watch the entire season, it's going to drive me crazy for the rest of my life. So, I have started watching The Bachelor. I'm going to read the chat real quick. What do you guys, what do you guys think of it? Have you guys been watching it? I love you guys too. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Yeah, it's it's been intense. Um Obviously, I'm team Maria at the moment. That's my <laughs> That's my uh that's who I'm rooting for at the moment. I I feel like Daisy is probably going to be the one to win, but Maria should be the one to win. I'm team Maria all the way. She's funny. She made a Michael Scott joke. It's it's getting I mean that's some brownie yeah, absolutely. It's getting intense. Am I still playing Modern Warfare Three? Yeah, I still play Modern Warfare Three. I've just been I've been rewatching The Office, so I've kind of gotten sucked into just watching shows, and then in a couple months I'll get back into just playing games, and then I'll go back to watching shows. I'm also watching The Strain still. If you guys have ever seen any of that, I'm on the last season. All right. So. All right. Speaking of television. Speaking of television. All right. Here we go. What is your favorite television character? My favorite television character? Yeah. Of all time? Of all time. Uh, uh, that's really hard. That's a really hard question. Um, all time favorite television character? Ah, man. I don't know. Probably. It is a tough one. Uh, my first instinct was to say Michael Scott. <gasps> I think that's a lot of people. My second instinct was to say Dean Winchester. My third instinct was to say SpongeBob. Okay. So. I mean, that's a top three. That's good. That's good. Okay. What is your favorite food? My favorite food? Chat, guess my favorite food. Chat, do you know what Caden's favorite food is? Can you guess it? I don't even know. Who's Dean Winchester? Should it's I from know Supernatural. That? Okay, never seen it. Tony Spark has never seen Supernatural, and he's still not watched Ted either. I know. Beans, beans. There's a lot of beans. Cereal. I haven't seen it okay. yet. Okay. Oh, somebody's got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, got, oh, my God. It, it went too fast for me to read it, but somebody got it. It was chicken. Whoever had chicken, you win. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's chicken. Also, not it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's chicken. Chicken was the winner. <laughs> It was chicken. So, nah, <laughs> not quite, Joseph. Uh, yeah, chicken. Caden, Caden's a big. He loves chicken. Beans are he, a good revenge weapon. Any but. kind of chicken sandwiches. Mike said Herzog beef. I mean, that's a good option too. It's, you know, can't go wrong with a little Herzog beef. Yeah, but chicken. No, he's chicken guy. Yeah, I like chicken. Chick Fil A. All right. If you could meet one celebrity, dead or alive, who would it be? One celebrity, dead or alive. Oh man. Ah. 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 Think about like, hmm. favorite movie person. Favorite movie. Favorite art. Like favorite artist. artist. I think I just want to hang out with Post Malone for a day. Oh, that'd be fun. I feel like he'd be down to earth. That'd be so chill. He'd be super chill. I'd eat a bucket of chicken with Post Malone. I feel like he'd be down for that. Yeah. I feel like you would too. All right. What is your favorite TV show? Oh, man, dude. My favorite TV show changes like every two months. <laughs> I don't know. Um, What's your, so your current, okay, let's do your current favorite. I don't know show. my current favorite. My current favorite TV show is The Boys. Right now, in the past few months, I've really, really been into The Boys. <laughs> Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, no. I would have to watch more than one season of The Bachelor for it to be my favorite, but I'm really. He's currently into it. Post Malone lives in your neighborhood? What? Get him on the chat. <laughs> Next time you see Posty, dap him up for me. <laughs> ah, yeah, The Walking Dead is really good, but I can't say that it's my number one favorite because it didn't stay as good as it was at its best the whole time. After the prison, it went downhill. I, it went back uphill towards the end, but I can't say that it's my favorite. Supernatural, same thing. I can't say that it's my favorite, but it was awesome. I don't know, honestly. Probably 
the office. All right. Who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? Who would I want to play me in a movie about my life? First of all, before I give my answer, who do you guys think could play me in a movie about my life? Although none of you know more details about my life than the fact that I'm Caden Thunder and I'm on this stream right now. Who would you cast as Caden Thunder? I uh, I watched Gen V too. I liked it. And Rick and Morty. I liked that too. Paul Rudd. Somebody says Paul Rudd. Yeah. Justin Long. <laughs> <laughs> Jensen Ackles. He's far too handsome to play me, but I would take it. Who's Jensen Ackles? He's from Supernatural. Okay. Tony Same. Spark. Sorry. <laughs> Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Matt Rife. Jack Ring. Matt Rife. Oh, J- hey, there you go. The Rock. Meryl Streep. I could do that. <laughs> play Meryl. yourself. Ryan Reynolds. The Rock. Tom Holland. Finn Wolfhard. What did I, What did we say earlier when we talked about it? I feel like we said Tom Holland. I might have said Tom Holland. Yeah, Dean Winchester, the dude who I said was my favorite character, was Jensen Ackles. Tobey Maguire. Tom. Clint Eastwood's son, Tom Holland. <laughs> Meryl Streep can play anyone. I mean, that's true. Like Kevin Hart would be fantastic. That would be awesome. Austin Butler. Austin Butler. If he can get out of the Elvis voice. <laughs> Dusty Thunder should play Caden Thunder. <laughs> that would be funny. All right. My, my pick that I had before all of you guys said all that was Paul Rudd. So a lot of you got it right. I think Paul Rudd would do fantastic playing me. He I doesn't think, age. So. I think he could capture my essence. That's right. I think it, it was would, not the essence. I think it would. I think he would do well capturing my essence. I think Austin Powers. Austin Powers. Ryan Reynolds would be cool too. But that's what we said for. Uh, I would cool. honestly love for Seth Rogen to play me in a movie about mm-hmm. me too. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Have I seen all of Supernatural? Yeah, I've seen all of Supernatural. It's. You just gotta watch it. You just, even though season eleven, it takes it, it takes a dip, but it, it gets better, and you just gotta finish it at that point. Like, it's worth it. The guy that plays young John Winchester in the Winchesters, ah, oh, I don't know who that is. I know what you're talking about. I just don't know his his actual name, but that would be cool. Also, I think it would be cool for, I don't know. That was an unfinished thought. I was just going to say it and hope <laughs> I hoped that a name would come to my mouth as I was done saying the sentence, but it didn't. So here we are. Again, how are you not Candy Thunder? Yeah. <laughs> I just watched the Thanksgiving horror movie that came out uh, in 2023 with uh, who's the dude from Grey's Anatomy? Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey. Somebody yeah. suggested that earlier. To play yeah. Too. I watched. I McLovin, watched that thing. That's McLovin. Great. Yes. I love McLovin. <laughs> uh, that's McLovin funny. is fantastic. <laughs> Michael Sarah. I could do that too. Scott Pilgrim. Jamie. What's your favorite color, Caden? My favorite color? Uh orange. Interesting. Why orange? I don't know. I like oranges. You know what? Why aren't why are why is orange juice called orange juice when it's not orange? Why? Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, somebody said Timothy Chalamet, and you, you were not about... You, I feel like you're not a big Timothy Chalamet. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know why people think I hate Timothy Chalamet. I don't hate Tim- Timothy Chalamet. I just think that he looks exactly like Nancy from Stranger Things. If you guys haven't done a side-by-side... Once check, you see it, you can't unsee no, it. No, you can't unsee it. And, like, that's the only thing I noticed. is like, Timothy Chalamet and what's her name? Natalia Dyer, maybe they both look, oh uh, yeah, super similar. Yeah, 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 like they could be related. There's no relation, I don't think, but they could they could be related. But I'm excited to go see the new Dune, so I won't I won't hate on Timothy Chalamet. He was good in Wonka. I saw that too. All right, you're off the clock. All right, I'm off the For clock, now. guys. For now, um, pop back up when TikTok comes. Who's better, LeBron James or or who? It didn't. Yeah. Oh, what a cliffhanger. All right. See you guys. Don't pee on the horse. Don't, pee Don't the bite horse. the horse. Don't bite shoes. Right? That's where we're at. That's the moral of the story. Susan, thanks for the super over on the YouTube site. We're only on YouTube right now. My brain is just... My, my brain is just... There we go. 
Uh, Caden Thunder, I think you might have a fan over here on the YouTube side. Uh, Miranda says, marry me. Yeah. Hey, yo. Harry, don't buy shoes. Don't pee on a horse. That's what we've learned today, right? That That is what we've learned today, uh, which is amazing. So, uh, yeah. Hope you guys got your, your formal education on... Uh, uh, don't buy the raccoon that changes the weather hoodie. I'm I'm down. Uh, I actually have uh, I have this uh, this shirt. I think I put it in my get rid of pile because it's just it's not feasible for me to wear it out anywhere. But I have the shirt from um, uh, from Q. Um, <clears throat> it's Q LLC, I believe. They have the honey badger and that kind of thing. But it's like a raccoon. <laughs> like sitting on the ground next to a trash can with a bunch of trash around him. He's smoking a cigarette and he's got like an open can of soda. And that's it. That's it. Uh, we need some kind of design like that. That would be good. The weather raccoon. You're hunting for the magical weather raccoon. There. We need to give him a name of some kind. It would be amazing. Uh, okay, here we go. We're diving into story number four here for this content block. This one is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for not giving a friend insurance money? After my divorce, I found a new house. About a year after living alone, my good friend and her two dogs moved in. Everything was going well until there was an electrical fire at the house. The fire was in the ceiling and had burnt the beams in the house. The fire department had to break through the ceilings, leaving debris everywhere. The afternoon the house caught fire, I was home alone with her dogs. I got them out. Weeks before the fire, my friend and I had, had been drinking some wine together in the backyard, and I had mentioned she needed to get a renter's insurance policy and offered to give her my agent's number. She never got renter's insurance. So now our house is inhabitable and our belongings are covered in what I thought at the time was asbestos. I did have renter's insurance, told her at the time of the fire not to worry that I would try to figure out a place to live. Well, I did. With my renter's insurance policy, I got money every month to rent a place. I could have found a tiny place for myself and saved some of that money. I did not. I found a large enough home for her as well, and that would allow dogs and had a yard. The fire happened in September, and I covered the Airbnbs through the end of December for months. My insurance company had sent a company to my house to clean all of the possessions. I did lie to the insurance company and pretended that her room was a guest bedroom, so all of her stuff got cleaned as well. She got all of it back. My friend had wanted to find a more permanent apartment, which made sense. However, she asked me to pay for that apartment or a portion of it. I told her that made me feel uncomfortable. She then avoided me. I moved away from the city that we both lived in, and it wasn't until after I moved that I got a text from her. The text very dramatically explained how her heart had been breaking and how I had chosen money over our friendship. That text enraged me, and I never responded. Our friendship has been over. But just recently, it all got stirred up again. My old friend and I shared a mutual friend. We will call her B. B and I had been close friends for years. I even lived with her when I went through my divorce before I found my house. B texted me a couple of days ago saying it's been awkward because she and my old friend have become best friends since I moved away. And she has been avoiding my text because things are weird for her. Now, I took that... I took that as B has chosen sides, and I told her I wanted to take a step back from this friendship, which hadn't she already done that with avoiding me, but just didn't say it? Well, B did not like me saying that. I got an explosive text back telling me my number was deleted. It's a huge weight off of her shoulders, and what actually bothered me was the most. She said I stole from the friend I had lived with. I've been upset, even crying. Am I not seeing something? Am I an asshole? And how would I have stolen from her? Um, it, it's not about what you're seeing or not seeing. It's about someone else, i.e. the victim in this scenario or the portrayed victim in this scenario. Uh, your friend that you lived with spinning the narrative. They're controlling the narrative right now, right? And their narrative is that you wronged them, even though you went above and beyond and paid for a bigger place that, so that she could live there too, even though... You you fudged information to the insurance company so that she would get all of her stuff back as well. Even though you did all these things to benefit her, she expected you to even go further. And because you didn't, you stole from her. It's bullshit. She knows it's bullshit. However, she controls the narrative right now. And the whole you chose money over our friendship thing is bullshit, too. She knows that here. Here's a potential sideways thing, though. Right. I think where this might have gone sideways is that. I'm thinking you might not have explained clearly in the beginning that when you got this bigger place, rather than finding a small place for yourself, that that was doing her a favor. You might not have explained that. And, and there's, 
I don't know what the saying is, but it's essentially if you do for something for someone and don't don't tell them about it or don't make it known, they will not know about it. Right. They assume you don't you didn't do anything. So if you didn't explain that you went above and beyond by doing that, she's not going to just automatically know if you didn't explain that you got a bigger place and used more of that money for for that bigger place so that she would benefit from it. She's assuming that it's just what happened. If you didn't explain that you fudged the information to entrance so her stuff would be covered and cleaned and returned as well, she doesn't know that. And in this scenario, if she doesn't know any of these things, you did nothing to go above and beyond. And when she asked you to pay, that still doesn't make sense why she would ask you to pay for a place that she's looking at. That doesn't make sense at all. Unless she's just assuming that you got a a big chunk of money uh, and that somehow she was entitled to it. Entitled is the good word here. Entitled is is an accurate word for for this friend overall. That friendship, I would still try to to have a conversation and be like, okay, what is your version of events here? Because clearly things aren't lining up and and really try to get to the bottom of what exactly what misinformation she's she's spreading here. You might ask the same of the of B, the friend that that you just had this blow up with and say, what what exact story are you getting here? Because I'm not the bad guy. At least I don't think I am. Um, And if you're I need to know what what version of reality you're receiving here, because that would tell you what version of reality the old friend, old roommate that you had is either either believes actually happened or is using to victimize herself. That um, either way, some kind of communication is not happening here. And you're just letting the narrative be controlled by someone who's victimizing themselves out here. And that unless you take control of it, you're a victim of, of that. So um, Heidi says, sounds like the friend is biting the horse that feeds her. Yeah. No good deed goes unpunished. I, but we don't know if, if the friend knew that he did this good deed and there's still stuff that doesn't make sense, but I think there's a communication error here. And he with B instead of explaining what actually happened is like, okay, I'm going to step back from this relationship. It sounds like you've chosen sides instead of being like, Hey, hold on bullshit. I didn't do anything wrong. This greedy B tried to get me to pay for a house for her or something. And with the insurance money that I got for my stuff, I told her to get insurance. She didn't get insurance. What exactly do I owe her here? Instead of saying that and being like, yo, you're you're the story you're being fed is horse shit. Or horse piss. Uh, don't buy the yeah, don't bite the horse that feed you. Instead of doing that, he, he was just like, oh, whatever. Um, and now and now is actually asking if he's actually the asshole in the version of the story that she received that B received. Yeah, you are. But you don't even know what that version of the story is yet because you didn't take the effort to find out. I think rather than laying down and taking it and be like, maybe I really am a bad guy. Find out what the fuck is going on. Find out what story is being told out there so that you know how much undoing you have to do here and go back to to the roommate and be like, yo, uh, is this really what you think has happened or uh, or are you just playing the victim out here? That's what I would do in your shoes. That's what I would do in your shoes. Roommate should have had their own renter's insurance. It's not OP's responsibility for whatever reason that roommate possibly and B for sure. The friend don't know that they don't know this. You think the ignorance is BS, Susan? It could be. It could be. Angel says OP is ask Con four for lying to insurance and starting this ball rolling. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple instances there where where he fudged the information to insurance or stuff would be covered there by doing her a favor and also used his entire rental reimbursement amount to get a bigger place so that she could live there, too. Had he just chosen himself and been like, you're on your own, you didn't have renter's insurance. This probably would have died much faster. But he did her favors. She expected those favors to keep coming or she didn't know he was doing her favors in the first place. Yeah, friend sounds like a narcissist. Or just say, OK, and move on. Who gives a shit what friends think, Brianna? Yeah, but it's clearly bothering him, right? He's crying about it. He's been upset about it. So he clearly values their opinion or their opinion weighs heavily on him. But he's not taking the time to figure out what exactly that opinion is based on. Mercy says, just cut them out and move on. Apparently, my give a shit is getting tired. LOL. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
There are a couple of things going on here that were a little kinky on Friends' part. Nah. Caden Boggs, AITA, is Am I the Asshole? Angela, you've been hitting that mod roll hard today, Angel. Heck yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, Incognito, can't piss on my horse's shoes and have the magical weather raccoon tell me it's raining. There you go. None of it was OP's responsibility, but they did it because they were a good friend, Shelby. Yeah, and I'm guessing that's what B doesn't know. And if he didn't communicate that to the old roommate, she may not know either. That's why I'm saying get the version of the story that is being broadcast out there. Take control of the narrative and set everything right. Set it right. Set it right. Um, the goat. Yeah, I never, never saw Slipknot. I was a big Deftones guy. Deftones went to tons of shows. Caden Thunder is a big Slipknot fan. Uh, went to a bunch of Deftones, went to Mudvayne. Um, I saw a bunch of really good shows back in my day. Best one I saw was Lincoln Park in the in the beginning of their rise at the pageant in St. Louis. And it was amazing. It was crazy. Deftones is, is like my, my lifetime number one, though. I'm a huge Deftones fan. Love, love me some Chino Marino. Kira Mermaid says, wouldn't the roommate know that OP was being helpful since she got all of her stuff back as well? Not if he didn't tell her. I mean, there is a version where she could just be like, oh, this is just what they did because it was in the house. It was covered, right? It was covered because it was in the house. If he didn't explicitly say, yo, I'm doing you big favors, she may not know that he's doing her big favors. Danny. You uh, heard the Deftones when they opened for A7X. They were okay. And I've seen some amazing Deftone shows. Amazing. Uh, Lincoln Park, POD, and SOTY. What is SOTY? System. Oh, I was going to say System Up and Down. That's not it. That doesn't work. Um, POD, I've seen. Um, Seven Dust. Hella good show. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's been a long time since I've been since I've been there. Pamela, sorry, I think she knew. It's possible. It is entirely possible that she knew, but the misinformation that she's spreading needs to be corrected because right now B doesn't know the truth. Set it right. Set it right. Call bullshit on her not knowing. Going through a fire without having insurance. Yeah. Oh, uh. Oh, Stone Temple Pilots. And Aussie? Holy cow. Avenged Sevenfold. There you go. Tool. I've never seen Tool. That's one of like my biggest. I've never seen Foo Fighters live. They're like my number two all the time. I need to see them live. Tool. I would love to see live too, but I, I got to see. I got to see uh, Foo Fighters before then. I, I'm skipping five. Is that right? Okay. All right. We're diving over to our next story here. If you are not subscribed on the YouTube side, please do so. That is our main goal for today. We are 11 hours and 10 minutes into this 24-hour stream because we're crazy. Rage Against the Machine. Hell yeah. And even, uh, you know, in the Chris Cornell days, Audio Slave. I was in a cover band that played a lot of Audio Slave stuff, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. Played some Foo Fighters and some Rage too, but man, Audio Slave, some good shit. Okay, um... Here is our next story here. This one comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for refusing to have a double wedding with my twin sister because I dislike her fiance? Ever since we were kids, my identical twin sister, 24 female, and I, you can probably guess my age and gender, <laughs> have wanted to have a double wedding. That makes me uncomfortable. I'm gonna panic when we walk out of that one. That's just complicated, isn't it? That's just that's just that's just complicated. However, as we grew up, we realized that as much as we wanted it, it would be unlikely that we would both get engaged around the same time. Thank you. A couple of weeks ago, my boyfriend, 24 male of four years, proposed to me. Then a few days ago, my sister's boyfriend, 32 male, who knew how much we wanted a double wedding, also proposed to her. My sister is over the moon and thinks we'll have the wedding we dreamed about as kids. However, I told her that the double wedding wasn't a good idea. I made multiple excuses, but she kept on badgering me for the real reason why. So I admitted that it was because I disliked her fiance. 
They only started dating this year, yet she thinks he's her soulmate. He's a high school dropout working a minimum wage job, and he has a daughter, eight female, whose mother passed away a few years ago. He's a convicted criminal who once spent three years in prison for drug possession. Most people his age are homeowners while he can barely afford rent and has resorted to borrowing money from my sister multiple times. I told my sister she was too young to be a stepmother, and if she married him, he'd just use her for money before he got bored of her. I said that I didn't want the best day of my life to be tainted by sharing it with some man who'd probably just be div- who'd probably divorced her after a year. Oof, didn't sugarcoat that at all. She thinks I'm acting stuck up and judgmental, but I just want the best for her. I still would love a, a double wedding, but I'd gladly sacrifice that dream if it meant saving my sister from a lifelong bad decision. Am I the astronaut? The question is, am I the astronaut for refusing to have a double wedding with my twin sister because I dislike her fiance? I, honestly, uh, I, I think you're you're doing her right here. Everything that you talk about here is about how you don't think this guy is right for her and how uh, you think he's going to abuse the relationship. And this is going to end in disaster. I mean, you don't get to pick for her, but saying that you won't do the double wedding at least causes some pain that maybe make will make her reevaluate things here. And, you know, th- th- this guy in his life, it's you do you, right? I'm, I'm not going to judge him for, for where he's at in life or what he's doing or what he's doing for a job. But, but I think your heart is in the right place here. And like you said here in the beginning or in the end, you said you'd still love to do a, a double wedding, but you'd gladly sacrifice that for the good of your sister, for saving her from some inevitable disaster here. That statement, I think, puts this where, where your heart is in the right place, you're saying this for the right reasons, you're doing with this for the right reasons. Uh, unfortunately, you can't choose for her, but you can you can detach yourself from that decision, and that's what you've done here. So uh, that, I think, is the way to go. Jesse says, nobody better to tell the truth than your sibling, even more so a twin. And obviously, she doesn't want to hear it. She says you're, she's acting stuck up, but um, or she just doesn't want them to ruin her day. That, uh, yeah. Coral, yeah, the delivery was harsh, but it probably needed to be. There could be some underlying factors here that she's not giving us. Like, I don't want this guy in my wedding pictures. It could be as simple and superficial as that. It really could be. But at minimum, there's some good, wholehearted, real goodwill behind it at the core. I I do believe that from what we've said here. She will get stuck paying it all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. NTA for telling the truth, but maybe the approach could have been a bit nicer. Uh, I think if it is a sibling thing, that's that's when you can get away with it. And and no one is going to be more filterless and truthful from the heart than than communicating with your siblings or your parents. Right. I think um, we see that a lot. And it's one of the one of the grains of salt we try to to digest shitty teenager attitudes with is because they're allowed to be themselves around us and cool. Um and I think talking to your siblings is the same kind of thing, right? You're going to call bullshit if you see bullshit, especially if you see them about to make a terrible decision and say, at minimum, I'm not attaching myself to your terrible decision. He's going to use and abuse you. I think it is. I think it's admirable. Yeah, you uh, I think you're doing the right thing here. They do need to watch more Bluey Taylor. It's not the done thing, mate. Not the done thing. Okay, we we or or best friend of you have a good best friend, um, Cassie. Facebook demon. What? Two sides to every story, and I don't see how she has any more life experience to make that call. She's only making the call for herself, though. She's not making the call for her sister. I mean, it, it to do a double wedding, it would take two yeses. It only takes one no to shut the thing down. So she detached herself from it. Um, and and that's all it took. Jesse, thanks so much for the super chat over there. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, it was a it was an answer, Dusty. Gotcha. 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 Doing it. OK, here we go. On this next story, we're actually going to have Stevie Wonder jump in and give some feedback for us. So I'll, I'll get to reading here and then we'll uh, we'll bring our next guest on here. 
This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askinoff for letting my dogs out in my fenced-in yard, or should I have more empathy for my neighbor? Hmm. My wife and I bought and moved into our house in October 2022. Since then, we've gotten along fine with our neighbors who rent next door. For the purpose of this post, I'll talk about the man who we'll call John. They're all they're our only direct neighbors. We have no HOA or neighborhood, and we share a fence slash property line with them. I have two dogs, one in particular who is a herding dog and loves to bark at John through the fence. It's not a privacy fence, and I have no real way of stopping my dog from barking at him when he gets home from work or is working outside, which is often. It's so incessant that there's a pathway dug out from her running back and forth, and we cannot divert her attention with anything other than completely removing her from the environment, taking her outside. I've brought up this issue numerous times, offering to work around his schedule so we only let our dogs out freely in the yard when they're not home. He consistently tells us not to worry about it. Dogs will be dogs, etc. Of course, I feel bad about the barking still, but I've always been upfront about it and given him an out, which he consistently declines. Now, here's what led me to post this. For the last month or so, my wife has been telling me that she's heard John barking back at our dog. I didn't know if this was in passing, if it was for a long time, if it's consistent, but I haven't seen it myself, so I've been giving him the benefit of the doubt. I've defended him when she brought it up, empathizing with someone who has a loud neighbor he has a little power over. Today I heard her barking, so I immediately yelled for her to come inside, but she would not, given the noise of another dog barking. Turns out John bought a megaphone and left it on, pointed it at my dog, so she barks back at herself. On top of that... While I didn't see it, I believe he dumped water in the corner of the fence line to make my dog muddy so we would have to clean her. I might actually be an asshole for the accusation if that's incorrect, but that's a different question. As I walked over to get her inside, he turned it off and walked away. I saw his partner walk inside as well. Neither of them said a word as I yelled over to him. That's really fucked up. You're really fucked up for that, I said. I decided it was best not to confront him in person as I wanted a record of the conversation. I texted him that that if he has any problem with my dogs, he can bring it up to me instead of harassing them. He doubled down, called me sick for confronting him about barking in the mud, and then told me that we should get that bitch's cords cut and that you should move back to the city. This was a peaceful paradise before your useless before you and your useless dogs moved in. Regardless of documentation and steps, am I the asshole for letting them out freely in my fenced-in yard, or should I have more empathy for my neighbor? Edit, I have a sheepdog. You can't train out herding behavior. She gets tons of physical and mental stimulation. Okay, so to come in for feedback on this, we're going to bring up one of our uh, one of our first podcast guests and longtime friend, Stevie Wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, Stevie Wonder. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. Thank you. So uh, so what do you think about this situation here? Um, I- I'm really torn on this one. Uh, I'm really torn on this. So uh, can we go Can we go back on the story for just a second? Yep. I- I'm a little unclear. I-, I-, you got, I lost at the uh, megaphone part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How do we confirm that there's like cable tied to the fence and there's like there's like the dog holding it. It doesn't seem possible. Left it point about a megaphone, left it on, pointed it at my dog. So she barks back so, at herself. So the, the smaller, like the microphone side, not the speaker in, but the microphone, as I beat the shit out of my yeah, microphone, yeah. the the microphone in. So she barks into it and then it projects that sound out, which it would, would drive bounce off of their house or whatever, but yeah, she'd okay. hear she'd hear basically a, an altered echo of herself. Okay, um, if 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 the if the part here is true, all right, are you the asshole or not? If this is all true, that she actually has had a conversation with the neighbor and said, "Hey, you know, if this bothers you, let me know." I mean, I think the neighbor is the asshole in this situation. I, I'm, I, I get pretty annoyed by dogs barking. It just make make me is a personal pop- thing? I, Yeah, it, like it drives me a little nuts. Like repeated noises, right. I, I'll go a little insane. So, like dogs barking in a neighborhood, I don't have a ton of empathy for that because it's like, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take care of that. Like that's people are trying to sleep, and I get that. So I can understand where that would be a little bit annoying. But also, it sounds like there was an out given. How do you how do you read this? Hey, oh, Francis, uh, this is a lot to manage. Oh, we're, all, we're only on one platform right Holy now. You should wait till crap. we're, we're uh, on TikTok, too. And oh, then you've got two of these. Yeah. 
I don't have this multitasking capacity. Um, no, I, so my, my inclination is that the person that is yelling at the dog with the megaphone is clearly out of their fucking mind. Right. Uh, because that's, that's pretty nutty behavior. Like I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I'm, I might get upset and be like, yo, your dog sucks. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you wouldn't be malicious, but, but you're right. It was the, um, it was the out that was given multiple outs were given and, and OP here, at least, you know, if their story is accurate, offered multiple times to try to to find a workaround and the neighbor politely declined every time but then decides to get vindictive and just do some crazy shit like i don't i don't understand that part of it at all do you think the part about the mud is true i uh, i mean they turned the water off after he came inside to bring the dog in so i if the megaphone is true the water is probably true right you're right it's, yeah it's it's, yeah i mean th- that is the same flavor of crazy right um What's, right. what's the what's the world think Step here? Forward just a little bit oh, onto the middle of the oh, mat. Oh, You're good. Sorry. It's just easy to get out Step of frame. Step onto the here. mat. Yeah, Yoko. Thanks for uh, thanks for the super there. Greatly appreciate it. Bro literally amplified the barking. Uh, but yeah, they make now they make bark collars. They have bark stoppers. We've got a bark stopper button that uh, that we can use. Dog whistle. Like you've got lots of options there. But I think it all comes down to op offered to work on a solution and every time the neighbor's like, oh, it's fine. But then all of a sudden just snaps and loses their shit and then gets confrontational about it. So the question, the question being, am I the astronaut for letting my dogs out in my fenced in yard or should I have more empathy for my neighbor? Uh, I mean, it is, it's your yard. Your dog has a right to be out there, right? You have a right to use your own yard to let your dogs out there. Now, if I was the neighbor, and this dog was was like every time I was out there barking his ass off at me, I probably would have taken you up on your first offer and been like, yeah, it'd be great if I didn't have to put up with that all the time. That'd be great. Like, can you get a bark collar or something? Yeah. That conversation would have happened. I wouldn't have been like, I would have been like, nah, it's fine. And then been like, I'm going to do something evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that like just the, just that they're asking this question, like, okay, if you have a dog and it just runs along the fence line, I, I could understand why somebody, you don't really have any obligation to me to actually do anything about it. Right. right? It can't get to the other side of the fence. It, it might freak me out because, you know, I, I don't like getting startled like that, but also I'm I'm perfectly safe. And for you to have the uh, the, the awareness to go up to your neighbor and be like, yo, does my dog run inside this fence, freak you out? You want me to do something about it? You want me to put her down or, you know, whatever. I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. That was, that was dark. Uh, but it, it, just the, the self-awareness to be able to ask that question and say, hey, do you want me to do this? To me, that says this is probably accurate and your neighbor is a nut job. So there's a lot of conversation going on here about, um, about so the, the neighbor is doing his, is taking action inside of his own yard too. It's not an issue of legal rights here. This is an issue of OP offered a solution, neighbor declined, then neighbor did something malicious. OP's actions are not malicious here. And to your point, Angel, uh, a lot of bark collars probably are awful. There are smarter ones now where you can adjust the settings to where if another dog barks, it's not going to go off. We don't use them, but but I know they exist now. I think they make ones where it's actually just like a tiny little megaphone that feeds the dog's bark back into their head. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Wonder where they got that idea, uh, and and it's not like a like a, a shock thing. They just make a tone too. So there's 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 lots of humane like decent ones out there, but there are options, and that's the bottom line. There are options available, and I agree. You should have you should have some self awareness here, but the self awareness as an owner to be like, hey, is this a problem? Do I need to do I need to do something here? If the person who you think you might have to cater to says no, do you do it anyway? Like that, that's, that's what the question is here. It's he offered, they declined and then they got malicious. So, so is the understanding that, uh, that, that he's supposed to do something about it, even though they declined. I mean, as I I feel like we would, because our dogs barking in the yard all the time or going crazy about something would drive us nuts too. It doesn't sound like it bothers OP's family that much. Yeah. I'm going to say that the neighbor is an asshole definitively. And just for entertainment, I'd love to hear the neighbor's side of this story. So Demon Peepers, to your point here, says dog barks for a reason. You wouldn't put a cry collar on a baby. I'm telling you right now, 
Our dogs bark if they see a fucking leaf fall. Like, they bark at anything and everything. Yeah, Oliver is like, or because they have anxiety and like they hear a noise or any just little thing. It's different for every dog, I'm sure. Maybe the neighbor barks because he has anxiety. Maybe. He sees the dog, he gets anxious, he barks. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, it, it, it all comes down to me. Uh, for me, it comes down to, is there another delivery out there? Holy cow. For me, it all comes down to OP offered a solution, offered to work on a solution, offered an olive branch. Neighbor declined and the neighbor was malicious. I think that makes the neighbor the asshole. And you said something in one of our first podcasts. It's like, uh, if you know, if you know you need to do something differently and you choose not to do it anyway, that makes you the asshole. I think that's, that's a quote from you in one of the first podcasts you were on. And that, uh, that I think, that I think puts neighbor in the crosshairs here because they, they knew there was a different alternative. They knew there was a better alternative. They knew that there was a better alternative relationship wise with their neighbor and then just chose, just chose to take a run at it anyway. So it's right. wild. I don't get it. I don't get it. Holy crap. My sister is here. Everybody. Your sister is here. Yeah. My sister is here. Hey, it's Auntie M. It's McKenna, my sister. We're gonna bring her on and let her say hi here too. We've got to do it. This is Josh. We gotta do it. I got a text from Josh. Said, "Check your door." Uh, Smoots, did you send? Uh, Let's see. This bag is, is that monsters and Celsius. This is all Celsius. Smoots, did you just send this us like three bags of energy death, drinks from Celsius Target, bro? I saw the liquid death that can. Is I thought amazing. it was amazing. <laughs> like, oh yeah. That is amazing. That's awesome. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. Much love. Much, much love. Greatly appreciate that. I, yeah, I think this is definitely uh, it's definitely an asshole thing. Um, Angel, I feel like it was on the neighbor to come back to OP and say, hey, it's a problem now. Agreed. If somebody extends an olive branch and extends an invitation to a solution and you pass, it's on you to reinitiate that conversation and not be malicious. Not be malicious. So where, where would you put neighbor on the scale here? Is it a could have done it better or should have done it better? Definitely shouldn't have done that. Or you're just an evil human being. Evil. Evil? I'm going with evil. Stevie That's, Wonder's going all the I'm way to AskCon 1 Who's here. with me? AskCon 1. Way. Ask con 1. Okay, um, we're going to bounce over to our next story. Before we do that, we got to bring we got to bring my sister and my brother-in-law up here and let them say hello. They're all gussied up, too. Look at y'all looking all fancy. Handsome. You look so fancy. All right. So fancy. Uh, so Steve is going to read a story here in just a second, but heck, we've, we've got to get we've got to get my sister up here for a new... Uh, an introduction and uh this is my sister mckenna who lives in knoxville they're in tennessee and my brother-in-law john who was who was my bestie uh until he started dating my sister and then he just disappeared uh just kidding I won. still my bro still my bro here so this is uh this is mckenna hello say hey 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 is uh is paisley watching right now uh i don't know she should be asleep the, so the, the kids 10 27 are still, their time the kids are still uh they're still in knoxville right yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Ayler's here. Yeah, Ayler, yeah, yeah, is over there with Navy. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. So, you just tell everybody hi. Um, I want to tell right people here. if they're assholes or not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. You are an asshole. Very glittery. Oh, I should tell them if you're an asshole. Oh, yes. No. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. One time, <laughs> he got so mad at me that he stood out, paced outside my door and told me that someday... Someone walking down the street was going to kill me because of how I talked back to them. <laughs> Trauma. Um, hey, also, also, we had her convinced for a long time that we found her under a rock uh, and that, uh, yeah, that she wasn't she wasn't one of the children, like not biologically part of our family. We found her. We found her. It was a large rock. It was a large rock. Yeah. Uh, and and. Uh, McKenna here has ha, ha, she she had at least had an issue with being late to places like had some severe being late anxiety. I did not like to be late. I like to be on time. If you are five minutes late, don't go. So we would sit in the car and sing. Time is ticking away. Tick, 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 ticking. Time is ticking away. I had to go on medication when I was 13. Because of my siblings. <laughs> hey, John, you can come. So oh, yes, he is the asshole. Always ask on three at minimum all the time. 
And this is uh, this is my brother John. Hello. See, someone else was found under a rock too. <laughs> yeah. See, someone was traded. They also told me I was gonna have Crayola cancer because I got crayon marked on me. <laughs> <laughs> I have it in my jacket. I'll find it. It's like CoverGirl, something you can get at Walmart, you know? I just went to a wedding, so. How was the wedding, by the way? It was beautiful. Beautiful. Had a good time? Great time. Beautiful wedding. We drove ten and a half hours to come to it. <laughs> was it worth it? Yes. <laughs> nice. Oh, we were almost best friends, but I'm always late. My Maybelline lipstick. Oh, we should get... Maybe it's... Maybe it's... <laughs> what else are we doing? Are we reading a story? Yeah, we're getting ready to. Uh, so we've been through... Hey, ch check it out. We are 11 hours and 32 minutes into this, and ch we've got we've got a, a camera, too, for today. So so if you look at the screen over here, oh, you can see what John. Yeah, so wait, wait, everybody, John. Your camera's looking at you right here. Uh, so yeah, we've got we've got a camera too showing behind the scenes here. We've got uh, this is the normal scene where you talk, and then we've got we've got some like dancing music kind of scenes here too for the in between. We got a lot going on. Someone asked if I was southern. I do live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I have some has rubbed off on me. Things are just yonder, and what else? I reckon. Say that right. I reckon. Yeah. You know what? I can say this. You know, when Candy Thunder and I went for a, just a few days, even just random people we would meet, run into in Knoxville, they're like the nicest people in the world. Because they're Southern. <laughs> right. right. I come back so, so to Missouri nice. and I'm so annoyed at people, how they drive here. They don't let people in. And in Southern... In East Tennessee, we let people in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a great place. Oh, your skin is beautiful. Yeah. It's really not. That's the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What? Did you have some drinks tonight? I did have two drinks tonight. <laughs> Plus a glass of wine. <laughs> Three drinks. I can tell. I mean, I can tell. I am you are getting the best version of me. <laughs> Two kids free and a little. How has that been? How was the, I mean, you had one that you brought. I have one with. kid with me. But to get a night with just no kiddos and to be able to go out and just rock it out. How, how has that been? So great. <laughs> I need, need about two weeks. Listen, I need a stay in a psychiatric hospital. Uh, Anything where they make you stay in your room and they feed you and clean up after you. Like my kid's up. life. <laughs> I need my kid's life. Oh, uh, that's awesome. That is, uh, yeah, that is amazing. So how long are you going? When's your, when is this over? We're doing 24 hours. So 10 a.m. tomorrow? 10 a.m. tomorrow. Yep. Wow. That's, that's what we're doing. So you're going to stay up all night? Yeah. I guess that's 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep yep it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing gonna be amazing so we're actually gonna bring uh steve up to read the next story um so well, if you want to hang out and listen to it you can help give us some feedback i will yell feedback just shoot the camera okay. over there and i'll tell you if you're assholes <laughs> okay that'll work someone said i was speaking in cursive and i speaking in cursive there you go okay uh yeah so Auntie M and uh, and Uncle John will get up will either get up here or just shout their feedback from the other side of the room. <laughs> They're a little <laughs> little lubricated right now, just slightly. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna get Steve we're gonna get Steve up here and uh, and let him read this story and then we'll get we'll get some thoughts on here as well. So uh, Stevie Wonder, come right back up here. We've got your story here. Here's your title, and then as you go down, you can just scroll with that middle mouse wheel. Okay. Never used one of these before. <laughs> a mouse? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's the fancy one. That, that was amazing. Uh, there we go. That was amazing. I can we do a podcast with a couple of drinks sometime? Uh, we should. Sure. That would be fun. We definitely should. Oh my god, that was inspiring. Okay. Uh, am I the asshole for not recommending my brother for a job? Basically, my brother was a failure to launch. 
He is four years older than me and was always bright at school, much smarter than I am. After high school, he attended further education and has a wealth of knowledge through these courses. I was the black sheep of the family, choosing not to do further education. I was always told I'd be nothing if I went that route, but it's what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I took a basic role in a company and spent the next two decades working my ass off, and now I'm in a highly valued role getting paid lots and working from home almost entirely, which is good because it's a long commute. My brother, on the other hand, is doing nothing. In 20 years since high school, he's had one job, which lasted about a month. He doesn't actively try looking for work. He just plays video games all days. He still lives at home. Meanwhile, I have a house. I'm married and have kids. I feel successful in my life. This is where the asshole part comes in. On a phone call with my mother, we were discussing my wife. Now that both our kids are in school, I suggested I could get my wife a job at the same company and she'd earn more money there. She currently works part-time. We don't need her to earn more money, but it's always welcome if that's what she chooses to do. The conversation shifted when my mom asked what kind of work it would be. I mentioned it would be behind a desk, punching numbers in and li- liaising with customers. That's when my mom says, oh, that sounds like something your brother could do. Could you recommend him? And I say, no. I explained further that I worked my ass off to get where I am and I'm not recommending my brother because I know it will reflect badly on me. I would recommend my wife because I know she has a good work ethic and it would impact or wouldn't impact me. She thinks I'm an asshole for this stance. Am I the asshole? Um, okay, so uh, added to add, not only do I think it would reflect badly on me, but I don't think he would add value to the business. So TLDR, older brother doesn't work, barely has worked in 20 years. I've climbed the ladder, got far at the company I work for. My mom wants me to recommend him for a job, but I think it will reflect reflect badly on me based on his prior efforts. She's upset because I would recommend my wife, but not my brother. So Dusty, do I ask you for feedback now? Do I do, I do, it, do, I do the Dusty? You, oh, okay. I give it too. You give it and I'll, I'll jump in and help here too. And chat. Okay. Like, uh, okay. Chat let, let's read, let's read the chat really quick. This is a pretty big stomping, not the asshole. And I would tend to agree with all these lovely folks here. Um, the NDA button oh, like. oh, oh, look at that. What happens when I do the, Oh, can I do that again? Uh, well, it's already it's already going. Oh, now, so yeah, now you're, it's now done. You're That's, I but wish now, I would have known. Look, now we can okay. reset it back to this, and now you can press. Wow. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna hit the NTA button because I still feel the same way. Yeah. There you go. That is so cool. All right. Not the asshole. What? I mean, this dude's worked really fucking hard for where he's at, right? So why would he bring his uh, loser of a brother in? I, okay. Sidebar. Uh, little brother, older brother. Older brother's got some issues. There's some verbiage in here that really feels to me like you need to work through your shit with your like bad feelings about your sibling because you're, you're still holding on to this like it's 20 years ago and you're both 12 years old and that's some stupid bullshit and some punishment that you're giving yourself. So move past that. But I also would say pretty definitively, you were well within your bounds to not recommend somebody that's an idiot. Now I've, I, as a, in the past have held some pretty high level supervisory positions where I've had friends want to work for me. And I tell you what, I have a lot of friends that I would never have recommended work with me because they would have made me look bad. So if, if this dude's the asshole, then I am also the asshole. Dusty. Yeah. What say I, you? I think they're, um, I think this comes down to mom saying you should make a recommendation because he's your brother right not because he has the skill set to do it but because he's your brother now now being willing to recommend your wife that complicates things quite a bit but if you recommended your wife because of the skill set because you truly believe that she would be good at at the job that's different but you have to use that part of that it's based on skill set and and mom has to understand here that if you If you make a recommendation for someone, if you vouch for someone and they end up being garbage, that reflects badly on you as well. This can blow back and hurt you. So one action can actually hurt both of you because or both both of her children, because then it would be a matter of, uh, yeah, he's not going to last because he's not good and is not going to last, period. But it's also going to reflect badly on OP. So it's it's not a matter of because he's the brother. It's because the person is right for the job. Recommending family members gets complicated, period. It's a little bit different here because we have a small, you know, family run business. 
um, and Caden Thunderworks here, Candy Thunder and I own it and administer. So it's 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 different. Um, but recommending uh, a friend or a sibling or anything or a job, you put yourself on the line. And you have to be willing to do that. And, and mom telling you you should do it just because your brother is bullshit. Like, uh, she's like, risk your career. He's your brother. Come on. Uh, Gina with, I can't say that, like, Guzzo? Guzzo? Guzzo. Guzzo. Mom is being selfish when she kind of created the situation, literally and figuratively. You see, because she like, hey, oh. Birth. Yes. Yeah. Sorry for that. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Ah, sorry for that. Uh, and, and right below that, um, Mom just, uh, Brianna says, mom just wants brother the F out of her house. <laughs> it's We talk about this a lot. It's like people's yeah. opinions on things. You have to think about the motivating factors here. You have to think about the, what's their angle, right? Yeah. Mom doesn't want to have to deal with him. So, so there she goes. She's just gonna, gonna wants him to move on. It doesn't matter what the, what the case is. Yeah. Yeah. And also clearly you are still the black sheep and your brother is her favorite. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, Sergeant Mac, mom enabled do? older brother sloth. She just wants to get rid of him now. Yeah. Oh, careful. You're using some moderator tools now. Sorry. Man. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I right clicking on, on the top. Oh, I did not mean to. Oh, you're good. You're good. There's you're more good. than one button on this you thing. Did. There's like Jeez. 12 buttons on this thing. It's crazy. <sighs> I know. I know. I, it's uh, good to see everybody here. Thanks for hanging out with us. We got uh, a little bit of time for before we jump on to the next one. So I'm jumping back to five now. Is that right? Okay. Okay. All right, and Auntie M's going to jump up and give feedback. So, Steve. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, everybody. Thank you for hanging out thanks with us. Thanks for today. having me. Steve Appreciate Steve. it, brother. Hey, thanks for coming in. Appreciate, Appreciate it, man. Stevie Wonder, everybody. One of our uh, one of our repeat podcast guests, friends. If you have not seen the podcast that he's a member of, you need to jump in and watch those. Not today. Not right now. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. So we're, we're about to hit the 12 hour point, which I think is when uh, YouTube actually forces a stop to the stream. So we will have to we'll have to get a little bit of cleanup done to, to be able to reboot and restart the YouTube stream because at 12 hours, I think they they cut us off. So we're going to we're going to see we're going to Steve this story. It's where my brain's at right now. Words are hard. We're going to read this story. My sister McKenna is going to help give some feedback here uh, and hopefully not throw me under the bus in the process. And uh, and then we're going to get set to start the next chunk of content here. So this is actually uh, this was this is actually the first time that is this the first time you've been in this studio, this office you've been uh, here before. I've been here before it was this. Before it looks the way it does. Yeah. So it was Probably. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here we go. This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, am I the ass cannot for not inviting my friend on holiday? Let me reset my screen here real quick. I female 18 have been friends with Amy, female 18, Maria, female 18, Chloe, female 18, and Jess, female 18. Since we were all 11 years old when we started secondary school together, we're a very close group and our families are also close with each other now, too. As this is our final year of school, about five months ago, Amy messaged our group chat that we should all go on holiday together in the summer to celebrate finishing exams. We were all on board, but Jess said that she wouldn't be keen on drinking or a party holiday because she doesn't like to drink or party. All of us do enjoy it, and that was our plan, but we kind of just dropped it. No one mentioned it until about three weeks ago when Chloe mentioned booking a holiday to me. All four of us, apart from Jess, had always wanted to go on a party holiday before heading to uni so we could get drunk, dance, and let our hair down before heading to uni. We didn't really want to do any other kind of holiday, even though we knew Jess wouldn't be keen on that, and if we went... We knew she categorically would not have a good time. When Amy was browsing for cheap flights, she noticed extremely cheap flights to the party island we wanted to go to. As we didn't know how long they'd be available for, we booked four tickets, and we didn't think Jess would enjoy it. I felt a little guilty as we're a group, but also very excited about the holiday. Four days ago, Jess brought up the topic of a holiday again and mentioned wanting to go camping or on a nature trip. Maria told her that on a whim, we'd already booked to go away on a party holiday and didn't intentionally exclude her, but we just knew she wouldn't like it. Jess got really upset and left the group without talking to us for the rest of the day. When we saw her text, when we saw her the next day, she said she couldn't understand why we'd gone behind her back when we all were a group, when we were all a group. We felt really guilty, but the flights were non-refundable and we were excited about going still. 
Jess has since told her parents who have angrily phoned all of our parents. My mom is annoyed at me and threatening to not allow me to go for being so unkind to Jess. I feel bad as Jess is one of my closest friends and I wouldn't want to exclude her, but we've always had to compromise for her and miss out on parties and other things we enjoy to cater to her. We just wanted one holiday we'd all enjoy. So am I the astronaut? And here to give feedback is the one and only McKenna. Thank you. Jump in there. Let's see what you got. What do you got? 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 You are the asshole. That's my go. <laughs> That's your go. Okay. Explain. Okay. Reasoning. Uh, here's what you should have done. You should have sent Jess a short little text. It's 2024. It's quick. And said, hey, we're booking these flights. We're going to party our asses off. We know you don't want that, but wanted to ask you before. Make the disclaimer. It's going to be wild. So then it is her decision to not go. That's what I would have done. That's what she should have done. That's what she should have done. Okay, so let's talk about this then. We know what she should have done. The scale here is Mm. ask on four, could have done it differently. Ask on three, should have done it differently. Ask on two, definitely shouldn't have done that. And ask on one, you're a terrible human. Ask on three. Three? Okay. Go ahead, hit, go ahead and hit this three button right there. She is 18. We'll, we'll give it to her. She's naive. This is going to be a life lesson. It's fine. But you probably you might have lost that friend. Now, do I think Jess should have gone to her parents and then it caused this whole big parent thing? Probably not. Like, that was a little bit of a whiny moment. But I think you totally should have said like hey we're doing this right now we just wanted to let you know yeah last if chance. you were a friend from for seven years you should have done that don't you agree yeah i think it's a well the communication could have prevented this from happening right 100 that would have prevented it from happening 100 i understand why they did what they did but they did so I, I think when op said i felt a little guilty there's your there's your tip yeah. She knew something that she or she did something she knew wasn't right. And that is where is where she put herself on the scale. Her See, and all people of her friends. are agreeing with me that it is a three. She's 18. They're stupid. They'll figure it out. Should have done better. They'll do better. You do have more of a southern accent. now. <sighs> it's funny. Listen, it's just <laughs> the Appalachia has gotten in my blood. <laughs> in the land of Dolly Parton. Don't ever say anything bad about Dolly. Yep. Don't do it. I actually do wholeheartedly believe that. <laughs> Danny says, okay, your sister is a hoot. She is a hoot. For sure. Oh, I sound like I'm from Arkansas. No, I don't. I'm Dylan. From, I'm from Tennessee. Okay. D- Dylan, you're from Arkansas, aren't you? Yeah, Dylan. <laughs> uh... Southern accent vanishes in the NWA and, and SWMO area. That's right. We just get a very generic kind of, I don't know that we have an accent here. In Missouri Southwest does Missouri. not have an accent. No, Midwest, very- I think, is baseline. Don't you? Midwest. Maybe that's because we grew up here. Muddy? I don't think. Wisconsin, yeah, you do. Wisconsin, yeah. But Missouri, I think, I don't think we had any. We're baseline. We're baseline. We are perfect. We're basic bitches. Is that what you're saying? No. We're baseline. basically perfect. I, I think there's a consensus going on now that you you need to be a podcast guest. Well, I do live ten and a half hours away, so. <laughs> well, luckily for you, we're getting ready to start using a technology with, that would let you like phone, like video call in for a podcast. I have a very high hourly rate. So. See what happens. See what happens, you know. <laughs> We found you under a rock, so I hard that's kind of hard to believe. There's that trauma. Listen, that rock turned into a diamond. Hey ho. So. Hey ho. Auntie M, aka McKenna, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming up and hanging out. Also, uh a a very pleasant surprise. Um I didn't didn't know that I'd if I'd be able to get to see them when they were in town. They're in town for a wedding. Also, congratulations, Betsy and Kyle. Congrats on your wedding. Um didn't know if I get to see you guys when you came in, so I appreciate you popping by. Also, was this was this a random a random decision? You're like, you know what? Let's go. You know what? They're doing a 24 hour stream. Let's go. It's on the way home. 
It's on the way home. Let's do it. Let's do it. The kid is already asleep. You got nothing to lose, right? Just party it out. Party it out. Uh, party rock there. Um, uh, Stevie Wonder's out. Big round of applause for Stevie Wonder and Auntie him for jumping in uh, and hanging out with us. Much, much, much love. We are getting ready to reset the podcast or podcast, reset the stream. We have to do the 12 hour reset and we'll be booting it right back up. Uh, so it'll be just a, a couple of minutes before we boot it right back up. We got to break it up so we don't hit that 12 hour mark and it forces us to shut it down. So we'll do that real quick and then we'll uh, we'll rock and roll and go on both sides. YouTube and TikTok. Tony Spark here, Mr. Producer. What you got going on? Okay. So you're going to yeah, shut it off right now, yep. restart it, and then you're on a break, and then you're going to go take a little break, and then we'll come back on TikTok. We might be a couple minutes late on TikTok, but we're going to restart the YouTube stream, and then we'll deal with that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to start the next chunk of content. We do have to stop this stream right now so that we can reset it. So hang tight. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we may be a couple of minutes late starting on the, the TikTok side, but... Hang with us. Just give us a couple minutes and we'll jump right back in, okay? Thank you guys so much for uh, for hanging out with us today. For those of you who have been here the whole time or who, who have just jumped in as you can, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's only going to get crazier from here on out because we are eight minutes away from being at the halfway point. 12 hours in. Now in the wee hours of the night, when the filter disappears, that's when shit's going to get weird. I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. We'll see you here in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Okay, here we go.